into space. An adventure with Rocky Star. <laughs> An adventure with Rocky Star! Rocky, Mitch and I are back on Earth, sitting back comfortably in the dining room of the spaceport at the end of an excellent meal. Well, I certainly feel a better man for that meal, Mitch. Yeah, me too, Rocky boy. A giggle of grasshoppers, I'd forgotten how scrumptious earth food can be. <laughs> and you know what? Mm -hmm. I reckon eating's my favorite hobby. Or well, practically, anyway. You know, steaks, mother than mushrooms, or mm -hmm. delicious. <laughs> yes, it's really good to be back again. Though, uh, after Muir ties lighter gravity, I'm still not properly adjusted to it. <laughs> Me either. You know, when I walk, I feel like I'm stuck to the floor. <laughs> and drink of liquid still, they pour so easily, I'm never ready for them. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you took more coffee down your shirt front than you managed oh, to swallow. Oh, lay off. <laughs> I wondered why you didn't seem so thirsty. I wonder what's keeping Di so long. Oh, she's probably having a whale of a time in front of a mirror somewhere, making up her face. Yeah, make up. The minute we hit Earth, this always happens. She gets busy on her renovations. Hey, Rocky, there's, uh, there's no news about what sort of job they've got lined up for us next, is there? Well, Mitch, just a confirmation of the message we got out in space. <laughs> oh, uh, what does this character want, hmm? Yeah, Say, looks like a messenger. Hey, are you Rocky Star Police Mister? Yeah, that's right. Gee, I didn't think it'd really be you. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, if Rocky's Exhibit A, I'm Exhibit B. So just get a load of Mitch, boy. Just get a load of Mitch. Mitch? Yeah, you can tell your friend you met Mitch in person. Mitch? That's me. Mitch who? Oh, who is he, Mr. Star? I never heard of him. You what? You never heard of <laughs> He never heard of him. <laughs> hey, let's have Why, that message. I, I... <laughs> you better clear out of here before he bursts a blood he, he, he never heard of him. It's a radiogram, Mr. Star. Okay, thanks. Never. Look where you've been living. Hey, uh, lame brain, <laughs> come here. What do you know about that? He bowled it like a rabbit before I could even explain to you. <laughs> Never heard of me, he said. For all I've done, gratitude. Hey, what's the message, Rocky boy? Orders at last? Well, yeah. In a way. Yeah, read it for yourself. Thanks. Rocky Star. Please take first transoceanic rocket for London. Urgent mission waiting. Request all speed. The president of the solar council, huh? Hey, looks like this might be it, all right. Yeah, better make a start right away. Like to come, too? Oh, 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 not this, baby. My name wasn't mentioned, remember? Now it's me for a nice, long rest. Uh, unless you really want me, Rocky. No, no, no. You can let Di know where I've disappeared to. London, eh? Yeah. I wonder what's in the wind this time. Rocky leaves the dining room, hurries to the nearest phone, and books a passage on the first rocket for London. Soon the great silver ship is streaking through the stratosphere at tremendous speed. In a matter of hours, Rocky is being ushered along a corridor in the administrative headquarters of the Solar Council. His guide stops outside a certain door. Rocky Star, sir. Oh, come in, Star, come in. You've made good time. Well, the message said the matter was urgent, sir. Yes, it is. Uh, sit down, Rocky. Thank you. Well, <laughs> what this time? None of your staff would tell me a thing. Is it a secret? Uh, well, well, yes. Uh, just one moment. Uh, there are some people in the next room I'd like you to meet. Uh, will you come in now, please? Uh, Rocky Star. May I introduce Wilhelm Kromatz, Governor of the Federated States of Europe. 
How do you do? How do you do? And Wallace Rankin, world professor of nuclear electronics. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, please, Mr. Starr, has the matter been explained to you? No, sir, I'm still waiting to hear. Uh, briefly, Rocky, the position is this. Three youngsters have got hold of a spacecraft and gone off on a sort of space joyride. A space joyride? We, we need your help in this matter, Mr. Starr, as quickly as possible. They can't be allowed to wander into unknown dangers up there and bring them back before it's too late. A steady, Professor. It uh, may not be as serious as that. Well, of course it's serious. Out in space, anything might happen. But if... I can't help thinking how the Pegasus went out nearly a hundred years ago and has never been heard of since. It could happen again. Not if I can stop it, Professor Rankin. I, I, I'm very sorry. I, I should try to hold on to academic calm. But it's not very easy. The professor's daughter, Ilma, is one of those on the craft, Rocky. Oh, I see. The others are Governor Kramatsi's son, Ivan, and Paul M. Steiberg, son of my assistant secretary. I cannot understand how they could do such a foolhardy thing. Space has a fascination for many people, Governor. They obviously have no understanding of the dangers. My son has made one trip to the moon. Well, that's hardly training enough for travel in outer space. They can't have understood what they were doing. And to take off with valuable equipment, such as a spaceship, worth millions. <laughs> it seems so stupid and useless to tell the Solar Council I am sorry, but what else can I say? No, Governor Kromart, please forget that. Our main worry is to locate the ship and bring the youngsters back safely. But can it be done, Mr. Starr? I'll... Well, I'll do my best, sir, but I'm afraid it's hardly the sort of thing that I can promise. Out in space, they could be anywhere. Oh, uh, the letter. Ivan Kramatz left behind a letter, Rocky. Uh, yes, I have forgotten. Here. Oh, thank you. You see what he says. They are going out to discover and see things for themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. right, uh... Um, gentlemen, what, what's this about Ilma satisfying herself about Saturn? My daughter was always fascinated by Saturn. Mm -hmm. It appears that they may be trying to go there. But no one's ever reached Saturn. Uh, there is another possibility. Paul Steiberg's father tells me Paul has been anxious to study solar radiation from Mars. Perhaps they've made for there. But uh, there's no mention of Mars here. What it says is, at least Ilma will satisfy herself about Saturn. Saturn, the very edge of the solar system. Hey, Mr. Star, please, you will find them. You will bring them back. Uh, I'll do my best, sir. I'm afraid that's all I can promise. Oh, well, thank you. It's a great comfort. Now, we must not interfere with your preparation. Uh, yes, gentlemen, if you'll leave me to discuss details with Rocky Star. Uh, yes, of course. If there's anything that we can do... I'll let you know, Professor. We are most grateful, Mr. Starr. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll get in touch with you later. Well, Rocky? Mm, well, sir, to find a runaway ship somewhere out in space, it, it's almost impossible. The reference to Saturn does give you a course to follow. Yes, but if they don't know anything about astro-navigation, they might finish up anywhere. Has there been any attempt to contact them by microwave? Uh, yes, so far there's been no reply at all. Be worse than looking for a needle in a haystack. Young Steiberg is pretty good at mathematics, I believe. It's quite possible he's computed the right course. Well, I've got to do something to help them, somehow. Perhaps if you can set a course for Saturn and use super radar... I'll try. But it's going to be expensive, cruising around in space like that. Who's going to foot the bill? Ah, the Solar Council. Well, sir, I, I know important people are concerned, and... Well, I'm all for doing everything to help, but uh, won't there be a scandal if the newspapers get to hear about this? No, no, because we want to make it a journey of exploration as well. Exploration? You, you want us to look out for new planets? Something much more important than that. I'll tell you more when you're ready to leave. Well, why the mystery? I'm sorry, Rocky, but at the moment it's probably the most tremendous secret the world has ever known. All I can say is that for humanity, the thing we want you to look for must be found. How soon can you be ready to take off? Well, the streak must have an overhaul, but I can have it done at top priority rate if you'll give me an authority, sir. You have it. All right, I'll radio it to Mitch, and we may be ready in two or three days' time. Good man. All I can think of is those inexperienced kids out in space. Yes, I wonder how they feel about things now. <laughs> At that very moment, out in space, the stolen ship makes its lonely way. 
Inside on the control deck, Paul Steiberg has just struggled out of unconsciousness. Now he bends and shakes his companions. Hey, you two. Wake up. Hey. Oh, wake up, Wilmer. Oh. Oh, look, come on. Wake up. Go away. Sleepy. Listen, we've been unconscious for hours. Unconscious? Yes, Earth's just a small globe away in the distance. Earth? Oh, we're in space. Yvonne, we're in space. Well, he's still out to it. Oh, oh I feel awful. Oh, me too. Space sickness. I think I'm going to die. Oh, Paul. Paul. No, it's all right, Elmer. It's all right. No. Listen, oh. we've done it. Just concentrate on that. We got away with the ship and now we're on our way. But where? We set the course before we took off, remember? You almost think we're actually on our way to Mars. At that very moment, Paul's face twists for a moment with space sickness, but he fights it down with a triumphant grin. On their way to Mars, and back on Earth, people think they're headed for Saturn. But what of their course? Had they set it accurately? And how can Rocky possibly find them? There is thrilling action ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this exciting Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Rocky has been given what seems an almost hopeless task to find and overtake three youngsters who have gone off in a borrowed spaceship. The joy riders have no space experience and it is almost certain they will become lost out in the void. Grim-faced, Rocky sends Mitch a radiogram instructing him to have the streak prepared for blast-off as soon as possible. Meanwhile, far away from Earth, the three joy riders are not feeling at all happy in their unusual surroundings. Oh, I'm sure I'll die. What? Where? Oh, what has happened? Paul? Oh. Paul, Ivan is awake. Paul? Ivan, where is Paul? I don't know. He was here a moment ago. Oh, I am ill. Why am I so ill? Face sickness. Oh. oh, you're awake, Ivan. I am dying. Look, I found these. Take one. Oh, go away. <coughs> Go away. But they're tablets for space sickness. It says on the box. Then give me one quickly. I... Paul, you are floating above the floor. Now, there's no gravity. Here, Yomi, you better have one, too. It, it will not go down. Well, it's not easy to swallow without gravity. You'll have to force it down. I cannot. Or well, if it's worth it. I had one. I feel fine now. I'll do anything to stop this awful feeling. It's stuck. Well, here. Look, there's water in this space bottle. Have a drink. Give me my first. What do I come? We can't fall with no gravity. You have to squeeze the bowl. Uh, squeeze it gently. Now swallow hard. Uh, oh, here, Ivan, I can't. Well, try. Oh. Now look, get up gently. You'll hit the ceiling if you don't. When we move, we'll have to use the hand grips on the walls to when we get used to things. Oh, I think I'm starting to feel a bit better. Look, there's Earth. Oh, we must have traveled a long way, Paul. It looks so small. Well, look through the magnifier. The shadowed part's having night. The other half some daylight. All blue and green. And the clouds, they're, they're like bands of cotton wool around us. Oh, Paul, look at the brightness where the sun's glinting on the sea. Look there near the curve. And all around us, the universe, Oma. Space. A black sky filled with stars. Like night all the time. Hey, you too. How are you feeling now, Ivan? Oh, much better. I've switched on the radio. Let's try and pick up Earth. Oh, good idea. We might find out what reaction has been. I would like to know if they plan to follow us. I will switch it to audio. Earth calling. This is Earth calling. Listen. Calling spaceship for it. Answer, please. He's calling us. Should we answer? Oh, we'll be furious at us for taking the ship. Wouldn't it be better not to? Left that note hinting that we were going to Saturn. 
But how about making sure they really believe? But how? Calling spaceship Taurus. Answer, please. This is Earth calling. We could send a message saying we're okay and well on our way to Saturn. Then any pursuit will be sent on the wrong course. Are you agreeable in? I couldn't be. I couldn't bear for us to be chased and brought back like, like naughty school children. And once we've proved that we can get to where we want to, there won't be much that they can say, will there? Well, that's what I feel. Well, go ahead. Okay, Ivan. Switch over to transmission and tell them. Tell them it's going to be Saturn or bust. <laughs> Rocky, for the moment, they seem the best arrangements we can make for chasing the Taurus. If you'll let me know as soon as you're ready for blast off, I... Oh, yes? We've just made contact with the Taurus, sir. They've sent a message that they're headed for Saturn. So, it is Saturn. Uh, are you still in contact? We asked them to keep tuned in, sir. Uh, Rocky, would you have a word with them? Perhaps you can talk them out of this crazy scheme. Well, it's worth trying, sir. Then let's go. The radio room's at the end of this corridor. I think I'll hurry ahead. It's best to make sure. Uh, good man. Um, in this message you received, Rogers, which one of them was speaking? Well, the speaker identified himself as Ivan Cromart, sir. Saturn. That's over 880 million miles away. There aren't more than two or three astro navigators who could compute that sort of course with accuracy. No, oh, the young fools. President, I have just heard the news. Is it true? Have they really contacted the Taurus? Yes, in here, Governor Kromatz. Uh, Rocky Star is speaking to them. Hello, Taurus. Taurus. Hello, Taurus. Can you hear me? Please answer. Taurus. Hello. Star, did you speak with them? Did you persuade them to return? Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but something seems to have gone wrong with their equipment. We haven't been able to raise them at all. Something wrong? Well, they were still in contact when I got here. Then their transmission stopped suddenly. Their wavelength was quite dead. But what could cause such a thing? You don't think the ship... Uh... I'm sure nothing's happened to the ship, Governor. Ah, what do you think has happened, Rocky? Well, it, it's certainly not usual for transmission to blow. Still, with three inexperienced people, well, lots of unusual things could happen. Too many. My son is a very intelligent boy, Mr. Starr. Well, I'm I'm not criticizing his intelligence. Always you speak as if they were nothing but fools. I'm sorry, Mr. Cromart, but intelligence is not enough. It is the most important thing. Well, I, I happen to know how much intelligence is needed for space travel. I do not like your attitude. It is unsympathetic. No, that's unjust, Governor. Don't you think you're perhaps uh, just a little too upset? <sighs> I am sorry, my son's life is in your hands, Rocky Star. Remember that. Excuse me. I, I will go. Oh, he's upset. I hope he doesn't prove too difficult. Yeah, well, we'll just have to try and make allowances. The best thing you can do is to get back to the streak as soon as possible. Well, not necessarily, sir. If those kids are really heading for Saturn, they've started on a long journey. A day, one way or the other, in our takeoff won't make very much difference. But the parents will feel much better once they know you've gone after the tourists. Yes, I know, but Mitch will be getting the streak ready as fast as it's humanly possible, and we can't do a thing until the ship's ready. You could have the use of another craft. There's no other as fast as the streak, sir. And speed is what we'll need if we're to overtake those young hotheads. I'm not really being as casual about things as you may think, President, but, well, I have work to do here yet. Work? Yes, Take me along to the nearest computing machine, will you please? I want to start calculating a really accurate course for Saturn. Oh, it's no use. The radio set is completely dead. But I don't know how it happened. It was when I switched from transmit to receive. But perhaps you should have switched off first. Oh, that's it. You pulled too much power into the circuit. Oh, I'll bet you've blown all the valves. Well, we got our message through anyway. They will now be sure we're headed for Saturn. No one will chase us toward Mars. I don't like it, not having any radio transmission. It means we're completely cut off. 
At least if we'd gotten into trouble, we could have sent out a call for help. We shall have to rely on ourselves, that is all. But we haven't the experience to. Poor. There can be no doubt or fear allowed. We talked about this trip and felt sure we could meet all emergencies. We must continue to believe that. I'm sorry, Ivan. Not myself, I guess. I'm still a bit sick. It's this business of having no gravity. It's almost horrible knowing that no direction is up or down. It will pass, that feeling. There are cabins at the rear. Go and lie down for a while, Ilma. I think I will. Oh, I'm sure I'll never get used to this floating. There are elastic straps across the bunk. Be sure to fasten yourself down with them. Thanks, I will. Perhaps you would like to lie down, Paul? No, I think I'll be better on my feet. Ivan, don't think I'm panicking or anything, but hadn't we better go over the course calculations again? You said you were sure all your figures were right. I know, but it's a long way to Mars. Just a small error could land us almost to any... What's that? A warning of some kind. Yeah, but what kind? I'm not sure. Check the instrument panel quickly. Oh, we should have gotten more familiar with everything before we... Oh, here, Ivan, look. There's a, a light flashing on and off. It's on the panel marked radar. Let me see. That must be radar warning. That would mean something ahead of us. Switch on the telescreen, quick. I am not sure which switch... Oh, not that one. No. Oh, which one? Can... There it is. The screen's lighting up. There's something showing. Asteroid. It's an asteroid coming towards us. It'll crash right into us. What are we... Of course. Change course. Change course, but how? To the right. The right, Ivan. Deflector rockets. Yes, but which firing button? Here. Main rockets. Deflectors. TBTL. This looks like the one. But does main rockets refer to that button or this? This one. Press it. We must be sure. Oh, press it, Ivan. Press it. But it may not. Look at the screen. Look, it's almost on us. Why is it the Keep away, Ilma. Ivan, if you won't press that button, I will. But Paul... For heaven's sake, look at the screen. Ivan! All right, then. Here goes. Lie flat. Down, quickly. <laughs> Paul and Ilma grab frantically at the nearest handholds. Ivan stabs fearfully at one of the black buttons on the control panel, holds tightly to his seat and gazes as if hypnotized at the huge image of the asteroid on the screen. From somewhere comes the muffled thunder of rockets firing. But are they the correct ones? What will be the result of this desperate action? There is tense drama ahead, so be sure you hear the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> In space, an adventure with Rocky Star. When three youngsters borrow the spaceship Taurus and leave Earth on a joyride, Rocky is sent for in the utmost urgency. It is believed the runaway ship is heading for distant, unexplored Saturn. And as soon as the streak is overhauled, Rocky is to set out in pursuit. But the Taurus is actually following a course plotted for Mars. And on board, Ilma, Paul and Ivan are very pleased at the way they have fooled people on Earth. But suddenly the radar warns of the approach of a wandering asteroid. Ivan leans over the complicated instrument panel, but can't decide which control will turn the ship. Finally, when collision seems unavoidable, he stabs frantically at a firing button. There is the distant thunder of atomic jets. The Taurus shudders violently, and the three find themselves flattened against the left-hand wall of the control cabin. Ivan! Ivan, what's happening? I'm not sure. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, you kicked me right in the stomach. I couldn't help it. What's happening to the ship? I'm waiting for the crash. We can't be wrecked now. We can't. Can you see the telescreen? Yes, yes. That asteroid. It's huge right on us. Oh, no! It's on the light of the screen, slipping sideways. It's gone. Wait for the crash. I can't bear this. Nothing's happened. And then we've moved out of its path. You mean we're safe, Paul? That must have been the right button for the deflector rockets, after all. I said it was, Ivan. Look here, through the window. Can you see it, Ivan? Yes. There it goes. Oh, it's huge. We wouldn't have lasted five seconds if we'd crashed into that thing. Yes, strange to see it gliding away like that, without a sound. I, I think I'll sit down. I feel all shaky. Oh, me too. 
But for the sake of Ike, Ivan, why did you have to wait so long before pushing that firing button? I was trying to make sure if I had fired the main propulsion motors in mistake, it would have been the finish of us. But it was marked clearly enough. It didn't seem clear to me. Oh, don't let's argue about it, boys. We dodged the thing, and that's all that's important. Those deflector jets certainly swung us hard. I thought I was going straight through the side. No wonder. There is a lever here for regulating power. It was set for full. Oh, just as well. When you did, when you saw how close that plan to it was, at least we're still on our way to Mars. Yes, it is good. Oh, the course. What's up now, Van? We're not on our way to Mars. We are now traveling an entirely different course. You're right. Well, then we'd better get back on course quick. Let me see. That will mean firing the other deflector rockets to bring us around again. Mm, looks like it's this button here. Low power this time. Hold tight, everyone. That's more like it. How far are we off course, Paul? Will it take us long to get back again? It shouldn't. We will swing left until... But wait. There is nothing to judge by out in space. We can surely judge it some way. Oh. Well, I wouldn't know. Well, we could tell by how long we've been traveling on the new course. What time was it when Ivan fired the deflector? I don't know. Nor I. And another thing. How much did we alter course? The astral compass will give us that. But we've altered course again. Oh, what a fool I am. I should have known that before checking the compass. I am sorry. Well, I reckon it's our fault, too. We should have thought of it. It must be the sickness or the weightlessness. I know I feel half dopey. But we can work out where we are, can't we? We don't know how far we altered course and how far we have traveled on the course. What direction we are traveling in, I have no idea. That's what I felt. We haven't the experience. Poor. I'm oh, sorry. Well, let's think. How do spacemen find out where they are? Don't they take a sighting on two stars and work it out from that? Well, something like old-time sailors. You are best at calculations, Paul. Try it. But... All right. But listen, you two. There's just one thing I want to make clear before I do. Yes? Well, I'm not much more than a beginner at this sort of calculation. I can't guarantee the results. But if you can't do it, that... That means we're, we're lost, Paul. I'm not giving up yet, Elmer. But it's a decided possibility. Instead of heading nicely for Mars... I'd say we're lost in space. Paul takes up a navigating instrument and walks to the observation dome. But far away on the distant blue star that is Earth, there is no suspicion of what has happened aboard the Taurus. At the very instant that Paul is nervously trying to get a fix on two stars... Mitz clambers into the control cabin of the streak to find Rocky half-buried amongst the complicated control gear. Hey, Rocky boy, how are you making out? Everything okay? Uh, so far, Mitch. Why till I get my head out of hey, here? Hey, watch out for that steel strike to my bump! Oh! You did. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! I always forget that thing. Yeah, I don't. I learn from bitter experience. Oh! Hmm. Oh, those new blast tubes, how long will they be before they're fitted? Oh, uh, not long. Yeah, but how long? Relax, pal. They should be fixed in a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Check the tail fins? Yep. Radiation yep. shields? Methane tanks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, look, stop worrying, will you, Rocky? You gotta finish up a first-class case of space jitters, if you're not careful. <laughs> Just say that again. A first-class <laughs> right, case of it, space yeah. jitters. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, bitch. Oh, but, you know, seriously, when I think of those inexperienced youngsters out there in space... Yeah, I know. Oh, look, don't worry, Rocky. We'll, we'll be after them at least 12 hours ahead of what I thought. Ah, good man. Now, how are we going to find one spaceship in the middle of millions of miles and nothing beats me? Well, our one hope is knowing that they're headed for Saturn. Yeah, that's for sure. At least that gives us a, a general direction. Mm. The electronic boys are fitting a new radar with twice the range of the other one. Yeah, well, look, I, I'd better get back to those blast tubes. Mm -hmm. Sure wish they didn't get so radioactive. Sitting inside a shielded control cabin and doing everything by mechanical donkey. Yeah, well, it, it ain't nearly as fast as... We could just walk up and wrestle with those things properly. Yeah, huh? well, you just stay in that cabin. I don't want you hit by radiation. Well, don't worry, pal. Neither do I. Well, see you later. Yeah, right. Oh, where's Di? Uh, he's getting the load down in Saturn. Mm -hmm. So we'll know what gear we need. Hey, Rocky. Yep? And you better let the president of the Solar Council know those tubes will be right inside two hours. Oh, uh, I still got a lot to do here yet, Mitch. Well, please yourself, pal. He said he wanted to know. Yeah, um, uh, all right. Okay, I'll see to it. That's my boy. Yeah, red tape reports. 
Oh, well, they foot the bill, so I suppose they're entitled to know. I'd better get down there now. I'm glad you'll be ready so soon, Rocky. It's quite a relief. Well, at least you'll have some good news for the parents. Yes, when I send them the information, it may stop their frantic radiograms for a while. Uh, but, but see, uh, uh, come along here. There's something I'd like to show you. Well, anything to do with that uh, mystery substance we're supposed to find? Yes, it is. Uh, through here. Mm-hmm. Uh, go in. It's a special little dark room. Uh, sit down over there. Right, thank you. I've brought you here, Rocky, to show you a spectrograph. Of this, uh, uh, what was it? Um, heavy plutonium, I think you said. Heavy plutonium. A742. You know the usual way of finding out what substances are on the various stars and planets? By spectroscope? Yes, as you know, it breaks the light up into a series of different colours, which vary according to the substance reflecting the light. Mm -hmm. Well, here I have a spectrograph of heavy plutonium, A742. I'll project it onto the screen for you. And uh, this uh, colour pattern is what we'll be looking for? Yes. You'll take a spectroscope with you and analyse the light from planets and stars that we can see only dimly on Earth. Uh, Just one moment while I switch the lights off. Uh, Switch on the projector, will you? There. On the screen, you see the spectrum pattern you must look for. But I warn you, Rocky, it's an exceedingly rare one. Hmm. Then it may take years to find. All I can say is that I earnestly hope not. Look, just what is behind this, Mr. President... Is it important? Very important. May I ask why? Rocky, I know this will sound strange, especially when we're relying on you to find this, this thing for us. But I'm simply not allowed to tell you. Not allowed? This is a matter that has only been discussed by the Supreme Committee of the Solar Council. That means only five men in the world know about it. It's something of such tremendous importance for mankind... But it was decided that for the moment, no one, not even you, must know why we want A-742. Well, sir, the Solar Council doesn't usually mistrust me. They don't now. But this is number one security in the world today. Something that must not leak out. So it remains secret even from you. And if we can't locate it for you? You must locate it, Rocky. No matter what happens, it must be found. This much, at least, I can tell you. If you fail in what we're asking, sometime during the next 20 years, mankind will face the greatest cataclysm it has ever known. A catastrophe so great, it could mean the end of the human race. Rocky swings in his seat toward the quiet voice speaking from the darkness. He sees the president's face lit by a stray beam of light from the projector, and it is deadly serious. Uneasily, Rocky looks again at the bands of color on the screen. Can they really represent the safety of all mankind? And where can the precious element be found? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost! In space! Lost in space! An adventure with Rocky Star! Rocky and Mitch are hastily preparing the street for an urgent journey into space. They are to try to find three youngsters who have borrowed a spaceship and have horrified the authorities by radioing back their intention of trying to reach far-distant Saturn. But there is also a secret side to the mission. Rocky is shown the spectrum of a certain type of heavy plutonium which must be found somewhere in the universe. Failure may mean destruction of the human race. While Rocky studies the spectrum pattern on the screen of a darkroom, Mitch is supervising the fitting of new blast tubes to the streak. Seated in the cabin of a robot servicing donkey, he gives instructions to the man at the control. 
Right. Grass, we've got a good grip on that tube. Now switch over to Hall and pull it clear. Right. Yeah, I wish they could find some way of preventing those tubes from getting so radioactive. Yes, it makes things awkward not being able to get near them to harvest it. Sure thing, Pat. This gadget's a mighty clever piece of work the way it does things, but giggling grasshopper sitting in a shielded cabin and using mechanical arms and stuff. Isn't as easy as walking right up to a thing and getting the grips with it, huh? Yes, I know. Hey, this tube's coming clear. She's clear. Swing it across over to the right with the others. Right out. Let her go. Ah, looks okay. Only one more to go now. Swing her back. Now, be sure and get a good grip of those mechanical grabs, Pat. If I remember right, this one was tight to get in. That's it. You've got a good grip on it. Right, I'll put the strain on. It's not moving. I know the crummy thing was going to give us trouble. You on full power? Yes. Looks like I'll have to get another donkey to lend a hand. Keep the strain on that uh, cable while I go and get one, huh? Right. If bet you get out the left-hand door of the cab. You'll be close enough to pick up radiation on the right. Yeah, I'll do that. Like an X-24, it's not been used. It's over beyond the strip. Yeah, I know. Ah, look at that cable. Full strain and on a move out of that thing. Wood stick just when we were just... <laughs> look out, Mitch! It's coming here! Giggling grasshoppers! Swing it towards you! Run, Mitch! That hunk of metal hits! I have a hope! Mitch! Feverishly, the man in the control cabin works to drag the tube of deadly radioactive metal away from Mitch. The machinery whirs. The tube swings into the air and sweeps slowly away to a safe distance. But when it is gone, there is still the form of Mitch, lying in a crumpled heap. Rocky is leaving the dark room with the president when the news is brought to him by Di. He excuses himself at once and hurries to the hospital. On the way, he asks anxious questions. The blast tube actually knocked him over, Di. And he must have got a big dose of radiation. Yes. Oh, oh poor Mitch. How did it happen? Well, the tube came away suddenly. Mm -hmm. And they thought it was stuck. It swung towards him on the end of the cable. He oh. ran, but it knocked him over. The donkey man dragged it away as fast as he could. Oh, it sounds grim. He is in the accident ward here? Yes. All right, come on. Then. Which, which doctor is looking after there him? There he is. He's just coming out of that room. Oh. Uh, doctor... Uh, doctor, my friend Mitch, H how is he? Well, I'm afraid he received a very strong exposure to radiation from that blast tube. Almost strong enough to be lethal. Doctor, you don't mean that Mitch is going to die? Well, we'll do everything we can to save him, but please don't hope for too much. The chances of surviving radiation such as he experienced are very small indeed. I and Rocky look at each other in deep concern. Their feelings are matched by the worry of three youngsters far out in space who are trying to find out just where their borrowed spaceship is taking them. Well, Paul, what answer do you get to your calculations? I can't understand it. Aren't we back somewhere near our original course? We should be, Elmer. But according to the calculations, we will come nowhere near Mars. Surely we can't be completely out of reach of oh, I must have made a mistake when I worked out the original course. Either that or we said it wrongly before blast-off. Then where are we going, Paul? Wait, Elmer, before we discuss that, surely it must be possible to change our course for Mars? I can't figure it. Everything has to be worked out with how far the planet's traveling and where it will be at a certain time. On Earth, that was fairly easy to do. But up here with nothing but space all around, I I'm completely lost. Then where are we headed, Paul? I want to know. Well, from the fix I managed to get and the calculations I've made, it seems the only planet we're likely to come anywhere near is is Saturn. Saturn? Now, I've checked and checked the figures, and I'm sure that's right. <laughs> There's a joke. We fooled them on Earth into thinking that we were going to Saturn so they wouldn't follow us to Mars. And that's the very place we're heading. Saturn. Everything's so mixed up. Oh, I'm scared. No good getting scared, Elena. We've got to keep our heads. Well, I've worked our position out as best I can. What do you want to do about it? Oh, Saturn's so far... Couldn't we change course again and maybe try and turn back? Perhaps that would be best. Oh, I don't know so much. 
I have to do all the calculating. And I tell you, I just can't rely on the things out here in space. If we keep changing courses, no knowing where we'll finish up. We can't keep on traveling away from the Earth millions of miles to Saturn. Your figures may even be wrong there. We may not be heading that way at all. No, Ivan. That's one thing I'm sure of. If we can't make Mars, perhaps we could head for one of the other planets. Venus, for instance. That's all too risky. I don't know enough about computing space courses. Look, the one thing people on Earth know about us is that we said we were heading for Saturn. All right, now we are heading that way. Surely it's best to keep on as we are. At least there'll be a chance of being found if they send out a search ship from Earth. Mm, That sounds sensible. Put it to the vote. What do you say, Emma? I say thank goodness we left that false message about going to Saturn. Don't let's do anything that may get us lost. Wandering around through space for years and years until Mm, we die. Don't think of it. Well, then we go on as we are, headed towards Saturn. Yes. Uh, Wait. I will see if I can find it in the telescope reflector. Somewhere straight ahead, it should be, Paul. Yeah. Mm, Focus. What is better now? Swing across. Yes, I see it. That at least is one planet there's no mistake in. Oh, let me look. Oh, it's beautiful with all those rings around it. It's still small and far away. I think it looks distant and cold and, and frightening. Nearly 900 million miles from Earth. 900 million? Oh, all this doesn't seem such fun as it did at first. I do hope they're sending a ship from Earth after us. But back on Earth, preparations are halted by tragedy. Rocky and I are standing by a hospital bed and looking on the still form of Mitch. Oh, Rocky. He hasn't moved once. And he looks so ill. Yes. Oh, I don't know, Di. I just can't believe a thing like this could happen to Mitch. To think he's lying here, swinging between life and death. Rocky, let's leave for a while. I just can't bear standing and watching him. All right, Di. Oh, surely they can do something. Something more than they are. We mustn't give way, Rocky. We must try and keep calm. Calm? That's Mitch in there, Di. He's travelled millions of miles of space with us. He's laughed with us. He's fought with us and fought by us and... How can I keep calm? I know how you feel, Rocky. I feel the same way. But the doctor promised they'd do everything they could to save him. Yes, I... I'm sorry, Di. Oh, come on, let's get out of this place for a while. I never did like hospitals. Ah... Sun and fresh air. Uh, That's a bit better. Although the sun doesn't seem right, knowing Mitch. Rocky, who's this man coming? Do Hmm? you know him? All right, it's Cromart. Wilhelm Cromart, governor of the Federated States of Europe. His son was one of the three who took that spaceship. Rocky Star! The Solar Council tells me the streak is going to be ready for blast-off much earlier than you hoped. I am so happy to hear it. Oh, uh, this is your assistant? The scientist. Wilhelm Kromat, die. How do you do? do? The uh, blast tube should be nearly replaced by now, Mr. Kromat. Good, good. Then you will take off then, in an hour or two? Well, I'm sorry, but I can't say. You can't say? What talk is this? If the ship is ready, naturally you will go. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, but there may be a delay. Delay? Why should there be a delay? I demand that you take off as soon as possible. At the very first moment, I demand it. I don't think demand is the best word to use, Mr. Cromart. Uh, Rocky should have explained, Mr. Cromart. The other member of our crew, a very close friend, is in hospital here with radiation sickness. I am sorry. But surely crew members can be replaced. I will see the president of the council about it. I will say you are to leave in two to three hours. I'm sorry, Mr. Cromart, but I'd be glad if you'd leave it for a while. Give us till tomorrow. Tomorrow? With my son lost somewhere out there in space? Have you no feeling, Star? Yes, sir, I have feelings. I don't believe it. You were given this job by the highest authority, and I demand that you leave at once. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't leave until I know what's going to happen to Mitch. On behalf of Rankin, Steiberg, and myself, I demand you get a substitute and leave at once. I'm sorry, but the answer is no. You seem to forget who you are talking to, Rocky Star. Will you do as I ask? Very well. We are not without power in this world. I swear, if you do not leave as I ask, we shall use all our influence to have you grounded. 
You will never fly a spaceship again. For the last time, will you take off at once? Rocky looks at the angry, unhappy man and remains silent. Kromatz glares at him a moment, then without another word hurries toward the communications office to set his threat into action. Rocky frowns. He knows Kromatz could well carry out his threat, but he cannot desert Mitch now. He looks back to the hospital. Will his friend really die? There are unexpected developments ahead, so don't miss the next exciting chapter of the Rocky Star Adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! space. An adventure adventure with with Rocky Star! The situation has worsened since it was first discovered that three youngsters had borrowed a spaceship and gone off on their own. Departure of the streak is being delayed by an accident. Struck by one of the streak's blast tubes, Mitch is in hospital in danger of death from radiation sickness. Rocky decides he can't possibly leave in search of the Taurus until he knows what's going to happen to his friend. Upset by worry over his son and the lost Taurus, Wilhelm Kromartz threatens to use his influence to have Rocky grounded permanently. Well, there he goes to the com- communication office, Di. In a few minutes, there'll be messages going out to all these influential friends. Oh, Rocky, if they bring enough pressure to bear, you really will be grounded. Well, I couldn't go off without knowing whether Mitch is going to live or die. No, I wouldn't expect you to. Perhaps no one will take any notice of him. Who else could go in search of the tourists? Well, there are other good spacemen, Di. Yes, but none of them have ever been held in such high regard by the Solar Council as you, Rocky. Well, maybe someone will after this. Anyway, never mind about me. It's it's Mitch that I'm worried about. If Kromartz has realized how worried we are, perhaps he wouldn't be so unreasonable. Oh, poor Mitch. Die. you're a scientist. Now think. Think carefully over all the latest experiments with gamma rays. Is there any recent development that, that might counteract radiation? Rocky, there was a paper recently. Mm-hmm. Yes, Poulsen it was. Something about synthetic powder and deep ultraviolet rays. Oh, but was it any good? Well, he claimed it was, but there hadn't been enough experiments for complete proof. Oh, never mind about that. Come on, I'm going to find that doctor. Yes, I read the paper, Rocky. But as Di says, it hasn't been proved. There could be a great danger of killing the patient. Doctor, I I know how cautious you medical people are, but from what Di's told me, it's a treatment that could perhaps succeed. Isn't that true? Well, there are possibilities. Well, then please use it on Mitch. Perhaps they haven't the powder here. Yes, we have a small amount. It's used for other purposes, but I don't like to take the responsibility of trying something that... Still isn't proved a cure. Well, then I'll take the responsibility on Mitch's behalf, Doctor. I'm sure he'd be glad to try the treatment, wouldn't he, Di? He certainly would. He'd say, giggling grasshoppers, get on with it, Doc, and give a man a chance. Oh, Doctor, please try. Well, I don't know. He's so near to death. I don't suppose the risk will be very much greater. All right. Come with me. We'll see what can be done. powder has been dissolved in water. I have to inject it in his arms. Syringe nurse. Mm, Cure. Oh, Rocky. He's so still. It's almost as if he's dead already. Oh, this has just got to work. There, that's done. Take the instruments away, will you, nurse? Cure. Now, Rocky, help me wheel the ray machine a little closer to the bed. It's very kind of you to let us see this done, doctor. It's not usual. I know how much you three mean to each other. Right, thank you. Bo, just the ray over the bed, will you? Yeah, that should be right. Now. Oh. 
Now, the theory is that dissolved powder circulates right through his body, and the ray reacts on it and counteracts the effects of his exposure to radiation. I see. But you see, if the reaction's too strong, you'll kill him. We'd better watch him carefully. He still looks as if he's dead. Yes, I'm tall. I think he moved. I didn't notice anything. But how long does it take? It, it's terrible waiting. I just don't know. Oh, there, Doctor, there, he moved. Uh, no doubt this time he's uh, moving violently. Uh, all right, boy. Midget tail fans, I'll twist it in the baggage. The doctor is thrashing uh, around violently. Turn a be strong reaction. Uh, I'll hold him down. Fine, all right, Doctor. All right, Gorga. Uh, I can swim now. better than... It's burning! It's burning! Ah! Oh, easy, Midge, easy. Easy, boy. Doctor? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Rocky. I just don't know. Uh, it's boiling water. Oh, Ronnie. Oh, I'm boiling. Oh, Rocky, I can't stand it. Oh, I'm boiling. Uh, breeze. Oh, nice cold breeze. Oh, oh, it's lovely. He's calming down now. Mitch. Oh, Mitch, old pal, are you all right? Oh, floating on the wind. It's so easy. Good amount of work. Yeah, uh, work. Uh, mm. His eyes are open. They're not focused yet. Hey, Mitch. Mitch, don't. Hi, Rocky boy. What's wrong? Rocky, he knows you. Yeah, that's oh, me, Mitch. Mitch. What, 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 what's a, a gizmo you got there buzzing at me? Doctor, he's all right. Yes. Yes, it seems the experiment's a success. We can turn the ray off now. Say, what, what goes on? What's all the fuss about, anyway? Well, you... You've had bad radiation exposure, Mitch. It's been a close call. Oh, yeah. I remember the blast tube. I feel fine. Wonderful. Say, this isn't heaven or something, is it? I'm not dead. No, my friend, I'm very relieved to say that you're very much alive. In fact, judging by your reactions, it appears you're almost completely back to normal. Oh, that's certainly a relief to me. To you? And what do you think I'm feeling? Relief? <laughs> Now, let me out of bed. No, not yet, Mitch. An hour or two's rest, and then I'll give you a check just to make uh, sure. Doc, don't give me this bad routine. I feel fine. Doctor's orders, Mitch. Yeah, but now I never gotta... mind trying to get up, Mitch. You stay just where you are. Uh, yeah, maybe I will up there. The old noggin swimming like a bowl of fish. All right, I'll take a rest. Don't worry. Your friends can see you in a couple of hours. You promise? Mm-hmm. Promise. Come on, Rocky. Die. We'll leave him for a while. Yes. Well, see you later, Mitch. All right, but don't you forget. Well, the experiment was a success. Quite a relief for me, I can tell you. Thank you for trying it, Doctor. We can't say how much it means to us. That's all right. Well, better get on with my work. See you two later. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Thanks, Doctor. Bye-bye. Oh, I die. That, that treatment was terrific. Almost miraculous. Thank goodness you thought of it. Oh, thank goodness it worked. But what now, Rock? Well, I think I'll try and find Chromats and put things right there. I have a feeling he'll forget about his threats when I tell him that we'll probably be right for blast off in an hour or two. But every hour is taking the Taurus further and further from Earth. In her control cabin, Ilma, Paul, and Ivan stand by the instrument panel. And once again, try to decide whether they're doing the right thing. I tell you, we'd be fools to all the course again. I didn't like sea navigation where you're bound to strike land sooner or later. But what good can it do us, Paul, traveling further and further away? All the time we are leaving help behind us. I feel that way too, Paul. What good can you hope to gain from changing course again? Well, perhaps we may come to a planet nearer Earth. It's not so easy, Elmer. Think back of what you learned of the universe when you were studying astronomy. It's mostly huge stretches of empty space. The planets are like grains of sand, single grains, miles apart. How can we rely on blindly hitting a planet under those conditions? I don't think we should try and get somewhere blindly. But if we turn back towards Earth, we'll have a much better chance of being found. You talk about turning back towards Earth as if it was easy. How do you propose to do it? We just have to turn round, wouldn't we? Of course, then pick up Earth and set out a course for it. How are you going to pick out Earth? 
you know what it looks like from this part of the universe? I am not a fool, Paul. Of course I know what Earth looks like. If you believe it's that easy, then all I can say is you are a fool. Don't you talk to me like that. I'm trying to get some sense into your thick head. Don't you talk to me like that. <coughs> Brian, you... Hey, Brian, you knocked him right across the control cabin. Paul, I'm sorry. I did not mean... I forgot there was no gravity. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Okay, but don't do it again. Oh... He sure hit this bulkhead with a thud. We simply must not quarrel like this. We're in a bad enough spot as it is without quarreling. You are right, Ilma. Paul, why do you say I could not find Earth if we turn around? Come to the observation dome and I'll show you. Now, that's where we've come from. You just tell me which one of all those stars is the Earth. Well, I... Uh, let me see. Well, it would be... I see what you mean, Paul. You can't tell which one? Have a look for yourself. You see, Ivan? It's pretty easy on Earth to pick out which is Mars and Venus and so on, because the sky always looks the same, and we know where we are. We've never looked at things from this angle before. Yes, you are right. If we turn back, we will be more hopelessly lost than ever. Paul is right, Ilma. Then we just have to go on and on till we get to Saturn. But what then? At least they know on Earth that we're heading this way. It's our best chance of being picked up. There's the radar alarm again. Oh, no. What is it this time, I wonder? Oh, Ivan, I can see it. Look over there. It's a spaceship. A spaceship. Where, Elma? A ship, then we're found. Where is it? Elma, where? Oh, I see it. Look, Ivan, there. Yes, yes, I see it. But, Paul, we're overtaking her. I wonder what ship she is. Can you see the name? There is something on the side. Hand me the glass. Here. Now. P. E. G. Pegasus. What? Pegasus, are you sure? Oh, yes, that's what it says. Why? The Pegasus went out nearly a hundred years ago and has never been heard of since. That's a derelict out there. A ghost spaceship. The three stand gazing at the meteor-battered hulk of the long-lost spaceship. And as they look, each wonders whether in another hundred years, their craft too will be floating endlessly through space. Can the streak possibly overtake and find them? And what strange adventures lie ahead before it does so? There's a tremendous store of peril and action ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling episode of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> In, in space, an adventure with Rocky Star! Ilma, Paul, and Ivan are finding their space joyride has lost its carefree thrill. When they fail completely to recognize Earth from among the teeming myriads of stars behind them, they know that any attempt at turning back would leave them more hopelessly lost than ever. All they can do is remain on their known course. So now, with controls untouched, the Taurus plunges ever further away from the planet that is their home. But suddenly the radar warning sounds and they sight a spaceship nearby. But all hope of rescue fades when the name on its side proves it to be a craft that was lost almost a hundred years before. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the streak is at last ready for departure. Rocky, Mitch and Di walk from their car to where she waits on the launching slab. Ah, good old streak, man. It's good to see her, even though she did nearly write me off. You're sure you're all right, Mitch? Well, quit worrying, will you, Di? Well, I only I want... know, I know, and I appreciate that, but you're spoiling my big moment. Your big moment? When I see the streak standing waiting like that, her nose pointing up towards space. Ah, it always does something to me. <laughs> oh, I remember the first time. I gave you the nervous horrors. Yeah, but, well, uh, <laughs> that was the first time, but, uh, but now... Yeah, listen, we've uh, wasted enough time already, Mitch. You climb straight through that hatch and get into your seat ready for blast-off. Okay, it's a fine way to talk to a sick man, I must say. Convalescence is over, Mitch. Oh, you ain't kidding. <laughs> I'll help you go, Di. Oh, I'm so glad Cromart's apologized for his threats to you, Rocky. Yes, yeah, so am I. Oh, it, it was just worry over his son that was the trouble. Well, we must bring those crazy kids back safely. Yes, if we can. Well, this is it. Check seat. Mm-hmm, okay. Close airlock. Air 
Airlock closed. Check course alignment. Course set, okay. Merch, power unit okay? All dials checked, Rocky boy. Yeah, stand by. Standing by. Saturn, here we come! The street trembles, rises slowly above the white-hot glare of her atomic jets. Then rapidly she is accelerating and the Earth is dropping away and away. But as she hurtles in a thundering curve upward through Earth's atmosphere, far out in space, a bold decision is being made. Yes, it is the Pegasus, all right. I will slacken our speed so we move along together. A touch of the forward rocket should do it. Be prepared. Everyone all right? Well, thank goodness I had a tight grip or I'd have gone through the observation window. We don't seem to be passing it now. Let me see. Yes, we're drifting side by side. Oh, doesn't it give you an awful feeling to look at her? To think she's been drifting around in space like that all that time. Uh, excuse me, I want to get at this locker. Thanks. Hey, that's where the space suits are kept. What are you going to do, Ivan? Have a look at that ship. You're coming? But how will we get aboard? Didn't you notice her hatch? It's been half torn down by a meteor or something. Mm, do you think we really should? Why not? We're out here to see all we can. Think of solving the Pegasus mystery. Besides, we may find valves for our radio. Well, that's an idea. Hang on till I get into one of these suits. And I'll come too. <laughs> Good girl. I'm going down to the airlock. When you are both ready, join me there. set you two? Yes, yeah. Ivan. When we put the helmets on, we'll have to use intercom radio to talk. The control switch is on the helmet there. There's no air pressure out there in space. We'll need to inflate these suits, won't we? Yes. The dial just inside the helmet shows the right pressure. Regulate it with the valve. Right on with the helmets. Then I'll work the airlock door control. All right, you two? Yes, okay. Ivan, okay. Then here goes. Ivan, I'm scared. No need to be. Use your booster jets and you'll float out into space. Gently, though. How do you know all this is right, Ivan? I did a trip to the moon once, remember? Come on. Ivan! Ivan! She's shooting away. She's used too much power. I'll get her. Ivan, help! I'm coming. Here, grab my hands. How do we get back? How do we get back? Relax. Now, oh. hang on. I'll use the jets to get us back. Hang on. There. See? Gentle does it. We're going back. Okay, Ilma. Oh, it was such an awful feeling. Drifting away like that and nothing all around me. Nothing. Let's get in one of the ships quickly. You've got a good grip on the edge of the Pegasus hatch, Paul? Yeah. I'm going to blast us across to you. Catch us as we drift by. Right. Here we come. Ready? Right. Easy. Got you. Oh, <laughs> nothing to it. You get in through the hole and we'll follow. It's a tight squeeze. Careful your oxy cylinders don't catch. Well, all right. Okay, Ilma. Yes, thanks. Funny-looking craft, isn't she? They've learned a lot in the last hundred years. To think we're the first people who've stood on this deck in all that time. Now, don't you start getting spooky on us. Come on, let's explore. There is no telling what we will find on a ship as old as this. Come on. As the three space-suited figures drift cautiously along the central corridor of the old spaceship, far away the streak has left Earth's atmosphere. While Mitch makes a routine check of all dials, Rocky and I are sitting gazing at patterned lines of colors on a little screen. Rocky switches on the light. Well, that's it, Di. Now you know what the spectrograph of heavy uranium A742 looks like. I wonder why the Solar Council consider it so important. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. They wanted to stop a catastrophe that could wipe out the human race. Couldn't it be needed to fight an epidemic of disease, could it? Oh, it could be. Though I'd have said its best use would be as a superatomic fuel, but mm -hmm. then we neither of us know much about it. <laughs> uh, one thing's certain, it isn't going to be easy to find from what's been said. Looks as if I'm going to be pretty busy with that spectroscope. And we'll be just as busy on radar trying to find the Taurus. I don't like to say this, Rocky, but... Oh, we're out of space and no one else can hear us, so... Well, it 
It seems pretty hopeless, doesn't it, oh, Rocky? Di, we just can't think that, or we won't try hard enough. I've got the streak on full speed. She's faster than the Taurus, so we have a good chance of overtaking them. Yes, but if they're not on the same course... Oh, I, I don't know yet, Di, I don't know. But we can't leave them to wander in space and just... What, what on earth? Hey, Di! Di, are you all right? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Oh, what happened? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. The warning bell. Yes, damage to the hull. Something must have hit us. Yes. The warning lights over the control panel. Air loss, heat loss, safety bulkhead. Now they're all on. Hey, Rocky, die. You okay? Rocky. Yes, Mitch. Here. Giggling grasshoppers. I thought we really had it. What was it, a meteorite? Yes, probably. Wait till I check the course. Rocky, the damage. Yes. You'd better have a look, Mitch. I must check our course in case we've been deflected. Yeah, there's no sense in us getting lost. All right, I'll grab a space suit and have a look-see. Good. You better hope for the best, you two, because me, I'm fearing the worst. It's just as well you checked course, Rocky. Yes. Course is adjusted now, Di. Hey. Hey. Hey, the airlock light just came on. Come on, let's go down and meet Mitch. Oh, we would collect a meteorite at this stage. Yeah. Everything seems to be against us in this job, Rocky. Oh, well, don't worry, Di. We've battled through worse than this before. We'll get through okay. Well, the uh, airlock's closed from this side. Yeah, so I noticed. Hey, red light's on, though. Mitch must be in there now. Ah, there goes the pressure. Yes, he's opening up. Hey, Mitch, I'll give you a handoff with your helmet. Uh, 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 thanks, chicken. Well, Mitch, tell us the news. Well, it's, uh, it's not so good, Rocky. Hey? I'd say we was luckier than the Christmas turkeys that got away. Well, tell us, what's the extent of the damage? Well, it was a nice big meteorite, see? But it went right through us, just fired of the atomic motors. The motors? The... Hey, if they were hit... Yeah, I know. Now, relax, relax. Don't go blowing your top. They uh, weren't hit. Oh. They're all right. Oh, that's one good thing anyway. Bulkhead slide over the hold? Yeah. But the, the hull's so weak that if we change course or, or land and atmosphere, it'll... Uh, it, it won't take the strain. Wow. Oh. Well, I... Well, we just have to try and repair it. Now you're on a ball, kid. That's for sure. Believe your Uncle Mitch... If we can't fix it out here in space, we'll never get home to Earth again. Mitch makes his statement, and Rocky's jaw clenches as he moves toward the Streak's workshop. Little does he know the danger that will attend their attempt at repairs on the badly damaged hull. There is peril and action ahead. So don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. At last, the streak has left Earth in search of the Taurus and its three joyriders. The search promises to be very difficult, but it's a satisfaction to Rocky knowing that they're on their way. This satisfaction is short-lived. Suddenly, there is a rending crash as a meteorite strikes the streak. When Mitch puts on a spacesuit and investigates, he comes back with the news that the hull has been seriously weakened. Yeah, I'll pass right through the hull, Rocky. Uh, but the bulkhead slide over the hull's all right. Sure, but the hull looks so weakened. She, she'd never take the strain of changing course or, or landing in an atmosphere. Rocky, that sounds really serious. It certainly does. We'll have to repair it out here in space. Yeah, well, if we don't, none of us will see home and mama again. All right, then let's do something about it. Mitch, in the workshop store, there are sheets of hull metal. Yeah. You and I get them here to the airlock. Mm -hmm. I'll get a couple of space suits for Di and myself. Right, Rocky boy. What are you going to use, Rocky? Heat rays? Well, we'll take the sheets of metal out through the airlock, get them in place over the damaged part of the hull, 
Then weld them into place with heat ray guns. And weld a couple of ribs underneath for extra strength, huh? Mm -hmm. Right. It's going to be tricky work, but if we're careful, we should manage. Rocky, we just got to manage. All right, Mitch. Let's get started. I'll see you both back here. Hurrying to the control deck, Rocky reduces streak speed. Then, dragging spacesuits out of a locker, prepares to work on his ship. Meanwhile, far out towards Saturn, other spacesuited figures are active. In the heart of the long lost derelict, the Pegasus, Ilma, Paul, and Ivan drift along in cautious exploration. Suddenly, as the passageway takes a slight turn, Paul's voice comes excitedly over the intercom. There's a flight of steps here. Look, perhaps they lead upward to the control cabin. It all feels so eerie, like being in a tomb. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, do we go up? May as well. I will lead. In my next, you follow, right? Oh, this gives me the creeps. We're climbing a steel ladder, but there's no sound. Well, there's no air in here to carry sound. I am at the top. Give me your hand. Uh, oh, thanks, Ivan. What's up there? It seems to lead to the control deck. Come on. Oh! Look! A man! There's a man! Where? In that alcove, in a space suit, sitting at the desk! She's right. Come over and look. Oh, no! No, I'm scared. Nothing to be scared of, Ilma. He has not been alive for a long time. He must have been the navigator. See? Sky charts and calculations. It is a strange feeling to see. He has sat here this way for a hundred years, with his last calculation still before him. Makes you feel weird, doesn't it? I feel I could shake him and say, wake up. Oh, don't touch him, Paul. Oh, he fell over. The spacesuit's just crumpled up. Oh, Paul. Nothing but dust. It is all you could expect after such a long time. Yeah. It, it sort of makes you wonder about us, doesn't it? Enough of that, Paul. Come to the control deck. Oh, come on, Elma, cheer up. Don't let what I said worry you. I always did look on the gloomy side. Not that. It was so awful. Thing. Yeah, I know. The controls are here. And this is a radio panel. Oh, good. We might get some valves. There are also two more men. We will not touch them. No. Say, notice their shoes? They're not like ours at all. Soles are stitched on, see? What material is it? It, it would be leather, I think. It was made from animal skins, wasn't it? I think so. Couldn't they make good plastic boots like ours? It seems not. They're clumsy, aren't they? And think of all the work, stitching it all together instead of just molding it. Come over here. I have removed the cover from the radio panel. Are there any valves there? Dozens of them. Let's see. Great, Ike, they certainly used plenty. Their radios couldn't have been very efficient either. Are there any we could use? Doesn't look like it. Oh, they're all so terribly clumsy and old-fashioned. And yet when it left Earth, this ship must have been the most modern thing they had. Yeah. No pity. I was relying very much on getting valves so our radio could work. Can we go back now to our ship? Seen enough? Oh, yes. Oh, wait, there is a book here, see? Oh, looks like a logbook. Open at the last entry, too. Let me see. Oh, what funny old-fashioned writing. Astro compass failed. We'll try to estimate position. Air still good, but food nearly uh, exhausted. Very short of air. Not long now. We had better take this with us. Sounds like a grim story. Yes. Well, come on. Paul, Ivan... We won't end like this, will we? Well, steady, honey. We've got far better equipment, remember? And Earth knows we're heading for Saturn. Someone will come to find us. What if no one comes? Well, they will come. They will find well, us. Well, they've got to find us. What are we so unhappy for? We have good equipment, food for two years. We are going to be the first people to reach Saturn. And let's get out of this primitive wreck and get back to a good spaceship. <laughs> Good to be back on the Taurus again and out of those space suits. I will read this logbook. I may learn from it the sort of dangers we should watch for. Ivan, let's face up to the fact. There's no point in kidding ourselves. What we just saw in that derelict makes it clear that our chances are pretty poor now, doesn't it? No. I think we were fools to go off as we did, knowing so little about things. I just can't imagine now how we ever thought ourselves so... Well, so infallible. Yeah, with no one but ourselves to blame. Now listen, you two. You want to face up to things, all right. And face up to some straight talk. 
There's got to be an end to all this defeated way of looking at things. Now, look, Ivan, can't you stop trying to throw your weight around all the time? I'm not trying to throw my weight around. Well, it seems mighty like it. Oh, please, boys, don't fight him. I am not going to fight. All I want is to stop us giving up before we are beaten. What you want is the... Please, Paul, will you listen to me? Okay, go ahead. First, I want to say I know that that old spaceship was not a pleasant sight. I felt it as much as you. But that is no reason to feel we will end the same way. We know we have enough food for two years aboard. If we are careful, perhaps longer. Air making equipment is simple and foolproof, so we will not run out of air. Also, there is a very good chance we are being followed. Are these things true or not? Well, yeah, they're true enough. Then why should we speak as if we are finished? But Ivan is a meteor hit. We so. must chance those things. We left Earth because we wanted adventure, didn't we? All right. Are we going to complain because we are getting more adventure than we expected? We are privileged. We have a modern spaceship. We are the first people who will reach Saturn. Then let us make the most of these things and enjoy them. You're right, Ivan. We've been acting like babies. I'm sorry. And you, Paul? I guess what you say makes sense, Ivan. All right, it's a deal. We look for adventure and no complaints. <laughs> let us give our hands on it. There. I feel better already. Mm, so do I. How about increasing speed again? Right. It's full speed for Saturn and the unknown. While the Taurus leaps forward to the unleashed fury of her atomic jets, far away the streak undergoes emergency repairs. Linked to her hull by safety lines and walking on it with magnetic shoes, Rocky and Mitch work feverishly with their heat rays, welding new plates into place. Well, that's got the main pieces tacked into place, Mitch. Yeah. Should be able to start welding now. Up at the top end? Uh, best take the two opposite corners out of one buckle. All right, come on. Uh, great, these magnetic shoes, aren't they? Yeah, it's a pity the other pair burnt out. Di must be finding it difficult without them. Yeah. Wonder how she's making out, huh? Around the other side there. Hmm. What about giving her a buzz on the intercom? Hmm. That's an idea. Hey, Di... Yes? How are you making out around there, chicken? Oh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Is it welding okay, Di? Yes, Rocky. I think I might be... Ah! Something's happened. Di, Di, you all right? Hey, Di. She's not answering. Di, come in, will you? Rocky, Mitch, I need help. Di, what is it? I don't know how it happened, but my spare oxygen cylinder exploded. It blasted me right away from the ship. What about your safety line? It snapped. Well, do something quickly, Rocky. I'm traveling further away all the time. Don't let me get out of sight. Hello, Di. Di. Di, I can hardly hear you. Hello, Di. What's happening? Intercom must be damaged. I'll try... The radio's gone dead. Yeah. Quick, Mitch. Up to the top of the hull and get a sight on her. There she is, Rocky. Oh, boy. That far away already. We'll have to get after her in the street. Well, the hull wouldn't stand the strain. Changing course, you, you'd tear it in two. Yes, I know it, Mitch. We've got to do something, and quickly. If we let her drift out of sight, we may never find her again. For a moment, the two men stand hopelessly, watching Di grow smaller and smaller as she drifts rapidly away into space. Suddenly, Rocky turns and makes for the pressure hatch. But with the streak out of action, what can he do? There is excitement ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> An adventure with Rocky Star! The streak has been seriously weakened by a stray meteorite that passed right through her hull. So while the Taurus streaks far ahead of them for distant Saturn, Rocky, Di, and Mitch have had to reduce speed and clamber out on the hull to make repairs. As they work, there is a sudden explosion. Through the intercom, Di reports that one of her oxy cylinders has burst and blown her away into space. Then the radio goes dead. 
Hurrying to the airlock, Rocky makes his way inside the ship. Mitch follows and finds him on the control deck, swinging the direction aerial of the busy screen. What are you doing, Rocky? Before long, she'll be out of sight, Mitch. I'm going to get a bearing on the screen. Well, you're not going to try and follow her in the streak. Well, not if you say the vibration from the deflector blast had split it in two. But it would, Rocky. But are you sure? Oh, giggling grasshoppers. You think I wouldn't take a chance with the old crate for die's sake if I thought it'd help her? Ah, uh, there she is. I've got her on the screen. Poor kid. Hey, couldn't we blast after her with ray guns or something? Bearing 193. 193, I'll note that. No, no, she's too far, Mitch. You'd reach her, but it'd take so much power getting that far, there wouldn't be enough left to blast you back. Well, we better get that repair done, but fast. Yes. This has given me a bearing that we can follow to find her. Come on, Mitch. I've got to work faster than we ever have before. Hurrying to the airlock, the space-suited men frantically work the mechanism and let themselves out into space again. Booster jets propel them to the damaged section of the hull, and they're clinging like flies with the magnetic shoes, searing with the heat rays, welding, frantically welding. Uh, how's it going on your edge, Mitch? Fair enough, Rocky. The heat's buckling the plating. Uh, we've got no time for fancy workmanship now. No, I'll belt it down. Okay. <clears throat> That poor kid, when I think of her floating way out in the nothing like that... Well, then don't think. Just keep working. I am working. You don't think I'd stop to talk when Dye needs help, do you? Not knowing whether we'll find her. Come on, weld, you useless hunk of tin can. Weld! Hey, I wonder how much oxygen that she's got left. Oxygen? Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. You don't think she'd be out of oxygen, do you? Well, it depends on how much was left in the tank that, that didn't explode. But she's got to have oxygen. I couldn't be in a spot like that. Well, you son of a sardine can, well! Working feverishly, the heat searing from the pistols in their gloved hands, Rocky and Mitch strain to get the job done. Slowly, the great repair is welded together. Then at last it's done, and they're blasting themselves back to the airlock, stripping the spacesuits off. They hurry to the control deck again. Rocky bends anxiously over the telescreen, but the tiny speck that was die cannot be seen. Lost her. She's not there, Rocky. Oh, she's out there somewhere, Mitch. She's out of range, that's all. That's all? Bearing 193. Watch it. I'm changing course. Get cracking, Rocky. Don't worry about me. Firing deflector rockets. I only hope that patch we've made stands up to the strain. All right, watch the warning lights. Tell me if you see the faintest flicker. Right, out, Rock. 193. Yeah, she should be on this course somewhere. She's just got to be on this course. Uh, how's the ship taking it? There's no warning so far. Hull seems okay. Uh, at least that's something. Swing that aerial and cover every bit of space ahead of us. Right. Uh, if we can get her on the telescreens, we'll find her, Mitch. We've got to get her on that screen. The streak swings onto her new course, her radar beam probing space, while Mitch and Rocky do everything in their power to find some evidence which will lead them to die. Meanwhile, Taurus, the ship they're supposed to find, is rushing ever nearer Saturn. On her control deck, immersed in a confusion of electrical equipment, Paul is working. Paul, I wondered where you had gone. What are you doing? I'm trying to do something with this radio. I found a loose wire that caused the short circuit. But the valves are blown. About half of them, as far as I can tell. Then <laughs> what do you hope to do with I'm it? I'm not sure I can do anything yet, Ivan. But I've got an idea that may be worth trying. What's that? Well, at the moment, we can't send messages and we can't receive any. Both parts of the equipment are done. But I might be able to get enough bits out of this lot to fix one or the other. I did not realize you knew anything on radio. That was a hobby of mine when I was a kid. I mightn't get anywhere, but it's worth trying, don't you think? Which will you repair? The transmitter? Looks like I'll only have the stuff for the receiving end. Oh, I hope for a moment we might be able to send a message if you succeeded. Well, at least we may be able to hear if anyone's looking for us. But don't rely on it yet. I'm not promising anything. Leave it off for a moment and come over here to the magnifier screen. I want to show you something. All right. I will switch on the image. There. That is what our telescope is picking up ahead of us. Saturn. It looks so huge and close. The rings around it. 
Why, there are moons there, lots of them in the rings. We are drawing very close, Paul. Oh, it's beautiful. And who knows what we might find there. But Saturn itself is mainly gas, isn't it? And rent by terrible storms. But there are satellites we can see, Paul. Many worlds. Yeah, many worlds. Out here in space for millions of years, never visited by man. Until now. I wonder what we'll find there. I wonder... stands gazing at the unexplored mysteries on the screen with fascinated eyes. But far away across space, two men gaze at another screen. And there is hopelessness in their gaze. It's no good, Rocky. There's not a sign of her. Screen doesn't show a thing. Oh, Mitch, we've, we've got to find her somehow. I can't figure why the radar hasn't picked her up. Wow, we were repairing the street. We, we must have drifted further beyond her course than I allowed for. Yeah, she's out there somewhere. Beyond the range of our radar. Beyond the... You mean right out of range? Well, Mitch, it, it, it just must be that. It must be that, or we'd have picked her up. And to think the radar boys were all set to fit a super radar out of this tub, and we had to leave in too much of a hurry to wait for it. Yeah, I know. Don't bring that up. Well, listen, Mitch, do? I'm going to risk changing course again. I'm afraid of losing her completely, but... Well, I'll, I'll just have to do it. If only there was something to go on, and instead of just endless nothing... Well, according to my course calculations, she must be somewhere in that area over there. That is, if I'm right. Oh, look, if we hadn't have been such a rush, if we'd only waited for that radar... Yeah, I know, I know. Rocky! Hey, what? Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Yeah, what? Well, remember when her radio went dead? Yeah. We couldn't hear her voice, so we thought the whole thing was jinxed. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, I just remembered. The carrier wave was still sending. We got the harm, remember? The carrier wave? Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but I, I I don't see well, how... Well, look, it, it, it's probably still sending. Now, if we can pick up that wave, we can use it as a direction beam to lead us to her. You get it? Well, I... I don't know. Look, the wave is still going, right? The but carrier Mitch, wave is still on. Listen, what can we pick it up with? There's nothing. Well, we'll, we'll just have to make something. Make something? Oh, Mitch, pl- I don't look, see... Look, look, I'm trying to work it out, Rocky. Take it easy. Now, look, mm-hmm. take a sonic circuit, yeah. right? Yeah. Pass it through an electromagnetic field. Yeah. yeah, all right. Now, then we get some extra rectifiers. Yeah. Use double tra- transformer output. You following me, all right? Well, I, I don't know. Look, I'll show it to you again. Yeah. You take a sonic circuit there, yeah, right? Right, okay. Now, we pass it through an electromagnetic field, like yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some extra rectifiers. Yeah. Just put them there, 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 and there. Yeah. Use double transformer output. Yeah. Now, Rocky, I think I might do it. Huh. What, Mitch? I'm going to take the microwave set apart and make a detector beam out of it. Now, if that intercom still switched on, we might just pick it up. Working feverishly, he cuts away wiring. Ruthlessly, he tears out electronic parts. At times, it seems the job is being done at tremendous speed. At others, when Mitch is laboriously tracing the wires he wants through the tangled maze, it seems he'll never finish at all. And then Mitch checks the last connection and says tensely, This is it, Rocky boy. Good. It'll probably blow all the valves if we have it on too long, but we'll have to chance that. Huh? You are right? Throw the switch, will you? This one? Yeah, right. It looks pretty makeshift, but it should be powerful enough to go a long way. I hope so. This is the sending aerial here. I'm going to swing it slowly in a circle to cover where we think die is. Right. I want you to watch that dial, Rocky. This one? Yeah. Oh, what do I watch for? It's just it's the slightest flick of the needle. Okay. Now, here we go. Did you see anything? No, not a flicker. You still nothing? Mm-mm, no. Well, if there's anything out there, we should have picked it up. Yeah. Hey, Mitch. Maybe her radio isn't sending. Oh, Rocky, it's got to be. If that radio's jinx, so is Di. We're going to try more over this way. Okay. Anything? No, Mitch. Still nothing? No. Uh, uh, wait, huh? Wait a minute, the needle moved. Yeah, yes, keep, keep it pointing there. No, back a bit. Yeah? Right there. Hey, we're picking up current. Yeah, there's I'll a definite it. movement. I'll switch it through the speaker. There it is, Rocky, we got something. Whether it's Di or not, I don't know, but let's get cracking and find out.
Rocky listens to the thin peep of sound mixed with the continuous radio signals transmitted from the stars, then jumps for the controls. Will it really lead them to die? And if it does, will she be alive? There is exciting action ahead, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. While repairs are being carried out to the street's hull, Di is blasted out into space by the bursting of an oxy-cylinder. Before Rocky and Mitch can do anything, she has drifted beyond their reach. Working at frantic speed, they get the streak repaired and then go in search of her, but the radar picks up no sign. It seems she is lost forever. As a last hope, Mitch hurriedly pulls the microwave to pieces and makes a detector beam to try to pick up Di's intercom radio. For a long, long time, the beam picks up nothing. Then suddenly there is a thin peep of sound. You hear that, Rocky? We got something. I don't know yet whether it's dying or not, but we got something. Uh, it could be the carrier wave from a radio. Here, swing that aerial around more, Mitch. See if we can get it stronger. Yeah, well, I hope I don't. Yeah, it's all right at the moment. Yeah. Ah, oh, look, I've lost it. Ah, uh, swing it back again. Back again. How's that? Hey, there it is. There it is. Keep swinging. It's getting louder. Yeah, what bearing is that? About 204. I'll hold the course to Wait that. a minute, wait a minute. It's fading again. Well, swing back. Quickly, Mitch. That's it. That's the direction. All right, take a fix on the triangle of stars and keep it at that while I swing the streak round. I'll try, Rocky boy. All right, firing deflectors now. I'm losing it. No, I've got it again. Uh-huh. Well, that's the right course now. No, it's not, Rocky. We're losing it. We're losing it. Oh, find it again, Mitch. That's it. I've got it. Uh-huh. I'll have to adjust course again. Please, Rocky O'Pay, get it right this time. Strange giving me the Martian miseries. All right, I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, now we'll see. Hey, you notice something? Huh? It's stronger than ever. All right, I'll switch on the telescreen. See anything? No, out of focus. Wait a minute. Hey, yeah, there must be something. This signal's getting louder all the time. No, there isn't. There's not a... Wait a minute. Yes, look, there it is. Is it die? Well, it's just a speck. It's getting closer, though. It... It's coming clearer. Rocky, by its hair, it's die, all right. I'll switch this thing off, eh? It's getting too loud. Right. Well, we'll reach you soon, Mitch. Get into a spacesuit and stand by the airlock, ready to get her. I certainly will. I'll get ready with the fired rockets to reduce speed and... Oh, great planets, I can't. Can't what? Can't use the fired rockets. Well, make it a funny joke, Rocky boy. Not now. All you gotta do is press that button. And blast so much radiation straight a die, it'll probably kill her. What? Giggling grasshoppers, what can we do? Well, there's only one thing to do, Mitch. I'll have to delay the rockets until we're just past her. It'll need split-second timing, but, well, I think I can do it. You just got to, Rocky. That poor kid. Gosh, I hope her oxygen supply lasts. Never mind the gloomy thoughts, Mitch. Get into that spacesuit. I'm getting into it. Say, judging by the screen, Rocky, we're pretty near. All uh, right. You'd better stay here a minute. Stand by that side screen and tell me the second we draw level with her. Right, Rocky boy. Here she comes. Now. Right. Not too much, Rocky. Don't slow too much if she get the blast. Then I'll have to give the stern tubes a touch. Uh. How's that? Perfect. All right, get down to that airlock and bring her in, Mitch. I'll be right behind you and hurry. In a fever of impatience, Mitch waits for the airlock door to open. Then he is blasting himself out toward the small, space-suited figure. In a panic, he sees that Di's eyes are closed. Grasping her shoulders, he touches off the booster jets once more, and the two of them are gliding toward the open airlock. When Mitch is hurriedly removing his helmet, the inner door opens and Rocky strides in. Well, how is she, Mitch? I don't know, but looks bad to me. Get her helmet off here to look. Mm-hmm. Unconscious? Hey, look, Rocky, she got the air valve for suit closed. Oh, that means she's run out of oxygen, Mitch. Yeah, get this suit off her. Yeah. Why shut the valve? Oh, it's to prevent further escape of air. She's been breathing the same air over and over and over. Oh, poor kid's just about suffocated. Yeah. At least I want to get this clear. Okay. <clears throat> well, at least the heating elements in her suit were still working. She's not frozen by the cold out there. Is there any any pulse, Rocky? Wait a minute. Yes. Yes, yeah, just a flick on it. Mm, it's very faint. She's hardly breathing, you know. 
We've got to get rid of that artificial lung and fast. Go ahead and open it up and I'll carry it. Okay, Rocky boy. All right. Come on, Ty. Hey, let me give you a hand with it, Rocky. All right, thanks. Yep. All right. Take it easy, Mitch. Yeah. Right. Down. There we are. Yeah. I think that ought to be it. Yeah. Okay, start the machine. Okay. You want the oxygen mask? Yes. We'd better put that over her face. Well. I'm afraid that's all we can do. Yeah. Well, it makes me mad as a hornet, Rocky. We hadn't been given the job of chasing those sparrowbrain kids. And the Taurus, well, this wouldn't have happened. Oh, it's no use getting steamed up, Mitch. I am steamed up. Helping themselves to a spaceship like that with no thought of what trouble they might cause. If we ever find them, I'm going to tell those bird brains a thing or two. I'm really mad. Yeah, I know, Mitch, I know. But look, that, that really doesn't help much. No, I guess it doesn't. All we can do is watch and hope for the best. Poor die. At least that beam of mine found her anyway. The two men settle down to watch and wait. But what Mitch doesn't realize is that his improvised beam has found more than die. At the very moment that the tense search for her was going on, far away in the Taurus, Paul was bending over the microwave set he had been repairing. Ivan! Ilmer, have you seen Ivan? He's checking the equipment to make the water supply, I think, Paul. Then you come and listen. Listen? Why? You'll see when I've switched it on. You mean you've... You've actually got the radio working? Only the receiving part of it. You haven't been receiving messages from Earth. No, but there's something really is interesting. Hear that? What is it? Some sort of radio wave. It keeps swelling and fading like that as if it's swinging around. And here it comes again. I think it's a beam of some kind coming from a spaceship. But how can you know that? Every star sends out radio waves. It's probably something like that. No, Elmer, it's different, that sound. That's man-made. Now look, that's low at the moment, but watch when I swing the directional aerial around. See? Yes. The aerial's pointing back the way we've come, and it's at its loudest. Do you think there's a spaceship following behind us? It's the only explanation I can think of. Then switch on the radar scope and see if it picks up anything. Well, that's an idea. I'll direct it back the way we've come. Uh, nothing on the screen. What's that? Look, look, a sudden flare of pattern. Now it's gone. I mean, it looked almost like an explosion. Or, hang on, I'm going to switch on the Geiger detector. Normal radioactivity. But if that was what I think it was, the rays will take a few minutes to get here and... There. Here? Radioactivity. A great wave of it. I'm from the same place where the radio beam came from. But what's it mean, Paul? That means that flare pattern we saw was atomic rockets being fired. We're all right, Elmer. There's a spaceship following us. We can stop worrying. Mitch. Huh? Mitch, it's all right. She's coming round. We can stop worrying. Man. Hey, give me that oxy mask. She uh, doesn't need it now. Die. Die, can you hear us, chicken? Oh, oh. It's all right, Die. It's all right. Oh. Rocky. Rocky, where am I? It's all right, baby. There's no need to panic. You're back in the streak. Oh. And the old bellows. Oh, the arm lung. So you found me. Mm hmm. Only just in time. Yeah, I whipped up a little gimmick and. Well, oh, let me to tell you about it. Oh, my mother. What about that beam, Mitch? Oh, it's terrific, honey. Look, I tell you what I did. I took a sonic circuit, yeah. passed it through an electromagnetic field, put in some extra rectifiers, used double transformer outfit, and made the little gimmick that got onto you. Uh, How's that, huh? Oh. Don't worry, Mitch. It was really terrific, though, Di. Come on, I think we can get you out of here. Oh, it's so wonderful to be in the streak again. Oh, Rocky, it was, it was horrible floating away and seeing her get smaller and smaller until I couldn't see her at all. Oh, don't worry. All alone and 
black emptiness. Well, chicken, quit thinking about it or you give me the horrors. Now, you just sit down and take things easy. Oh, he's all right. But, Rocky, mm -hmm. what about the streak? She'll be way off course now. Yes, I, I know, but look, that really doesn't matter for a while. But it does matter, Rocky. Don't you realize we've got to get after the Taurus before she reaches Saturn? As far as I'm concerned, those kids can reach it and get into all the trouble that's gone. It'll do them good. Oh, no, Mitch. No. Have you forgotten how cold we estimate it is out there? And they won't have proper gear for it. We've got to try and overtake them, Rocky. This whole chase may be useless. Mitch shrugs his shoulders irritably, but Rocky realizes Di is right. He hurries to the control deck, and soon the streak is on her course once more. But they are far behind the Taurus, too far to reach her before Saturn. What will happen to Ilma, Paul, and Ivan? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. The damage to the streak has been repaired and Di is rescued and recovered. Now our friends are turning their attention once more to the business that brought them out into space. Her nose pointed toward far distant Saturn, the streak is plummeting onwards in search of the Taurus, while Rocky and Mitch sit watchfully at the control. All dials okay, Mitch? Yeah, Rocky. No sign of strain in the hull just before we cut the rockets. Nah. Reckon we did a good job on it well. Mm, it's a wonder when you think of the speed we did it. Well, that last astro fix I took seems to be right. We should be able to relax now for a while. Yeah, I was checking with the radar scope just now. We couldn't pick up any signs of a ship ahead. Yeah. That's the big worry on my mind just now. We know that when they took the Taurus, those youngsters planned to head for Saturn. But just what sort of a course did they work out? They can't know very much about astro navigation. Yeah, they could finish up light years away from Saturn. Yeah. Still, Rocky, all we can do is head for there and hope for the best. Uh, if only there was some way of picking up their ship. Ah, uh, you know, I wish I'd waited to have that super radar fitted instead of letting Chromats hustle me into leaving. I wonder. What? It's just an idea, a guy. It might work. Boy, after that beam you rigged up to find Di, I'd take a chance on any idea you dreamed of. You want me to tell you all about it again? No, no, not again. You're going to patent it when you get back to work That's or for sure. <laughs> Listen, what, what's this latest idea? Well, look, I, I was wondering if I could magnify the image on the screen somewhere. You know, blow it up. Yeah. Yeah, but you have nothing to magnify it with. Well, you know how you can amplify radio waves? You know, you pass them through the right set of valves and stuff, and they're twice as strong. Yeah. Well... Oh, I was thinking, maybe I could do that with the radar waves. All right. All right, then try it, Mitch. Anything so we know where we're heading for. Why can't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> Looks like all I'm going to do this trip is take circuits apart and put them back together again. <laughs> all I do is talk about them. And... <laughs> Listen, uh... stop complaining. You'll love it. You know you do. I'm admitting nothing. <laughs> oh, well. Guess us geniuses better get started. Will you listen to him? Yes. Get started and do everything you can, Mitch. It might save the lives of those three kids. Once again, Mitch plunges into the maze of electrical equipment that lines the back wall of Streak's control deck. But already the ship they seek is nearing her destination. At that very moment, Ivan, Paul and Ilma are gazing in awe through her telewindows. Well, it will not be long now. I had no idea Saturn was here huge. Already it seems to fill half the sky. Look back at the sun, Ilma. Oh, goodness, it's so tiny. It's like a big star. That gives some idea of how far we've come. There is not much light from the sun here, but we hardly need it, do we? Not with the terrific radiance of Saturn and its rings. <laughs> Just look at those rings. Thousands and thousands of miles wide. And I think they're made up of countless pieces of rock. Anything up to planet size, all circling round and round. Now, Countess is right, Paul. If they really are the wreckage of some planet that blew to pieces, think how huge it must have been. Oh, we're nearly there. 
We'll have to decide what to do next now. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. I suppose we'd better just harbor in space until that other ship, whatever it is, arrives here. There are so many satellites around the ring. You know, I have a feeling to land on one of those. But then we'd never be found, Ivan. Why not? Well, how would the other ship know which satellite we were on? For that matter, how would they know we were here at all? I suppose you are right, but it seems a great pity not to land, Paul. Well, it's the only sensible thing to do. Look at those rings. Millions of fragments. How could you possibly steer a course through that? You'd never arrive at a satellite to make a landing. It would be quite simple. Simple, my foot. Course bearing multiplied by orbital velocity divided by speed. It is so simple. What? Geocentric velocity 240731 modified by depth of 7539. Oh, gosh, yes. Paul, what's he talking Poor about? Efficiency. I don't know. Oh, he seems so strange. Ivan, Ivan. Snap out of it, Ivan. Efficient. We're getting mighty close to those rings. Yeah. We'll have to change course. Simple. It is so simple. He's going to the control. Ivan, are you changing course? Mean bearing 117.5. Oh, gosh, Paul. Yes, 117.5. I better take over. Here, Ivan, let me. No, get back. Don't touch me. Still like deflection. That is Don't all. fire those rockets. What's he doing? Is he taking the right course, Paul? I don't know. Yes, yes, reduce speed. He's mad. He's heading right into the ring. Ivan, you'll wreck us. Ivan, stop. Right course now. You fool. We won't last five minutes among all that. Change course. Course like red satellite. Course like red satellite. He's going to try and land on us. Oh, Ivan, stop. Please stop. Oh, he's not listening, Paul. Something happened to him. Something will happen to us in a minute. Ivan, give me those controls. Give me... <coughs> get away. Get away and I'll kill you. Oh, Ivan. <coughs> Don't touch me. The course is right. Paul, can't we do anything? Can't we stop it's him? Too late, Elmer. I don't know what's happened to him, but we're heading straight into the middle of the rings. This is it. We're finished. In a few minutes, we'll be battered to a pulp. <laughs> Horror-stricken, Paul and Ilma gaze through the windows as their ship plunges into the endless miles of whirling fragments. Only Ivan seems calm. He sits at the controls, a dreamy, faraway look in his eyes, and sends them onward. This is the moment when, far across space in the streak, Mitch has decided to try the results of his work on the radar scope. It works all right, Rocky boy. Just leave these problems to your old Uncle Mitch. Look at that screen. Hmm. Saturn certainly looks a lot closer. Yeah, well, I can get it closer still. All I need to do is turn this knob like turning up the volume on a radio. See? Now watch. Hey. Mitch, it's like looking through a huge telescopic lens. You know, I've certainly got to hand it to you. I can't see any spaceships. Uh, Just take a gander at Saturn. You know, it's almost possible to see the debris that makes up the rings. Yeah, I'll turn it up a little bit more. Okay. There we are. That's the limit now. Blurs it a bit, but still fairly clear. As you say, there's no sign of... Hey, wait! Hey, Mitch, did you see that? Yeah. A bright flash just on the edge of the rings there. I'll bet that was made by atomic jets. Sarah goes again. Yeah, that's the ship there, Mitch. We just can't make out the shape of it. Yeah, it must be changing course away from the rings. Huh? Yes, you know, they'll leak. Now, wait. Huh? Mitch, Mitch, look at that. It's very blurred, but wouldn't you say that ship was heading straight into the rings? You're right. Those space-happy kids must be as screwy as a, a, a spiral staircase. Ah, that ship's gone. Rocky, do you think they can possibly have known where they were heading? I, I just can't understand it. No one could possibly navigate through those fragments. Well, they're gone. There's no sign of them now. Oh, they must be battered to a pulp. I, I don't see how they could avoid it. What do we do? Go back? No, Mitch, no. We still have to find that heavy plutonium. Besides, I'm not giving up the Taurus until I know that I have to. We'll go on. And when we get to Saturn, look for some evidence of what happened to her. While the watchers in the distant streak shake their heads sadly over the Taurus's fate, that ship is streaking through the scattered masses of rock as if she has a charmed life. I don't get it, Elmer. Look out there. All space filled with great chunks of rock, and we haven't hit one. It's almost as if Ivan knew there was some sort of clear path through it all. But how could he? We've never been within 900 miles of here. Well, it's Ivan who's done it. Ivan? 
Ivan, where are you taking us? Where are we going? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, the, the course is right. We'll get through. Through to where? Uh, I'm not sure. There's a planet, I think. A, a satellite. But how could you know to take this course? And what were all those figures and calculations you kept mumbling? Where'd you get them from? <laughs> it all seems so hazy now. Funny, I, I just suddenly had a strong impulse to land on a red satellite. How I knew it was there, I don't know. But figures and calculations kept coming into my head. I had to pilot the ship this way. I just had to. Why did you have to? I... I don't know. There was some... some influence. You look as if you were hypnotized. Look what we're traveling through. How we've escaped collision. It's miraculous. I, I don't know. It, it seems incredible, but somehow I know that is a planetoid. Look at the temperature gauges. The outside temperatures. Hundreds of degrees below zero. Then what use will this planetoid be if we land? We'll die. Yes. Yes, it is time to reduce speed. Oh, he's up again. Atmosphere 90% normal, height 50 miles, deceleration rockets 20 seconds time. Oh, Paul, I'm scared. How can he know these things? He'll kill us. What can we do? Any minute we might collide and... Oh, look at him. Paul, look. Look ahead of us. There is a satellite. A red planetoid, like he said. And we're going to land on it. Paul and Dilma stare at the approaching planetoid in wonder. But how could Ivan have known about such things? And what lies ahead of them now? There are exciting developments ahead, so be sure to hear the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star! With the streak still far behind them, Ilmer, Paul, and Ivan have reached Saturn. They find the planet to be unbelievably huge, and the famous rings composed of countless fragments of rock stretching for thousands of miles. And there are satellite planets amongst them, but navigation through the litter of cosmic wreckage looks impossible and they decide to turn aside. Suddenly, Ivan starts acting strangely. Seizing the controls and muttering complicated calculations under his breath, he heads the Taurus straight into the danger zone. It seems certain they will collide with one of the many obstacles and be destroyed. But miraculously, they avoid every one. Then as Ivan fires the deceleration rockets, Ilma gives a shout. Oh, Paul, look ahead of us. There is a red planetoid, like Ivan said. And we're going down to land on it. Ivan seems almost in a trance. Look at it. Let's be deceleration rockets in 20 seconds. Look, someone sending him the information. But who... And how? He's going to fire the rockets again. He looks like making a perfect landing. But how did he know this place was here? Oh, it's frightening, Paul. I don't want to land at all. Well, we're here now, so we'll have to. But the temperatures, hundreds of degrees below zero. Oh, we'll never live. I know. But Ilma, look. Look at the temperature dials. They're registering ten above zero outside ten now. above? But all the rest so terribly cold. How can it be warmer here? I don't know. That's what the dials say. Too much speed, rapid deceleration, rocket blasts every five seconds. Take care. Yes, take care, rapid deceleration. You better lie back in the seats, Paul. I think Ivan's warning us. Right, strap yourself in. Look out, here it comes. The Earth ship sinks slowly against the tremendous thrusts of the landing jets, gently, gently down, and comes to rest in this alien world. Paul and Ilma sit sprawled back, dazed by the tremendous pressure they have experienced. Ivan sits as if in a trance. As the others stir, he looks dazedly around. Paul? I'm okay. And you? Oh, yes. Uh, Everything's so quiet. Yeah. A perfect landing. We have arrived. Uh, oh. uh, what happened? How did we get here? 
You mean you don't know? You brought us here, Ivan. You landed the ship. A good landing, too. I, I do not understand. I seem to dream about going to a planetoid in the Ring of Saturn. Well, that's where we are. You knew how to get here, Ivan. How did you know? It, it all just seemed to come into my head. I knew the planetoid. I knew the bearings, the calculations. But how did I know? I think there's some kind of, well, influence. A hypnotism or, or telepathy or something. It was controlling you, Ivan. It wanted us to land here and landed the ship through you. It's the first time anything like that has ever happened to me. How do you feel now? Oh, fine. I, I am as always. Oh, well. well. Let's have a look at this place and see what it's like. Paul, Ivan, the temperature gauges. Have they changed again? They're showing an outside temperature of 68 degrees. 68? Well, that's a bit of a change from hundreds below. But how could the temperature rise so much? I don't know, Ivan. But after the way we got here, I'm prepared to believe anything. It's a very strange place. From up there, it looked red. But look, the soil's a sort of blue color. Yes, and, and there is very little vegetation. Spiky-looking stuff, isn't it? Looks a barren sort of place. <gasps> look! What? Over there, a horrible sort of thing coming towards us. I can't. Oh, heck, look at it, Ivan. Some sort of a... A creature bowling around and around like a wheel. Is it a creature? Well, it seems to have a round body and three legs spaced around it, like a letter Y. It is like a wheel. It just spins from one leg to the next, round and round. It has come to look at us, all right. It is stopping. Hey, see that? It's bouncing on one leg. Looks like it could use the other two as a pair of arms. Oh, that horrible eye in the middle divided into three. I suppose it is an eye. Very little else it could be. There are more of them coming. Six of them. Looks like they're joining the first one. Yes, they are all standing on one leg. And using the other two as arms, like I said. They're beckoning. Look, they're beckoning to us. They know we're watching. Oh, well, we, we don't have to go out. There's no need. Isn't there, Paul? What do you mean? Do you feel anything? Yes, I do. It's a feeling I should go out. A sort of compulsion. That's funny. I feel the same way. I do. You know what I think? They brought us here. They controlled you, Ivan, by telepathy or something and showed you the way. Yeah, and now they're willing us to leave the ship. <laughs> it's getting stronger and stronger. Uh, I don't want to go, and yet I feel I must. Oh, it's horrible. We mustn't go out there. But what, we can, what can we do about it, Elmer? You know, we have to. We have to go. Rocky... We have to find out what happened to the Taurus. We have to. Yes, I know, Di. That's, that's just how I feel. I can't see how they could possibly survive plunging into those rings, but I've got to make quite sure that they did survive. How long before we arrive? Well, I've just been trying to work it out. If my calculations are correct, it should take about another 36 hours. Hey, where's Mitch? Having a sleep. He says he's worn out by all the special equipment he's been building. Uh, I shouldn't wonder. You know, he, he did a terrific job. Hey, Di... You, uh, you haven't located anything giving off the spectrum of the heavy plutonium yet? No. I'm sat in front of that spectroscope until I'm nearly cross-eyed. Uh, but, Rocky, so far there hasn't been a sign. No, uh, I didn't think so. Oh, well, let's not worry. There's plenty of time yet, really. We're... Oh, it's radar alarm. Hey, there's something ahead of us. Quickly, Di, turn on the telescreen. There. It's funny. The alarm's definite enough. I can't see anything through the screen. I... Hey, Di! Di, come here quickly! Here, over here. Look, have a look at this. Rocky, what is it? Uh, on the screen there. Now, just a sort of a faint blur, do you notice? Or a, or a mist? Yes, I think I can see it. Yeah. That's strange. Well, what do you make of it? Oh, Rocky, I don't know. I can't imagine what could be. Ah. Unless it's cosmic dust. Cosmic dust? Why, that's it. There must be a great cloud of it ahead of us. Well, according to the screen, it's stretched right across. Yeah, right across, eh? Well, that means we can't possibly get around it. There's only one thing for it, Di. We'll have to stop and stop quickly. If we run into that stuff, it'll fill us as full of holes as a colander. I know. Yeah, we'll lose every scrap of air we've got, you know. Oh, Rocky, it's looking awfully close, isn't it? it? certainly is, Di. All right, don't worry. Stand by for rapid deceleration. Oh, but what about Mitch? Don't worry about Mitch. He'll be all right on his bunk. All right, here goes. <laughs> That's it. You all right, Di? Yes, Rocky. All right, then hang on. Here goes again. Oh, that'll be a little better. I say, Di, check the angle of sight meter, will you? 
What speed change does it give? It's slowing. Uh huh. Fifteen. Yes. Ten. Yeah. Seven. Yes, go on. Four. Mm -hmm. Less than one. Less than one. Good. Then we're stationary. Die quickly. Check that screen now. I will. Rocky, it still seems to be approaching. Still approaching? Here, wait a moment. Let me see, Di. Wait. Hey. Hey, you're right. It is still approaching. It must be traveling across our path in a diagonal line towards us. Then what do we do? Well, there's one thing, one thing we can do. Di, we'll have to go into reverse until the thing's clear of us. Ah, uh, boy, and we were so near Saturn, too. Oh, I only hope those kids aren't needing us. Ilma, Paul, we cannot give way to this compulsion. We must try and hold on to our willpower. But how? We must go out there. No. We, we must lie on this sand, Paul. Then we run down into the water. Water. Remember, it is cool on our bodies and we swim. You swallow water and it makes you cough. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Swimming. That's something I'd forgotten. I don't feel I have to go now. As long as we think of something those creatures don't know, they can't invade our minds. Yeah, that's right. That's a great scheme of yours, Ivan. Then should we take off, leave this place? I can't remember the calculations. We'll have to find out what they are. As long as we can remember to keep strong thoughts, perhaps it'll be safe to explore a little. But can we get out there? I mean, what kind of atmosphere is it? I'll see what the analyzer shows. Methane and carbon dioxide. Ah, oh, then we cannot leave without spacesuits. We must get them. Wouldn't it be better to blast off again, Ivan? I'm afraid. Yes, it, it would be better. But what hope have we of steering a course to all this stuff up there on our own? No, he's right, Elmer. All right, whatever you say. But we must be careful, please. Well, let's get these face suits. I want to know why we were brought to this place. Come on. Outside, the seven strange creatures stand on their single legs, beckoning. But how will they treat the earthlings, and what strange adventures lie ahead? There are exciting developments to come, so don't miss the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! While Rocky finds the streak's course temporarily blocked by a passing cloud of deadly cosmic dust, far away the Taurus has landed mysteriously on a planetoid near Saturn. Ilmer, Paul and Ivan find themselves being impelled by thought power to leave the ship. The compulsion comes from a group of strange creatures with round bodies and three legs sticking out like the spokes of a wheel. The Earthlings manage to resist the compulsion, but realize they can't take off from the planet without finding out the course calculations. So nervously climbing into spacesuits, they prepare to leave the ship. Are you ready, you two? Yeah. I'm just fastening my oxygen cylinders, Ivan. I wonder what those... those tripeds want with us. What could they want with someone so completely different from themselves? It must be just curiosity. You think that's all? Truly, Ivan? I can imagine no other reason. Can you? No. It might be wise to take ray guns with us, though, don't you think? Oh, yes. We can't go out there helpless. Hmm. All right. I will get three pistols. Nervous, Ilma? Yes. Aren't you? Yeah, pretty much. Well, if only Ivan could have remembered all those calculations he used to get us here, we could have taken off again without needing to go out there. But he would never have known such communications. They were just, well, communicated to him by... By the tripeds. Yes. Yeah, I don't suppose we can blame him for not remembering. All I hope is that we can get the dope from them again so we can leave here. That means we're completely in their power. Here we are. Stick one in your belt, each of you. And let us get onto the airlock. Thanks. I've never used a gun before. Take it, Ilma. All you have to do is point it and pull the trigger. You'll find it quite a comfort if anything goes wrong. We must not be too anxious to use ray fire. Better if we can persuade them that we are friendly. Well, it won't be long now. Here goes. Helmets on. 
Testing intercom. Can you hear me? Yes, Ivan. Coming through okay. I'll start the mechanism. Well, this is it. Come on, the ramp's down. Ilma in the middle. Keep close together. And don't be scared, Ilma. I can see them. Watching us with those eyes. Oh, they look horrible. Like having an eye in the middle of your stomach. I can't get over the way they bowl along like a hoop on three legs. And then use one to stand on and the other two as arms. Yes. Oh, look, they have stopped beckoning. Now they see we are coming. Oh, it's terribly hard to walk. I feel as if my legs are made of lead. Why is it, Ivan? It is just the effect of gravity, Elma. After the weightlessness of space. No cause for alarm. Well, here we are. Let us stop. They're forming a circle around us. I'm keeping my hand on my ray pistol. They are not trying to touch us. What should we do? How do we show we're friendly? Better switch on our outside speakers so they can hear us. We are friends. Friends. Understand? Oh, what use is it to speak? They will not understand our language. They're waving their arms and swaying to one another. Seems like they're talking amongst themselves. We are friends. Friends. I think they understand, Paul. They are doing it again. They can't understand our words, but perhaps they can sense our feelings. You are welcome here. What was that? Did you hear something? Yeah. I did too. You are welcome here. There it is again. But they do not seem to be speaking. They're just standing there swaying about. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, I think I do. It's not a real voice at all. Well, how could they speak English? It's a sort of a, a mental one. Of course. Telepathy. We're hearing it in our minds. We'd better try to talk with them. We come from Earth. Yeah, from Earth. That is known to us. No. But how could they possibly know? They must have known we were up there to guide us in like that. Come. They want us to go with them. I'm a bit scared, boys. Have no fear. You are creatures of great skill. We wish to entertain you in our city. Come, Earth creatures. See, they lead the way. Not trying to force us in any way. Come, Ilma. Paul and I will take care of you. We'll go with them and see what they want with us. Walking clumsily in the unaccustomed gravity... Ilma, Paul, and Ivan move off in the direction indicated. The tripeds, hopping easily on one leg, accompany them, and they reach what appears to be a dull metallic platform resting on the ground. Mounting it, the tripeds turn triple-eyed gaze on the hesitating earthlings and indicate that they mount it too. Meanwhile, far away, Rocky is waiting impatiently for his course to clear. Head cosmic dust still ahead, Rocky boy? Yes, Mitch. It's moving across our path at a good speed, but you know, there seems to be a huge cloud of it. Yeah, it's one thing in space I can't get used to. Yeah. You know, back on Earth, if there's a dust storm, well, you drive right through the thing. But out here, you go for your life. Uh, Mitch, every one of those rock particles is traveling at a colossal speed. Mm. They could penetrate the streak's hull easier than high-velocity bullets. Yeah, I know all that stuff, Rocky. It, it just don't seem right, that's all. Hey, Di's squinting on a spectroscope gadget again, looking for heavy uranium. Yeah. You think we'll ever find that stuff? Mitch, we've just got to find it. I told you what the president of the Solar Council said. Yeah, this catastrophe that's supposed to be facing the human race. I don't get that at all. Well, neither do I, but, well, they wouldn't pay the expense of a trip like this just to look for the Taurus. They must want it pretty urgently. Mm. Well, let's check the telescreens again. Right. I'm sick of waiting around in space. Yeah, so am I. You know, everything's against us, this trip. Okay, switch on. Well, I suppose we're really in no hurry. Mm, I am, Mitch. I don't like the way Taurus disappeared into that ring of all those various rings around Saturn. Yeah. I want to find out what's happened to those kids. That dust looks as thick as ever. Yeah, it would. Switch it off. Say, what's this about wondering what happened to them? You said yourself the Taurus must have been battered to pieces. Well, I want to make sure. Well, how are you going to do that? Those uh, rings around Saturn go for thousands of miles. Uh huh. Thousands of miles of chunks of rock, asteroids, satellites, and all that stuff all whirling around. How are you ever going to find a wreck of Taurus among that? Mitch, I'm not so sure that there will be a wreck. 
Oh, but, Rocky, you said yourself no one could navigate a ship through all that stuff. They'd be blasted to bits. Well, and why didn't we see the explosion on the telescreens? Hmm? The atomic motors would have gone up for sure. I never thought of that. There wasn't a blast at all, was there? Mm -hmm. We simply saw their rockets fire a couple of times. Then they disappeared. What do you think happened? Well, I don't know, Mitch. But as soon as we can get going again, I certainly mean to try and find out. I right, twitch on the screen and we'll have another look. Hey, but Rocky boy, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be thinking of trying to fly the straight through all that stuff in the rings, would you? Yeah, if necessary. The parents of those youngsters must be worried sick. But I'm going to find out all I can for them. Yeah, the dust seems to be getting a bit thinner, Mitch. Shouldn't be long now. If yeah, that's what you're aiming to do, Rocky, the longer it takes to clear, the better I'll like it. Yeah, I wonder what did happen to those kids. Thing. Well, it looks harmless enough. Just dull metal resting on the ground. All the tripods are squatting there with their legs folded. Come, join us. The telepathic voice again. Oh, come on, let's do what they want. Find that example, I think perhaps we had better sit down. Well, it seems harmless enough. They're all just sitting there taking no notice of us at all. Do you sense anything? I, I, I do, Ilma. It, it is strange, but... I keep finding the thought, Ra is going through my head. So do I. Now you mention it, I'm the same. I just found myself thinking this platform thing should rise up from the ground. It's a silly thing to think. It is. Look, Paul. Where are we rising? What? We can't be. You're right, rising straight up from the ground. But how could... We're not rising now. The platform is moving. It's gliding forward. We are a good 30 feet above the ground. But how could it be? Look, there's no sign of a motor or any kind. No sound. It's just a flat piece of metal a few inches thick. Look at the tripods. How they stare. They seem to be concentrating. So you, you don't think... Oh, I think they are propelling this platform by some kind of foot power. But that's crazy. Remember how we all got that idea of rising. We must have been picking up their concentration. I'm getting nervous of these things. They know too much. And yet, look, there are ruins down there. Where? Yeah, look, Ilmer. There's been some sort of peculiar buildings down there. I wonder what sort of buildings they have now. Look at those dome-shaped things. Look, see? One across there, and there's one over the other side. Maybe they're buildings. Hey, look over there. There's a sort of tunnel going into the hillside. And this is where that platform is, is taking us. Well, then, if those domes are buildings, maybe that passage leads to dungeons or something. You know what I think? We're prisoners of these things, and there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> The hole in the hillside looms ahead. Are they really prisoners? What strange adventures lie ahead? There are exciting developments to come, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. While the streak is held up by a huge cloud of cosmic dust, far away, Ivan, Paul, and Ilma have made a landing on a satellite of Saturn, guided by a mysterious influence. When they leave the Taurus, they encounter strange three-legged beings who communicate with them by telepathy. At the request of the tripeds, they seat themselves on a metal platform and find it gliding through the air propelled by intense thought power. Then Ivan points to a tunnel in the mountain ahead. When the platform glides smoothly into it, Ilma says excitedly over the intercom... Boys, look! We're in the tunnel. And, gosh, it isn't dark. Honey, I, I can't see any lights anywhere, Ilma. It is the rock. See, it glows with radiance. You're right, Ivan. It's all luminous. Isn't it the weirdest effect? I wonder where it leads. I think we should keep our outside mics switched on, as well as those we use talking to each other. Yeah, so we can hear what's going on outside. I'm not so nervous at the tripods now. They sit so still, as if in a trance. All that concentration to make a vehicle like this fly. What a means of transport. But Paul, it's very advanced of them. 
think what minds they must have. Yeah, think of having to sit and think so hard when you want to go places instead of just letting an engine do the work for you. You only think that because... Oh, look, look, we're, we're arriving somewhere. A big open space. Some kind of underground hall. And passages or streets leading from it, all carved out of the rock. Pretty clumsily carved. <gasps> there are more of those tripod things, whirling along on their three legs like, like rimless wheels bowling on their spokes. The platform is sinking down. Oh, well, we have arrived. The platform is down. I wonder just what this place is. Behold a city. A hopper time. There's the telepathic voice again. A hopper time, eh? They're getting off the platform and beckoning us to follow. Well, come then. City? I don't think much of it. They're not much better than cave dwellers. When you think of those ruins we saw outside, the ruins of quite imposing building, it's unexpected to find them living like this. The ones who brought us here seem to be telling the others about it. Ivan, I wonder if they always sway about like that when they're talking. If, <laughs> if you could call it talking. They're certainly strange-looking objects. If anyone had told me I'd meet creatures with a sort of central body like the hub of a wheel and three legs sticking out like spokes, I'd have said they were out of their mind. Hey, what goes on, I wonder? They're forming a circle round us. They're moving closer. I don't like the way they're looking at us. Paul! Ivan! They're taking hold of me. They're, they're trying to take my spacesuit off. If they do that, you'll die in this atmosphere. Quick, Paul, concentrate. Try and get it over to them that we can't live outside these suits. Oh, quickly! Stop them! Help! Move together, Ivan. No. 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 Dream up a picture of Ilma dead. You can't live without suits. Please understand. Leave me alone. Please, please. Can't live, can't live. We die without suits. They're letting you go. You are afraid. You need this casing. It's the voice. Yes, yes, don't remove. We can't breathe your atmosphere. Understand? Concentrate on our atmosphere, Ivan. Oxygen, see? Breathe oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen? You choke without this casing? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we, we must, must have, have it. it. We understand. Oh, thank goodness for that. Oh, keep close to me, boys. I'm afraid. It is all right, Ilma. They are moving away. Forming a circle around us. They seem to be having some sort of conference. Oh, I wish they hadn't come. Oh, I'm a bit that way myself. They're so peculiar. Paul, look, they, they have stopped their discussion. You will follow. You will come where you are shown. They are beckoning us. I don't like to go. Do you think we can refuse, Ivan? How can we? Be not afraid. You are creatures of great skill. We honor you. Oh, well, come on. We'd better go quietly. Well, then keep together. And remember, we've got ray pistols if we need them. Come. Follow. Follow. Well, at least they've left us alone. But, Paul, why do you think they've told us to stay in this room carved from the rock? I don't know. They were definite enough that we shouldn't leave. What do you think, Yvonne? Well... I, I don't like the way they are staring at us. I must admit that. And there was something so so speculative about it. I'm afraid they may become too curious about us. It could become dangerous. Like when they tried to take Yilma's spacesuit off? Oh, it was terrible. I felt like some kind of guinea pig under observation. Yes, that is my feeling. Well, then let's get out of here. Let's go now. No, wait. It may be too dangerous. If necessary, we could blast our way out. We do not know what other powers these tripeds have. Look, it's better to wait till things are quieter. Then leave as secretly as possible. Yes, there are too many about just now. Okay. But I hope we don't have to wait too long. This place has given me the jitters. Oh, dear. If only that search ship had caught up with us before we got here. I wonder where they are now. <laughs> Well, looks like the way is clear now, Rocky boy. No sign of cosmic dust on the screen. Mm-hmm. I'll have a new course computed from the last astrofix in a few minutes, Mitch. Now we get moving again, huh? Yeah. To Saturn? That's right. 
And you're going to dive straight into the rings after the uh, Taurus? Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh-huh. And we'll be like a moth trying to fly through a hailstorm, huh? Yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And yet you're still going to have the streak in it. That's right. Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. Do you have to keep on saying that's right as if it's going to be like a nice Sunday afternoon drive or something, huh? Hmm? Uh, aren't you listening to me? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. What's wrong, Mitch? What's wrong, he says, with a big <laughs> smile on his cherubic little face. What's wrong? Well, what are you sounding off about? You plan a nice little suicide, John, and then because a guy gets a little bit jittery, you say, what's wrong? You gets a little bit what? Jittery. Shaky, you know, nervous. Jittery? Yeah. Nervous? Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> you? Yeah. Ah. I don't believe it. Yeah, what's wrong with me getting jittery? Ain't well, I allowed to have human feelings or something? <laughs> yes, certainly. If you wish, but, well, I don't know. You're, you're just not the type, that's all. I'm... Well, huh. <laughs> well I guess that's right. I was, uh, I was just putting on acts, rock I just wanted to kind of get you on a board. Yeah, that's what I thought, Mitch. That's yeah. what I thought. Besides, you know, I've been thinking. There may be more to it than just trying to get through those rings, you know. Hmm? Oh, what do you what do you mean? Well, there's no telling what things there may be out there at Saturn. Yeah. And Mitch, whatever the Taurus has become involved in, don't forget, we'll find it too. Ah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose so. Well, there's something mysterious about the way she disappeared like that, don't you agree? Yeah. Certainly is. And what's more, I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Just a sec. Uh -huh. That should do it. Okay. All set? Yeah. How are the nerves? Oh, they're all right. I was only kidding. Get off my <laughs> back, Rocky. Okay, hang on, Mitch. Course for Saturn set. Check your seat. Seat, Jack. Right. Check course. Course set. Okay. Stand by. Firing primary jets. Firing propulsion jets. Hey, Rocky. Uh-huh. Which is Saturn? That large star, right ahead. Right ahead, huh? Uh-huh. I wish I knew what goes on out there. Paul, Inma, I think this is the time. Are you sure the radiance from the rocks is dim because it's night, Ivan? It's as good an explanation as any. Hang on, you two. Remember the tripod we found keeping watch outside this cave? I'm going to sneak a look at him. Oh, do be careful, Paul. Well, Paul, is he still there? Yeah. I think he's asleep or something. He squatted down with his limbs folded across his eye. Then, quickly, we must slip out of here. Go on, Elma. Yes, he must be asleep. Which way? Which way? This is the way they brought us. Down here. Keep your outside microphones on so we'll hear any sound. I'd hate to walk into tripeds on the prowl. Thank goodness there don't seem to be any about. Around this way. Stop. What, Ivan? A cave full of them. All with their limbs folded up like, like the other. Sneak past quickly. Made it. The tunnel's over there. Keep in the shadows. All clear. Now walk fast. Made it. Oh, thank goodness. This is only the beginning. Let us cut through this tunnel as quickly as possible. What is that? A peculiar noise. What? It's one of those tripeds rolling this way. Quick, you two. We've got to hide. The escaping three look frantically around as the strange rolling rhythm of the tripod comes closer, closer. Will they be found? And will Rocky discover them in time? There are thrilling developments ahead. So don't miss the next exciting chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! Delayed by cosmic dust, Rocky is still far from Saturn. But as the streak hurtles onwards through space, at least he knows the Taurus reached the planet by the atomic jet blasts picked up on the radar screen. 
But on one of Saturn's satellites, Ivan, Paul, and Ilma are in a tense situation. Alarmed by the strange three-legged creatures that have taken them prisoner, they're attempting to escape. But just as they reach the tunnel mouth that leads to freedom, the rotating footfalls of an approaching triped are heard. Quickly, into this cleft in the rocket is our only hope. Oh, it was small. Surely we'll be safe. I am almost out of the tunnel. Quiet, it is near here. Say it. It's gone past. Quiet. I don't see how it could. Perhaps their sight is not so good when they are whirling along like that. Come, we must hurry. I saw you peering after it, Ivan. Which way was it heading? Towards the recess where we were. Oh, let's run, please. All right. Yeah, come on. Hey, what? Ivan is shooting up towards the roof of the Oh, tunnel. they love gravity. Oh, Paul, are you all right? Try and land on your hands and knees to break the floor. I'll try. Oh, Paul, oh. are you all right? Oh, yeah. I took the roof on my shoulder and saved my helmet. Well, don't hang around because of me. Come on. Do not try running so hard in this light gravity. Oh, and how? Oh, I got it. Lean forward and leap. And we must make good speed. There is much more tunnel still ahead of us. Leaning forward, the three space-suited figures hurry in great flat leaps along the half-gloom of the tunnel. The light gravity helps their progress, but the unaccustomed exercise is very tiring. When at last the tunnel entrance opens before them, Ilma calls through the intercom. Oh, please, boys. Can't we rest for just a moment? We, we should keep moving, but perhaps for a moment. Well, I won't object to a breather. I wonder if we're being followed. We will hear soon enough. Best to decide which direction to go. Over there. Weren't the ruins over there somewhere? They could make a good hiding place. Yes. I can just see them. There's a sort of a radiance about the darkness. Wait. See your outside mics are on and listen. They're coming. we got to get away from here quick. Too slow to climb down the ruins. We must jump. Jump? Oh, no, Eva. Yes, Oma. In this light gravity, we'll nearly float down. Stealing themselves to the effort, the three fugitives leap into the darkness. Outwards they go, dozens of yards... And then they're sinking downwards toward the vague outlines of the ruins in the darkness below. Meanwhile, the streak is nearing the end of her journey. Di looks up from the magnified image she has been studying on the telescreen. It's going to be difficult, Rocky. Those rings around Saturn are just a collection of cosmic wreckage. I don't see how any ship could get through. Well, the Taurus did. Yeah, we can't be sure of that, Rocky. Well, Mitch, there was no explosion. She must have got through. Let me have a look, Di. Giggling grasshoppers. Talk about an obstacle race. How many planets blew the bits to make that little collection? I wonder how long the fragments have been circling Saturn thousands of miles deep. Yeah. Say, have you seen what it really looks like, Rocky boy? Uh-huh. I have. And you're still going to try and pilot the streak through that? Mitch, we were sent out to find the Taurus and bring the youngsters back with us. That's our job, and we're going to do it. Yes, but how, Rocky? How can you calculate a course through all that... It's a lot clearer now we're so close. Yeah, come and have another look. But come on, I'll be obstinate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, it is pretty thick. Remember what one little meteor did to us? Well, what can we expect if we get mixed up in that? He's almost certain we'll be wrecked, Rocky. But die, the Taurus flew in there. I bet you'll never fly out again. It's impossible for atomic motors not to explode, Rocky. I've got to find some trace of the Taurus. Well, you're the skipper. If you still decide you can take the streak in, well, we'll tag along too. I, I'll admit it, it does look bad, but... Well, now we've got here, we, we have to find them. But we could cruise into a circuit outside the ring. Yeah, we could use deep radar. Those space-happy kids are really in there, the radar will find them. All right. All right. If you can get a radar bearing on them, at least it'll give us a definite idea where to look. If we stand a chance of ever finding anything in that... There are hundreds of thousands of miles to be searched, Rocky. Well, don't worry, Rocky boy. The radar will do the trick, all right. I'll fix up one of my super circuits. I'll get it rigged right now. Okay, good man, Mitch. Oh, I'm worried, Di. I wonder what did happen to the Taurus. I wonder if those poor kids are alive and what they're doing now. Oh. 
Far around the mighty Saturnian ring on the dark side of the satellite, the three are very much alive. But as they make their way cautiously through the ruins, Ivan's space-suited figure lags behind. Ivan, your knee! Are you all right? Don't worry about me, Ilma. I will manage. You sure, Ivan? Yes, Paul, do not worry. Just a short rest. Jumping in the dark like that? It's a wonder we didn't break our necks. Oh, well, it got us well away. I wish it were lighter. These ruins are fascinating. Well, to me, getting back to our ship is the most fascinating thing at the moment. We are safe standing here in the shadows. We may never see such things again. Look at them. Did you ever see buildings so strange? It is a stone that, that, that seems almost almost like a metal. Look, I'd rather keep going if you can manage it. A little more rest and I will go on the faster. Can you hear any sign of the tripeds? Quiet a moment. I think I can. It seems very far off, though. Let us go, then. Was it this way to the ship? Yeah, I think so. I'd rather go across this way, I think. But why, Ilma? I don't know. It, it's just a feeling. Yeah, I think you're right, Ilma. Let us go that way. Van? Yes, it... It seems the best route to take. Well, then come on. Across the open and... No, wait. Well, we must hurry across. Wait, Paul. Why do you want to go there? It is away from the ship. Yeah, but It's I... the tripods, their mental power. We must resist it. I must go, Ivan. Don't hold me back. You must resist. Think of Earth as we did before. Ilma, Paul, don't let them trick you. Trick, but... Uh, think of the Earth. The swimming, remember? The swimming. Oh, yes, of course. Ilma, snap out of it. We've got to get away from here. I must go. Grab her other arm, Paul. Come, Ilma. Remember Earth. The blue skies. The fleecy clouds. The green fields. Remember. Fields? Don't. What are you pushing me along like this for? Where was I going? We are going to this spaceship. Remember. Yes, of course. I knew that. Oh, thank goodness she's come out of it. Out of what? The mental power, remember? The tripeds must be drawing close to us. We must keep our thoughts on Earth at all costs. Make straight for the ship. Nothing on the radar, Mitch. Nah. That is, if you can call a few million chunks of rock, nothing. Still, you never know. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, I don't like this situation. No, me neither. Well, we've got nothing for it, though. All we can do is to keep trying... That's for sure, unless you come up with any other bright ideas. Mm. You gonna keep on this course? I don't know, Mitch. You'll notice we're getting near to the night side of Saturn. Yeah, if they got the two side, night day side. Yeah, uh huh. You know, I, I I don't see any point in going on into the shadow. Nah, nah, it's too dangerous with all this flying rock and stuff. Yeah, that's true. This is what I thought. What are we gonna do? Well, Mitch, I think we'll go as far as we can and then change course back again. Have you had a look at the screens lately? Yeah. I think I'd better check. All right. right. Make it snappy, Something. Mitch. Right. Uh, Anything coming through? No, nah, just the usual. Uh, well, listen, Mitch. As I said, I'll go in as far as we can and then change course and we'll come back again. Yeah. And you'll watch that radar like a hawk. That's for sure. If the Taurus is anywhere near Saturn and still in one piece, we've got to find her. must be somewhere near. We've just got to find her. Oh, it is so difficult in the darkness. Things and things appear differently. Wait a minute. That sort of hump in the shadow over there. Haven't we seen that somewhere before? I, I don't know whether... Yes, it's one of the dome things. What we thought might be buildings. Best keep away from it, then. Wait a minute. Listen. It's giving out a humming sound. Then we will keep clear. See, there is another over there. I know our position now. The Taurus should be, uh, should be over there. Well, come on, then. Let's get to her quick. Yes, there is very little cover. We must keep behind this spiky stuff all we can. Well, we'll just have to risk the last... Hey, look. Can you see a sort of gleam over there like metal? I can't. Y yes. Ivan, it's the Taurus. Oh, we found well, her. come on. Let's get across and... Uh-oh. Notice that? Tripeds. Circling around the ship. Tripeds. Oh, how can we possibly reach the Taurus with them there? If we get anywhere near, we'll be taken prisoner again. Oh. 
What can the three adventurers do now? Is escape impossible? And what of the streak searching anxiously for them with her radar? There are exciting developments ahead. So be sure you hear the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space. An adventure with Rocky Star. While the street cruisers thousands of miles away around the outer ring of Saturn, probing for the Taurus with her radar, the other ship remains hidden on the dark side of a satellite planetoid. Dilma, Ivan, and Paul are trying to escape from the weird tripeds that inhabit the planetoid, but they come in sight of the Taurus only to find it being guarded by tripeds. Dilma's voice is sharp with disappointment and anxiety as it comes over the intercom radio. How can we possibly reach the Taurus now? We'll be taken prisoner again. We cannot stay here, that is certain. We'll have to do something, Ivan. I wonder if we could jump them. Oh, we're so far away. The ground between is so open they could see us coming, even in this half-darkness. We have the ray guns. Maybe... Uh... No, no, look. The very thing. What? A shallow sort of gully running along the ground. See? See there? The line of shadow. You mean creep up on them? Oh, of course. But let's take this thing out carefully. We don't want any bungling. I think I have the answer. If we could get close enough in this in this low gravity, we could actually jump over them, as you said. That's it. Of course, cover the last few yards with one almighty leap and down them. But what's the vulnerable spot? You can't hit them on the base of the skull or anything like that, because there's nothing to show where it is with these things. I think I know. There's a sort of bony bulge above their eye. Perhaps that would be the same as their skull. I think you are right, Ilma. Very well. Now, now let's see. There are three. I don't think Elmer should be in it. Nor do I. Very well. We wriggle along the galley as far as we can. Watch their movements a while, then jump too. The other we will attend to afterwards. Right. You be all right here, Elmer? I think so. Oh, do be careful. Don't worry, we will. Come into the galley. And don't make a sound. <laughs> one seems to stay behind the ship quite a lot. A good thing. When the other two are a few feet apart, we will jump. I'll take the right and you the left. Yes, and... Oh! What? The course! I don't know. I don't know the course to get through. For Christ's sake, I'd forgotten that. What do we do? Well, we must somehow force the third one to help us. Now get ready. Can you see clearly? Yeah. Hope I can judge it. They are approaching. Nearly. No! Got him! Out like a light. Hey, Ivan. Help me! It's got its legs around me. I'm losing willpower. Not for long. This is it, Tripod. Gotcha. Ivan! Oh, what? Paul, how? I gave him the butt of my pistol. Ivan! Paul! Are you all right? Right as radar, Ilma. Come over quickly. Oh, look out! The other one! Coming! Give him the ray blast. No, we need him. Point the gun at him. He doesn't catch on. I'll blast that bush. That stopped him. He doesn't like the look of it. Good. Hilma, open the airlock quickly. Yes, Ivan. How do we make him understand what we want? Concentrate. We go up there. We go. Understand? Go. What course? Course. Tell us what course. No one course. Telepathic voice. Of course. Tell us. Quickly or you'll get this gun. Course not known. He's saying he doesn't know. We'll soon find out. See that hatch? You see? Get inside. <laughs> see this gun? You go inside. Inside or I fire. No. Wrong breathing. He means we breathe oxygen and he doesn't. Yes, yes. Wrong breathing. Cause death. Tell us the course or, or, or you come to. The course. Well, this is taking too long, Ivan. Oh, oh. Yes, yes. Drive him in. Come on, you. No, no. Tell course. Ah, that's better. Paul, go in and, and set it on the controls. I'll stay here and keep this gun on him. Right. 
You send the course to my brain, understand? Send course to me. It is understood. All right, Paul. And the instant you've got it, buzz the airlock light. But please be quick. Followed anxiously by Ilma, Paul hurries to the control deck and sits at the controls. And then slowly, strange figures and calculations come into his head. As if in a dream, he sets them on the complicated control instruments. Reaching for the switch, Ilma presses the airlock light. Seconds later, the inner door slides open. Then Ivan is taking off his helmet and hurrying to the control deck. Oh, you had the course set, Paul. Yeah. And those tripeds are bowling up in droves. Then don't wait any longer. Right. Hold tight, everyone. Firing rockets. I only hope that thing gave us the right course. Some distance away, the streak is cruising steadily along the perimeter. Suddenly, Mitch looks up from the radar screen. Hey, Racky. Yeah? Found something, Mitch? Uh, I'm not sure. Hey, what do you mean you're not sure? Well, I, I think I might have picked up a rocket blast. For heaven's sake, Mitch, why all the uncertainty? Surely you must know whether you did or not. Well, that's just a trouble, Rocky boy. You say I was yawning, and when I yawn, I always shut my eyes. When I open them, I just thought I caught a flash of some kind. Funny, a bit of a flash. Hey, I wish you wouldn't yawn at important moments, Mitch. Well, I just couldn't help it. I... Hey, wait a minute, Rocky, there is something. Uh, where? Well, it's hard to pick out amongst the echoes from all those rocks and planetoids and stuff. Did you see there? Yeah. Hey, it's moving across the path of everything else. That could be anything but a spaceship. Stand by for acceleration, Mitch. Right. If that ship manages to get through, we want to be on hand to intercept her. Ivan, Paul, we're getting through. Don't speak too soon, Ilma. May only be luck so far. If the course is wrong, there is nothing we can do about it. Come back, influence they sent after us is going. Yeah, thanks to Ivan's idea of showing one of our microfilms and concentrating on that. Oh, it was a great struggle to keep the projector in action for a while. I wanted to switch it off and turn back. Oh, it was wonderful seeing pictures of Earth again, wasn't it? Yeah. If we get through this, I vote we try and set a course and go straight back home. But what about the other ship? Well, never mind them. We've relied on them too much already. What do you say, Ivan? Well, I, I was against the idea before, but but after seeing those films, if we find no sign of another ship, I say let's try for Earth. Say, you notice anything? We still haven't hit anything. I cannot understand how such a course could be calculated. These things or people must, take, must, must make a great study of the rings. They must know the velocity, they move, and somehow they have calculated just what speed is needed to pass through without collision. I wonder by what strange processes they know these things. I don't care how they do it. Look. The stars. Clear space. We have got away safely. We are safe. Long before the streak can reach them, the Taurus hurtles clear of the great ring of debris. It is some time before the other ship reaches the spot. You still got them on the screen, Mitch? Yeah, Rocky boy. Screaming away ahead of us around the planet. Mm. Hey, look, that great storm or convulsion going on there on Saturn. You know, we should be watching that sort of thing instead of chasing three irresponsible juveniles. That's our job. Yes, I know, it's our job. But, boy, I'd really like to investigate. Well, you just keep well away from them rings. I'm happy to chase those three kids. It would be so simple, so simple to investigate. Huh? Hey, listen, Rocky boy, just keep your mind on the job like a good boy. Course bearing multiplied by orbital velocity divided by speed. What? Geocentric velocity two four zero oh, seven three one. Modified by depth of 7539. Where do you get this stuff? Main bearing 117.5. One, one hey, Rocky, you're not altering course into that stuff. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, mean bearing, 117.5. One, one hey, Rocky. Rocky, you can't. Hey, Rocky, you listen to me. You'll wreck us. What are you trying to do? 117.5. One, one Rocky, listen to me. You'll wreck us. We'll be cosmic mincemeat. Rocky! <laughs> Rocky, what are you trying to do? Uh, Rocky! 117.5. Uh, one, one, Rocky, stop it. Stop it. Hey, die. Die, come quick. Something's happened to Rocky. He's trying to head us into the ring. Rocky sits as if hypnotized, while Mitch wrestles violently to keep his hand from the defector firing button. Once again, the power of the tripeds is at work. Will Rocky really plunge the streak in toward the strange red satellite? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next action-packed episode of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! Fear of the tripeds of a hoppetai prompted Ilma, Paul, and Ivan to escape from the Red Planetoid. By threats, they obtained the course from a captive triped and at long last found the jumbled litter of Saturn's rings behind them, clear space ahead. But in the street, their ship's course has been seen on the radar screen. Blasting to top speed, Rocky hurries to try to intercept them, but the Taurus is still far away. Then suddenly, the strange telepathic control of the tripeds fastens itself onto Rocky. Don't press that deflector button, Rocky. You can't run the streak into the rings. Mean bearing 117.5. One, one, you can't. You'll wreck us. Die. Hey, die, come quick. Rocky's gone nuts. What is it, Mitch? He's space happy. He's trying to head into the rings. Bearing modified by speed 113.8. One, one, ah, Rocky, you can't do it. Leave me alone. You can't do it. Ah, ah, must I, change course. Leave me alone. Rocky. I, and hold them. Emergency routine. Uh, but Mitch... Bearing 113.8. One, one, Quick, Di, get that sensitive pad over his nose. I, uh, All right. Uh, Here goes. Uh, 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 Mitch, Mitch, uh, help me hold him. He's quieting down. Uh, uh, Di, why did... No. Why? Why? Sorry, Rocky, just a sensitive. Sensitive. Couldn't he ask the why? Hold him, Mitch. Okay, I've got him. Uh, uh, oh, I hated doing this. Yeah, I know. Oh, I feel awful. I couldn't help but chicken. We've always agreed on emergency routine. If any of us goes nuts like that, he's got to be put out for a while. He gets over it. Yes, I know. And he was gone, all right. He was real gone. You can see that. Oh, I, I can't get over it. Rocky of all people. Yeah, he's never cracked yet. Wanting to fly in amongst all that whirling rocket and an investigator or whatever. Simple, he said. Well, perhaps it is. Simple? It looks impossible. No. No. Course bearing multiplied by orbital velocity divided by speed. Oh, Mitch, what are you talking about? Geocentric velocity modified by depth. Mitch! Correction for distance travel. Yeah, yeah. Mitch, what are you doing? Must change course, flying the rings. Come back, they say. Come back, we mean no harm. Mitch! Mitch, you've got to shake this off. Mitch, please! We can't go too. Leave those controls alone. No, gotta turn. Bearing, bearing 112. Mitch, I'll have to give you emergency. Fire deflector rockets. I have Fire. to. Fire. <laughs> Sorry, Mitch. I had to give it to you. It's and uh, 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 Two of them acting like that. I can't understand it. There's something strange about this planet. Why should they want to fly into... What was Mitch saying? Course bearing... Multiplied by geocentric velocity, divided by speed, return to bearing 117. Yes, it's, it's me too. I, I can't. I, bearing 117, mean us no harm. Firing rockets. <laughs> St. 
Sitting stiffly at the controls, Di presses the firing button. The streak swoops around in a tight circle, back the way she has come. Then Di is muttering dreamily to herself, bending over the controls again. And the streak is hurtling itself amongst the whirling debris of the Saturnian rings, while on the control deck, Rocky and Mitch loll limply in their chairs. Mechanically, Di goes through landing procedure, and the streak settles down gently onto the strange coloured soil. Slowly, Di stirs and looks around in dazed puzzlement. Oh, where... Oh, what happened? Oh, I, I can't think I... Rocky and Mitch are asleep. Oh, of course, the sedatives. But, but the streak, she stopped. Almost as if we've landed. Landed? I don't like this. Rocky. Rocky. Oh, antidote for the sedative. Somewhere in this locker. Sedative. Basic pills. There must be somewhere antidote. Not to counteract food poisoning, no. Ah, to counteract sedative. And the syringe. I need full quantity. The rocky first. Now, two cc's. That should be enough. Now then, Mitch. There. Red light outside. I wonder where we are. Rocky, Mitch, wake up. Please, please, wake up. Wake up, both of you. Wake up, Rocky, Mitch, please, wake up. Please. Hey, hey, giggling grasshoppers, uh, die. What are you slapping a guy for? Oh, Mitch, thank heavens you've come too. Come too? Yeah. Hey, you put me out with that pad. What sort of a crummy thing was that to do? Die. Uh, Mitch. Hey, what happened? Rocky, are you all right? Uh, oh, I don't think so. I feel a, a little... Oh. Hey. Hey, you used emergency on me, didn't you? Not only you, Rocky boy. I got it as well. Yeah, but, but why? Why? You were going to send a streak straight into the rings. That's why. Hey? But why did I have to be put to sleep? Because you were trying to do the same thing. What? I was? Well, thanks for stopping me, chicken. Better get my head red if I'm starting these sort of tricks. <sighs> you sure I tried that? Of course I am. Well, how do you like that? Hey, it's, it's a good thing you were able to prevent us, Di. Hey, hang on. Hey, the streak's not moving. Why did you stop her? Rocky, I, I don't know. Something strange happened to me, too. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you got fancy ideas about... Did you? Yes. I, I remember thinking all sorts of complicated calculations and, and reaching for the controls and... Well, that's all. Hey, that's a funny thing. That's exactly what happened to me. Yeah, me too. Only there wasn't anyone to give Di a sedative. But listen, if she sent the streak amongst all that flying rock... Hey, Rocky. Uh-huh? You don't think we crashed, do you? That th This wouldn't be the other side. You know what I mean? Hey, w wait a minute. We seem to be in some sort of a valley. It's bluish soil and... Hey, look at this. Look, a red sky. Soil and sky? That sounds real enough. I don't feel like a ghost or, or anything. Not really. I think we've landed. Somewhere inside the ring, Rocky. Yes, but, but die how? How if none of us knew anything about it? This is going to sound a pretty silly story for a scientist to say. But there just... Well, there seems to be no other explanation. I think that somehow... We were brought here. A, a strong telepathic influence. Yeah... You know, it sounds like that. Yeah, but how? And who's sending out all this info? Well, I, I, I don't know, Mitch. I... Hey, look. Well, you look at this place. It's fascinating. All those... Hey, hey, you two, come over here. What, Rocky? Look. Look, look over there. Look, a, a crowd of three-legged creatures. Mm, good heavens. You see that? Look, they move by, by bowling round and round. Three legs and one eye. Uh-huh. Look where it is in the middle. Say... I know it's the crummiest things you ever saw. But I, I just thought of something. The temperature here should be tremendously sub-zero. Temperature dials to 68. Uh, what atmosphere? I'll see. Methane and carbon dioxide. You know what? I want to go out there. I want to make those things. Well, it would be very interesting, yes, but let's get spacesuits and go. Uh, w wait, w wait a minute. Are you, are you sure that's your own impulse? I think so, Rocky. Now, now look. Those creatures are all, all waving their arms in a, in a beckoning motion. You see that? 
Well, we mustn't let them will us to do things. Will us? Say, that's right. If they could bring us through all that stuff from way outside the rings, they'd be able to make us do anything they like. All right. Now we know what goes on. We know something about telepathy, remember? We can fall back on the lessons that we learned on Venus. I don't like it. Giggling grasshoppers, don't let's take any chances, Rocky. Let's get out of here. No, I, I want to find out about this place. The temperature, for instance. Yes, and how it is that it isn't freezing cold. But if they can send thought power the way they did, if they can tune in on our minds... and We're it... prepared for them now, Mitch, remember. If they can tune in, we can tune out. You notice how we, we cut across this urge to go out to them? Yes, of course. We have strong mental links with one another. Otherwise, we could never send telepathic messages like we do sometimes. If we all hold the thought that we are going to resist outside influences... Well, we should be able to leave the ship quite safely. How do you know? I, I admit it all sounds reasonable enough, but how do you know what you've just worked out hasn't been put into your heads but those things outside? Yeah, I suppose that, that's a good point. Rocky, I've just thought of something. Yeah? I remember when I took over the controls getting a sort of thought message. Yes? Something about, come back, we mean no harm. Yeah, I get something like that too. Come back? But we haven't been here before. Then the tourists must have been here. And they're calling her back. I don't like it. Well, we can't land on such a strange place without exploring. Those creatures, we've never struck anything like them You're before. You're right, Rocky. We must know more about them. All right, then. You go. I'll stay here on the ship. Hey, you're not scared, Mitch, after all the dangers we've been through. No, 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 but this is different. Well, the tourists got away all right. Yeah, but... Uh, oh, well, I'll please yourself, Mitch. But we're going. Come on, Di. Grab your spacesuit and we'll get down the airlock. Oh, Rocky boy, please, why don't you just take off again? Let, let's get after the tourists. Hey, Mitch, you've forgotten one thing. I, I don't know the course. Do you? No, but Di brought us in. I can't remember anything. It just seems like a dream. Well, that settles it. Come on. <laughs> Will Mitch's fears prove right? What will the strange creatures do when confronted by three new people from Earth? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this thrilling Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! Under the telepathic guidance of the tribe heads on a hopper tie, the streak has penetrated the Saturnian rings and landed on their satellite planetoid. Outside, a gathering of tribe heads waits for them to leave the ship. Meanwhile, the Taurus is continuing a circuit of the planet outside the rings, while Ilma, Paul, and Ivan try to decide what they shall do next. We must do something. Our situation is serious. But Ivan, we just got out of this serious spot. Aren't you relieved that we got away from those horrible-looking tribe heads? Oh, of course I am relieved. But we are still in great danger. You don't think they'll start sending thought waves or something to make us go back, do you? As to that, I cannot say. But being free of them is not enough. What do we do now? What direction do we travel? All that? Yes, that. We cannot travel around and around Saturn forever. But what is that other ship that's supposed to have been following us, Ivan? Perhaps we can make contact with her. How? We've no idea where she is. If that ship was heading the same way, she must surely have arrived here by now. We must find her. We could use the radar scope. That is my idea. I suggest we make a complete circuit of the planet and try and pick up the other ship by radar. But right and round, that's a journey of hundreds and thousands of miles. How else would you suggest we find the ship, Paul? I... Well, I don't suppose there is another way. But the chance of finding one little spaceship in that distance will be pretty remote. But surely if the ship is within a few thousand miles of us, it'll show up on the screen. Definitely. Okay, then well, let's get that radar work working full blast right away. If we can't find that ship, we'll have to try and work out a course back to Earth ourselves. We don't even know which direction to look. I will switch the radar on. Better make sure it's sending out in all directions. We don't want to miss anything. Of course, Paul. That is obvious. Well, it is adjusted. Someone must always be watching the screen. Well, we can keep watching in turn. Two hours at a time or something like that. Yes, you start, Paul. And don't take your eyes off that screen for a moment if you wish to see Earth ever again. Paul sits gazing intently at the empty screen. The equipment hums softly. The dials register zero. 
And in a tiny dome projecting from the Taurus's hull, a small revolving coil sends a powerful beam exploring in all directions. But they cannot reach the streak. She is far away on the red planetoid, and three space-suited figures have just left her airlock. Hey, Rocky boy, can you hear me? Got your intercom on? Yes, Mitch. I know it's the crummiest looking things you ever saw. Well, they're certainly unusual. Three legs and an eye in their middle. I'll say it is screwy. Rocky. Yes, Di? Their thought power must be remarkable. They must be able to send it out like a like a beam. Hey, how'd they know we were cruising around outside the rings? That's what I'd like to know. Hey, Rocky, they're gathering around us. They don't exactly seem unfriendly, though, Mitch. That's as far as I can judge. How would you judge the attitude of something that has no real face? Rocky, they're really incredible. Just a shapeless, scaly, colorless lump of flesh. Ugh. With an eye in the middle and three legs sticking out from it. Yeah, I feel like I'm having nightmares. One of those things sticking out with knobs on the end. Yeah, like the eyes of a snail. Six of them. Yeah, but I got that triple eye in the middle. They could be some sort of hearing thing. Oh, who are you kidding, Di? What could you hear through a thing like that? There's no ear hole in it. Well, they're probably sensitive to vibrations. Hey, Mitch, huh? put your outside mic on and see if they're making any sound. If they do, I bet it's completely screwy. See? what they say? They're starting to sway about. I wonder what that means. I like the look of it. Hey, Di, Mitch. Huh? Do you, do you suddenly feel... An impulse to, to go with these things? Yes. Yes, Rocky, I do. Yeah. Hey, that means they're sanding. Let, let, let's get away from here quick. No, no, no. Listen, Mitch. Hey, but Rocky, will you stop panicking and listen, please? We know something about telepathy. We learned plenty on Venus. Yeah, but now we... listen. We... All we have to do is form a sort of closed circuit. A thought circuit that they can't break into. If we all hold on to the thought that... No outside influence can control us. We'll each build up a resistance of the other. Rocky, I I'm sure it would work. Yeah, yeah, but that's all very well. But uh, but I want to go with these things, and I, and I don't want to go, and, 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 and I do want to go. And, and Listen, please, Mitch, stop getting worked up. Make up your mind that they can't influence you. Now, come on, Mitch. Say it aloud. Okay. They can't influence me. They can't influence me. But I want to go. I want to uh, They can't influence me. Come on, keep it up. I, I can feel that influence slipping away, can't you influence. know. Say, hey, so can I... Ah, it's easy, huh? They've stopped the swaying around. I'm going to try and make friends with them. Now why bother? Giggling grasshoppers, I'm not afraid of them, Ruggy. Hey, what goes on? Are they, they, they coming cl 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 closer? Now, don't worry, Mitch. It's only curiosity. Try and try and show friendliness. Friends! Friends! We will do you no harm! Friends, you are people of great skill. We welcome you. Hey, Rocky. Rocky, I'm, I'm going nuts or something. I'm, I'm hearing voices in my head. I heard it, too. Something about us being very skillful. And bidding us welcome. Telepathy. They can get their thoughts across by telepathy. Hey, where are they going? They're bowling themselves over to the streak, Rocky. I think they're curious. Yeah, they're, they're making gestures towards the hatch. Well, if you could call them gestures, come on. It's fantastic the way they balance on one leg and... Use the other two like arms. They, they seem to have four joints in each limb. Yeah, but I don't care how many joints they've got. I don't like them so close to the street. I'm sure there's no danger. I'm picking up a terrific feeling of curiosity. What manner of thing is this? How does it fly with great flame and noise? They, they want to know about the street. Yeah, well, don't tell them, Rocky. I don't trust them. Explain this mystery. There is great heat and flame and noise, and the strange craft shoots upwards at great speed. Hey, talk about nosy. But wait a minute. How do they know that's what takeoff looks like? They only saw us land. Oh, they must have seen some other ship. The Taurus, Mitch. Huh? The Taurus. Wait, wait, I'll ask them. Other ship like this? You saw smoke and flame with another ship? Yes. It shot upwards with great noise. Were there people? People? What people were there? Well, they don't get it. Uh, beings, as we are. Were there beings in this ship? As you. A unity. A unity? They must mean three. They have three of everything. 
So that would be a, a unity to them. One made high pipings. The vibrations were shrill. High in piping? That'd be a girl's voice. That settles it, Mitch. The Taurus has been here. That's how she got through all that rubbish in the rings. They guided her in. And she got away again, too. Well, that's a relief. Ask him for the course, Rocky. Yeah, sure, Mitch. Tell us the course that we may leave. The course, the direction for the ship to travel upwards. Not answering. The course. The course. The course, you bone-headed, uh, uh, bone-middled. Oh, I give up. A g- g- guy hasn't even got the right words to, to abuse these things. Well, they, they must know what we want. Please. Please tell us the course to travel away. Let us examine this marvelous craft that brought you here. First, tell us the calculations for the course for leaving. We would examine this wonderful craft. I'm sure they know what we want, but they won't tell. Yeah, we'll have to humor them. What? And let them fool about with the old streak, Ruggy boy? Well, we've got to get their good wishes, Mitch. Then they'll tell us what we want to know. Inside this craft, what things are inside? We will show you. But, Rocky, how can we? They breathe a methane atmosphere. Inside the streak, it's ordinary air. Well, we can pump the air into pressure cylinders and then open both airlocks and let in this atmosphere of theirs. Come on, let's do it. Die. What's the atmosphere reading now? Very low oxygen. Getting close to crude vacuum. Uh-huh. And we'd better open the airlock. See to it, Mitch, will you? All right, Rocky boy, but I don't like it. Here comes the methane atmosphere. Mitch, disconnect the power just as a precaution. That's the first sensible thing you've said in half an hour. Come on, Di. We'll invite them in. Oh, it seems fantastic inviting such weird things aboard the streak. And we've met some weird ones in our time. You know, they must have tremendous intelligence. How could they compute a course through all that whirling rock in the rings is beyond me. They must make a deep study of those things. There they are, waiting. Yeah. Better have only a couple, or say, three. Come on. Eh. The atmosphere is right. You may enter the ship, but only three. Rocky. Rocky, they're all coming. <laughs> only three. Three. It's a stampede. I, uh, die, I can't stop them. Oh, Rocky, I only hope they mean the streak no harm. <laughs> Standing hopelessly by, Rocky and I watch the crowded mass of tripeds whirl up the ramp and disappear through the airlock into the street. Will they harm the streak? What treatment are they in store for those second visitors to their isolated world? There is thrilling action ahead, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> While the Taurus cruises around Saturn, anxiously searching for a rescue ship with her radar, the streak is hidden beyond the whirling debris of the Saturnian rings. On the strange satellite to which they have been guided, Rocky, Mitch and I have been trying to make friends with the tripeds of the Hopatai. The tripeds have expressed a desire to examine their ship, so the streak is filled with their methane atmosphere. But when Rocky indicates that three may enter, the whole crowd whirls forward and swarms through the airlock. Rocky, what should we do? They mean to damage the streak. Come on, Di. We must get to the control deck. Hey, Rocky boy, where are you? Rocky, can you hear me? Coming, Mitch. Where are you? Control deck. The ship's swarming with those things. Well, try and stop them touching anything. Rocky! Rocky, they're everywhere! All right. Come on, push through, Di. Oh! Oh! Oh, those awful feel of things at the end of their limbs! Oh, they're pulling at my spacesuit! Yeah, mine too. 
Stop! Don't touch! Uh, Come on, Di. Keep pushing through. Stop it! uh, They're letting me pass. Yeah, it'll be better when we get through this narrow passageway. Hey, Rocky boy, can you hear me? Are you coming? Yes, Mitch. We're coming. Have patience. Patience? And I'm getting pawed all over by those things. They're under controls, too. Thank heavens we disconnected them. Yeah, here are the steps, Di. Come on, up you go. Oh, Rocky. Rocky, the control deck's crowded with them. Force your way through. Come on. Oh, I'll try. Keep away. Here you are, Di. Where's Rocky? Coming, oh. if I can possibly get through. Oh, Rocky, boy, we got to get them out of here. I know. They'll have things smashed the way they're going. Hey, leave those controls alone. Get away. Oh, what was that? One pushed his paw through the radar screen. Rocky. We must get them away from that electrical equipment. Here, push, Mitch. Come on, use force. With pleasure. Back. Come on, back. Go ahead. Go. Go, Go, you understand. Die. Die, you keep with us. Yes, Rocky. Back. Come on, back. Will you get back? Perhaps if we club them with our ray gun. Yeah, but if we anger them, we'll never get out. Uh, Hey, they're falling back. They're falling back. Not a sound coming from them. My ray gun, as soon as I pulled it out, the ones near me nearly fell over themselves trying to get away from it. Yeah, they've evidently seen a ray gun before. All right, put it away, Mitch. Oh, not me, Rocky boy. Look how quiet they are. We must persuade them to leave while they're quiet and receptive, Rocky. Yes, I'll try, Di. Try and understand my thoughts. You must understand. Too many here. Too many. You must go. Go away! We were asked to look at the ship. A telepathic voice. Yeah, Rocky's getting through. Shh, quiet you two a minute. There are too many. I said three. Three only to come. You did not understand. You have destroyed equipment. See. See how it's broken. I think they're catching on, Rocky. They're looking at that broken screen. We do not understand these things. Then you must leave. All leave. You have behaved badly. Please. Yeah, go. Scram, vamoose. Rocky, look. They're leaving. Maybe, maybe we've been a bit too hard on them. They turned as soon as I said that about behaving badly. Uh, Don't kid yourself, Rocky boy. It was because I waved this ray gun at them, that's why. That's what persuaded them. Nothing of the sort. I I think they have higher feelings. It did appear as if they felt shame, Rocky. Oh, shame, my foot. They were just plain scared. Oh, Mitch, I'm sure it wasn't that. Can you believe what you like, Rocky boy? Hold hands with them if you want to. All three of them. I'd sooner put my trust in this gun. Now, Mitch, please don't use that. It's an order. Oh, but Rocky boy... Stop arguing, you two. We'd better make sure they've left. Yes, right. Mitch, you search the ship. Di, close the airlock door as soon as you're sure she's empty. Okay, Rocky. Are you going to check controls, Rocky? Oh, well, that can wait till we can work without spacesuits, Di. I'm going to get rid of this methane atmosphere first. I'll start the equipment going. Then, while it's building up normal air in here, we can go outside and have a short look around. Now, come on. Let's get moving. <laughs> While the Streak's crew take steps to bring back a normal atmosphere in their ship, the Taurus is still circling Saturn, looking for them. But not a sign has been shown on the radar screen. Suddenly, Ivan switches off the equipment and turns to Paul. Well, what does that mean, Ivan? Are you giving up? Oh, we've traveled over 200,000 miles and not a sign. Well, we must have been mistaken about the ship, that's all. But... Well, what else could have caused the signals we picked up that time? I, I don't know. But if there had been a search ship anywhere around Saturn, the radar must have picked it up. Yeah, I suppose so. But, well, you don't think we might have missed it? How could we? The radar has been scanning in all directions. We have all watched in turn. Yeah. Well, what now? Do we try and get back to Earth by ourselves? Well... That was what we decided. Yeah, I know, but the question is, how do we do it? I haven't any idea which way is Earth. Have you? No. The best thing possible will be to switch the reflector telescope through to the screen. Then we can try and decide. We're hardly in a cheerful spot, are we? 
Space stretching forever on all sides of this planet. And one direction leads to Earth. But which? Oh, we... we may discover... Well, how can we? Oh, look at it there on the screen. We can set off in any direction. That's easy enough. But pick the wrong one and we go on and on forever. Oh, Earth must be visible somewhere. Hey, is that the biggest magnification you can get? I will try for bigger. Oh, yeah. That's doing it. It's getting much bigger now. Oh, what's the use? It is still just a scattering of hundreds of stars. As you say, to pick... Paul? Yeah, what is it? Look, look, this star is right. Does its light have a bluish tinge to your eye? Where? I can't see any blue star. There. You see the three like a triangle. Look, a little more towards the corner. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I think you're right, Ivan. It appears blue. No doubt of it. S say, you don't think that... Earth is a blue star. Yeah, we saw that clearly enough as we left it behind. Oh, Ivan, it's a cinch. Look, all we have to do is head for that. Wait a minute. If it is Earth, I mean, how do we know there may be more blue stars? Oh, look, what do you have to be so difficult for? We didn't see any others like that on the way out, did we? No, only Earth. So for the love of Pete, get a course on that and let's get started for home. But if... Oh, all right, you are probably right. It must be Earth. You go and tell Emma. Oh, no, let her sleep. <laughs> It'll be a nice surprise for her when she wakes up. You going to change course, Ivan? We must do something. We can hardly stay forever flying around Saturn. Stand by. Change course now. <laughs> Under the lateral thrust of her deflector rockets, the Taurus swings sharply away from Saturn. His eyes glued to the screen, Ivan continues to blast at intervals, then relaxes. The ship is now streaking out into space toward the distant blue star. Back on the planetoid, Rocky is waiting for the streak's atmosphere to reach normal again. Do you think things will be all right in the streak yet, Rocky? No, Di. It'll need another ten minutes yet. Then do you think... Go that... right ahead with your investigations. I don't mind. Well, it is fascinating out here, Rocky. It looks as though they never have rain. Those spiky-looking plants must somehow make their own moisture. Uh, so? <laughs> you don't sound very interested. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just keeping an eye on those tripods. You know, they're watching us all the time. Do you think they're angry, resentful, or what? Well, it's hard to say, Di. Those eyes are unfathomable. <laughs> you can't tell what they're thinking. I wonder where... Rocky! Di, come quick! Rocky! It's Mitch. What's up now? Hey, yeah, Mitch, what is it? Look around, Rocky, the streak. Look at it, it's rising from the ground. She's what? It's Rocky! He's right, Di. Did you disconnect those controls, Mitch? Of course I did. Anyway, Rocky, there's, there's no propulsion blast. Just floating straight up. It's fantastic. Come on. What are you going to do? Well, I, I don't know. But if that ship comes down again, I want to be somewhere near. Rocky, what goes on? How could the streak fly like well, that? Well, I don't know, Mitch. Don't run underneath it. She might come down with a bang. Yeah, but what's doing it? That's what I want to know. Rocky, look. The tripeds all seem excited. Yeah, you're right. Say, do you think they might know something about this? Maybe some pals of theirs are inside. But you said you could find none, Mitch. Yeah, I know, but look at the streak, will you? She must be over 100 feet and still rising. I'm going to try and get to the bottom of this. Now, quiet a minute while I try and get through to them. Listen. Listen to my thoughts. Why does our ship rise? Tell me. Listen. Oh, you'll never get through, Rocky. They're too excited. Mitch, I've got to. They might wreck the streak. If it's really anything to do with them. Mitch, pay attention. Please, pay attention. The ship, the ship up there, why does it rise? Why Rocky, does... Rocky, look. What is it? The streak. It's coming down again. It's falling fast. Rocky, it's going to crash. The streak's going to crash. <laughs> Helplessly, the three friends watch as the great bulk of the streak swoops downwards. Nothing can prevent a crash. Will she be damaged? And how can Rocky and his crew get away from this strange place? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In space, an adventure with 
Rocky Star! <laughs> The Taurus, after cruising right around Saturn, has found no trace of another ship. But when Ivan turns to the reflector telescope, he suddenly notices a star with a bluish tinge. Convinced that it is Earth, he alters course toward it. Meanwhile, on the planetoid, Rocky, Di, and Mitch are waiting for the Streak air-making plant to return her air to normal. But their explorations outside the ship are interrupted by a sudden yell from Mitch as the Streak rises swiftly above the ground. Then, just as suddenly, Di yells over the intercom. Rocky! It's going to crash. The streak's going to crash. Yeah, she's dropping like a stone. She'll be wrecked. We'll be trapped on this place. Wait. Look, it's it's slowing up. It, it's hovering in the air. I don't get it. It's sinking again. Slowly, thank heaven. Only another 15 feet. Oh, the suspense is killing me. If that ship gets damaged, Rocky, I... Oh, she fell the last few feet. Yes, come on. Let's get in there. Oh, that ship's damaged. Those crummy tripods did anything... Let me work the airlock door, Rocky. Let me do it, huh? Now, come on, we don't need airlock routine. Where's that button? Hey, the inner door won't open. The crash must have jammed it. I know it. I'll belt the scales off those tripods with this. Hey, I'll... Mitch, try pressing the right hey, button. Uh, what? It... The right button. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This goes to show, Mitch. Get excited and you don't think straight. Oh, never mind a calm talk. Let's just go. Come on, let's get inside. Oh, I know what I need. Those crummy things. Three of them up here. Right? Hey, they're kind of still, aren't yeah, they? Wait a moment. Let's see. They're dead. Well, so they should. Hey, Mitch, that's no way to talk. Well, they nearly wrecked the streak. And whose fault is it that they're here? Huh? Well, you were supposed to search the ship and see that they'd all left. I, well, I, hey. Well? Sorry, Rocky. All right. Now, just calm down for a moment. What killed them, Di? Was it the crash? Did you notice the gauge? Normal atmosphere in here now. They couldn't breathe it. Oh, they trapped themselves. How do you know they breathe at all? They, they don't seem to have any noses. They absorb it through the skin. See those large pores all open? Yeah, trying to get the methane they needed. Hey, hello. What goes, Rocky? None of these controls have been touched. You know, they can't even have tried to have worked them. Well, wouldn't have done them much good anyway. I told you, I disconnected the power. Then just what power did they use to make the streak rise? Could it have... Could it have been thought power? Oh, Rocky, that seems fantastic. Well, Di, remember how she fell? Like a stone, then slowed and stopped. Then gradually slipped down. Now, doesn't that seem like what would happen if they were struggling to keep her in the air and found themselves getting weaker? It gives me the creeps just to think about it. Come on, let's check and make sure she's okay. Yeah, we'd better let the tripeds know what happened to these three. You start checking, Mitch. I'll go to them. Did you tell Rocky everything's okay, Di? Yes. He said to go over it again and make sure... What's the matter? Doesn't he trust me? Well, we have a space motto, remember? Check and double check. Saves the spaceman's neck. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, man, doesn't it feel good to be out of spacesuits for a while? The, well, what was Rocky's report in the hull? Oh, dented plates underneath. Mm. A couple of buckled bulkheads, but no real weakness. Yeah, it's just as well. Did he check that twice? Oh, here he comes. Ask him for yourself. Mitch, die. go over to the window and look out. Well, what goes on now? I'm not sure. Here, come over here. Is it the tripeds again, Rocky? Yes. See? Over there? Mm -hmm. The three they fetched from here, they've laid them out on what looks like a, a metal platform. Where? Oh, yeah, I see it. What are they going to do that for? Perhaps some sort of funeral. But it's, it's just a plain metal platform. Hey, look, look, some of the others are getting on it. They're squatting down. Almost as if they expected to take them somewhere. Oh, but how could they get... Hey... You do see what I can see. Hey, the platform's rising from the ground. Just like the street did. No motors, didn't it? No, it's nothing. Incredible. And now it, it's gliding away. You know, it must be their form of transport. They must be able to lift things by thought power. The longer I stay in this place, the more nervous I get. Hey, you must win the confidence of those things. We can't leave here unless they give us the course, Mitch. 
H- how did they seem when you went out to them, Rocky? Well, Di, it's so hard to judge what they feel. But I'm sure that they were suspicious. Perhaps even hostile. I tried to get it across to them that the accident was caused by their own uncontrolled eagerness. But whether they understood, I... Yeah. What, Rocky? Those three bowling across to us now. It looks like some sort of a delegation. It looks like some sort of zany acrobatic act to me. They seem to know we're watching them from here. Yeah. Look, they've stopped just below. I, I wonder why they... Yeah, they're beckoning again. They want us for something. Well, don't have anything to do with them, Rocky. But I have to if we're to get that course. But, Rocky, if, as you said, they may be hostile... I'll have to risk that, die. They may want me for something, and there's only one way to find out what it is. Pass me my space helmet. Rocky slips the clear plastic dome over his head, and with a reassuring grin at the other two, makes his way to the airlock. At this moment, the Taurus is far out in space, and two anxious figures are studying a star through the reflector telescope. What do you think, Paul? Does it appear to you that it is Earth? It could be. It's sort of similar. Oh, similar is not good enough. It must be Earth. It's, well... Oh, well, look, look, it's still a little far away to see properly. I mean, the continents aren't clear yet. But, but, but they are there. The division between sea and land, it is definite. Oh, it must be Earth. It's blue just like it, and... And what? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to make out the shape of that big continent stretching from top to bottom. That should be America. Yes. Paul, let us be honest. Honest? We both know that planet is not Earth. The continent, though still bloody shaped, nothing like America. You know that. Oh, yeah. But if it isn't Earth, where are we? And what do we do now? We could be anywhere in space. Probably twice as far from Earth as ever. That's what I was afraid of. Well, do we change course or, or what? Well, I, I have been thinking. The blue color. Earth has a blue sky because of the ozone on oxygen atmosphere. Very likely this planet, too, has an oxygen atmosphere. Well, that'd mean we could live there if necessary. Then we stay on course and see what we shall find. Yeah, what can we lose? Should we tell Elmer? No, let her go on sleeping. She must have been very tired. It will be a surprise for her. A pleasant one, I hope. I wonder just what we'll find on that place. Yes. I wonder. want to come inside our ship again. But last time we let you in, there was great trouble. There are wonders we do not understand. We wish to learn. How many of you this time? A unity. Only a unity. Three. Then listen to my thoughts. I have things I want to understand. You brought us to this satellite through all the rock up in the rings. We must know the course before we can leave here. You must tell us the calculations. Calculations, of course. You understand? We wish to examine the inside of the ship. Hey, Rocky, what goes on? You want right out here? Mitch didn't need to come. Why, it was so long I got jittery, so I climbed into a space suit just in case... Thought Rocky Boy might need you, Mitch, so here I am. Well, thanks. Now, just keep quiet a moment. Very fine sense of gratitude, I must say. Please, Mitch. Okay, don't mind me. Listen, creatures of Hoppetai. You shall see the ship. You shall see. But you must give us the course. Understand? The course. It is understood. Yet, when you have knowledge, you will leave us. There are many wonders about you we would understand. Now, would they? Quiet, Mitch. You mean to keep us here? Is that your plan? Only till we learn much of you. Then you may leave. How can I know if that is true? Are these 
true words? Show us the ship, and we must repay. All right. Looks as if I will have to trust you. Come on, Mitch. We'll give the ship a methane atmosphere again. Rocky. Oh, Rocky, I- I'll help you up with your helmet. Oh, thanks, I. I- I've been waiting to hear. What happened? What did they want? To see the ship again. Wouldn't it make you space sick? Come on, Mitch. Let's get that atmosphere changed. Okay, okay, I'm gone. They want to see the ship die, and I have to humor them. They won't give us the course until they've learned all they can about us. Oh, I wonder what's happened to those kids in the Taurus. Well, that's what's worrying me. And we have no real guarantee the tripeds will play fair either. But don't tell Mitch that. I wish I knew why they want to learn about us, Rocky. So do I. We'll climb into our spacesuit and get ready to do as you're told. We'll have to trust them, Di, and I only hope we can. Trying to remain calm, Di reaches for her spacesuit. There are thrilling developments ahead in the story of these adventures in space, so don't miss the next exciting chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost! In space. Lost in space. An adventure with Rocky Star. On the satellite planetoid in the rings of Saturn, Rocky, Di, and Mitch are in a dilemma. To pilot the streak away through the whirling debris of the rings is beyond them. Yet the strange three-legged creatures that brought them there have some means of calculating a course. So to humor them and win their confidence, Rocky has allowed three tripeds to come aboard the streak. Now Di and Mitch stand by and watch while Rocky tries to explain the controls. You know what, Ty? I reckon Rocky's getting nowhere fast. I don't know, Mitch. Hey, look at him there, gesturing and talking himself right in the face. Look at the eyes of those things. Blank. They don't get a bar of it. It's so hard to tell with them. Rocky's trying hard. Yeah, screw his thing since he turned his mic off. Him talking 20 to the dozen inside his helmet and we can't hear a word. Well, he doesn't have to be heard. It's his thoughts that he has to get across to them. You do seem to be right, though, Mitch. I don't think they do understand. Oh, what goes on? What's Rocky doing? He just explained takeoff procedure, I think. He seems to be inviting the tripeds to try the controls. Oh, just as well we got the power cut. Giggling grasshoppers. I wish this place had a normal atmosphere. I'm getting sick and tired of having to do everything in a spacesuit. Filling the streak with methane and stuff just so deep. Mitch, look. Huh? You were right. They have no idea. They folded themselves down to the seats. But they, they just seem to be going into a trance. Oh, look, I've had those things. Haven't a kid, a lot of moronic monsters so we can get away. Oh, I wonder if they're the only form of life here. Hmm? You can see quite a long way through the window on this side. He, come across here, Mitch. That's not my idea of a view. Blue soil with brown spikes growing out of it. Look at that. Mitch. Huh? Right across there. Over near the far hill, see? Yeah, some sort of a dome. Hey, there's another one over there. That's what these things live in. But there hardly seems enough. Only two in sight. And... Mitch, look down. Down? But what? Giggling grasshoppers. Am I seeing things? It's 20 feet away. We're rising, Mitch. Those tripeds. They're just sitting there in a in a sort of trance. Oh, enough of this. Rocky, can you hear me? You got your intercom on, Rocky. What is it, Mitch? We're going up, straight up like a balloon. Are you sure? Yes, Rocky. The ground's... 40 or 50 feet away now. But those things. But do something, Rocky. Stop them. Yeah, let me see. Excuse me, Di. Yeah, rising rapidly. A perfect lift. There isn't the slightest sense of movement. This is amazing. I was giving up in despair because they didn't seem to understand at all. And here they are, flying the street without needing control. We're going forward. Look, we've stopped climbing. We're going forward. Can you do things like that without motors? It, it just ain't natural. Their mental power must be tremendous. When you think of the weight of the street... I think we're losing height. We're gradually gliding down. Power's failed. They're going to drop us down and wreck us. Yeah, they still seem the same. They must be landing. We've stopped going forward, Rocky. We're sinking down. They are landing it. 
with acceleration, jets now nothing. Everything's supported and controlled by thought. Well, I think of that other time. Let's start concentrating. Come on, concentrate. Gently, gently down. Gently. Concentrate! We're down, Rocky. No thud. Hardly a vibration. Ah, oh, it was my thinking, did it, I bet. <laughs> Boy, I've never thought so hard in my life. What an experience! Well, one thing's clear. These tripeds have no understanding of mechanical things. It's all mental with them. Well, perhaps now they'll give us the course to leave. Yeah, ask them, Rocky. You ask them right now. You go ahead and ask them. Hey, they're not moving. I think they're exhausted, Rocky. And no wonder after what they've just done. We'll simply have to wait until they recover. <laughs> While the streak remains a prisoner on the planetoid, the ship she is seeking is far out in space. But on board, all hopes of reaching Earth have been shattered, as Ilma, Paul, and Ivan stand gazing at the telescreen. Not Earth? Then what planet can it be? Probably one that's not known. Why didn't you call me earlier? We thought it best to let you sleep. All we could do at the time was make wild guesses. Well, it's clear enough on the screen now. Yellow, green seas and... The land's all grey and green and brown. We're further away from Earth than ever, aren't we? I can find no mention of a planet like this on the astronomical charts. We must have travelled far beyond Saturn. Cloud. Look, Gilmer. Ivan, look. Clouds, just like we have on Earth. Far beyond Saturn? Then it's hopeless, isn't it? Oh, these clouds are a good sign, Ilma. The atmosphere will be normal. Normal? How can you call anything normal when we don't even know where we are? Well, at least we'll be able to breathe there. We can breathe here in the ship. Never to see Earth again. Just to know it's somewhere, millions of miles in space. Somewhere. Ilma, please. People laughing and talking. Houses and beaches and music, and it's all lost. Ilma. It's all lost, Ivan. Lost like we are. Lost. Shut up, you. Here, shut up, Ivan. Oh. I'm sorry, Ilma, but I had to shake you like that. But you must stop. You must control yourself, Ilma. Why can't you leave her alone, Ivan? We must make the best of what's happened. If we give up hope, we really will be lost. That's no reason for you to ball her out like that. He's right, Paul. Sorry, Eva. It just seemed to sweep over me. I am sorry, too, Emma. I won't let go again. I promise. If we can't keep calm, we won't have a hope, will we? And there is always a chance that we will find our way back to Saturn. Well, the best thing we can do is resign ourselves to the fact that we're lost. Make the best we can of it. At, at least we've found a planet with air on it. Oh, so it seems. Then do we land? Well, wouldn't it be better to spy out what the place is like first? Mm, yes, I think so. We will go into an orbit around the planet and, and inspect it carefully. Agreed? Agreed. Then stand by. I will reduce speed. Yeah, that should do it nicely. In a couple of hours or so, we should know whether it will be safe to land. Boy, the tripeds are coming around. Yes, they're stirring. Let's chase them out of the streak so we can get back to normal atmosphere in here again, huh? I'm tired of wearing a spacesuit all the time. Oh, uh, we'll see, Mitch. They seem excited, Rocky. Yeah, the way they're turning to us, I, I think they're trying to say something. Oh, I wish someone would teach them to talk. All this telepathy business gives me a, oh, a headache. Ship. Your ship. I, I just got a bit of that telepathic voice. Yes, yeah, so did I, Di. Concentrate. Your ship, we have flown. Not as we fly, your way, not ours. But we have flown. You showed us your secrets, and we have flown. Oh, they just don't understand, Rocky. We use other power, atomic power, not mine. You use mind. This is a mystery. We do not understand. Yeah, I might as well try to teach a fish to grow feathers. Give us understand of these things. We wish understanding. But how? It seems impossible when they just don't comprehend. Just tell them they're too dumb, Rocky. We got places to go, that's all. Yeah, we still depend on them for that course, Mitch. You 
must give us knowledge if you would have it from us. Blackmail? Well, there's only one way. Hmm? A practical demonstration. Yeah. I'll take them for a short trip under rocket power. But, Rocky, the ring's up there. Uh, don't worry, Di. I'll keep low. Connect up the power, Mitch. Okay. I hope this satisfies them. Set height 20,000 feet. That should be safe. Yes, Rocky. We won't need high velocity as we're not making for space. It should be easy acceleration. Power connected, Rocky. Right. Stand by for low velocity takeoff. Firing rockets. <laughs> The tripads, they're terrifying. It's all right. All right. Safe. You understand? Safe. Oh, they'll get used to it, Di. Keep an eye on that height gauge. Yes, accelerating. 10,000. They're settling down, Rocky. They seem to be getting excited. 15,000. All right, I'll start leveling off. It is a thing of wonder. It is. Is wonder. Wonder. They are getting excited. You understand our way? You you understand? You give no thought to the craft, yet it carries you. It is a great marvel. A skillful marvel. Yeah, looks like we really showed them something, Rocky. How huh? we stunned them with science. It's fantastic. They must only have developed the use of their thought power. They have no understanding of mechanical things at all. Well, they're getting an hour, though. Look at them. Hey, they're certainly impressed. Mm. Standing there, swaying and caressing the control panel with those feelers of theirs. Rocky, not only the panel, but the controls, too. You'd better stop them. Oh, yes, if I don't... Hey, Rocky, that one's got his flipper under the flicker rocket button. Look out! Stop me for it! Uh. Uh. Rocky, he's fired! Here, grab something quickly. Look out! We're going down sideways! The control deck slopes perilously. Desperately, Rocky clutches at a seat as Earthmen and tripeds all slither to the low side in a tangled heap. Every second, the plunging streak draws closer to the ground below. Will Rocky be able to right her in time? There is thrilling action ahead, so don't miss the next exciting chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Only the tripeds can give Rocky the course calculations that will take the streak away from their satellite safely through the Saturnian ring. But in exchange, the strange three-legged creatures want to learn how the Earth people do things. In an endeavor to explain the streak, Rocky takes three of them for a short flight. At first, they're terrified, then excited. But when they start caressing the control panel with their feelers, one accidentally presses the button for deflector rockets and sets them firing. As the deck tips crazily beneath them, Rocky grabs at a seat. Rocky! We'll crash! Not if I can help it. If I can only reach the deceleration rocket. Make it snappy, Rocky boy. There's going to be an awful bump in a minute. I got it! Now we're losing speed. Giggling grasshoppers were close. You'll never straighten her out of this angle, Rocky. I'll have to risk deflection rockets. Oh, Rocky, they might crash it. Well, it's our only chance, Di. Here goes. Hey, she's straight, ma'am. Yeah, we're on her feet from the ground. I can't bear to look. Uh, she's level. Edge hopping at 1,500 miles an hour. Man, that hill. Uh, I saw it. Oh, my stomach. Oh, I'm sorry, but I had to give her a big burst. You all right, Di? Oh, oh I think so. Yeah, we're gaining height now. Now oh, the tripods. How do you tell? They got no faces. Well, I'd say they were terrified. Yeah, but they're not the only ones. That was terrific work, Rocky. Uh, I'm starting to get the reaction now. Oh, all shaky. You'd like me to take over? Yeah, thanks. But from the look of you, I'd say you were worse. Where would you be if you'd had three tripeds roll on top of you? <laughs> you got to change course again? Yes, Mitch. We'll swing round in a circle and land back where we started from. Okay, stand by it. Uh, 
as her deflector rockets flare, the streak swings in a smooth curve. The three space-suited figures relax, but in a corner of the control deck, the tripeds crouch, their limbs still covering their single eyes in terror. Millions of miles away, the Taurus is cruising through a different atmosphere. High up in her orbit around the blue planet, Ilma, Paul and Ivan are anxiously studying the land below. The grey-green and the brown is definitely vegetation of some sort. But yellow-green sea. The water must be very different from what we know on Earth. I don't know, Ilma. Remember when we picked up that little river in the viewer? It looked quite clear. Oh, I didn't see that. I think it could be safe to land. What is the atmosphere analysis now? I'll check the gauges. Oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide. Sounds like ordinary air. I cannot understand why you, why we have seen no sign of life. Probably we were up too high when we circled around before. Yeah. Well, now we've dropped lower. And yet... Hey. Get an eye full of that. Where? Beyond that clump of vegetation. Bring up the focus, Yvonne. It's buildings. A city. Look, Yvonne. Then there are people here. What kind, I wonder? Look at the buildings. Towers and spires and... And all lacy and frothy looking. <laughs> yes, pink and white. Oh, they look so dead. Oh, sure. Different from the way we do things back on Earth. Hey, there's something moving down there, see? Yes, vehicles of some sort. It is still too far away to see them clearly. It gives you a funny feeling, doesn't it? People living way out here in space and, and no one on Earth ever knew. And they know nothing of Earth. Well, what do we do now? I think we should land. What if they're hostile? Why should they be? Well, you never know. Now we've got here, it'd be silly not to land, wouldn't it? Well, it's just that it's so so unknown, not knowing what to expect. Oh, still, all right, Ivan, go ahead. Right. I'll fire deceleration rockets so we lose speed and drop from the orbit downwards. <laughs> That's the drill, isn't it? So the book says. Then stand by. Firing deceleration rockets. <laughs> be prepared for a landing. We are going down. Swiftly, the Taurus drops toward the planet below. The increasing air pressure howls outside the hull. The land draws rapidly closer, takes form and shape. Ahead, there is more vegetation. The spires of another city flash below and are gone. Vegetation, an open space, and Ivan's fingers are stabbing at the control panel. Safety belt, stand by. We're going down too fast. Losing speed quickly now. Well, we are down. A little bumpy, I'm afraid, but we are down. Great, Ike. I thought we'd never stop. You are all right, Ilma? I am now. Well, we have found a world. Not the world we wanted, but a world. Yeah. Oh, come on. Let's find out if we'll be able to live out there. I wonder what kind of people live in that city and whether they will be friendly. Landing, Rocky. Oh, the tripod seemed to have recovered. Yeah, that's a pity. Merch. Oh, don't be so high principled all the time, Rocky. They nearly wrecked a streak for us, didn't they? Well, that was an accident. They they didn't understand. Yeah, they don't seem to understand anything, except saying no every time we ask them for the course out of here. They're as bad as the old time Russians way back at the beginning of the atomic age. Oh, Mitch, really? You're as bad as a Martian magpie, oh, chattering and a Martian magpie, just chattering and complaining all what? the time. What? Get her! You heard. Quiet now, Mitch, please. I, I want to talk to them. You have seen our way of flight. You understand now? It seemed of great danger. Danger? Why, you mallet-headed monstrosities, if you Quiet, have... Mitch, please, for heaven's sake. Danger was accident. Must not touch wrong control. You understand? This control, wrong it is understood. You are people of great skill. You are great thinkers. You calculate a course through the whirling rock up above. Tell us the course now. Yeah, tell us. This is not the time. We would learn more of you. Oh, no. What things would you learn? What things? 
You have great skills unknown to us. You are greatly different. You say that again. Three legs! <laughs> But we are anxious to leave this place. We must find the other ship. Give us the course now. Not so. Not now. Come with us. Come to Ihapitai. What's that? Our city. It is our city. Come now. Rocky, what do you think? Oh, I, I don't know, Di. Well, I do. I'm hungry. I want to get the streak back to a normal atmosphere so we can climb out of these spacesuits and have a feed. Yeah, I'm a bit empty myself. Oh, we haven't eaten for hours. Tell them we'll come when we've had a meal. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, attend to my thoughts. We are hungry. We wish to eat. Leave the ship so we can breathe our own atmosphere and can eat. Then we will come. You understand? We, we understand. But what is eat? What is eat? How ignorant can you get? Uh, eat uh, food. Take food into the body to supply strength and life. Surely you eat. Take substances into the body? That is eat. Hmm? Yeah, chew. You know, you know, chew and swallow. Digest in here. It sounds a crude and disgusting thing to do. But surely you must eat. Many ages ago, our ancestors did these crude things. We have developed beyond this. Energy is all around to be taken. We have not reached that stage yet. We must eat. We will leave you to your primitive habits. We go. I'll show you the way with the greatest of pleasure. Follow me. Come on. I'll let right through the airlock. Hey, Mitch. Huh? See you in a few moments. Start the pump and drive this methane atmosphere out, Di. Yes, Rocky. Well, they've gone, Rocky. Why do you say it like that? I'm wondering if we're going to be worse off than ever now. Well, why should we be? Didn't you see how disgusted they were with us? When they found that we have to eat to live? Well, yes, I, I did, but... Well, I'm not going to let that interfere with my enjoyment of food. But if they think less of us because of it, they may never give us the course calculations. Well, they, they said they would. Well, that was before. Now I feel our position's been weakened. I don't know about our position, but I'll be weakened, all right, if I don't get something to eat soon. Why are you making them things, criticizing us for enjoying a square meal? Guy thinks it's lost face for us and spoiled our chances. Look, Rocky, why do we have to carry on with all this polite stuff to a lot of three-cornered gizmos like them? They are creatures of very high intelligence, Mitch. So what? Look, all a guy's got to do is wave a ray gun under their noses. They haven't got noses, Mitch. Well, where the noses ought to be. They come across with that coarse but fast. You don't believe in force. Not against creatures that have shown no real evil towards us. Well, I don't believe in been given the runaround by something without enough feeling to enjoy a good meal. Hey, Mitch. Huh? Rocky, he's got a ray gun with him. Hey, Mitch, come back. Oh, I'll have to go after him. He'll spoil everything. He's at the airlock. Mitch! Don't worry, Rocky boy. Here I go. Rocky! Rocky, help me quick! Rocky! <laughs> There is terror in Mitch's voice as he calls urgently over the intercom. Rocky hurries to the airlock through which his friend has just passed. What danger waits outside? There is exciting action ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling episode of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> Lost in Space, an adventure with... Rocky Star! <laughs> Knowing that only the tripeds of a Hoppetai can give him the course to leave their planetoid, Rocky has been trying to win their friendship. 
But Mitch is impatient with such methods. He feels threats would bring much quicker results. Seizing a ray gun, he ignores Rocky's calls to stop and hurries from the ship. Rocky follows and suddenly hears Mitch's voice over the intercom, calling out in terror. Dashing through the open space lock, he is horrified to find his friend struggling to get free from what looks like a huge mass of red jelly. Mitch! Help me, Rocky! This thing's got me! Oh, great Scott! Quick, Rocky! It's sucking me in! I've, I've no gun! Where's yours? Quickly, Mitch! I dropped it! Do something! Quickly, Rocky! Uh, I see it! It's on the ground here! I'll soon blow... Ah! Oh, great heavens! <laughs> The fallen pistol is a foot away from the edge of the red mass, but as Rocky stoops to pick it up, two pulsating tentacles of red curl outwards and wrap themselves around him. Relentlessly, a great force draws him inwards. Scott, you Rocky! Oh, no! I, I can't break free! Try! Fire the gun! I can't, can't get my finger onto the trigger! Rocky, what, what do we do? Oh, it, it looks hopeless. Mitch, keep, keep struggling! No good, Rocky! No strength left. Uh, Rocky, I'm going. Rocky! Uh, a ray blast. Rocky, Mitch! Die! Chicken! Oh, what a sight. What a beautiful sight. Uh, it's still alive. Look out. I'm going to risk another blast. Uh, oh, you've, you've done it, Die. It's dead. Good old Die. Oh, it's... Oh, catch him, Rocky. I think he's going to fall. Uh, I, I've got him, Die. Here, quickly. Help me get him into the streak and out of the spacesuit quickly. Well, how are you feeling now, Mitch? Oh, I still get a touch of the horrors, but I get over that. Say, what was that thing? Oh, goodness knows. It was the most horrible looking thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it must swallow its victims completely in all that, that jelly or whatever it is. Ooh. Wonder how many more of them there are out here. Yeah. We'll have to be on the watch when we move about. Hey, do you notice our, our triped friends had cleared out? They, they, they must keep well clear of those things. Yeah, well, you can hardly blame them for that. Hey, and, and speaking of the tripeds, Mitch, I, I won't agree to use a force, but we're absolutely sure that there's no other way. It's not going to do any harm, Rocky boy. Just, just try a couple of threats. Well, we won't have even any threats. Not yet. Right? Okay, Rocky. Anyway, I suppose if I hadn't been so pig-headed about it, I wouldn't have ne been nearly eaten alive. Honestly, Di, when you fired that first ray blast, I was just about gone. Oh, thank heavens I heard your call on the intercom. You're quite sure you're all right, Mitch? Wonderful. Normal atmosphere, nice feed, lie down. <sighs> this is the life. Yeah, well, don't get too relaxed, Mitch. I have a feeling we should be getting outside again. That's funny. So do I, Rocky. Yeah, wait, wait a minute, just a moment. You know, wonder. Look, there's a group of tripeds out there again, and they're beckoning. Oh, no. Yeah, they have one of those platform sleds with them, too. That sounds as if they want to take us to their city. Oh, well, that means climbing into spacesuits again. You never said a truer word, Mitch. Well, come on, let's get it over. This visit may give us the very thing we need. The course calculations to leave here. I wonder where that Taurus is now. At the very moment Rocky wonders about her, the Taurus lies in an open space on a planet far away. The grey soil glints strangely, and all around is a brown wall of foliage. Ivan turns from a window, looks at Paul and Ilma for a moment, then says, Well, shall we take a risk and leave the ship? I feel horribly nervous about it. But we can hardly stay in here all the time, can we? It's more used to have landed if we don't leave the ship. Well, look. Before we make a move, just check everything again and put on the outside mic. No harm in making sure. Our first atmosphere, sure it's okay? Well, we took a sample. And breathing it left no ill effects. The temperature is 75 degrees, which is just pleasant. The gauges show no excessive solar radiation, so there's no danger there. And the gravitometer shows 0.92, which is nearly Earth gravity. Yeah, it should be safe. All right, then, let's... What's that? It, it comes from outside. Through the windows. Quickly look, boys. Where, Ilma? Up there. One's coming again. What is it? 
An aircraft? It is shaped like a ball. No, it's more like a teardrop, see? Slightly pointed at the back. Here comes another one. They must be aircraft. Investigating us. I hope they don't attack us. It's circling round and round above us. They do not appear to be making any hostile move. As long look, as... We... Look across there. What is it? Some sort of dome. It's moving. It is a half a sphere, like, like the top of an egg. Transparent, too. Made of clear plastic or something. There are more of them coming. They must be vehicles of some sort. But how do they move? I can't see any... Now look, they've got one, two, five balls underneath them. They move on balls instead of wheels. I wonder what sort of people they are. Well, we will soon learn. They're probably wondering the same thing about us. The masses of those things rolling towards us. You can see the people inside. They really look like people. Yeah, not like those ghastly tripeds. At least they seem to have two legs and two arms and a head. And there are women. Look, those are quite clearly women. You are right, Inla. They are very much like us. Oh, that's a relief. I couldn't bear... Oh, they're pulling up. See, the door. The plastic rolls back in some way. They're getting out. Dozens of them. All women so far. I can't see any... Hey, there aren't any. What for? Men, there aren't any men. Look at that crowd out there. They're all women. Paul points excitedly to the throng gathered outside the spaceship. The other two search the darn-covered pink faces curiously. He's right. There are no men. Only the shining, transparent, dome-shaped vehicles and a great crowd of women. Meanwhile, far away on the satellite of Saturn, three space-suited figures glide along a rocky tunnel on a flat platform of metal. Hey, Rocky, you got your intercom on? Yes, Mitch. Isn't this the screwiest feeling? It's like the old legend on a magic carpet. Only this one's metal. Just sailing along because a clutch of these... Tripod things are sitting all around us concentrating. I'd like a chance to examine the ruins we flew over. Di, do you think they were built by the tripeds? How can we tell? If they did build them, why are they now living in caves? Strange. Creatures with the power to propel us through the air by sheer mental force. And now this tunnel. Hey, look, I saw a huge cave ahead. We're coming down. Hey, reception committee waiting, too. Yeah, it looks like they're expecting us. But how do they know we're coming? Huh? Jiggling grasshoppers, I didn't think of that. Well, we're down. Perfect landing, too. Rocky, mm-hmm. this tripod hopping across to us, uh-huh. he looks like some kind of a leader. See? See how the others make way for him? Yeah. The others seem to want us to go across to him. Hey, maybe he'll give us the course calculation so we can get away from here, huh? Uh, I wouldn't bank on it, Mitch. Oh, well, come on. We'd better not let them separate us, Rocky. No, no. He seems to be welcoming us. Offering us the freedom of the city, maybe. Well, he can keep the freedom of this underground mine. Now, quiet a moment, Mitch White. Concentrate so that we can get a thought to us. Yeah. Telepathic voices again, huh? Shh. Welcome, two-legged creatures, to Hotatai. There. There, did you get that? Hey. We are honored to be here. Honored. We expected beings from far away in space, but it was not known there would be two visits to our globe. Two? And they did meet those kids from the towers. But how did they know we were coming? Hear my thoughts. In what way was it known to you we would come? In what way? The mind that has developed the study of time and space Knows many things. Yeah, then where do we come from? What's our planet? It is a place where there is much color like the soil of this globe. Blue? There is much of an element we do not know. It moves with great ease in many shapes and lies all over the planet. Water. Blue water. He really does know, Rocky. What more can you tell us of our home? Tell us more. There is a great destruction to come that we know. The catastrophe the president of the Solar Council spoke of. That's why we must find this heavy plutonium die. Then perhaps they can tell us where it is. Ask him, Rocky. No more questions. Come. Hey, they want us to go someplace. I don't like it. Uh, why must we come? What do you want with us? There are things that await you. What sort of things? What what things? Tell us what goes on. We have special plans for you. An entertainment. 
It is necessary that you take part. Rocky, I, I don't like the sound of that. What do they mean? I don't know, Di. I don't know. Well, I do. These monstrosities have got some unpleasant little experiment rigged up, and we're going to be the guinea pigs. Now, let's get out of here, Rocky. Let's get out before it's too late. <laughs> Armature spears to be justified. What do the tripeds plan to do to our friends? There is exciting action ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Rocky finds he cannot continue his search for the missing spaceship Taurus because it is impossible to leave the satellite of the Hoppetai. In an endeavor to learn the course, Rocky, Di, and Mitch have accompanied the tripeds to their crude underground city. Now they're informed that there is to be an entertainment in which they must take part, and they're conducted toward a large room. Mitch is obviously nervous as he says over the intercom, Hey Rocky, I don't like this. We don't know what funny tricks these things plan to start. Oh, we have the friendship to win, Mitch. Yeah. You know, it used to be an all-time book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I bet it never gave the low down the setup like this. As long as they realize we must keep our spacesuits on. Well, they must understand by now that we can't breathe their atmosphere, Di. Hello. This looks like the place. Yeah. All squatting around the ring. I think they want us to sit on the stone ledge over there. Hold your limbs and rest here. The telepathic voice. You're right, Di. Hold your limbs. I talked to a guy like he was a collapsible chair or something. <laughs> you sit between us, Di. Yeah, if any trouble breaks, Uncle Mitch will look after you, chicken. Don't worry. Well, that's a comforting thought, Mitch. But we mustn't look for trouble. Well, they don't appear to mean us any harm. We're just part of the circle of tripeds all squatted down. Yeah. But what happens next? There's some sort of a stone platform or, or throne in the middle. Yeah, where they make the sacrifice, I'll bet. Oh, Mitch, for goodness sake. Anyway, look, he's wrong. See, one of the tripeds is getting up on it. Maybe he's going to give a speech. This is entertainment? Listen to a speech by telepathy? He's swaying about and, and going into some sort of a trance. The way they always do when they concentrate. Look, so are the others. Hey! Maybe he's going to make the stone block fly around the cave with him. Rocky. Rocky, Mitch, did you hear that? There's music. Yeah. Here, here it comes again. Ah, that's the entertainment. He's creating music in his mind. And beaming it to us by telepathy. Shh, quiet, listen. It's getting stronger. This thing's giving me the creeps. Oh, quiet, Mitch. Yeah, but it does. Music and from nowhere, ju just out of the air. Well, you could say that of radio. It's just out of the air. Yeah, but you know, there's a disc or a tape or something being played at the radio station. But, 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 yeah, I this. know, Mitch, I know. It's incredible, but just pay attention and listen. Isn't that the most fantastic thing? Rocky, to think that one of these creatures can sit there and create music in his imagination, and we can hear it. It's almost unbelievable. Well, we use our hands to operate equipment. They use their minds. It's a big difference. Yeah. What's the matter, Mitch? You're very quiet all at once. I'm feeling kind of redundant. Redundant? What? Yeah, I'm, I'm not being funny, Rocky. I'm a, I'm a good radar engineer, one of the best. I can lick the pants off most guys with radio. Uh, it took me a lot of study and hard work to get that way. Uh, these things can, can can do a musical broadcast without a single wire or circuit or valve, without even a musical instrument. Will that make you feel a bit sick? Yes, I suppose so, but... It... Look... Look, the music maker's coming out of his trance. Yeah, it looks like he's going to contact us again. We can see you are impressed by our entertainment, strange ones. 
Shall I create more harmonics for you? What do you think, Rocky? Shall we have more music? No, no, no. Nix on that. It's too depressing. Hey, ask him if he can tell a story. All right. Yes, it may be an interesting experiment. Now, concentrate. My friend would like a story. Yeah, a story, you know. Uh, tell us, um... Uh, t- tell us something that's happened to you. Story. Story, see? I think he's got the idea. This could give us some idea of their lives. Yeah, but he's getting down from the platform. He's not going to play. No, look. There's another tripod coming for Hey, it's the leader. Oh, we're on it. He's going up onto the platform. Well, I hope it's a story with a bit of excitement in it. I don't go for music as entertainment. It's too tame. Look, he's swaying about. Now, let's concentrate and pay attention. We make our thoughts speak easily in your minds, two-legged ones. That is good. Otherwise, a story could not reach you. Hey, he's making a speech. Quiet, bitch. I will tell you of happenings long ago, and of our men who are ancient home. Open the eyes of your minds. Give up your thoughts. Out of time and space and the power of mind... I will conjure the shapes of a story. Dreamily, the three Earth people surrender themselves to the compelling power of the thoughts that surge through their minds. Then the stone walls of the place seem to dissolve in mist. The mist gives way to the darkness of space, and there is a planet swimming before them. Down they plunge to a city of gleaming metal, a city of three-legged people. And then they're in a glittering room and two of the people are talking in words that they understand. I have called you to me, Zutka, because I am gravely concerned for our people. Concerned? But our people are happy and secure and come in. Happy, yes. But secure, no. There is a great threat awaiting Amenahu, our planet. Threat? I see no evidence of threats. Then I shall show you. Watch the screen. The wall before you is nothing but a huge screen. What do you see? Nothing but space. Space and its stars. And our home, Zutka. Our planet, Amenahu. It drifts endlessly through space. We drift, but all our people know that is so. Other planets revolve in circles around some central sun. But the many who wanders endlessly. What is this to do with the threat to our people? On the screen you see the space towards which we are drifting. See, there. There is a planet. See, it is a speck of light. I will use the screen to bring it closer. A yellow planet. Is there peril in that? Our astronomers have studied carefully the course that that planet follows and the course on which we are drifting. It is almost certain that we shall come close to crashing into this yellow planet. They are sure of this thing? So sure that they are greatly concerned. Our planet to collide with another? That would be a catastrophe. It would be the end of Amenehu and its people. There may be people on this yellow planet also. But surely it is possible we may drift close by without collision? Even that will not save us. Not save us? But if there is no collision, we will survive. No, no, Zutka. There are people on this yellow planet, and they spell deadly peril for us. People? How is this known? Who has discovered these people? What form do they take? Ah, patience. We have sent out three spaceships, secretly. To explore. Ah, and they have returned? One has returned. Ah. As its pilot is waiting in the room next to us, I will summon him. You say only one has returned. What of the others? Pilot Agaho will tell you of them. Yes, he comes now. You summoned me, my leader? Rest yourself, Agaho. Zutkara, civil leader, would learn of your explorations. Anchorman tells me no ship but yours returned, Nagaho. He tells me you found a people live on the yellow planet. Yes, Sutka. There is a people. Yeah. 
It was because of them that only one ship returned. How? Because of them? How? They, too, have flying ships. Ah. Round they are, like small planets traveling at speed. Uh, you met the ships? To our sorrow, we met them. Uh. As we hovered above the planet, trying to discover what manner of place it was, these ships came speeding towards us from the surface. We thought they had come to welcome us. Uh. Even when they circled round us at great speed, we had no sense of danger. And then... And then what happened, Dagiho? They directed a strange green ray at our ships. We swerved violently to avoid it, but two of our three ships could not escape it. And uh, what did it do, this green ray? Eh? When a ship was caught in its beams, it exploded into fragments. They are a warlike, dangerous people, Zutka. Uh, they attacked us mercilessly and without warning. Thank you, Agiho. You may withdraw. I go with greetings to you both. As you see our peril, Zutka, as our planet draws near this yellow planet, it will mean merciless war. Our scientists will find protection for us. No, we have nothing to counter this green Something way. will be found. Switch off the screen. Make the wall clear that we may see beyond it. As you wish. Yeah. It is as if no wall existed. Look out there at Amenehu, our planet, Anchor Men. Our scientists are great. We have drifted far into space. The sun is endless distances away with no longer the power to warm us. On every hilltop, the radiation towers send out heat and light so that in the cold of space we no longer need a sun. Our scientists are great. Uh, but we now drift towards another sun and a planet with people strong in destruction. Our people have done great things, Zutka. But before long, it may be the end of them all. The end of all we have done, our planet? It is unbelievable. No, 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 it is impossible. No, it is inevitable. We are not warlike people. Then we must make war and come in. We must hold back the people of this yellow planet with their green ray. We must fight, 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 fight against destruction. <laughs> Rocky Dye and Mitch sit as if entranced. What happened as Amenahu drifted nearer the yellow planet? There is excitement ahead, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure. Lost in space. Lost in space. An adventure with Rocky Star. At the very moment that the missing spaceship Taurus is landing on a far distant planet, Rocky and his friends are still unable to leave the planetoid of Ehopatai. They have been taken to the underground city of the Tripeds, and there are encountering the strange experience of a story told by telepathy. But for the moment, the spell is broken. The pictures fade as the leading triped pauses, exhausted to rest. Dai stirs, as if awakening from sleep, and touches Rocky's space-suited arm. Rocky? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I die, it, it's unbelievable. Oh, the way the story was projected at us, it was like actually experiencing it happen, like being there. The way you, you, the way you feel in a dream... Only this was real. Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky, it's terrific. This this planet of theirs, what was it, uh, uh, Menahu, is that right? Drifting towards the yellow planet. Yeah, and the people on the yellow planet with their spherical spaceships. Yeah, and the green ray, the explosive green ray. Oh, to think they drifted right away from the sun, but were able to create heat and light. Radiation towers and things. Rocky, perhaps that's why this place is warm. 68 degrees when all around it's hundreds of degrees below zero. Look. Look, the chief triped stirring. Look. Please give pardon. It is exhausting to conjure up for you pictures of these things. I am arrested now. Your story is enjoyable. It gives us great pleasure. Yeah, yeah, continue. Tell us more. G go on with it. Relax. Give up your minds to time and space. Surrender to the power of mind. 
and there shall appear a fateful day in the story of the ancient planet Amenahu. Once again, the stone walls dissolve in a mist of light. The radiance takes on a glittering brilliance and gains form and shape until it is the room of Anchorman again. Once more, there are two three-legged creatures. They hold a sheet of thinnest metal etched with patterns. Zizotka, here is an enlarged image of the yellow planet. Our astronomers have brought it to me only this day. The surface of the planet is clear to be seen. Yes, but the image has more to show than that. See here. And here. And there. What are those things? They have the appearance of towers. Yes, time has passed since the first was built. Now there are many. But all appear on one part of the yellow planet only. Yes, it is the side that is always turned towards our own planet. Your voice has fear in it, Anchorman. What do these towers mean? It seems they are directed towards us, Sutka. I fear that they mean great evil. Towers of evil? Yes, look, this image, it shows signs of other activities. It seems that there are yet more towers are planned. Then we must find out about them. We must stop any evil aimed at Amenihu. Yeah, these steps have been taken, Zutka. Soon we will know about these things on the Yolo planet. Spaceships have been sent there to investigate. Suddenly the scene dissolves, and from the misty nothingness another takes shape. It is clearly the inside of a spaceship, and the pilot Agaho is staring through a strangely luminous window. Yellow planet, it draws so near. A place of evil, Nephro. I come, Agaho. Adjust the magnifying window so it brings the planet closer to us. Closer. It is done. The towers are plain. See them, Nephro? They are huge. The many rods across the tops. There is a radiance about them. A green radiance, Agaho. Green. I know their purpose. It is to generate the explosive green ray in tremendous strength. And direct it against the Menahu? Against our planet. When it drifts near, these people of destruction plan to blast it into fragments. A man who destroyed. Oh, it is a terrible thought. No. The warning. The round ships of the enemy, they attack us. Make speed, Nefro. Speed towards the towers. Towards the towers? We must escape the round ships. We will blast these evil things with energy rays. Make haste. I must send a wave message back to Amenuhu. I must speak with Ankamen. All our ships destroyed, he says. Destroyed by, by these round ships, Zika. And he, he alone to attack the towers. What's on this screen? The towers can be clearly seen. The planets are home to be blasted into fragments. It must not happen. It is an evil too great to yes, imagine. Zutka, see. See on that screen. A flash of green light where one of the towers stands. Agaho, he has used the ray against it. That tower, it is gone. There is only a crater. He has destroyed it. See, see, another flash. Ah. Intense. Yellow. The color of an explosion of the propulsion power are coming. Yes. Agaho has destroyed himself and his ship. One tower is gone, but none of our ships will return. Not even Agaho. The scene fades, but Rocky, Di, and Mitch sit as if in a dream, lost in the story of disaster. And then out of nothing, a great fleet of spaceships takes form. Ships from Amenahu sent on a mission to destroy the deadly towers. But as they draw near, from one tower, a green brilliance glares forth. Too late. The ships realize their danger. The sickly radiance catches them, holds them. There is a tremendous shattering explosion. Then nothing. The fleet has gone. Mitch stirs uneasily. Ah, oh, the dirty crumbs. They can't get away with that. A whole fleet wiped out. Oh, it's terrible. There are glittering walls again. An anchorman is speaking with a tripod new to the story. 
Well, Hotep, what news do you bring? Our explanation ships have found a planetoid on which it is possible our people may live. Ah, this is good news. Where is this planetoid? It is a satellite of a great planet. The journey is long, but it can be reached by transport vessels. And the atmosphere? Methane, same as here. An atmosphere for our people to breathe. Plans must be leave to my leave Amenehu and go there at once. All our people. But leader, that is a tremendous task. It must be done. To leave Amenehu our home? Uh, this thought grieves me as well as you. But what else can we do? Our space fleet is destroyed. Every day Amenehu reaches nearer to the yellow planet. We must leave it before it too is destroyed. I know it is needful, but it leaves me with great unhappiness. Unhappiness is nothing beside the threat of extinction. What is the temperature of this planetoid? It is exceedingly cold. Yes. The technicians must be sent to erect atomic furnaces. This planetoid must be heated, even as we heated Amanihu. There are no satellite moons we could turn into suns. Ah, then more efficient heating furnaces must be designed. The atmosphere must be raised to the temperature we need. But it must be done quickly. We draw nearer the yellow planet every day. New pictures. Big transport vessels journeying far into space, landing on a strange cold planetoid. Hundreds of tripeds pour from the open hatchways, masses of tools and equipment. A grim fight for survival in deadly cold. Then the ships returning home, anchormen working, organizing, making decisions. Watching all this, Rocky stirs uneasily, and he mutters. Moving a whole population. What a job. It seems impossible. Going back to the planetoid again. Anchorman and the others. Watching through something. Something like a telescope. See how close a man who has drawn to the yellow planet. I fear we have left it too late. There may yet be time. We should go... Dutka, look. The whole yellow planet seems to glow with green fire. Yes, those towers. They direct the green ray at the Manahu, our home. You see, it is bathed in green light. Our planet. It cannot be destroyed before our eyes. It, it cannot... No. Nothing happens. Perhaps the ray beams have not sufficient strength. Yes, if all... Dutka, look, see. <laughs> the Manahu is destroyed. It is fragments and a memory. Oh, Amenehu, planet of our people, Amenehu. I cannot watch the screen. No, Dutka, turn back. See, tongues of yellow brilliance. See them? Energy released from the atomic fires. Yes, it flashes along the energy path of those green rays. It streaks towards the yellow planet. It is justice. See? Yes, that flash of green. The towers have exploded. Dutka. The entire yellow planet has burst in a single flash of energy. Justice! Justice! I mean, who is avenged? Both have gone. There were two planets and two peoples. Now there is nothing. Nothing but fragments drifting in space. It is a fearful thing. But we are here, Ankamen. The finest intelligences of our people are with us here on the Hopatai. Yes. We must create a new home, Zutka. This cold and empty planetoid must be our home. Forever. Come on up. Forever? Huh? What? Hey, where are we? What a story, Mitch. What a story. What story? Hey, Rocky. Huh? Giggle on grasshoppers. Where are we? Underground with the tripod, remember, Mitch? Hey, Di, are you all right? Yes, Rocky. It's, well, it's just like waking up. Still like a dream. Sure. But... Hey, you notice something? What? We're not in that place where they started the story at all. This is some small room. Hey, we haven't our space helmets on either. Oh. I was so dazed I didn't notice. There's no entrance. We're locked in. But how can we breathe? Well, it seems ordinary air. Yeah, there's something screwy here, something they don't like. That story put us out just like we were under anesthetic, so they swipe our space helmets and put us in here. But how can we be breathing oxygen in a methane atmosphere? Why? That's what puzzles me. Why? We were tricked and we fell for it like babies. Fell for it. Rocky, do you think Mitch is right? What can they plan to do with us? I don't know, Di, but they've left us our ray guns. And what are we waiting for? Come on, Rocky, I'm going to blast away through that rock before it's too late. Will Mitch really be able to blast free? Why have the tripeds imprisoned our friends in this place? There are exciting developments ahead, so be sure you hear the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In space, an adventure with 
Rocky Star! <laughs> Entertained by the tripeds of Ahopatai, Rocky, Di, and Mitch have been told a telepathic story of the destruction of the planet of Amenahu. The powerful mental influence of the tripeds puts the three into a deep sleep. But when the story ends and they come back to consciousness, they find to their amazement that their space helmets have been removed and they're imprisoned in an underground room with an oxygen atmosphere. It seems clear that they have been tricked. Seizing his ray gun, Mitch says... Come on, I'm going to blast a way out of here, through that rock before it's too late. No, no, wait, Mitch. Wait! What's it a wait for? Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. The sooner we get out of here, the better for all of us. Now watch for the blast. Now, Mitch, stop. Hey, uh, hey Rocky. What did you have to do that for? I'm sorry, Mitch, but I had to get that gun away from you. I hope I didn't hurt your arm. Well, you didn't break it, but only just. Well, I had to stop you. Oh, why, Rocky? Don't, don't you want to get away? Oh, Mitch, surely you haven't forgotten there's nothing but a methane atmosphere outside this room? Methane? We've no helmets. Blast through that rock and you let the methane in and we all suffocate. Ah, uh, I don't think of that. I get all excited and carried away. It's just as well you stopped me, Rocky. Uh, I'm sorry. I'd uh, forget it, Mitch. The question is, what do we do now? Well, what can we do? We're, we're helpless. I'd like to know how these tripeds managed to get a room full of air to put us in. I'd like to know what sort of dirty work they're up to. Do not be afraid. A telepathic voice. No harm is intended, you. The element for you to breathe was brought from your ship. So that's it. We wish to learn from you. That is all. Hmm. Message ended. Oh, well, that solves the mystery of the air. They must have brought spare cylinders from the street. They had plenty of time during that great long story. Yes, it must be. Hello. My watch has stopped it. Oh. No, it hasn't. Oh, but it can't be. What can't be? Well, 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 the whole story, plus the time that we've passed since we woke up, has been less than a quarter of an hour. Rocky, are you sure? But it, it seemed to go on for hours. Well, the watch is still going, and, and that's what it says. A quarter hour? But, but, but how can they cram all that action into a quarter of an hour? It must be like dreams. Hey, I, I wonder how much longer they intend keeping us here. Oh, I can't help feeling we'll never get away. Even if we do, I've got small hope of finding the Taurus again now. Hey, I wonder what's happening to those three kids. While Rocky wonders about them, Ilma, Paul and Ivan are standing in the airlock of their ship. Paul turns to operate the mechanism and says, Well, this is it. Another few seconds and we'll be finding out what sort of people those are out there. Oh, wait, Paul. What is it, Elma? You're not ill. No, I'm just nervous. It's because of those tripeds we met last time we landed, I suppose. Oh, but this is a far different proposition, Ilma. These people look human. <laughs> What's more, so far, they're all women. I suppose I'm just being silly. All right, Paul, open the airlock. Right. At least this time we can leave the ship without spacesuits. Well, the ramp's down. Come on. Oh, they're crowded close to the ship. Not any longer. They are drawing back. Looks like we've left them speechless. They're not completely like us, are they? Look, they've got downy hair all over their faces. Yes, and, and practically no nose. Say, do you get their eyes? When they blink, the lid slides across from the corner like a cat's. Well, they're coming forward again. It seems they're not sure whether to trust us. Perhaps we should make it clear we're friends instead of just standing, staring at each other. Well, yeah. Don't be afraid... We're friends. Yes, friends. You understand. We smile because we are friendly. Ah, at least they're smiling in return. What goes on now? They're pushing one woman forward. You say friends? Say, hear that? She speaks English. But how is it possible English? English, that fair language. Tis the tongue of the great. Tis the language of friends as you speak. Yes, we're friends. I bid you welcome the lady to Astros, the planet of us. Astros, so that's its name. I have words with the lady of you. Your silence should be golden. Snub, Divan. Say, I wonder where she gets this stuff. It, it, it is very mixed, this English she speaks. Please, twill be good that you tell these attendants to curb their tongues, that we might have converse. Well, just as you like... Oh, keep quiet a moment, boys, till we find out about things. Find out how she learned English. 
How is it you can speak our tongue? Where did you learn? From the curled strip that makes living beings from light and gives them many words. Now what does that mean? Something is going on. I wish I knew what it was. The interpreter or whatever she is seems to be telling them about us. What do you make of it, Uma? Oh, I don't know. They seem to be glaring at you two all the time. She spoke to us as if we were servants. Yeah, that's right. She called us attendants. But there's none of this superiority stuff towards Ilma, notice? She's treated like a guest. Guest? That is the word that's spread from me. You are invited, my lady stranger, to partake of our hospital. Hospital? Oh, hospitality. Tis the other. Tis a word to use for a guest. Hospitality. Tis well. You will make acceptance? Oh, thank you. We'd be glad to. After you, my lady. Say, get that. She's bowing like an old-time courtier. Well, come on. No. Wait. Tis not for scullions to follow. Scullion? Say, what's this scullion business? You may not follow. Stand. But they're my friends. Oh, let them come. Everybody will touch. My lady is gracious. But scullions must remember the station of them. See? They are removed. Hey, oh, let go of me. I'm not going to be pushed around by a lot of women. It, it is useless. Pull that are too many for us. But what about Elmer? <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Never mind the wrestling tricks. Oh, where are you taking us? Oh, where? You go to what you do. Paul, men seem to have no importance on this planet. Not certain we don't. All right, all right. I'll get in your car or whatever it is. Don't push me. I can enter by myself. Locked in. How do you like that? I don't like it at all. See, Ilmer is talking and pointing. She is trying to have us released. Well, yeah, but they're not taking any notice of her. That screwy period sort of speech the lady lady was talking. Where could she got that stuff? Do you make anything of all that about curled strips and light? No. No doubt we will learn in time. Looks like we're going to learn a lot of things in time. But if we've got to be locked up to do it, I don't think I'm going to like it. Ilmer has entered another vehicle, see? They are driving her away. Someone's got into this one. Here we go, too. Paul, we are not going the same way as Ilma. We are being, being taken somewhere else. I think they intend that we should never see her again. Hey, Rocky. Mm hmm? How long would you say we've been in this place now? Huh? Oh, well, about half an hour. Oh, you're out of your mind. Half an hour? Don't be ridiculous. You sure? That's right, half an hour. And the air's still fresh. Yeah. I've just noticed. Hmm. They're letting it in through that tiny crack in the wall up there. Yeah, well, what I want to know is where they let us out and when. Rocky. Mm hmm Have you thought, have you realized something strange about that story they told us? Uh, Strange? How do you mean, Di? Strange? Well, I think it's very strange. The ancestors of these tripeds had scientists. Yes. Hmm? And they made rocket ships. That's right. Do you realize that they said they used atomic power and so on? Or, well, according to the story, they did. And the ones we've seen have no idea of mechanical things. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, Rocky. It really doesn't make sense. Attention, Earth beings. Attention, please. Yeah, they're concentrating on us. There's that telepathic voice again. You will find a block of stone in the corner. It is hollow. Move it. Stone? St oh. What are you talking about? Yeah, that'll be it there. But uh, why move it? You will find the colorless domes there. The, the colorless do domes? What does he mean by that? Well, we'd better have a look and see. Yeah. Give us a hand, Rocky. Okay. Take it easy. Yeah, fine. All right. Yeah, that's it. Hey. It's hollow, all right. Hey, look. What? Our space helmets. They've been here all the time. But why tell us now? You will place them upon you, but not a unity. Not all three of us. You will... The middle-voiced one who talks much will place the globe upon himself. You will do this. 
Do it. You must mean you, Rocky. No, no. Well, you're the only guy that's all the talking around here. Mitch, you're the one with all the words. I think he means you. You're the middle-sized one. What do you mean, middle-sized? I'm... You're the middle-sized one. You're right, Di. Go ahead, Mitch. Well, all right, if you say so. But, uh, why not all of us? Why only one? We wish but one. Stand by the rock slab marked with a circle. When it slides open... Walk out quickly. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever whatever you say. Hey, Di, look at him. Better yes. put the helmet on. Hey, Mitch. Mitch. Mitch, don't go. Stay here. He can't hear you, Rocky. Not with a helmet well, on. I'll have to I'll have to grab him. Hey, Mitch! <coughs> Mitch! Oh, the rock slab's open. Rocky, come away! The methane will suffocate you! <laughs> Rocky stands irresolute as Mitch walks dazedly through the opening. The heavy methane atmosphere rolls into the room and drives them back. Then the slab slides shut and Mitch is gone. But what do the tripeds want with him? And what lies ahead of Ivan and Paul on distant Astros? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In, in space, space. An, adventure an adventure with Rocky Star. Rocky, Di, and Mitch have been imprisoned in an air-filled room by the tripeds of a hopper tie. It is impossible to blast their way out because their space helmets have been taken away. But suddenly, the telepathic voice commands Mitch to look for his helmet in a certain hiding place. When he discovers it, he is commanded to put it on and leave. Mitch obeys. The stone door slab slides open. As he walks away, Rocky tries to stop him, but the methane atmosphere drives him back. Rocky, come back! The methane will suffocate you! But, Mitch, I just can't... Careful, Rocky! The stone slab! (coughs) Oh, Oh, too late now. It's shut. (coughs) Rocky, are you all right? Yeah. <coughs> yes, Di. I, oh. I got a lung full of methane, that's all. Oh, Rocky. Di, we, we just can't let Mitch go off like that, alone. I know. Our one hope was to stay together. Oh, if only I could have stopped him. There's no knowing what they might do to him. Nothing but rock all round. <coughs> we can't get out of here. Oh, poor Mitch, we've got to do something. Now, listen, let, let's stop panicking and think about this calmly. First point, in here we're helpless. So, somehow, we must get out. Could we possibly blast through that rock slab that acts as a door? Yeah, it's pretty thick, Di, but with two ray guns, we might just do it. All right, then, Rocky, let's try. Now, wait, wait a moment. I've got to make sure about this. There's the methane. There's a confined space on the other side of that slab, and energy rays might cause an explosion. Can't we chance it, Rocky? Yeah, we'll just have to. All right, first, our space helmet. Thank goodness the tripeds hid them all together. He wouldn't have known where to look. Yeah. All right, here we are. Thanks very much. Uh, Well, I'll check the fitting, and then you check mine. Uh, You got your intercom on, Di? Can you hear me? Yes, Rocky. Good. All right, now, leave your outside mic on just in case. I think this is the best plan. Let's lie face down on the floor and both aim at the same place. That's the bottom of the slab, right? Right, Rocky. From here? Mm -hmm, That's the idea. Now, are you set? All set. Now, in case there's an explosion, keep your helmet right down as soon as you're fired. Now, on the count of two. One. Two. Fire! (laughs) Look out! It looks as though it might explode! (laughs) Di, you all right? Yes, Rocky. All that flame. It is done. And the slab only has one hole in it. Yeah, it's shattered and cracked, though. Here, come on. Help me get this piece loose. It's coming. That's it. That's it. Got it. Got it. Oh, that was tough. Well, I'll go first. All right. Come on. Are there any tripeds, Rocky? No. If there were any, they went for their lives. 
Come on now. We've got to find Mitch. Where first? Oh, we've taken so long to get free. Never mind that, Di. We'll find him. If we have to search every inch of this rabbit warren and blow half of it apart. Now, come on. This way. Ray gun in hand, the two space-suited figures go hurrying along the tunnel to find their friend. Meanwhile, the spaceship Taurus lies in a clearing on the distant planet of Astros. Separated from Ilma, Paul and Ivan are locked in a strange dome-shaped vehicle which is approaching the city. This really makes me mad, Ivan. Why'd they have to keep us from Ilma and lock us in this thing? I feel like a specimen in a plastic container. It's not plastic, Paul. It seems to be some kind of transparent metal. I don't care what it is, I still feel the same. All the vehicles are transparent. Why do they have to drive us off this direction? They took Elmer over there somewhere. At least we are going toward this city. No, not the same part of it, though. Look, there is no sense in getting stood up about things, Paul. Let us find out what lies ahead first, and then face it. But I... Oh. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Blowing your top doesn't help. Have you noticed how this car works? It is remarkable. No, can't say I have. Being round, there appears to be no front or back. That is why the driver sits up on top in the small cabin. See, it travels in any direction. Well, yeah, I didn't notice that. No need to turn corners. If the corner's to the left, that becomes the front, and, and you just go that way. <laughs> Cute, as the old times used to say. It, it rides very smoothly, considering it is traveling across open country. Yeah. I wish I knew where they're taking us, though, and why we're locked in. Look, look, there is a paved street ahead. We're almost at the city. And they sure go for towers and spires, don't they? All that lacy sort of decoration. I wonder how they do that. It, uh, it could hardly be called pink and white buildings. You know, I believe they are a kind of plastic. We're only on the outskirts, but at least it does look as if this road goes right through, so we'll get a look at things. There are people, all women still. Say, Ivan, you don't think that maybe the whole race of them are women? I mean, like, like the... The fable about the Amazons. Oh, it, it seems most strange, but perhaps it could be so. They all turn and stare and point at us as we drive past. Like monkeys in a cage or something. Ignore them. Look at their buildings. Oh, that is strange. What? See, there, there are not only entrance doorways from the street to the ground floor, but every floor has one. You're kidding. No, mighty Ike, you're right. Hey, but what's the use of that? How, how do they get up to them? You can't walk through a third-floor entrance 40 feet up. There. Look, Paul, see. That character just floated straight up to the fifth floor and walked in. No, I don't believe it. There is another. Floating up. But how do they do it? The belts. They all wear them, see, and with a small black box on either side. Anti-gravity. How do you like that? No lifts or stairs. Just press the button or whatever it is and up you go. There are men. Look, Paul, to the right. I can see men. Where? Oh, I've got them. They are erecting a building. You weedy-looking types, aren't they? Let's get a good look at them as we go past. They move so... so mechanically. They do not stare at us like the women. We couldn't care less. Oh, well, at least we know there are men on this planet. Yes. But I do not like it, Paul. Do you? Well, no... Or something screwy about them. They do all their hard work and behave as if they were... They had no interest in anything else. Paul, I have a feeling Astros is ruled by women and men are of no importance here. Well, then what about us? We're men? Yes. Scallions, we were called, remember? I think we are going to be treated as servants and slaves. Oh, I wonder what is happening to Ilma. My friends. Oh, you must tell me where they've been taken. You must not worry. The scullions will fare well, Lady Emma. Have no concern for them. They will be fed and given work to do. Work? Yes. But don't you understand? They're my friends, and you mustn't treat them that way. Oh, no, my lady. No, no, no. You must not call the scullions friends. Oh, but they are my friends. No, my lady. As I said before, you must not call them friends. And besides, 
It is not finished. Oh, I don't understand you. It is not finished here. To make them friends. Finished? What? Oh, I think you mean it's not done. It is not done. Mm -hmm. mm. Mayhap that is so, milady. But I want them to be where I am, not taken away. Our destination is reached. Please to alight here, milady. Oh, but the boy. It is what? best that you alight here. Oh, for heaven's sake. Gramercy. Our ruler awaits you at the top of this building. Come. Hold tightly to my arm. Also the arm of the other. But aren't we going in the entrance? The entrance we seek is above. Now, as I said, tight be your hold. But what it Oh, we're rising. Hey, put me down. What's happening? We're rising. Oh. We lift you. Keep tight the hold. <gasps> Step forth onto the threshold. Move in, please, milady. But, but there's no one here. This place you will stay until our ruler comes. You cannot leave, so be content. <laughs> Nervously, Ilma moves forward into a room of gleaming silver. Instinctively, she looks around for some way of escape, but there is none. Meanwhile, in the underground caverns of the Hopatai... Oh, no sign of Mitch anywhere, Rocky. No, nor any of the tripeds either, Di. You know, I don't like it. Perhaps they've taken him outside, away from here. We can't leave these underground places until we've searched everywhere. Hey, Di, come on. Here's a passage we haven't tried yet. Oh, Rocky. Oh, not Di. Steady on. It's the uncertainty. Not knowing where he is or what danger he's in. Don't worry. He, he must be somewhere. Yes, but where? And where are the tripeds? There can't be a place left big enough to hold them all. Yes, I, I know that, but... Hey, Di, look. Oh, a great stone slab. Yes, like the one we blasted from that room. Hey, it's a door. Then let's open it quickly. Oh, it's too heavy. It won't move. Then how do the tripeds move it? Oh, they must use their thought power. Well, I'm going to blast it away. The methane. If an explosion would... Well, this passage isn't a confined space. Your ray gun, die. Now, a good long blast at the middle of the slab. Die. And a bit more yet. It's giving way. That's done it. Hey, that's done it, die. Come on. Rocky... Rocky! Look! A huge room. Like an amphitheater. And all the tripeds gathered. What are they looking at? Die, it's Mitch! He's stretched out on a slab down there. Quickly, Die! Come on! <laughs> As dozens of tripeds turn their glowing triple eye toward Rocky and Di as they plunge down the sloping floor toward the still form of Mitch. Is he still alive? And what of the others on Astros? There are thrilling developments ahead, so don't miss the next exciting chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> Lost in Space. An adventure with... Rocky Star! On the far planet of Astros, Paul and Ivan have been separated from Ilma. They believe they have fallen into the hands of a race of Amazonian women. Meanwhile, Rocky and I search anxiously for Mitch amongst the caverns and tunnels of the Triped people. Just as they're giving up hope, they come upon a large stone slab that looks like a door. The two space-suited figures blast it to pieces with their ray guns. Beyond, they find an amphitheater crowded with tripeds, and in the center on a stone slab, the still form of Mitch. It's Mitch, Di! Come on! What are they doing to him? They have his helmet off, and the spacesuit's tripped back from one arm. No helmet? But he'll die! No, no, there's an oxygen tank and mask. 
I think they're going to rush us, Rocky. Yeah, this time I'll use the gun on them if necessary. Back! Back or I'll shoot you, understand? This gun means death. Back! They're stopping. Rocky, that one near Mitch, he has a, a kind of knife. Mitch's arm? He's going to... Stop! Stop! You hear me? Ah. Ah. He knocked it back from his hand just into... Behind you, Rocky! Back! Back or I'll shoot! Uh, at least they seem to know what ray guns mean. They don't like them. Just as well for us. Get Mitch's helmet on in case that oxy marks is knocked from his face, Di. Here's Rocky. Now, come on, Mitch. Come on, Mitch. Easy now. Why do you come in such anger? Rocky. The telepathic voice. Yeah, it's about time they said something. Explain to us. Why are you so angry? Why do you wish to kill? Angry? I am angry because you were about to hurt my friend. You understand? He is my friend, and you would have killed him. Not so. We meant him no harm. No harm? What about the knife? We saw it. Yes, this knife. This. What did you plan to do? Only to remove your friend's limb. The arm, as you call it. Only to... Rocky. I, I don't understand how they can say it so calmly. It makes me want to pull this trigger good and hard. Oh, if we had not found Mitch, they'd have killed him. You are still angry. Why is this? You say you were going to maim my friend, and yet you ask why. You would have killed him. Oh, no, no harm was intended. That's a nice excuse. How is Mitch, Di? Still out to it? Yes, but he seems easier. I think he'll come around. Yeah, well, let's get out of here. Come on, we'll carry him. No, wait. I want to know something. People of the Hoppetai, listen to my thoughts. Why did you wish to cut a limb from my friend? Why did you pick on him? He talks much. He is your leader. The greatest of you. Cut off my arm? Well, what's all this I've been hearing? Who talks too much? Oh, Mitch, you're all right? Well, sure, sure. I'm a, what, what am I doing here? What, what's all this arm business? Yeah, you nearly lost one, Mitch. To these things. What? I need... Oh, oh, no. I want to get to the bottom of it. Why, tripeds? Why did you want to do this thing? We wished to grow a skillful man of science amongst us. Hey, what? They wished to what? How could you grow a man from a limb? It, it's not possible. I think I'm beginning to see. When you want new people here, you remove a limb, and from it grows a fresh creature. Is that so? Surely you know these things. Hey, not for Uncle Mitch. Cut off a... Anyway, I don't see any two-legged tripeds. The limb grows again speedily in those flasks there. Hey, look, Di, look. Against the far wall. Glass flasks with wiring. It is the only skill of our ancestors we have left. I begin to understand. And you haven't lost it because without it, you couldn't continue to exist. That is so... We have great need of skill amongst us. But we are different. Remove a limb from us without special care, and we die. Yeah, we certainly do. Giggling grasshoppers, what pipes? They wanted to grow a bit of me like a pot plant or something. Thank heaven you arrived when you're dead, Rocky. We are sorry that we brought your friend into danger. We did not understand. But our need for skill is great. Die. Mitch looks pretty pale. We'd better get him back to the street. I'll organize one of their platforms to take you two back. I'll stay here for a while. Yeah, but, Rocky, you're not staying amongst these, these bloodthirsty uh, uh, jasmatazers? I don't think there's any cause for fear now, Mitch. Oh, Rocky, we can't be sure. Well, I'll risk that, Di. Besides, I want to get to the bottom of all this anxiety for skill by these things. I'll join you later. While Mitch and I are being transported back to the streak, Ilma waits nervously in a gleaming silver room on distant Astros. Again she goes to the entrance door, but it is a sheer drop to the streak far below. She turns away, then stops. 
There is a low humming, and a small craft of silver-blue metal is hovering outside the door. As Ilma stares, a hatch door swings back, and out steps a tall Astrosian woman. She glides majestically into the apartment. Good morrow, visitor to Astros. I am Empira, the ruler. They tell me that you'd come. A moment, the humming of that vehicle annoys me. A grand should arrive, Aragon. Your pardon, it was a command that it be taken away. Now, you are from Earth, perhaps. Yes, how did you know that? On Astros, we know many things. Tis an explorer of fame that you are, no doubt. Well, not really. You're modest. Navigate such a distance and with but two... And with but two work scullions as companions. But my companions? Why have they been taken away? God's blood, you would not have it otherwise. But I would. Oh, they're my friends, don't you understand? Tis the result of so long a journey, no doubt. Your stay here will be of advantage. You will regain your command. Oh, I don't understand. Ah, it is bad. You've greatly lost your command. Oh, please, bring Paul and Ivan back. Let's be together. It is impossible. But they're my own people. You can't expect me to stay alone here. Such fears will go when you've regained your strength and dignity. It is clear they must remain with the scullions. But I don't want them to... I can allow no more resistance to our cure. Oh. They will be lodged at the scullion house until you regain your willpower. At the Scullion House, it is their fate to stay. Well, we've stopped, Ivan. I wonder what this place is. It has walls like black glass. They're opening a door. Come forth, Scullions. Mighty yike! A woman the size of a house. We had better do as we are told. Out of God, no. Looks like she thinks we're too slow. They certainly do that like prisoners. Come, follow. I will make a test. I would like to walk around a little. Come, Paul. Not so. You come, Sarah. Have a look. No, no. Hey, she's whistling up some pals. Make a run for it. Down here. Hey, thou. Oh, too late. Oh, all right, all right. Quit the strong arm stuff. We will come quietly. Tis well. Bring them. They're taking us to a black glass building. We picked a bad spot when we landed in this place. You come. What? Aren't you all coming too? Scullions only here. This is the rule. Come on, Paul. Wonder if Ilma's getting this sort of treatment. Oh, why are we separated like this? Scullions do not belong with the almighty fair. What is? One moment before you shut the door. What do you wish? How do you know our language? Where did you learn it? It comes from the machine that makes shadows move and speak, and the book of many words. Machine? Books? Say, where did you get this stuff? It was left us by a ship of yours many generations ago. You mean generations, I think. Oh, uh, Gadzooks, you speak too much for scullions. I go hence. Well, what do you make of that? Another ship. It Pegasus. The lost ship we found in space. She must have been here. Yes, can't you see it, Paul? The machine, a film projector. They left these people films and books. So they learned English. Here, yeah, that must have been it. <laughs> hey, but, but what English? Where do they get all this gadzooks and stuff? They must have seen a period film at the time of the ancient cavaliers or pirates or such. I suppose the poor devils in the Pegasus had to use the films as barter to get away from these gorgons. Oh, nice outlook for us. Paul, look. The glass wall, it, it is black from the outside, but transparent from within. How you can work up such interest in things when we're in a spot like this, I don't know. Scullions. Ah, all we're going to do is, is be kicked around, and, and you talk about walls. Sorry, perhaps we can borrow something to get away from here. Some hopes. All they need to do is go to the Taurus and help themselves. Do you think Elmer might be able to help us? You heard what the wardress said. Scullions do not belong. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some hope if they take that line with Ilma. Well, then what do we do? We must get out of here, that I know. The wardress has some kind of pistol in her belt. We must get it from her. We must overpower her. What, that blonde Hercules? She can smash us with one hand. No matter, Paul. Somehow we must do it. Otherwise we may spend the rest of our lives here. There will be no rest of your lives if you try such things. Oh, yes, I've heard your talk. My ears are of great strength. 
Take warning, scullions. Attempt trickery and you will pay. Paul and Ivan look at the powerful creature in the doorway in anxious amazement. How can they possibly escape if plans are discovered so easily? Are they doomed to spend the rest of their lives working for the Amazons of Astros? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! While Rocky, Di, and Mitz still strive to get away from a hoppetai, the crew of the missing Taurus have fallen into the hands of an Amazon race on a planet called Astros. Ilma is separated from the boys. Paul and Ivan find themselves classed as scullions and are locked up. It is obvious that they are regarded as nothing more than slave workers, and Ivan decides they must try to overpower the wardress and take her pistol. But barely are the words out of his mouth when the door flies open and the wardress warns them against trying such measures. Now she has gone, and the two lads look at each other in dismay. It's hopeless, Ivan. No matter which way you look at it. I wonder what she meant by the machine. Unruly scullions were always quietened by the machine, and we'd get the same treatment. That's what she said. It must be something to take away their will to resist. Well, if we get that treatment, we'll be finished. Then we must avoid it at all costs. First, let us speak lower. Why? What could that do? I'm not sure in my mind whether these people have very strong hearing, or perhaps this room has a microphone to pick up all that is said. Oh, of course. Yeah, could be. Hey, shall we look? First, pretend we have quarreled and do not wish to speak. That will explain why nothing is heard. Okay, it's worth trying. I am sure that we have just been saying... I am sure that it must have been heard. We we have spoken too softly. Now. Paul, why do you not speak? You are not angry with me? Curse I'm angry. You and your plans, you nearly landed us in trouble. But listen. I don't want to listen. But Paul, I... Shut up, will you? See anything like a microphone? Not yet. They're probably built in. It is useless. If we found a microphone and touched it, they'd know. There would be scratching noises in the loudspeaker or whatever they use. Oh, I forgot about that. Shall we tackle the wardress? Yes. Fool, I look out. I bring you food. Thanks. It's kind of you. Ha, ah, you change your speech. You do not wish the machine? Why do you not talk to one another? How do you know we do not talk? Gad, scullion, many things are known to me. What is to happen to us? You will work as all scullions must. You are young, you will work well. How long will we have to work? Yes, faith, there's always work to be done on Astros. You intend to keep us here? Why should we give you release? You are young and there is a wildness in you. But soon you will embrace the pleasurable duty of work as all scullions do. Feed yourself. You will need your strength tomorrow. <coughs> what thing is this? I don't know. He took some of the food. The food is good. Oh, it, it must have been poisoned. It's impossible. It must be poisoned. Do something. Do not believe. I think he's going to die. Die. If the ruler hears... Let me see. Ivan, Ivan, look, look, see, in his mouth. Well, I cannot see. I got it. Now move back, Wardress. I'm not sure what this pistol does, but if you try anything, we will find out. Nice work, Ivan. Nice what? work for you to get into the nail with me like that. You will go ill with you for this. No, no. Give back to me my pistol. You move back there, far into that corner. Oh, check the door and see what it, how it locks. I'll do that. It is mutiny for a scullion to act thus. It will go badly for you. Keep moving. Right back. I will not hesitate to pull this trigger. I figured it, Ivan. When I get back, slam the door shut. Come back, scullion. Stay where you are. Now pull the door. It's locked. We've done it. Don't let us stop to congratulate ourselves yet. Which way? There is another space between the buildings. Come on. <sighs> Hear that? The chase is on. That machine. If they use it to destroy our willpower, we'll be slaves forever. They must not catch us. They must not. <laughs> Desperately, Paul and Ivan pelt between the tall glass-like buildings, seeking frantically for somewhere to hide. 
Meanwhile, on a hopper tie, Rocky has just returned to the street. Hey, Rocky boy, let me help you off with that space suit. All right, thanks, Mitch. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Well, that's, that's a relief. Yeah. Whew, it's good to breathe normal atmosphere again. Hey, how are you feeling now? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. Considering I woke up to find myself nearly minus an arm. I gave him treatment to quieten him down, Rocky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The good old neuro ray. Sure quietens the nerves. <laughs> Was I a case of nerves? <laughs> Rocky, I was beginning to worry about you. If those tripeds had tried to do the same thing to you... Oh, no. No, they, they understand now, Di, that we can't be grown the same way as they are. How do you like the way? Chop a limb off and grow a new triped from it. Grow a new limb, too. We were just talking about it, Rocky. Mm -hmm. They must be developed from some type of lizard life. Yes, just like lizards can lose a tail and grow it again. Eh? Yes. Yeah, that would account for the scales, too. But uh, there's more to it than that, Di. Yeah? Well, what'd you find out, Rocky boy? They give it a course so we can get a weight in the screwy place? Well, not yet, Mitch. Uh, but I think we'll have it before long. Before long. How long do they expect us to stay in this nut house? Now, listen, don't worry. They, they made a bargain with me. They did? Yeah. Uh -huh. If we'll try and help them, they'll give us the course. Help them? Mm -hmm. Why can't we just wave a ray gun under their eyes like I said? That'd make them talk. Oh, Mitch, you ought to know by now. I won't do things like that unless it's unavoidable. What sort of help do they want, Rocky? Yeah, why are they so mad keen to get technical skill? Why, why do they want to grow a twin brother on me? Well, I found out about that, too. It appears they, they've they lost their skills. Their ancestors had them, but since they've been on the Opatai, they turn to studying thought and then time instead of mechanics. Yeah, but according to their story, their ancestors had the tools and things when they landed here. Yeah, well, the tools wore out. And there weren't enough scientists in that first shipload. There were more philosophers. So, now they've decided that they must get back their lost skills. Oh, but Rocky, why? If they can fly through the air and open and shut great heavy doors all by thought power, they don't need other skills. Di, come to the window. You remember how, when they escaped from their original planet, they had to heat this place up by atomic radiation fires? Well, you see those domes? Don't tell me they do the heating. Mm-hmm, they do. But they were created hundreds of years ago, or maybe thousands, and they're becoming played out. The temperature's dropping. Some domes have stopped working already. If they can't be started up again, that'll be the end of the tripeds? Exactly. And they realize that. They know we are their only hope. You mean they expect us to start those things up again? Yes. I, I'm sorry, Mitch, but... As you're the electronics engineer, it looks as most of the responsibility will be yours. Oh, it would be. But if we do it, will they give us the course away from here, up through the rings of Saturn? Yes, Di. Well, some deal you made. Mitch, we must help them. We just can't leave them to die out. No, I suppose not. Good. Then, then you'll tackle the job? Well, I'm not promising anything, but come on. Climb into those spacesuits again. I'll have a look at those things. This one's definitely not working, Rocky. Yeah? You sure, there? Yeah? Hmm, it's not humming. The active ones are. Yeah. Hey, you're right at that, I noticed. Wonder how long it was since it was packed up. Uh, I'm not sure, Mitch. But I, uh, I gathered the impression it's been some time, you know. Well, it shouldn't be too radioactive, then. Yeah, the question is, how do we get into the thing? Well, there's no sign of any door. We better walk a bit further around. Okay. Well, there must be a, some sort of an entrance. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Hold, hold your horses a bit. Yeah. What's that stud thing sticking out just there? Where? See? Just like the end of a pencil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Try pressing it. Okay. Uh, no go. Oh. Well, pull on it. That's it. Huh? This bit of wall's moved. Push on it, Rocky boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Stiff, isn't it? Well, no wonder. It's laying here for centuries, or longer. Coming inside? Yeah, here's the light. Hey, some place. Yeah. Get an eyeful of that equipment. Yeah, I'm looking, Mitch. Boy, you know, they were way ahead of us. Yeah, it seems a, a different system. It certainly is a different system. 
Just thought of something. Hmm? Do you think you can follow it through? Oh, I don't know. Guy can try. Hey, these tripeds weren't kidding when they said they'd lost the skill. Hmm? Our ancestors sure knew something about electronics. You know, it gives you a queer feeling to think it was built all that time ago. But, Mitch, do you think you'll be able to set it going again? I don't know. I'll look around, but I, I can't figure how to charge it. And that's the whole... Unless... Say, that, that pile of metal rods. Turn, turn the light over that way. Uh, over here? Yeah. Uh -huh. hey, that might be some kind of refill. Hey, hey, Rocky. Yeah? Do you, do you feel kind of warm? Warm, yeah. It's funny, I I do. Hey, hey, Mitch, it, it couldn't be. The only thing it could be. This radioactivity still in here. Still here? Yeah. I tell you, we'd better get out of here quickly. Come, come on, Mitch. Yeah. What was I thinking of? What? what? I'm, I'm going nuts. I, I should have tested this with the Geiger. As soon as we came in, I should have tested it. I know. And I... Uh, hey, Mitch. Mitch, do you... Uh, Mitch, do you... Do you feel weak, too? Uh, yeah, Rocky. Uh, looks like we got a nice... Nice little dose. Yeah. We did, we... Got to get back to the street, Mitch. Treatment... Treatment, we've got to get back. I'll oh, we've still the strength to do it. Staggering weakly, holding each other from falling, the two space-suited figures start the long journey back toward the street. Have they the strength to reach it? And what of Paul and Ivan running from the Amazons of Astros? There are further thrills ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Rocky has discovered that the humming domes on a hopper tie are atomic furnaces that were designed to raise the temperature from its original intense cold. But after thousands of years, these fires are failing. This is why the tripeds are so anxious for knowledge and help. Rocky undertakes to try to rekindle them in return for the complex cost calculations he needs. But when with Mitch he enters a silent dome, it's not long before they feel the effects of radiation. They hurry from the place, but the damage is done. Now, supporting each other against growing weakness, the two figures in their bulky spacesuits are trying desperately to reach the street. Rocky. Rocky. Don't think we'll ever make it. Too far gone. I've got to keep going, Mitch. We've, we've got to. Too far, Rocky. Still a good quarter of a mile away. Oh, come on. Keep going. Oh, hopeless. Come on, Mitch. In the, in the street, we'll get treatment. Come on. Come on, Mitch. You're not giving up this easy. Uh, try a bit longer. Sorry, Rocky. Sorry. Keep control. Mitch, don't... Don't get hysterical. Control. Yeah. Keep control. Good man. Uh, Good man. Uh, uh, tired. Uh, get a rest. Uh, need a little rest. No, no, Mitch. Uh, no. Just a... Just a couple of minutes, Come Rocky. on, keep going. G gotta keep going, Mitch. No, no, Rocky. Rest. I, I gotta sit down. Mitch! Mitch, get up! Mitch! Uh, uh, come on, Mitch! No, no I gotta, gotta rest, Rocky. Oh, Mitch, please, if you if you stay here, you, you'll die, Mitch. You'll die to you here. I'm all right, Rocky. But you, you've been exposed, Mitch. Radiation. Radiation, remember? We must get treatment or... Oh, we die. D die? Die. Die. Lost here forever. It never see Earth, Mitch. Come on, come on, Mitch. Yeah. Sorry, Rocky uh, boy. I can't get up. I can't. Hey, help me. Come on. Come on now. G give me your hands. Come on now. Uh, uh, oh, uh, come on. Uh, uh, oh. uh, uh, thanks. Thanks, Rocky uh, boy. 
Uh, so- sorry about it. All right, now, keep, keep going, Mitch. Yeah. Keep going. Oh! Rocky! Oh. Rocky, oh. Hey, fell over. Come on, get, get up, Rocky. Come on, up. I'll, uh, I'll try, Mitch. I'll try. I'm too so oh. weak. I, I can't. Uh, 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 I, uh, oh. I wanted to pull you up. And you pulled me down instead. Oh. Come on, keep, uh, keep trying. Uh, try again. Come on. Oh, good, Rocky. Uh, oh. Too, too weak. Mitch, as far as we get, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. What a place to die in. What a... What a, what a, what a place to die. The two men lie sprawled and unmoving on the alien blue soil of this world so far from their own. Still as death they lie there under the red emptiness of the sky. While minutes pass and die awaits their return, a tense drama is taking place on distant Astros. With pounding hearts and aching lungs, Paul and Ivan sprint for freedom between the gleaming buildings of the city. Where now, Van? There is a narrow alley to the left. Quickly! Ah, oh, they saw us. They know which way we came. Can't, can't go on running and running. If we're, if we're caught, they're going to kill our willpower with machines. Oh, look. Just now we're off to the side. Turn up here. No, wait, we can't get through. Oh, the wall across the end. Only about ten feet high. We're gonna do something. They'll be honest soon. I'm going to use this pistol when they come round the last corner we turned. Not to kill them. To hold them back. To give us time. Look, Ivan. Oh, they've seen us. Here goes. I see that. I don't she like dropped. firing on women. Amazons, not women. They're stronger than we are. They've all duck, ducked out of sight. Come on. No, wait. Make sure. Someone looking around the corner. See the head. It was pulled back soon enough. Wonder what sort of ray that is. It seems like a sound or a vibration ray. Look, look, there are ornamental carvings on that building near the left end of the wall. Go and see if you can climb it. What about you? Uh, I'll stay here and keep them off. Oh, oh, okay. Watch no one comes behind you the other way. I will watch. Quickly now. I'll give you a yell if I can climb it. Right. Oh, I'm exposed here. Better get behind cover and keep watch from behind this corner. <laughs> Just in time. Nearly got raid. Got to stop that. Let's see. It's ornamental work. I'll climb up and look around the corner from about eight feet up. I need to be quick. I might make a rush a bit more. That should do. Oh, no, you don't. I made it. Van, I made it. Right, coming. One more blast for luck to keep them cautious. Now, down here and run. I'll stay on top and give you a hand. Thanks. Best foot holds are about 18 inches from the uh, corner. Right. Give me a hand as soon as I am high enough to reach. Here. You take my hand now. Don't pull so hard. Oh, be careful, I lost my grip. Be careful. Oh, all right now. What's on the other side? Garden of some sort. No time to climb. Jump down quickly. Right. Oh, some jump. You all right? Oh, yeah. What now? Hide. Those those bushes, the ones like little sponges. It's a thick clump. Come on, be careful to leave no footprints. Yeah. Hope we can get in the middle of that thing. I have an idea. There is a space behind. You follow and wipe out our footsteps in this oil. Why the knife? You will see. With the footsteps, probably. Oh, don't worry. No one will ever know. What are you doing? Making a little nest for ourselves in the middle of this clump. Luckily, it is very soft. Alice Adams! Oh, Alice listen, they've come to the wall. Quickly, there is room enough. Squeeze in here. I'd better bring some of these cut pieces, too. Yes, I can. I will pull the fronds together behind us. And so, now we must make no move. If the bushes move, they will discover us. I can see through a gap there. I can see the wall. I see a little of it, too. Look, here they come. Floating up over the top of it. Using their anti-gravity beds. Easier than climbing. Well, we must have decided we came this way. Alabama? Alabama, Alabama. Quiet a moment. What are they doing? Can you see? Searching the garden. They're going across to the far side. Oh, then at least we're safe for the moment. Say, if they don't find us, they'll probably think we've gone right through here and out the gate, wherever it is. Hold on a moment. What are they doing? It's hard to see, but I think... 
Oh yeah, they're coming back. We must be quiet. You said it, Ivan. Because do you know what? They're searching every clump of bushes. <laughs> Paul and Ivan crouch down in their hiding place, hardly daring to breathe. Meanwhile, on a hopper tie, Di waits for Mitch and Rocky to return. As she gazes thoughtfully through the streak's heavy glass windows, she has no idea that the two of them lie limp and still on the bluish plain. Those two should be back soon. Well, I suppose they know what they're doing. Perhaps if I look through the glasses, I might see them. Uh, I can't make out... It's probably just a rock. Well, I'd better check through the spectroscope readings I took. Now, let's see. Mm, it's negative. Negative. Slight positive. Gosh, that's funny. I have a feeling I should keep watch out there. Well, perhaps another look to... Tripeds. I wonder if they're calling me. They're beckoning and pointing. But why should they? It must be Rocky. It must be. Oh, gosh, I'd better get into a spacesuit and find out. you're trying to tell me. Oh, I must concentrate. What is it, please? Tell me with your thoughts. Earthmen over there. Rocky and Mitch? Is that it? Are they the ones? Your companions. They lie on ground over there. On the ground? Show me. Quickly. Show me the way. Follow. Follow the way we lead. See, they lie there. Rocky! Rocky, can you hear me? Mitch! Not a move from them. I must try and find out what's happened. Listen, triped people. How long have they lain there? Why are they like this? Why? Do you understand? It is not known. Rocky! Rocky, can't you hear me? I can't take their pulse or anything while they're out here in spacesuit. We understand. We must get a conveyance. We go. Then please hurry! Hurry! Oh, Rocky, Mitch... If I don't get them to the streak, sort of maybe too late. And even then, I don't know what's wrong. What treatment. Oh, hurry, tripeds, please, hurry! Di waits by her unconscious friends in an agony of fear. Will she be able to give them the treatment they need, and in time... And what of Paul and Ivan hiding in the garden on Astros? There is exciting action to come, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Overcome by atomic radiation, Rocky and Mitch tried to struggle back to the street, but collapsed helplessly before they could do so. They lay there unnoticed until at last some tripeds brought Di. Feverish with anxiety, she waited by their unconscious forms until the tripeds returned with one of their transport platforms. On this, the two men were rapidly moved to the street. Now they've been moved into the airlock. The outer door is slammed shut, and Di waits impatiently for the atmosphere to change from methane to air. Oh, 
long. They're so still. How do I get them to the hospital cabin? I- I'll never drag them there on my own. The trolley. The one we use for heavy equipment. Class. I'll get rid of this helmet. Oh. Oh, it's better. Now hurry. Hurry. The trolley. Rocky first. Oh. oh, he's so heavy. Oh, I must lift him. I must. Oh, I did it. Now the hospital cabin. And then back for Mitch. I just can't understand it. What's wrong with them? I must get their spacesuits off first. Oh. I don't know what's wrong. How can I treat them? What was that? It's a Geiger detector. It reacted to Rocky's spacesuit. That's radioactivity. It's radiation sickness and all this time gone by. Quickly, serum injections. Transfusion equipment. I must work as I've never worked before. I must save them. Moving with urgent haste, Di gathers the equipment with which to fight for her friends' lives. Then all is ready. There is a feverish calm as she bends to the task in silent concentration. At this moment, far away on Astros, Ivan and Paul are wrapped in silence too. Hidden in the clump of bushes, they hear the searchers come nearer. Ivan bends his head so his mouth is within an inch of Paul's ear. We had better keep absolutely quiet. I think we have a chance, Paul. We better... If they catch us, we're sunk. They're getting closer. Yeah. Tis meet you come forth, Earth male. Tis known you are here. Hear that? Shh, quiet. This resistance will bode you ill. Tis now known to us where you hide. Come hither, or we surround it and drag you forth. Think she knows Ivan? Perhaps. By my troth, you shall be dragged hence. <laughs> Coming very close, Van. Yes, they must know. Shh. They missed us. Quiet. Faith, you will show sorrow for this, Collins. You were right, Van. That was blood. It hardly seems so. They were so close. I expected the bushes to be pulled apart any minute. Are they still moving away? I'll see if I... Shh! Keep your voice down. But if they've gone, what's the harm? They may have left someone behind, watching and listening. Great, Ike. I never thought of that. Be quiet a bit and listen. Seems okay. Just as well for us. Now, cautiously, Paul. See what you can see. Right. Well, they seem to be right at the far end. Yeah, they are. Well, we have fooled them, then. Well, what'll we do? Let them get out of here and then scram? I think it will be too dangerous, yet. They may watch this place. We could try and find out. I don't think we should move from here till dark. Dark? Someone else may see us. Yeah, I suppose if we got reported, the chase would be on again. Yeah, I dare say after dark it'd be safer. Oh, I wonder how long off sunset is. Still some hours, I should think. We're going to have a nice cramp after hours of crouching in here. We are free. It is worth it. Oh, after dark, we'd better try and locate Ilmer. Yes. But what we are to do about that, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be difficult and dangerous. Still, we must do it. Yeah. Oh, we've just got to find her and get away from this place somehow. Oh, I wish I was back on Earth again. I wish I was back on Earth with more equipment. Rocky. Mitch. Oh, not a sign. Oh, if only that ray was stronger. Mitch could make it stronger. If he wasn't stretched out underneath it. What do I do if I can't save them? Millions of miles from Earth. 
all alone. Oh, never mind me, it's them, it's my friends. All our adventures. I could only do more for them. Die, you're crying. Rocky! Why are you crying? Oh, Rocky, you've opened your eyes. You're all right. Oh, Rocky. Oh, oh Rocky. Hey, what's all this lovey-dovey oh. business? Hugging Rocky Boy like that. You think you're a grizzly bear or something? Oh, oh Mitch. Hey, quit it, will you? You want to smother a guy? Oh. oh, if you knew how I've been feeling, you wouldn't mind being hugged. <laughs> oh, Rocky. I thought you were both going to die. Die? Hey, Mitch. Hey, we're in the streak. Hey, what gives? Last thing I remember was collapsing all of a heap. I thought we were finished. So did I. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear you both talking again. You're sure you're all right? Yeah, fine. I think. What about you, Rocky? Uh, a bit weak. Otherwise, I'm all right. Oh, you saved our lives, Di. Oh, Rocky, if the tripeds hadn't helped, I would never have got you here. Just being here without your help wouldn't have done us any much good, chicken. Thanks. Oh, please, Mitch, forget it. Forget it, she says. Yeah, we'll never forget it, Di. <laughs> never. Then you can buy me a nice diamond bracelet when huh? we reach Earth again, as a reward. <laughs> yeah, don't get too enthusiastic. <laughs> we reach Earth if we ever reach it. Yes, I'm beginning to wonder if we'll ever get away from this place myself. But tell me, what happened? Where did you get that radiation? The dome. You know, say, for an atom furnace that was supposed to have handed in its chips, that place sure packed the radiation wallop. Yeah, you know, Mitch, I, I was just puzzling about that. Where could it have come from? I don't know. Didn't get that much of a look at the place. We were looking at those rods, remember, when... Hey, that's it. Yeah? What, Mitch? The rods. I was just wondering whether they could be refills for the furnace when the jitter juice got us. That's it. Radioactive? Hmm. If they were refills, perhaps they would be. Of course they would. Radioactive material for the hot box. What do you think, Rocky? Hmm, I think you've hit it, Mitch. The rest of the plant was free of contamination, but if they were designed to restart the furnace, the rods would have to be radioactive. Then the ancient scientists who built those things left a supply of fuel inside to keep them going. You sure <laughs> did, and that solves a problem for us. I was beating my brains out trying to think what sort of stuff we could use getting nowhere fast. Then if we can devise some sort of shield against exposure, we can get the domes working again and then get out of here. Yeah, shields. Now that's going to be the problem. Mm hmm Giggling grasshoppers, how are we ever going to find anything to shield us from radiation that strong? Well, without some protection, we can't recharge the furnaces, Mitch. And until you manage that, the tripeds won't give us the course away from here. Yeah, so what do we do now? Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky, what do we do now? <laughs> it's pretty dark now, Van. Let's get out of here, huh? All right, but we need to be cautious. Hold on a minute. What? I just want to look around. Oh, no sign of anyone. Oh, oh, my stiff. Oh, it's certainly a relief to get out of there. <laughs> yes, but it was a good hiding place. Uh, which way did the Amazons go? They seem to go somewhere over there. Come on, then. But keep in the shadows. We won't need to. It's soon. It's, it's getting dark fast. Over here? No, keep to this mossy sort of lawn. Seems to lead to the street over there. Shall we sneak along, keeping close to these bushes, and have a look, see? All right. But keep together. Sure gets dark first here. It's nearly black now. Hey, look. There's a deep shadow where that bush is, right near the entrance. A good place. Come. From here, we will have a good view of the street. We're in luck. Looks like they don't use street lights. <laughs> they have no need. Have a look at the roadway. Luminous. And getting brighter as it becomes darker. <sighs> There's practically no one about. We can't go that way. It's much too bright. Look, there is a narrow strip of garden along the edge of the road in this direction. Oh, plenty of bushes, too. Looks like a lane or something at the end there. Look, you see it? Come on. There's not much space behind the bushes. Can't help a rustling sound. It can't be helped. Still, still don't make a sound. Someone's coming. Yes. They will pass within a few feet. Oh, just our luck. Hey, they're looking this way. Keep stock still. 
They have seen us. They'll give the alarm. And then we've got to do something quick or we'll be caught. <laughs> White-faced, Paul and Ivan step from their shelter and face the two suspicious Astrosians. The strange cat-like eyes widen with surprise and anger. They open their mouths to call a warning. Can the boys escape this dangerous situation? There is thrilling action ahead, so be sure you hear the next exciting chapter of the Rocky Star Adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In space, an adventure with Rocky Star. On the planet of Astros, Paul and Ivan are still free. Thanks to the hiding place in the clump of strange plants, they escape detection by their pursuers. After waiting for darkness to fall, they cautiously emerged and crept through the garden to a nearby street. A narrow line of bushes bordered it to the right. But just as they were gliding along behind the protection of these, two Astrosian Amazons came by and caught sight of them. Come on! They have seen us. They'll give you a lamb. We'll be caught. Quest, you hear Quest? Yes, this is a prisoner and I lose it unless you keep quiet. That is better. You two understand English? You understand our talk? A little. It is stood under. Okay, if it's understood, do as you're told. What now, Van? Do not act strangely. You understand? You have stopped, not because you see us, but to look at these bushes and flowers. Oh. Is it understood? That it is so. Now walk along naturally and enter the garden. What are you plan, Van? Tie them up. Our only chance. Walk along. Wait, someone coming. Listen, Astrosians. I have a pistol pointed at you. Stare at the flowers. Give no warning or I fire. Quick, crouch down, Ivan. If they give the alarm. Give another fool. I've gone past. Keep down a minute. I'm in a cold sweat. I was in a flat panic. It's lucky we have this gun. They are turning into the park. Good. Keep walking. Right into the shadow. Well, at least I understand, all right. Yes. This should be far enough. It is death to scullions who act so. Perhaps so. <laughs> yes. You will be greatly of sorrow. No talk. Just do as we say. What are we going to tie them up with, Ivan? The sash above these pantaloon things they wish to do. We'll move it quickly now. We'll need gags, too. First tie hands and feet. Tear this into strips. Yeah. Oh, it won't tear. Oh, won't it? No, it's some special tough sort of material. You are great fools. Quiet, stay where you are. I can see well in the dark. Paul, tie their feet with these sashes and hurry. Yeah, it won't take long. Wind them around twice. I am. You too? Remove the belts you wear around your waists. The belts. Is not understood. The belts you use for flying. Take them off. Is not understood. You understand all right. Their feet are tied. I'll take the belts off. Looks like an easy clasp. You will be sorrowful of this great sorrow. Quiet. I'm trying to avoid giving you the ray, but if you make me angry, it will save much trouble. All right, quiet them. Here is my knife. Cut off their sleeves. The sleeves? Oh, yeah, good idea. You should try the hands. Tighten it, Paul. Don't worry, I'm taking no chances. We won't get out of these in a hurry. <laughs> That's one. Can you see? Yeah, reflected light from the roadway. Now I can do the gagging. This is quiet. Oh, where's that other piece? I got it. Now you, my friend. That's done it. Now into the bushes with them. Yeah. <laughs> the other... Ah, here's the belt. Now come, we have been here too long. Let us get away quickly. At least we made the laneway. It's dark too. It is as well. If all the roads were luminous, we would never be able to move about. 
You think those two will get away from the park? They should be safe there for a while. But I wish I knew what was said to the passerby. Yeah, they, they might have tipped a warning in their lingo. Uh, look, uh, uh, the end of the lane ahead. Keep in the shadows. Ivan, how are we going to find Ilma? We don't know where to look. We saw the car bringing her toward the city. You know, perhaps if we can get her bearings. We, we came to the right-hand side of the city, and Ilma seemed to be headed for somewhere over to the left. But which is the right and left now? And that was from the clearing where we landed, remember? Oh, yeah. Seems hopeless, doesn't it? Cautious now. The lane seems to lead into another street. The shadow near the corner there. A doorway or something. I'm going to have a look from there. Right. Take care. I will. If that, what do you know? It's the street we came along. You are sure? Certain. It's the one they drove us along when they brought us from the Taurus. I recognize the new building that's going up. It's just along to the left. Then we know where we are. Ilma must be somewhere at the far side of the street. The far side of the city beyond the street. Yeah, well, that means to get to her, we've got to cross the street. There is a little traffic. Only one vehicle has passed since we have been here. Oh, but it's so bright, Van. Oh, we're sure to be seen. In daylight, it will be even brighter. Wait. Try the door in this wall. It won't move. The catch. There's no knob or anything. There must be something. I'll run my fingers over it. Uh, something. A sort of a round bump. Will it move? No. I'll try pre pressing it. Uh, Van, that's it. The door moved. We must find clothing. A disguise. Perhaps inside here. We might get caught. We must cross this street and we can't do it dressed like this. No. Well, okay, Van. Lead the way. Their hearts pounding, Paul and Ivan slip through the opening into the strange building. Meanwhile, on a hopper tie, Rocky and Mitch sit dejectedly in the control cabin. Ah, uh, it's no use, Mitch. We just can't recharge those atomic furnaces. Everything's too radioactive. Ah, uh, you said it, Rocky. Well, that stuff's far too hot to handle without proper protection. Ah, uh, what now? Well, we can't do the job, that's obvious. We have nothing to use as a shield against the strength of the radiation. All right, so what do these tripeds do about that? Yeah, they promised the course calculation so we could leave if we fix those things. That's why I, well, I promised to try. Yeah, we can fix them. Tell them that and get the calculations anyway, Rocky. Oh, I did, Mitch, I did, and all they said was that I'd promised. You mean they're going to keep us here till we do stoke up their uh, central heating? Mm-hmm. Whether we can or not? Look, Rocky, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Let's quit all the high-minded ideals and show these monstrosities we mean business. Oh, Mitch, please, I've yeah, told you before. Yeah, I know, I know. You don't like violence. What's wrong with sticking them in the eye with a ray gun and saying the course or else? Be so simple. Yeah, I'll have to do something, Mitch. Heaven knows where that Taurus is now and what's happening to those kids. Yeah, and we're supposed to find them, remember? Come on, Rocky. Listen to your Uncle Mitch and be sensible. I don't know whether it's possible. Oh, pos here you are, you two. You still puzzling? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I... Hey, what's the idea? We beat our brains out while you do a tourist joint around those ruins out there. Well, I have to do something to keep up my morale. Besides, Rocky, I've found something really interesting. Oh? It seems to be a door of some kind, and there are symbols on it, sort of picture writing. Symbols? Prehistoric comic strips. Oh, well, one symbol was a dome with wavy lines radiating from it. Look, I get... Dome? Did you say dome? Wavy lines? Hey, that could represent heat. Well, that's what I thought. I don't know what's in there, but it, it, it just might give you a lead about those atomic furnaces. Well, let's take a peek of this place. Come on, climb into spacesuits and let's go. Here it is, Rocky. Mm, half buried. That's a doorway, all right. Yeah. And look, that doesn't represent one of those heating domes. You can call me a Martian moron. And the other signs look as if they could be connected with electronics, too. Yeah, the trouble is, how do we open this thing? Oh, it's laying so long, and all that soil and rubble. Yep. Well, we'll have to break in. I don't like the idea of using a ray gun. There might be something in there that'll go up. 
The Pulsator energy beam. That's our best chance. Okay, just as well you brought it. All right, now stand clear and I'll see if it makes any impression on the top part of the door. It's blasting chips off it, Rocky. Yeah, looks like metal, but it's really stone. I think it's cracking. A mighty tough material. Did it! That's it, all right. Smash it to fragments. Ah, well, should be easy to get through there. Uh, light, Mitch. Okay, thanks. Hey, it's quite a drop down there. Look. Hey. Mm. Long way down by the look of things. Still, it's no good standing around. I'm definitely going down. Here it goes. Oh, Rocky. Are you sure it'll be all right to go down? Well, I don't know, Di. It's rather hard to tell from up here by this torchlight, but... It seems to be. Well, well I... be careful anyway. You just take it very easy, Rocky, and keep watching me, and I'll be watching you. If anything goes wrong, give me a scream. Okay, Mitch. Okay, well, uh, just steady me, will you, while I scramble through? Okay, hold right, on. Right. Right. Uh, easy, does it? All right, steady. Easy. A bit more light. Right. Uh, How's that? Okay. Uh, now I should be able... Mitch! Die quickly! Help me out quickly! Pull me out before it's too late! What unexpected danger has Rocky found in the buried room that he should call out so urgently? And what of Paul and Ivan creeping into the building on Astros? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next action-packed chapter of the Rocky Star Adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! Having undertaken to repair the atomic furnaces of a hopper tie, Rocky and Mitch find themselves at a standstill. Intense radioactivity makes the job impossible to do, but Di finds a door amongst the ruins with signs on it that seem to indicate it has some connection with the furnaces. Climbing into spacesuits, the three go to the spot and shatter the door to pieces. But as Rocky climbs through to explore what lies beyond, he suddenly cries over his intercom for help. Mitch! Di, quickly, help me out! What is it, Rocky? Quickly! Pull me out before it's too late. Grab his other arm, Di. I can't reach. I've uh, got it. Have, come on, what's on? Have you out, Rocky boy? All right, come on. Don't, pull harder. Something's hey. holding him, Mitch. Wait, have a look. Hey, don't. Please don't let go. Giggling grasshoppers is one of those red jelly things. Oh. He's got him by the leg. I can't hold him, Mitch. I'll have to ray it. Quickly, Mitch, quickly. You might blast Rocky. I have to take a chance. <laughs> yeah. Are you clear, Rocky? No, no. Oh, Mitch, he's slipping away. Another try. I can't hold him, Mitch. I'll have to let him go. Oh, wait, hang on, Rocky. I, I can't, Mitch, I can't. Oh. It's loosening. Oh. It, it's slipping free. Quick, get him out of there. Come on, up. Oh. 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 I thought I was gone. Sorry I took so long, but I was scared of hitting you, Rocky. Oh, oh the place has been sealed for centuries. How did one of those horrible things get in there? I can't understand why the light beam didn't pick it up. Well, it got itself nicely fried for its trouble, that's for sure. Give me the light. I want to have a gander in there. Oh, be careful, Mitch. Well, don't worry, chicken. Hey, it looks like this must have been the headquarters of the electronics section. I... Hey, Rocky, die. This place is alive with those red things. What? They look kind of transparent in the light. That's why you didn't see them at first. Let me look. Oh, must be their nesting place. Mitch, they're coming out. Look out, they're oozing towards the hole. Oh, come away, you two. What are we going to do? We won't be able to get in there at all. Look, Rocky, there's one coming through the opening. Well, keep well away from it. Oh, it's horrible. Just pulsating, oozing jelly. And those tentacles that shoot out from the edge of it. Yeah, that's as far as it comes. Simple. Shrinking away to nothing, see? Yeah, look out, here comes another one. They're all coming out. Well, it looks as if we have a little job of extermination on our hands. Ah. Ah. I never felt so glad to see anything wiped out. Come on, Mitch. We're going to ray the whole lot of the inside there. With pleasure. Clean up the lot of them. But, Rocky, what about the equipment inside? It'll be destroyed. Well, we can't turn these things loose on the offer Here comes another. Uh, all right, Mitch. Follow up now while the opening's still clear. Not too close, Rocky. I don't trust them. Uh, uh, light, please, dive. Now we can see what we're doing. Blast every nook and corner, Mitch. Don't let one get away. <laughs> A 
That seems to be the finish, Rocky boy. Uh, shine the light down there, where that opening is at the back. Uh, there's nothing there. Oh, good. Well, Di, you coming down with us? Oh, I don't suppose there's much to see. Now the place has been blasted with energy rays. Still. Now, oh, easy, chicken, easy. It's quite a draft. Yeah, take my hand, Di. That's it. All right. oh. 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 It gives me the creeps being in here. Knowing it was full of those awful things. Yeah, keep an eye on that other opening just in case. There are some more further in. Well, there's gear here, Rocky. I don't know what most of it was supposed to do. Like Dice said, the energy rays sure made a mess of it. Mm. That's a pity. Oh, it's strange to stand here, knowing that once it was an important laboratory or workshop, and yet it's lain sealed up for thousands of years. Just a, a nesting place for... I wonder what oh. they lived on. Hey, the second opening seems to lead to quite a maze of passages. You know, there could be all kinds of things living down there. Hey, look, Rocky. Yeah? Something like a huge centipede. See, it's scuttled along down oh, there. Oh, yeah. bring the light back here, boys. I'm nervous. Yeah, well, let's take a quick look around and scram out before anything else unpleasant happens. Well, it's clear this place had something to do with the maintenance of those domes. But as Mitch said, everything's so warped by the heat of the energy rays that... What is it, Rocky? Look. Look. Look on the wall there. Some kind of... Some kind of suits hanging up. Suits? Yeah, with three legs. So the tripeds wore clothes once, huh? What do you know? Well, can't you see, Mitch? We blasted that spot well and truly. Look, look at the fused mass of copper. And yet the suits are unharmed. They resisted energy bolts. Giggling grasshoppers, this is it, Rocky. They must be for anti-radiation protection. Well, they're worth trying anyway. Come on, grab them. But three legs... Well, we could never wear them. Well, then we'll have to alter them. Uh, you got the lot, Mitch? Yeah, I... Gee whiz, look out, Rocky. Here come some more of those thingamabobs from the opening there. All right, shine the torch through there. Oh, a mass of them. Come on, quickly, climb out. Die first. Come on, you go. Oh, go on, die. All right, after him, Mitch. Go on. Look out, Rocky. Come on, up you go, die, quickly. Again, come on, I'll miss you now. Right. Come on, quickly. Ah, up, quickly, hurry it through. I got it. Oh, right, give heaven. me a hand up now. Come on. Come on, up. Oh. Here we are. Oh, right. Thank heaven we're out of here. Yeah, they'll be following us up in a minute. Stand clear, Di. What's cooking, Rocky? Grab that pulsator beam. Di, you got your ray gun? Yes. All right. Then let the top of this ruin have it. Collapsing on top of them, huh? That's right. Right. Well, that's that. Yeah, I buried them safely out of the way. Oh, I wonder what secrets are buried there with them. I wonder. Well, at least we got those three-legged combinations, five of them. Now, come on back to the street. Make them into something we can wear against radiation. These are our passport away from this place. As Rocky and Di and Mitch hurry back to the street far away on Astros, Paul and Ivan are standing nervously inside the door of a strange building. The floor here is luminous. And the walls, too. Not too brilliant, thank goodness. Let's try this way. No, wait, Ivan. It's a good idea of getting clothes as a disguise, but how do we know we'll find them here? We don't. We must look. Now, quiet and come. Ipeni Nicolato. Wait. All clear? Yes. Come. Oh, there's another bend. Oh, there's a door. Let us go closer. It is closed. The catch is the same as on the outside door. Ivan, don't touch it. Why not? I will see if I can open it. But we don't know what... Shh! He is unlocked. See, it opens without a sound. You're not going in there. Just a quick look. I must. Stay here and keep watch. Ivan pushes the door soundlessly and glides through the opening. Tense with nerves, Paul waits. There is no sound, just his own breathing, and the ghostly green glow from the bare walls of the corridor. Time drags by, and then Ivan is slipping through the opening like a shadow and slowly closing the door behind him. Ivan, what happened? What'd you find? Shh! Get away from here a little first. Now, what was in there? 
It was a room. Thick sides. They must be all thick-sided like cells in honeycomb. That is why the passage bends so much. Oh, never mind that. What did you find? It was a bedroom. There were two Astrosians asleep there on round beds like, like big cushions. They curled up on them like cats. No clothes we could use lying about. No. There were panels of the wall that looked as if they might be the doors of cupboards, but I thought it unsafe to try and open them. Another door, look. You're going to go... Shh. What? What? Wait. What? Close the door first. Mm. The same as the other room. Oh, it doesn't look as if we'll get clothes here. We must keep looking. Come. Mm. Another door here. Different kind of door. Open it carefully. Uh, no good, it leads to the street. I think we'd better wait. Look, further along, Paul. See? Small and low. Ah, it looks a different sort of door. Perhaps a cupboard. Well, surely they won't keep their clothes out in the passage. Why not? Everything else is different. It, it seems to move. Stiff, though. Here, you push too. All right, though, I don't... Ah, hey! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What was it? What happened? It opened suddenly and we fell through. <clears throat> sort of shoot thing, like a, a laundry chute. I mean, this is no laundry. Listen, we have disturbed someone. We must hide quickly before they come down here. <laughs> What sort of place is it into which the boys have plunged themselves? Can Paul and Ivan escape detection again? There is excitement ahead, so don't miss the next gripping episode of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star! While Rocky and Di and Mitt struggle to get a radiation shield that will enable them to repair the atomic domes of a hopatai, far across space, Paul and Ivan are on the run from the Astrosian Amazons. Their one hope is to obtain a disguise, so very cautiously they start to search a building in the hope of finding clothes. But as they investigate a small square door, it suddenly springs open, sending them headlong downwards. Then as they pick themselves up, dazed and bruised, there is the chatter of Astrosian voices in the distance. Listen, Paul. The noise has disturbed someone. We've got to hide quick. If they look in here, we'll be caught. It is so dark, no way of telling where to hide. There are bundles, lots of them, all stacked up. They're kind of soft. Oh, yes, yes, you're all right. We knocked some over when we fell. Set them quickly so no one will know that, that anything has been disturbed. Can't see that do it properly in the dark. Uh, no matter. As long as they are tidy, feel around and see if there are any more. Oh, don't seem to be. Oh, they are coming. The stuff, whatever it is, seems to be stacked right against the wall. Move it out and we might be able to squeeze behind. Then quickly. A few more. Now, wiggle behind. All right. Quiet. Galleon, you are here. We will search for you. Poor. Oh, they've gone. They started moving things around. I thought we were gone. Another six inches and they decided me. Did you notice what place this is? Seems like a store. It is. We must have fallen down some kind of delivery hatch. We are surrounded by stacks of clothing. Clothing? Oh, I was too scared to notice. Oh, the very thing we need. We'll need some light to see, though. There was a click when they made the walls glow. Perhaps there is a switch near the door. I will see. Anything? Yes, a lever. Wait. There. Oh, nothing. Look at it. Talk about luck. But we must work fast. Oh, look. Pantaloons, sash, coat. 
This is what we need. One of those pointed hats they wear. Come on, let's get the stuff and, and get out of here fast. <sighs> out in the lane again. I thought we'd never make it. It was worth the risk. Look as casual as you can. No one will know we are from Earth. I'm nervous about my shoes. If only there'd been shoes down there. I don't feel nervous. Keep calm. Now, are you ready to cross the street? Well, as ready as I'll ever be. Hang on. Sounds like one of those cars there is coming. Keep in the shadows until it has passed. No, how about walking across right behind it? The street won't seem so empty. Here it comes then. Now. Don't hurry, Paul. Slow and steady like they walk. I'm trying. Oh, my yike, crossing a luminous street. I feel like I'm in the middle of a searchlight. Are you there? I've got a shivery feeling down the back as if someone's watching. Don't turn around to look. It is the surest way of arousing suspicion. Oh, made it. Oh. Straight along the continuation of the laneway. It's best for safety. Oh, it feels so good to be in the shadows again. Now we've got to find Ilmer. And half a city to look for her in. Oh, if only we... Hey, what is it, Paul? It seemed from a long way off, but... I'm sure I heard a voice speaking English. An Astrosian perhaps following us. No, Evan, it can't be that. This voice was speaking with a familiar accent. How many more bars got to be loaded into this atomic pile, Rocky? Well, I think we're getting near the end, Mitch. Yeah, let's have a rest a minute, huh? This is hard work. Yeah... You know, Di made a good job of turning these three-legged suits into something. Sure did. wonder what sort of stuff it is, Rocky. Keeps radiation away. Uh, it's evidently some substance we know nothing about. Uh, still feel all right? Yep. Yeah. No symptoms of radiation sickness at all. Now I got complete faith in these suits now. <laughs> well, that's more than you had when we started. You know, I've never seen anybody so nervous. Yeah, well, don't you make with a casual indifference, Rocky boy. You were plenty nervous yourself. <laughs> yeah. Hey, maybe the tripeds will soon give us the course out of here, huh? Oh, that's certain now, Mitch. They were very pleased all those red monsters were wiped out. Yeah. You know, I just can't get used to those tripeds. Bunch of creatures that can work out a complicated course through all that rock and stuff up in the rings. They knew we were coming from Earth. They could send telepathy out in a sort of beam, and yet they still don't know enough to look after their atomic furnaces. Well, you do know how, yet you can't do a lot of things that they can, so it cuts both ways. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, come on. Let's get on with this job. Right. There are seven more atomic piles to deal with after this one. While Rocky and Mitch toil to get away from a hopper tie and Paul and Ivan hurry nervously along dark laneways of the Astrosian city, Ilma is still a prisoner in the glittering apartment to which she has been brought. Empira, the Astrosian ruler, has come to her yet again. I give you good morrow, Earthwoman. Ah, silent. You make no answer to my greeting. How much longer am I going to be shut up here? By my faith, not still inflamed with anger at us. This ingratitude. I feel like a prisoner. Tis my guest you be. Then why can't I leave this place? Tis a matter of cure. We only seek to restore your strength and dignity. How many more times must I tell you that I'm not sick? Oh, please let me out of here. Tis some slight amusement you seek, perhaps. Turn the handle on yon green box. The walls will glow with changing colors. Sweet music will hang in the air. Shapes will twist and dance in nothing. Come, amuse yourself. I don't want to be amused. Come. I've seen those things. Did you not find them most averting? The first time. I don't want entertainment. I want to get out of here. I want to join my friends, Paul and Ivan. Ah, it is the sickness still strongly upon you. Oh, I'm not sick. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. It is ill for one of the fair to lose her dignity and mix with scullions. Men have no place in your life here. But that's not the way it is on earth. Oh, how many more times do I have to tell you that? How clearly can you recall earth now? Quite clearly. I... Yes. Speak on. Oh, we've come so far. And it seems far away and unreal. It is like a dream that cannot be remembered clearly. Much travel leaves you with a sick delusion of the mind that Scullion should be your friends. Come. Some diversion to soothe and bring calm. No. I will pull the lever 
Music? No, and... no, 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 no! All right, mm. truth, what action is this? You defy me? You smash the box of illusion. I told you I didn't want your music! It seems you need other treatments. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, truly, it's just being shut in here all the time. Oh, please. Please, can't I go out for just a little while? Well, it is like there may be reason in your words to be so close confined. Very well, oh. other entertainment there shall be. You shall leave here for a while to see what you may see. Truly be entertainment to your taste. Oh, thank you. When, when can I go? In a brief space. I will come for you. Now be content. Are you awake? I certainly am awake. I never could sleep in the daytime. I find it difficult also. Besides, I'm too hungry to sleep. I want to say nothing of being uncomfortable perched up here on this ledge. Well, we were lucky we could find a building with a ledge we could climb to. At least up here we're out of sight. Yeah, I realize that, but it doesn't make it any more unpleasant. Oh, we must have walked for hours. It is a mystery. You said it. Oh, boy, I'm thirsty. So am I. Look, let's go looking for something to eat and drink. Not while it is still light. We may be seen. If we wait till it's dark, we won't know where to look. It is not worth the risk of getting caught. Look, we, we can't go on without food. I wonder how far this ledge goes. I'm going to crawl along and have a look. But we'll keep low. Do not be seen. Relax, I won't. You coming? Oh, all right. I can hardly see a thing from where we've been sitting all day. If we can only sight a food shop, so tonight we'll know where we... Why are you stopping? There's an opening. Just above the ledge here. Sort of a, a window. <laughs> Keep watch below. And anyone in sight down there? Only a group I've just passed. I'm going to stand up and have a look. Hey, it is a window, Ivan. There's some sort of table in there. It looks as if it's spread for a meal. I'm going to climb through and grab some of it. Are there no people? No. It's risky, but if I'm quick... Anyone below? No, still clear. Well, give me a leg up. Be as quick as you can, Paul. Don't worry. A flask. That'll be something to drink. Van, take this flask. You got it? Yes, I did, Paul. Yeah, I just grabbed some food. And... Oh, food. I wish I had some pockets to... What the... Oh, the door. Scuddy! That's Scuddy. Stay. You are caught. <laughs> His hands full of food, Paul stares undecidedly at the angry Astrosian advancing toward him. Her companion takes in the situation and moves rapidly toward the window. He is trapped. What will happen now? There is exciting action ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> In, in space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Paul and Ivan have escaped recapture and are still at large in the Astrosian city. But daytime is the danger time, and to avoid recognition, they are forced to climb to a wide ledge on a tall building and hide there. The sun is hot, the ledge is hard, and by late afternoon they're tired, hungry, and thirsty. But exploring along the ledge, Paul finds the window of a room where a meal has been set. Hurriedly scrambling through the opening, he passes a flask of liquid out to Ivan, but just as he snatches at the food, the door opens and two Amazons walk in. One moves toward the window to block his retreat. Say, Scallion, you are caught. Paul, get him quickly. Catch the food. We have you, insolent one. Oh, I'm oh, 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 the door. I don't have Trick you. Help, help, help me, Ivan, quick. Take my hand. I've got hold of my coat. Leave him go. Leave him go. Come on, Paul, let's jump. Break our necks. 
We can't one scrambling along this ledge. Jump and use the gravity belt to let you down. We'll have to. They're coming after us. I don't know which way to switch it. <laughs> Try switching it to the left. <laughs> Jump! <laughs> Van, we're going up. We're traveling in a curve. Paul, listen, we will clear this building. We can order the control and come down into the next street. What about people? We must get away from here. Oh, we've nearly cleared the building. <laughs> Try to switch downwards. We'll stop going up. We're drifting sideways. Then to the right, we'll send us down. We're nearly above the next street. Now, now watch the right moment. Now, switch down. Oh, down safely. Looks terribly busy, Van. All these people. Keep your voice down. Just walk. They dress like Astrosians. Act like what? Strung with nerves, Paul and Ivan saunter along the street. Every Astrosian that passes brings danger. They feel sure they must be detected. It takes a tremendous effort of will not to turn to see if they're being followed. But the outward casualness that costs them such an effort brings results. No one gives them a second look. At last, to their relief, a narrow street opens to the right. Down here, Ivan. Anyone following us? Drop that package of food and look as you pick it up. Right. All serene. We did it. I just felt so prostrated. It, it was not pleasant. Keep walking. How about stopping for a bite to eat? It would look too suspicious. Eating in a narrow street like this. Well, let's find somewhere we can get out of sight. I'm ravenous. It might be hard to... Wait a minute, Paul, look. What? That door is open. Oh, look, we're not going into any more buildings. My nerves won't stand it. But it seems a great empty space in there, like a hall. It could be a good hiding place. Oh, well, a quick look. So you're right. Not a soul about. No. Just rows and rows of padded benches, all facing the one way. Like a movie theater. <laughs> There's no screen. Nothing but... White walls. Well, don't let's just stand here. Someone might come. There are spare benches stacked in the far corner. If we could get behind them. Come and investigate. By the way, how did you make those two let go of my coat? I thought they had me well caught. I hammered at their hands with the flask you gave me. Oh, look, look, look here. There is quite a space. We could crawl in there. Come. <clears throat> this is just what we need. Oh, what it is to feel safe for a while. Here, eat. It's funny looking stuff. I have sort of bitter sweet taste. <clears throat> as long as it takes away hunger. <clears throat> oh boy, am I tired. I didn't sleep at all on that ledge. All right. A meal, then a drink, then we will sleep a little in turns. But once darkness comes, we must somehow find Ilma. Yeah, how? Uh, I don't know. But we cannot escape back to the Taurus without her. That goes without saying. But she could be anywhere. Are we going to stay on the run like this till we've searched the whole city? What more can we do? She is somewhere. And wherever that may be, we must search till we find her. Meanwhile, far away on a hop tie, a weary Rocky and Mitch have just returned to the street. Ah, Rocky boy, that's that. Every dead dome recharged and humming. Oh, man, am I tired. Hope your tripod friends are satisfied. <laughs> well, if we've made a success <clears throat> of the job, there's no reason why they shouldn't be, Mitch. Yeah. That first pile we recharged must have been going 24 hours now. That's right. Hey, check the outside temperature dial, will you? Well, worst I? Well, you're the nearest. Uh, making a man get to his feet <laughs> just to read a dial. Yeah, you're nervous, Mitch, just as I am. In case the temperature keeps going down. Well, the guy's right to be after what... But... Hey, Rocky! What was the reading before? 68. What does it say? 69.2. And it's rising. Oh, Mitch, we've done it. Yeah, maybe now we can get away from this crummy joint. Yes. Huh? Unless those tripeds come up with some other excuse Rocky, to stop us. Rocky, Rocky, huh? 
There's a big crowd of tripods outside the airlock. Well, the job's a success, Di. Temperature's up more than one degree. I know. I was poking around the ruins and they crowded around me. They seemed excited and, and they said you two were great men. Yeah, you could say that again. Uh, Di, what about course calculations? Did you ask? Yes, they're sorry for us to leave. But they'll transmit the course calculations to us as soon as we want them. Yippee! What are you waiting for? Come on, Rocky, up the control deck. Let's get away from here before they change their minds. Rocky hurries to the control deck and sets himself before the great bank of instruments and levers. The others wait breathlessly. Suddenly his head sinks forward. He mutters complicated figures softly. His hands move deftly, twisting knobs, pulling levers. Then there's the thunder of takeoff, and the world of a hobbit eye with its strange coloring and its weird people is dropping away beneath them. Well, we're in the thick of it now, Di. Great chunks of rocks everywhere. I, I can hardly bear to look. Wreckage of Amenahu and the Yellow Planet. Yeah. We know what the Saturnian rings are made up of now, Mitch. All I want is to be through them. How those tripeds could calculate a course through all this, I can't imagine. Rocky still seems to be in some sort of a trance. Well, I don't care if he stands in a hole as long as he pilots the streak, right? Wow, look at the chunks. Seen him miss it by inches. Yes. Here come a bigger lot. Oh. oh, it's enough to make a guy a nervous wreck. I think all the time we waited just long enough to do this. Well, I'm glad that Rocky wouldn't let us use threats on the tripeds to get the course. Yeah. At least we saved them from dying out. Well, that's, uh, whether it's worthwhile saving weird-looking objects like that is it's, it's a matter of opinion. Personal, if you were... No, but you didn't. Hey, look. We're imagining things, or isn't it quite so thick outside? Look. Let me see. See that? Seems to be easing out a bit. Yes. Mitch, I think we're through. Look. I can see dark space and stars. Oh, oh wow. Wonderful. Farewell. Hey, Rocky's coming out of it. Uh, farewell. What's he saying? Farewell with gratitude, yes. Goodbye, tripeds. Uh, uh, what, what's the course? I, where, where? Oh. Oh, hello, you two. Ah, oh, Rocky uh, boy. Rocky. Oh, yeah? We're nearly through it. Oh. A few more seconds and we'll be out in space. Well, that's, that's good to know. I... Oh, boy. <laughs> Looks good, doesn't it? It sure does. After a red sky glaring down at you all the time. Yeah. From now on, I'm one guy who won't find red sunsets for all that. <laughs> yeah, count me in on that too, Mitch. Well, I can't believe it. We're on our way at last. But Rocky... Hmm? I think you look worried. What's wrong? Well, I suppose I am a bit. Well, make with the words. Tell Uncle Mitch. Well, I hope you haven't forgotten, but we came out here with a job to do, remember? Sure, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Remember. To find the Taurus and to find some heavy plutonium, remember? Mm. Well, I hate to have to mention this, but so far, we've got nowhere. So that's what you were looking worried about? Mm-hmm. What do you mean, nowhere? We got in the most amazing scrapes I've ever been in in my life. We meet all these yeah. odd-looking characters, and he says we got nowhere. I, what I are know. you talking I, I about? Know, Mitch, I know, but we haven't found the Taurus, nor have we found any heavy plutonium. All right, well, relax. We can get on with it now. Yeah, the question is, which way has the Taurus gone? She could be anywhere in space. Hey, look, Rocky. Yeah? Maybe if I rig up that detector beam again. You know the one that found Di with the terrific circuit oh, in it? Oh, yeah. We might be able to pick up something from our atomic motors. All right, all right. You do that, Mitch. And Di, get out the charge, pick out Earth, and take an astrofix, and see if we can find our way back. I'll set a course around Saturn until the beam's ready. <laughs> That circuit sending out a strong beam now, Mitch? Sure is, Rocky boy. Man, this circuit is really something. I think I'm a very clever boy. All right, get More on. More power than we used before, too, you know. I've got a bank of extra tubes wired up so that we don't blow the whole works. Just Good man. Just there. Uh-huh. All right, we'll keep it swinging. All directions. You're keeping this set until we get some sign, Rocky? Yes, Di. No sense plunging off in the wrong direction. Is this that fix? Yes. I've taken the bearings to five decimals. Mm -hmm. If you don't want me for anything else, I... I think I'll get back to the spectroscope. Try for some signs of heavy plutonium. Yeah, good idea, Di. Whether we locate the Taurus or not, that must be found. 
Well, give me a buzz if you need me. Yeah, right. Hey, that fix should put us right. Hey, Rocky. Huh? Listen to this. Now, you got something? Just listen. Yeah. Yeah, it could be radiation from an atomic unit. You think it's the Taurus? Well, it don't give itself a name, but if it's not a spaceship, what is it? What bearing? Uh, 62 in our present position. Uh-huh. I'll check it with the fix. Right. Hmm. Coming from the opposite direction to Earth. Mitch? Mitch, that must be the Taurus. Huh? All right, keep it in the beam. I'm changing course right after them. At this moment, the Taurus lies silent in an empty clearing on Astros. What is the signal Mitch has picked up? And where is the street headed as she flashes away into unknown space? There are thrills ahead, so don't miss the next action-packed chapter of the Rocky Star Adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> Lost in Space! An adventure with... Rocky Star! When Rocky and his crew manage to get away from the Saturnian planetoid at last, their chances of finding the Taurus seem remote. There is nothing to indicate which direction the stolen ship has taken. But Mitch rigs up a detector beam and picks up something which could be the radiation of atomic motors. Taking a careful bearing, Rocky sends the streak in pursuit. But unknown to the search party, the Taurus lies in a clearing on Astros. Ilma is a courteously treated prisoner, and Paul and Ivan are on the run. At the moment, the two boys are hiding behind a stack of benches in what appears to be a public hall. But a new development is taking place. Paul! Paul! Wake up, Paul! Why? Uh, uh, sorry, but I had to stop you talking. Listen. Astrosians. The place must be full of them. They started coming in about halfway through my watch. Great Ike, why didn't you wait? Oh, there was no point. There is no chance of getting out. What is it? A meeting or something? It must be. Look, there is a gap here between the benches. See them all? Masses of them. If they find we're here, look, it is a good hiding place. We have a chance. They're coming in so fast. I know. What if they need more benches? That will be unfortunate for us. You said it. I wonder what it's about. We may learn soon. Shh, quiet. What? Three or four of them are coming towards this corner. Granada! Granada! Ivan, shh. They're taking benches away. Still, keep still. They're carrying that lot away. Come on, Ivan. Where to? We've got to get out from here. As soon as you do, you'll be seen. If they move a few more of these benches, we'll be seen anyway. Shh, quiet. Ivan, we've got to keep quiet. There's our only chance. I don't think they're coming back. Can you see? There are no more people standing. That must be all the benches they needed. Oh, Look, we've got to get away from here. I'll be a nervous wreck soon. Just be thankful they stopped when they did. Another two or three moved and we'd have been found. That radiance from the wall. It's gone dim. Now, why should... They have become suddenly quiet. Perhaps we might be able to... Say, what the... Music. Earth music. The place is lighter, too. Of course. See the end wall? It is a fear. A film? They're showing one of those films left by the Pegasus. The one from which they learned English. I'm going to try and have a look. No, Paul. Oh, relax. It was risky to crane out your head in that way. Period film, it is. The Bandit of Sherwood. Still showing the titles. Look, have a look. Go on. Paul, it is almost incredible. Why? In the center, a bench higher than the others. Yeah, I saw her. Well, looks like some Amazon leader on it. Yes, but next to her. Did you not see who was next to her? Ilma. We have found her. This film is being shown for Ilma. <laughs> Thank you.
Mitch. Huh? Isn't that signal getting any stronger? Yeah, just what I was thinking, Rocky. Wait, I'll get a reading on the sound intensity. Just switch through. Uh huh. What does it show? According to the meter, it's nearly up 10 dB. It's quite a bit louder. Ah, then we're gaining. Oh, that's good to know. Of course we're gaining. There isn't a tub in a space ways to get away from the streak. It was not exactly five minutes ago that we got onto this course. Of course, time hanging heavy on my hands again. Fifteen hours now. Time I took another four or four hours in the bunk, huh? Yeah. Go and have a sleep, Mitch. I'll watch this for a while. What about you? Oh, I'll wake Di in a couple of hours. She can relieve me then. Oh, I better bring you up a space bottle of hot coffee before I start punishing the pillows, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, that'll help. You know, sleep would do you more good, Rocky. Fifteen hours straight watch is too much for anybody. Uh, you bring me that coffee. I'll survive. Yeah, but I guess... Go on, Mitch. Well, My no. job is to find the Taurus. And I'm not going to be able to relax until we catch up with her. Led on by the mysterious electronic signal, the streak goes plummeting further and further into space. Meanwhile, on Astros, Paul and Ivan still crouch silently in their hiding place. You will serve me as befits a man. I will serve you, my fair one, for always. Well, that's the end of the film, Ivan. Keep an eye on Ilva. We must not lose sight of her. I wonder who's the trump card she's sitting with. I trust you enjoyed well the entertainment I prepared for you, my guest. Oh, seeing Earth again. Trees and people. It was pleasurable for you? Oh, I must return there. I must. It will be a small success to my entertainment if not, but uneasiness comes from it for you. But Earth is my home. I had planned other showing to the speaking shadows for you. Perhaps it would be as well not to do so. Oh, no, please. It was so wonderful seeing green trees and grass and blue skies again. Well, it will receive my attention. You understand now how we speak with your tongue? Yes. Come. You must return to your place of dwelling. Oh, no. no. Don't make me go back so soon. Can't I stay away from it for a little while? You hope to find the scullions. But they're my friends. It is ill. Scullions must do naught but serve the fair. It was so in the shadow story. Oh, you don't understand. That was just a special way of talking. He had been a scullion, a servant, but they were going to marry. She called him that at the end as a, well, as a joke, a sort of way of affection. It is as I said, your mind is confused. Words mean what they say. They cannot have many meanings. Come, you must return to your room. My people wait for us to leave. Come. She's going to leave. That official's taking Ilmer out. Yes. Look, she seems unwilling to go. Once they leave here, we'll lose sight of her. It may take an age to find her again. Oh, the people are leaving. Come. What? Walk out openly? The lever controlling the wall radiance is in that corner. I watched it and saw. We must get to it. Come. Okay. Thank heaven we're dressed like them. Walk casually. There is no one to hear it. I am going to cut off the light. Wait for me near the wall there. Right. Paul! Paul, are you there? Over here. Black as pitch. Step along the wall. We must reach the door before anyone turns the light up again. A van? Yes. The door's just there. Walk out naturally. I'll try. We did it. Yeah, but where's Elmer? There, see. Entering that vehicle. We'll lose them. It's starting. There's another one here. Empty. Quickly, get inside. We don't know how to work it. We must try quickly before Ilma is out of sight. With feigned calmness, Paul and Ivan swing themselves into the strange dome-shaped vehicle and reach nervously for the controls. Meanwhile, on the streak far across space... Mitch! I thought you were in your bunk. Ah, it's no good, Rocky boy. I couldn't sleep. 
How you doing? Uh, gaining all the time. And uh, you look back at Saturn, it's sure kind of tiny now. Isn't yeah, it? I know. We're heading into absolutely unknown space, Mitch. Yeah, we would be. Where do those pumpkin-headed kids think they're headed anyway? Yeah, I ain't worried about that. Yeah, they must have had the idea they were heading for Earth. Mm. Hey, Rocky. Mm -hmm. th there's something about that signal we're following that I, I suddenly don't like. Huh? You don't like? No. Uh. Well, that's a fine thing to say at this stage of things. Well, I was never quite certain, you know. I was a bit dubious before. Didn't I? I kept quiet about it because... What's worrying you? Well, well listen, and well, what's the path in a minute? Yeah. See? Yeah. You still feel certain it's coming from atomic motors? Yeah, it's certainly strange. The oscillation is all different, you know. Yeah, it's true. Well, it's very hard to feel absolutely sure... Radar shows a speck ahead of us. Yes. Magnoscope shows a spot of light just like the blast of a ship. Hmm, but why would they be using their motors full blast all the time? Yeah, that's true. That's the thing that's had me worried. Yeah, Look at the oscilloscope here. Yeah. See? Fluctuating madly. Oh, you're right there. All right, Mitch, no good messing around. Let's call Diane and we'll see what she thinks. Right. Mm-hmm. There's something strange about this that doesn't quite ring true. But if it isn't the Taurus, what is it? Hey, Rocky. Uh huh. Rocky, come here, will you? What is it? Where's Di? She's at the spectroscope and looking for the color pattern of that heavy plutonium we're supposed to find. Yeah? Well, she's found it, Rocky. And guess where it's coming from? Right from the same bearing as that signal we're following. <laughs> Rocky's face creases in a puzzled frown. Then it's not the Taurus they're following. But what is it? And how does it come to show such strong signs of the rare, heavy plutonium? There are exciting developments ahead, so be sure you hear the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> Lost in Space! An adventure with... Rocky Star! <laughs> On Astros, Paul and Ivan have, by a lucky chance, caught sight of Ilma. But already they're in danger of losing her, for she has hustled into an Astrosian vehicle which drives off. Meanwhile, the streak is searching for them far away in space. When Mitch's detection gear brings in a positive signal, it is thought they have picked up radiation from the Taurus's atomic motors. They set a course and follow. But now doubts are entering the minds of the Streak's crew. Rocky's face is serious as he strides through the door of Di's laboratory cabin. Di, Mitch tells me you've picked up a spectrum of heavy plutonium. Yes, Rocky. See for yourself. It's on the screen. Hmm. There's a projector slide we brought with us. Yeah. Yes, I'm just watching. It's heavy plutonium, all right. And judging by the intensity of color, pretty strong radiation. Hmm. What have you trained a spectroscope on to get this, Di? Well, I was just swinging it slowly from star to star. Uh -huh. And suddenly, I, I thought I recognized the pattern. Held it onto that bearing. There it was. I see. Well, I, I don't know whether it's a star or planetoid or what it is, but... There's a definite point of light on the magna screen. Yeah, it's the same, all right. Yeah, bearing's identical. Same as what? Hmm? Hey, Mitch, didn't you tell her? Yeah. Oh, giggling grasshoppers now, Rocky. As soon as I saw that bearing, I came blasting back to get you. Oh, Mitch. Di, what you're picking up is coming from the same bearing as the ship we're supposed to be following. But, Rocky, if it's the ship, it, it can't possibly be the Taurus. We haven't got anything that uses special plutonium for fuel. You reckon maybe it's another ship? Well, if it is, it's traveling the same course as we are. Maybe it's been dropping in at Saturn for afternoon tea or something, and now it's on its way home. Home where? A giggle and grasshoppers, I don't know, Di. Well, all right. Well, nobody's ever been this far out in space before. You ask mm. dumb questions. It could be a ship, you know. But it's traveling slower than we are, and yet it, it uses more powerful fuel. Yes, but that doesn't seem to add up, does it? No, it certainly doesn't. Anyway, out of all this, one thing's certain. We've completely lost the Taurus. 
Oh, dear, I wonder what's happened to those three kids. Yeah. Well, unless a miracle happens, I'd say their position's hopeless. What do we do, Rocky boy? Go on chasing this plutonium buggy or whatever it is? Well, if it's giving out the right spectra pattern, we're duty bound to, Mitch. Mm. We've got to find the heavy plutonium. Well, maybe if it's a ship using it, we can tell them to hand it over and uh, that'll be a nice easy way out, huh? <laughs> oh, nice, nothing. But we might get a lead, certainly. You know, it, it's mighty mysterious, whatever it is. It's got me tricked. What do you think, Di? Well, I'd like to investigate. Yeah, that's true, but it could be dangerous. If it is a ship, there's no telling what sort of creatures will be aboard or what weapons they'll have. Well, that puts a different complexion on things, as the man said when his wife finished the makeup. <laughs> That's a joke of Mitch's time. <laughs> I got a million of them. Yeah, well, just don't worry about any more, Mitch. Or maybe we just turn around, huh? No. Uh -huh. I think we should take the chance. Let's go, Rocky. All right. After all, it is a voyage of exploration. Yeah, but listen, you two. What about the kids and the Taurus? Yeah. Well, I... I hate to say this, but... I'm afraid we've failed, Mitch. Yeah, it comes hard to say, though. Yeah, very hard. We did our best, Rocky. Yeah, don't kick yourself to death over it, Rocky boy. I, I, I can't help it. We said we'd bring them back, and now... <laughs> What's the use of fooling ourselves? Those three youngsters are finished. <laughs> But Ilma, Paul, and Ivan are far from finished, yet. As the vehicle bearing Ilma away disappears in the distance, the two boys are crouched in the unfamiliar transparent cabin of another machine, wrestling frantically with the controls. If we can't get this thing going in a few more seconds, we'll be caught, Ivan. Oh, I have tried everything. Nothing makes it move. It must be something. Lights have come on again in the hall. If the owners of this come out... What about these? Well, I cannot see in the dark. Two knobs above our heads. We'll try them. I can't... Huh. Yeah, that one moves. There are people pouring from the hall. And that moves, too. That's it. Now, one of these levers. We're moving. Yes, but backwards. Those Ostrosians are staring. Get it going quicker, Van. Oh, perhaps this. We're going forward. What's that? The owners, I think. Make it go faster. I am trying. Oh, oh, this is it. Look out, you're heading for the wall. I'm not sure how to steer it. Quick, Evan! Perhaps this. Evan! No, pedals, pedals, and, and the panel. Oh, too late, look out. Oh, it steers by pedals, as an old-fashioned play. I thought we were going right through that wall. That was only a glancing blow, but another split second. There's a street is ahead. See anything of the other vehicle? I think it turned left. Then we turn left. I'm not sure it could have gone straight on. We must know. Pull up, pull up at the corner. We'll have a look. I hope I can pull up. Oh, phew. I thought you were shooting straight out into the traffic. The left. It had a purple band around it. Yeah, there it goes, see? Then we go, too. Hey, that Ostrosian with the gun looks like a cop or something. She's waving us to stop. That's too bad. Did I miss her? Did I miss her? Yeah, by inches. Oh, that's good, I didn't want to hit her. Look out. She's taking pot shots after us. And we'll swing a zigzag course. Mighty, I can look out of van. It's all right. You really collected three vehicles, then. Better than collecting a ray blast. We just did it. Any damage? We've blown a hole in the back. We seem to be out of range. There goes the other vehicle. He turned to the right. Judging by the excitement back there, we got a batch of police cars or something after us. Oh. How far back? Fair way. They're gaining, though. Then we must shake them off. How? I don't know. Think hard. Hold tight, here is a corner. Great, Ike. I bet you nearly tore the ball carriage off it then. Look, the vehicle purple stripes ahead. Stop, too. Then that will be the building. We can't pull up, we'll be caught. This road is straight. If we could leave the vehicle without stopping. The anti-gravity belt. Yes. When we get past the building, we'll open the hatch and jump. Only the car going on. I give them something to chase. They're passing the building now. Have they turned the corner yet? No. We have to move fast. Open the hatch. Right. I've set the controls. Out you go, Paul. Quick, I'm right behind you. The van? Here. Listen. What is it? Keep in the shadows. It's those police buggies or whatever they are. 
Find out they are chasing an empty vehicle. Well, we better work fast. Where do we start? Well, Elena is somewhere in this building. We must find her if it means searching every inch of it. Hey, Rocky. Mm -hmm. Whatever that thing is, it's 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 getting much closer now. Yes. Come out. Wait a minute. See? Why don't you turn the screen up a bit, right? And blow it up. Uh-huh. There you are. That's about as high as it'll go. Yeah, it's pretty good, Mitch. Thanks. You're right. Well, what do you think? Is it a spaceship? That's clear enough on the screen. I don't know. Do you think it is? Uh if that if that you see that there? Mm -hmm. If that's glare from the exhaust blast, it, it it's well, it's just too bright to see what's in front of it. Yes. I, uh, personally, Mitch, I, I, don't, I don't see how it can be. You're giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. If it isn't a ship, then what is it? Yeah, I know. It looks like one. It's got all the, the possibilities of being one, but... I don't know. All the glare and flame, but it's... it's... It couldn't be a star anyway, that's for sure. It's too small, yes, isn't it? Yes, true enough. Wouldn't be any bigger than a good-sized meteor. <laughs> I don't know. It's a mystery. Di, what do you think about it? Well, the spectrograph showing such a concentration of heavy plutonium, mm -hmm. the solar cons will turn hand rings if we could take it back with us. Yes, but what do you think it is? Well, I give up the ship idea, that's for sure. No ship ever had an exhaust blast that big. I would say it's... Well, it's almost like a miniature star. A miniature star? Isn't it just yeah. like a woman? Who ever heard of a miniature star? It is yeah. like a miniature star. Uh, well, I don't know about arguing, but whatever it is, there's plenty going on there. Well, you look. All that glare and the spectrum and... Wait a minute, I'll check it on the oscillograph. Uh-huh. We'll blow it up and see what uh, what happens here. What, do you got anything? No, still in no different. It's, it's mm. a lot of glare, plenty of flame, but you can't make out what Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. I just thought if we picked up electro-radiation from it so far away... Hey, Mitch. What? Switch on the Geiger detector. The Geiger detector? Yeah, quickly, come on. Oh, okay, Rocky. What, what? what? You think we're gonna Come on, find hurry out? it up, quickly. All right, here it is. If you're gonna think we're gonna find anything on this, you got another thing coming. Hey, what do you know about that? Listen! Radioactivity. The thing's bombarding us with it, Rocky. Quickly, change course away or it'll be too late. <laughs> Rocky stares a moment at the fiery globe gliding ahead of them in space, then turns swiftly to the controls. What is this thing? And what of Paul and Ivan's plan to rescue Ilma? There is thrilling action ahead, so don't miss the next exciting chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> Lost in Space! An adventure with... Rocky's Ever since leaving Saturn, the streak has been following a radiation signal picked up by Mitch's detector beast. It was thought that this was caused by the atomic motors of the missing Taurus. But as the streak gains, doubts arise. Dye picks up a spectrum pattern of heavy plutonium. The screens show a rapidly increasing ball of fire. Suddenly, an uneasy thought crosses Rocky's mind. He calls out, Mitch, huh? switch on the Geiger detector. Oh, Rocky, if you think we're going to hear Come anything... Come on, quickly. Guy... Oh, all right. Hey, hey, Rocky, listen. Radioactivity. That thing's bombarding us with it, Rocky. Change course away quickly. All right, stand by. Firing deflector rockets. <laughs> Keep right away, Rocky. Right away. I don't want another dose of atomic frying like we got back there in the top of time. No. I wonder what that thing is, really. Well, if it's a ship, they sure got the best defense I ever heard of. All that fiery brightness. 
Surely no ship could be like that outside. Uh-huh. Yeah, that radiation's getting weaker. You two feel any reactions? Well, I'm okay so far. I look okay, don't I? Tell me. You're bursting with health, Mitch. Ah, disgusting. Lucky you sorted the detector, Rocky. We must have just got within range of heavy radiation. Yeah, sure enough. Seems safe enough here. All right, you can switch that thing off, Mitch. Right. Well, what are you going to do, Rocky? Put the streak into an orbit around that thing so we can have a good look at it. All right, stand by. Right. Now, that's it. Hey, Rocky, mm-hmm. don't you think it might be better to blast off quietly some other place, you know? <laughs> think what curiosity did to the cat. Why, Mitch, you're not nervous. Who, me? Nervous? Never let it be said. I've never been nervous in my life. I don't like that thing, that's all. After all, a stitch in time, you know, <laughs> gathers no... What? <laughs> you are thinking of a rolling stone. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting the heck out of here. Ah, <laughs> uh, you should be safe at this distance, Mitch. Well, if you say so. We've had two doses of gamma rays this trip, remember? I know. That sort of thing's liable to make a guy a little nervous. There's no telling what might happen next time, but you, you know? heard the Geiger result. Radiation's low from this distance. Yeah, well, maybe that thing can increase its range. Perhaps we'd better switch the Geiger on again, Rocky. There's no sense in taking risks. Yeah, it's true, Di, the unknown. All right. Switch it on again, Mitch. Okay, and if I hear anything, I'm getting out of here. Well, you're the scientist, Di. I'm afraid this is going to be mainly up to you. Well, I'm going to the laboratory cabin for some instruments. You'd better watch that radiation act intensity. Don't worry, chicken. You leave that to your Uncle Mitch. Hey, look at that thing, Rocky. Giggling grasshoppers. I wish I knew what it is. And I'll find out when she gets on the job. Yeah, well, that's what got me worried. She'd get interested and we'd go on cruising around her for maybe hours while she figures out what makes it tick. Hey, that radiation got stronger? Oh, come on, Di. Come on, hurry it up. Hurry it up. While the streak slowly circles the glowing ball of mystery in a city on Astros, Paul and Devon crouch in shadow near a certain building. I hope we're right about Omo being kept in this place, Van. It must be so. There is the vehicle in which she was driven away from the film show and popped in front. Yeah. None of the others have that purple band. It must be the one. There's no sign of the police vehicles returning yet. We must get away from here before they do. I can't get used to women cops. No, I. Even though the women are as men. But come. Where are you going? To find Ilma. We can't just walk in there openly. Why not? We are dressed in Astrosian clothes. I know, but... We have walked about openly before without being caught. But that was in a crowd. People don't notice so much. We must take the chance. There is no other way. All right. Hey, listen. Those police buggies are coming back. Come on, then. Walk through the entrance as if we had every right to be here. Easy enough to say. Two Amazons coming. Along that passage. Turn this way. Do you think they noticed anything? Can't be sure. Bend in the passage here. Take a quick look back as we go round it. Good idea. They walk straight out of the building. Oh, phew. Well, it looks like we'll have to take a peek in every room. We'll divide and go two ways. You to the left, I to the right. What if we bump into any of these pugnacious females? We will try and bluff it out. Feeling that, run, but first yell loudly. To let the other one know? Right. If I have to run, I'll yell Ilmer as I'm calling for her. Good idea. I will do the same. But, Paul, try your best to avoid such things. Well, don't worry. I'll meet you here in, say, ten minutes. If I don't get caught. A man? Yes? Oh, for a moment I wondered. Find anything? No. They seem to be nothing but stolen. Same my side. And what I think was a kitchen. Well, they got caught there, too. We must try the next floor. No stairs or lift. That means we go outside again. I like it no more than you do. But without the gravity belts, we cannot go up there. There is only an outside entrance to each floor, remember? Maybe one around the back. Same as on this floor. Oh, shh, someone's coming. Walk out the entrance as calmly as possible. They're making for the entrance, too. Keep walking. Outside. Turn right, then use your belt to go up. They're right behind. Up now. Switch to hover, then step in. Yeah, I know. Oh, 
Phew. Made it. Can you see? Any suspicion? I'll try and look down. Easy, man, easy. They walked straight up to the left there. They didn't suspect a thing. All right. This floor. Same procedure. The passage branches there, I think. Yeah. Well, here we... Oh, and someone's just come in the entrance. Keep together. This way. Around that bend, quick. I made it. Take a quick look, see? Coming this way, quick. The next bend's too far. That door. But we can't get... Quiet, listen. No sound inside. Have to risk it. Quickly. <gasps> Ivan, use bluff. Walk out. There's the other one. English. Scallions of English. Stay. Make a break for it, Ivan. Not so. Be still. Tis armed I am. Behold. A fist. We're beaten, poor. All a rotten luck. So you thought to escape, Scallions. You wear a disguise, as your moving shadow entertainments say. You've been seeing too many films. And you are foolish at disguise. Tis well done, but not well enough. <laughs> yes. I see the garb. The shoes, as my friend says. I knew they'd give us away a van. What are you going to do with us now? Shoot us? Shoot? Yeah, shoot. Use that pistol on us. Oh, no. It would be too easy, thus. What are you saying? I tell my friend to inform our ruler you are captured. I go, Earth Scallions. You have been sought long since you escaped. It will be great praise for me that I have caught you. No praise to you. It was just our bad luck. Silence. You speak too readily for scullions. You're not going to keep us here. No, we are leaving. Stay. I will shoot. There will be no praise if you kill us. It is always death to scullions who rebel too greatly. Move, and I kill. All right. Relax, friend. Relax. You win. Then leave the door. To yon corner, move with speed. We got our bluff called a van. Yes. Well, we're in the corner. Do we sit down? Remain standing. There you will wait until the scullion mistress comes to remove you. She will end this rebellion by the machine. The machine will soon bend your foolish wills. <laughs> Well, Di, have you got it worked out? As best I can, Rob. Mm -hmm. Eagle and grasshoppers, chicken. Don't say that after cruising around it too so long, you, you still don't know what it is. It's not a ship. That's certain. As near as I can work out, it seems to be some sort of miniature star. A, a miniature star? Oh, that's a new one. Well, that accounts for the plutonium reading. Mm -hmm. You know, plutonium was only formed as a result of the atomic reaction. Well, that globe there is like a big meteorite with an atomic core like the sun. Yes. It's so active, plutonium's being formed in big amounts. Well, that's the source of plutonium that the Solar Council needs. But it's not the answer to our search, Rocky. That thing's impossibly radioactive. You mean all the way from Saturn we've just been following a sort of wandering at atom furnace? I'm afraid so, Mitch. What's worse, we've found heavy plutonium and it's no use to us. Yeah, we're really getting results this trip, aren't we? Yeah, well, don't rub it in, Mitch, oh, please. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I just... just yeah. Radar warning. All right, switch on the screen quickly. No need for that, Rocky. There it is. What? See? Coming, but fast. Hey, hey, a spaceship this time. Will you look at the shape of it? It's long and flat. Rocky is heading straight for us. It's turned aside. Hey, something's still coming. A space torpedo of some kind. All right, stand by for evasive action. This is an attack. <laughs> With urgent speed, the street's crew throw themselves at the controls. Toward them hurtles a pencil-shaped black object, while the strange ship zooms past in a wide curve. Where has this ship come from? Why does it attack? And what have Paul Devan on distant Astros? 
There is excitement ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling episode of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. While on Astros, Paul and Ivan face captivity again. Far out in space, the streak is investigating a strange ball of intense radioactivity. But no sooner have their observations been completed than the radar warning bell clangs loudly and a strange flat spaceship is sighted coming toward them. Even as they watch the oncoming craft, it sweeps swiftly aside but leaves a pointed black pencil-shaped object flashing toward the streak. Rocky hurls himself at the controls and yells, Stand by for action! This is an attack! Firing deflector rocket, full power! All right, everyone? Oh, yes, Rocky. Yeah, just grab my seat in time. That torpedo or whatever it was. Miss this, Rocky. Hey, where's that that box? Look out, attacking left rear. All right, hold tight. Evasive action, hang on. Right, I'll do my best. Brother, that's action, all right. There it goes. And another torpedo, too. Uh, Missed us. It's turning, Rocky. How long do we let him keep this up, Rocky boy? Man the heat ray there, Mitch. You said it, man. I'd hold on. I missed us again. Mitch, the Rocky is lying on the deck. Oh, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. It swerved, cut me halfway to the ray cannon. Oh, I'm sorry, Mitch. I just had to dodge. Yeah, the space heavy spaghetti box will show him a thing or two. All right, hold tight. He really means business. Hey, did you see that? The torpedo misses by inches. All right, the gun, Mitch. Are you ready? Just give me ten seconds, Rocky boy. That's all. He's coming again. At least he doesn't seem to have any ray armament. All right, hold tight. He's got a ray. See that? It nearly got us. Come on, hurry, Mitch. Ready, Rocky boy. Give me a side on him. All right, I'll try it. I can't see you. To the right, Rocky. Swinging towards us. On the... I see him. I see him. Changing course. <laughs> All right, Mitch. No, not yet. Hold on a sec. I can't get him in the sights. Just Hurry it up. Minute. Hurry it up. Deflection right. Come on, a little right. Okay. Deflection right. Hurry, Mitch. He might fire. Changing course, but I see The Rocky heading straight for us. Deflection left. Deflection look out. <laughs> Mitch stares at the long flat ship with its square corners and sharpened nose as it screams toward the streak. A collision seems unavoidable. He wrenches at his gun control, trying to bring it to bear. Then the enemy ship halts suddenly in mid-flight and rotates, hovering in space to bring her ray to bear. There is an unexpected weakening of the streak's artificial gravity. Mitch struggles to stay in his seat and then realizes Rocky has sent her plummeting downwards. Then a heavy weight seems to be crushing Mitch into his seat. With deflector rockets booming continuously, Rocky is bringing the ship up in a tight spiraling curve. All right, watch for him, Mitch. Watch for him. There he goes! Rocky, I'm going to use the energy ray gun. It's too small, Di. I might get a hit. Look out, another torpedo coming. Yeah, I've seen it. There! I hit it! I scored a hit! Get shoot, check out! All right, hang on. Boy, was that ray close. I... You beauty! Got him! Got him! Rocky Luck, I got him! Caught in the powerful beam of the heat ray, the rear of the strange ship glows suddenly a deep red. The ship slows, hesitates, there is a brilliant flash, then only the forepart remains, drifting slowly and trailing jagged wreckage behind. Hey, you certainly scored a hit that time, Mitch. Yeah! I suppose there were beings of some kind in there. Well, Di, it was our lives or theirs. Yes, I know, it's... It's just the suddenness of it. I wonder where they came from. Why did they have to attack us? Yeah, deliberate, unprovoked attack it was. Hey, you sure handle a streak in top form, Rocky boy. I thought we'd had our chips more than once. Well, the streak wasn't exactly built for space warfare. Oh, you two did all right, though. Well, so did you. I reckon it was that burst you got in that slowed him up a bit and gave me the chance. Good shooting, chicken. You just happened to cross my sights, that's all. Rocky, do you want to go out and investigate what remains of that ship? Oh, I think we'd better die. We should try and get some clues about it. I'll put the streak into a closer position. Now, this is going to be really interesting. Come on, Di, let's get those space suits out. (laughs) 
while the Streak's crew prepare to investigate the wreck of the unknown ship. In the Astrosian city, Paul and Ivan are feeling desperate. They stand helplessly in the corner of the room where they were caught, still threatened by the vibrator pistol. Paul tries to make an appeal. Look, Anderson, whatever your name is, what can you get out of holding us as prisoners? We don't belong to your planet. You are scullions and escaped. It is not allowed. But what good can it do to, to shut us up? You will be so confined, I say. You will have freedom at work. But first, the machine will make you gentle of spirit. You kill our spirit and break our will, you mean? Too much there is of this talk and resistance. You are scullions, and scullions are inferior. And should not talk so. Be silent. <sighs> Looks as if we've had it, Van. Try and distract her attention. What for? Try it. Okay. And stop to this mumbling. Oh, oh, oh. What is this? Oh, oh, pain. Sudden pain. Stand. Oh. Do not move. But I'm in pain. Oh. Can I sit down? No. I, I can't do any harm sitting over there. Oh. It was such tricks you used before. I heard oh. of it. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to sit over there. And... Stand. You hear? Stand! Drop that pistol! What? Sorry, oh. it was a short burst. No doubt your arm will recover. Get the pistol, Paul. It will cost you dear scullions. This time you shut up for a change. Your pistol, Evan, had forgotten it. I had it under my coat. You gave me the chance I needed. But quickly. Tie her up. There is a cupboard. Open it. Well, just the thing. Get in there quickly. I refuse. Give her enough ray treatment to paralyze her, and then we just carry her in. Well, do you walk off? Very well. I obey. But will cost you dear, you impudent scullion. Lock it. Put the lever down. Right. Let's scram out of here. Hell, this must be just about due. If we hurry and... Oh, there they are. Oh, down quickly. Come on. Come on. And a present from me, too. That scattered them. Oh, come on, this way. They're giving chase. We can only find some place to hide. Keep running. The passage bends. Good place to hold them up. Wait a moment. It is a long stretch where we have just left. Any moment they should... Here they come. Both together now. <laughs> that made the rest scuttle back out of sight. We could hold them easily from here, Ivan. We must escape. Otherwise, it is only a matter of time. Here they come again. It was a back way out of this place. We could use anti-gravity belts and hide on the roof. Oh, good scheme. Perhaps, but... Oh, what's this? That comes to the... Oh, this is the end. That comes from ahead of us. On well, both sides, ahead and behind. We're trapped, Evan. Your anti-gravity belt, quickly, set it to rise. To rise? Yes, rise till we are lying flat on the ceiling. They may rush by underneath. Quickly, it is our only chance. Set your gravity belt to rise. To rise? Quickly, we must rise till we reach the ceiling. If we lie flat up there, they may not see us. Well, here it goes. The hover position, quick. Oh, oh I hit with a bump. Stretch flat. Quickly, like a sound, here they come. Ivan, they went past. Yes, they will meet the others. There. They realize they have missed us. Well, they're coming back. Shh. Hey, they've gone. It worked. He looked in every room and corner, but not upwards. Let's get out while the going's good. We must find the back entrance. Okay, come on then. No, look. no, no, wait. It is best not to sink down to the floor again. Why not? But we'll have to. No. Use the belts to keep us up here against the ceiling and see if we can crawl along. Crawl along? Why not? Try. <coughs> oh, say, we can. Quiet. Sort of. Someone is coming. All right. Now we make our escape along the ceiling like flies. <laughs> Oh, 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 
stuck to the ceiling like flies, Paul and Ivan commence to crawl slowly and carefully along. What chances have they of escape? And what of the strange ship that Rocky and his friends are about to investigate? Can there be life aboard? There are thrills and excitement ahead. So don't miss the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Caught as they search a building for Ilma, things look hopeless for Ivan and Paul. But while the Astrosian women who have captured them wait for authorities to come and take them away, the boys manage to turn the tables. No sooner have they reached the passage than they find their escape cut off. For a time, they manage to keep their pursuers at bay, then voices ahead indicate that their escape is blocked. For a second, they stop and look at each other in despair. Then they decide to set their gravity belts to rise and hover against the ceiling while the Amazon women come and go underneath. When they're once again alone, Ivan suggests to Paul that they should continue their bid for freedom and crawl along the ceiling. Crawl along? Why not try? <coughs> I'll say we, we can, Quiet. sort of. There's someone coming. All right. Now. We make our escape along the ceiling, like flies. Shall I look around this next bend? Yes. Well, well back entrance there, all right. A sort of Amazon policewoman down there on guard. That is bad. Come back from the corner a little so we can talk. Uh, we'll have to put that cop out of action. Yes. A ray blast might be heard. We might stand a good chance if we can get right above, and, uh, and then we could just drop down. Oh, no. No, there must be no noise. And besides, we might be seen. But if we make sure we keep behind her, our struggle would be would be too noisy. Now let's see. What would a man like Rocky Star do? <laughs> you know, all his adventures that I read and I cannot remember. Hey, I've got it. There's a jujitsu trick. Uh, thumb behind the ear. Yes. Now, now I have heard of it. Oh, but if their nervous system is different from ours, we'll just have to risk that. What do you say? Oh, we seem to have blundered into so much trouble in this place. The great spacemen never seem to have these difficulties. Oh, look, we can't hang up here on the ceiling holding conversations. Do we try it or not? Oh, very well. I will stand by with the pistol in case. Now we must cross the ceiling behind the guard without a sound. You said it. Oh, come on. Oh, oh too much noise. Slower. Now. No, you don't. Did it. Start cold. Good work, Paul. Quickly, switch the belts to rise. We must reach the roof. Did it, Paul. What an experience. Crawling on ceilings like flies, flying like birds. Oh, maybe up here we'll be safe. Although in daytime... Evan, the opening we just passed. The, the one to the top floor? Yeah. Something's just registered on me. Did you catch sight of anything? I had a glimpse of a silver room. Anything else? I think there was someone in there. There was. I was scared would be seen. Maybe that's why it just hit me. What? That female's clothes. Clothes? Oh, oh yes, of course. It was just a quick glimpse, but now I think back they were different. That's what I thought. We must have a look into that room, Paul. We could use the belts to let us down just far enough for a careful look. Come on, then. Slowly, Paul. Steady yourself against the wall. The opening's just below. Now we should look. It is Ilma. Hey, and come on and... Wait, is she alone? I can't see anyone. 
It was just her, that's all. We found her. Ilva! Ivan! Ivan Paul! Oh, it's you. Oh, how wonderful to see you. Oh, boys. I thought I'd never... Steady, old man. Uh, Keep your voice down, honey. We're on the run. They're after you? Have been for a couple of days. Oh, then you must leave. We must get away from here. But how did you find me? However did you do it? We saw you at a film show. We'll explain later. Are you a prisoner? Yes, a sort of guest prisoner. We've got to get back to the Taurus pronto. And if possible, before daylight. It's going to be difficult. We know. We need transport. Paul, look carefully through the front entrance. See if there's anybody there. Hey, that jalopy that brought Ilma. How about that? They have not ill-treated you, Ilma. They have some strange idea that you should be my slaves. Because I was worried about you, they thought I was ill. I had to get my dignity. Y yes, we know. You can tell us later. It's still there, Ivan. If we can reach it. Many people down there, Paul? Hard to see in the dark. Seem to be a couple patrolling the front of the building. Could be more. Oh, it seems hopeless. At least the vehicle itself is not guarded. If we each grab Ilma by an arm, perhaps we could use the belts to dive down on it. It is the only way. Oh, but if we are seen... If we could only distract their attention. Say, listen. It's coming from below the back. The guard has recovered consciousness and giving the alarms. Say, we'd better get out. Look down below. Oh, they're running into the building. Well, then this is our chance. Grab her other arm, Ivan. You'll have to jump, Ilma, when I say. Now the belts. Hold tight. Jump. Oh, quick, into the jalopy. At least I know how to start it this time. We're off. Someone's coming out of the building. Never mind, we have escaped them. Now we only have to pass through the city and find the clearing where the Taurus lies. Meanwhile, out in space, the streak hangs motionless near the wreck of the ship that nearly destroyed her. And in between the space-suited figures of Rocky, Mitch, and Di, propel themselves by booster jets toward the derelict. All right, now easy does it, huh? Looks like the easiest way in will be through where we blasted her tail off, Rocky. Mm. The metal's still probably very hot from the heat rays you gave it, Mitch. Mm. Yeah, that's true, but it'll be cooling off fairly quickly, Di. Huh. Well, I never thought I'd see a spaceship with square corners. Yeah, we could get in easily through there, Rocky. Look, there's part of an alleyway. Oh, yeah. You know, the heat doesn't seem to be too great. Here, Di, grab my hand and I'll help you in. Oh, thanks, Rocky. I... <clears throat> oh, yeah. do you notice the metal? Red. Never seen metal that color before. No. I wonder where they come from. Well, I don't know. Come, let's go along here. I'd like to get the load down on what propulsion power they use, but it looks like I blew their power plant to smithereens. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you notice the door openings? Yeah. Wide and low. Very low. Opening, but no doors. Uh, I'm going into... Rocky! Hmm? What, Di? This is apparently a blank opening, but I can't walk through. What? It's just as if there's a, a, a solid wall in front of me. Yeah, no kidding. Feel, Rocky, you can lean on it. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah. Oh, so that's why there are no doors. There they must use some kind of layer of solid force. They switch it on and, well, it blocks the opening. It makes a guy feel sort of jittery. If you didn't know whether the thing was on or off, you'd run full belt into a solid lump of nothing. There's a faint orange glow around the edges of the opening. Yeah, it's bright here. Like a like a warning light. You know, they mm. evidently thought of Mitch's little worry. When the light's on, you can't go in. They? But who are they? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's find the control deck. We might find out. Up this way, I imagine. Yeah. There seems to be a little light just ahead there. Yeah, up there, over okay. here. Yeah. See, it's a strange craft, isn't it? Hmm. Just around here might be it. Yeah. There we are. Uh-huh. That's it, I'd say. Yes, that's it. Hey, look! Place is crowded. Look! Oh, they're, they're human looking. I don't know. About four feet tall. Just about as wide. Yeah. He's an odd looking character, that one there. Yeah, that of course would account for the door openings. Do you think they had. Afraid so, Di. 
when that power plant went up, it'd be pretty lethal. Death would be instantaneous. Hey, look. Well, you look at their skin. Look. You know, you'd think it was, oh, yeah. it was green plastic. It's so kind of smooth. Yeah, little red spots all over it. And huge round eyes. And look, a, a sort of feeding tube, like an insect. Oh, dear, I, I wonder where they come from. Obviously, they, they don't like strangers. Mm. I wish their ship wasn't so wrecked. If it wasn't, we might learn a great deal. Yeah, true enough, Di. Still, as I said, it was our lives or theirs. Hey, some power plant's working. Hey, Those energy shields on the doors, remember? Yeah! Now, if we... Hey, wait a minute. What? You two. Can you feel something like... like intense electrical vibration? A sort of a tingling right through you? Yes, quite suddenly. Rocky! Guy, and... look! Orange smoke! And it's seeping through cracks in that bulkhead. Hey, what do you make of that, Mitch? Put your hand on the bulkhead. It's warm. Hey, it's vibrating. You know what, Rocky? I reckon there's some sort of power plant in there, and it's gone haywire. Now, let's get out of here. But we haven't looked around properly yet, Mitch. Rocky, please get back to the street before the whole box and dice explodes. Rocky hesitates. Is Mitch right? Would it be wise to leave this fascinating ship? And what of the other three on Astros? Will they reach the Taurus safely? There is excitement still ahead, so be sure you hear the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Rocky, Di, and Mitch have left the street to examine the strange spacecraft that attacked them. Climbing in through the shattered stern, they find many new and unusual things. Doors sealed only by a solid wall of energy. Short, broad figures with smooth, green skins, huge eyes, and a long feeding tube such as insects possess. Suddenly, Mitch notices orange smoke curling from a cracked bulkhead. The metal is warm and vibrates when touched. Mitch says urgently... Rocky, please... Let's get back to the street before the whole box and dice explodes. But we haven't looked around properly yet, Mitch. Giggle and grasshoppers, Rocky. We don't get out of here. We won't be bothering about looking at anything. What do you think, Di? It does seem charged with electricity in here. And that vibration. I think Mitch is right about there being a power plant. Well, that's just the thing we should investigate. Yeah, but that orange smoke, look at it. Yeah, there seems to be some sort of a manhole here. If we can open it and have a look... Oh, Rocky, you can't. Well, it only take a few minutes, Mitch. Come on. Here, help, help me with this thing. Well, let's make it snappy. Come on. That won't ship. Well, let's try turning it. I... It, it's moving. Yeah. Hey, that's it. And what good has it done you? Can't see a thing in there for smoke. I can see a little. Hey, die. Have a look at this. It looks like masses of coiled tubes. And layers and layers of flat sheet of some kind. And that luminous orange glow playing across them. Almost like... like like lightning. What do you make of it? Oh, it's a system quite beyond me. Well, now you've had a good old gander. Can we scram out of here, huh? Perhaps Mitch is right, Rocky. I, I don't like the way the smoke's seeping up from between those flat sheets. Look. Look, they seem to be battling. Great planet, you're right. Come on. Yeah, well, now maybe next time you'll believe a guy. Let's get out of here. Our shoes, Rocky. They're striking orange sparks from the plates. Come on, quickly. Here's the opening. Yeah, at least we've reached the way out in one piece. All right, you two first. Now get clear and boost across to the streak as fast as you can. Scrambling hurriedly through the tangle of wrecked red metal, the three launched themselves into space. Their booster jets send them gliding toward the streak's open airlock. But when only half the distance is covered, there is a sudden burst of orange flame behind them. Oh, there she goes. Look out for the wreckage. Yep. Oh! Rocky! Ah! Mitch has been hit! Mitch, where are you? I'm plastered against the streak. Are you all right? Ah! 
Yeah, I think so. Hey, well, what's that about Rocky? It was hit. Oh, no. Where it... Giggling grasshoppers, he's drifting towards that radioactive sun thing. I'll blast after him. No, you boost the jet and never make it. Into the street, quick. <laughs> As Di floats rapidly toward the airlock, Mitch grabs her and drags her inside. The doors clang, air hisses, and then they're racing toward the control deck. Leave your space helmets on, women. We might need them. There he is. Huh? Where? There. See? Oh, yeah. Well, here goes. Not too much speed or we'll overshoot him, Mitch. I know, I know, chicken. How are we doing? How's that? Uh, I think a, a bit more to the left. No, I think that should be about right. I have a look. Yeah, that seems to be okay. Now, where are those space hooks? On the ropes. In the bottom locker. Okay, will you watch the controls? Aren't you going out after him? No, just a minute. Stop talking like at these space hooks. Well, hurry. All right, I'm doing my best. Right, here we are. Now, it's quicker to throw a grapple from the airlock and haul him in. Now, stand by to decelerate when we're alongside. I'm going to the airlock. Oh, I hope I can handle it. Of course you can handle it, chicken. Now look after yourself. Good luck. Seconds later, Mitch Crouch is in the open airlock, holding the heavy grappling hooks on their ropes. Rocky's helpless form comes into sight. Mitch tenses. There is the shudder of deceleration, and then he is hurling the hook out into space. Out, out it floats, taking the rope with it. Jaw clenched, Mitch hauls in slowly. The deadly radioactive ball is very close now. Di appears in the airlock. The hook's missing him, Mitch. Now, will you haul it in, Di? I'll throw out another. Yep. There we are. The rope's now. right across his shoulders, Yeah, yeah, Mitch. with a bit of luck, I'll... Yeah, got him. Now, come on, Di, haul him in, but do it slowly, you right? Yes. Right, in, come on. Yeah. 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 Oh, Mitch. Uh, Mitch, he's very still. Yeah, I like the look of it. Here he comes. Okay, now grab him. You all right? Yes. Come on, up. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Did it. Now you close the airlock and get a spacesuit off. I'm going back to the controls before that thing out there radiates us to kingdom come. Yeah. Oh, hello, honey. Yeah, I think I got us away just in time. I'm just checking radioactivity. Below danger point? Yeah, I think so. Just a minute. Yeah, looks all right. How's Rocky? Oh, his suit wasn't punctured, thank goodness, but the wreckage hit him in the chest. Giggling grasshoppers. Is it bad? Has he come around? No, I I'll need help to move him, Mitch. Oh, good. We'd better get him to the hospital cabin right away. Come on, let's get down there. All right. Everything happens to us. We never get two minutes, but somebody's in trouble. I know yes, somebody I gets know. hurt all the time. We only listen to Uncle Mitch when I tell him to, to, to not do things. We'll be a lot all better right. off. Well, where is he? Ah, oh, Rocky. I don't know. We, we, we seem to do nothing but get hurt this trip. Oh, we should have got out of that ship when you warned us, Mitch. Yeah, well, forget it. I thought the Streaks Hill might have been damaged, but everything seems okay so far. I suppose that's something. Ah, here we are. Gee. Rocky! Rocky, boy! Ah, oh, not a sign. Mitch, it's, it's going to be touch and go. I'll have to try and operate. Yeah, well, well you studied surgery once. Be sure you, you, you'll be all right? Oh, it's such a long time ago, but... Well, there's no one else, Mitch. Out here in the middle of nowhere... But, but what, what are we going to do? I hope you know what you, you, you're doing. It's Rocky, you remember? You're going to be I quite know. sure, Chicken? Well, well, I, I'm only going to... I can only try, can't I? Yeah, well, uh, maybe we better cut the spacesuit off first and then... We'll get him to the hospital first. Now, okay. help me lift him onto the trolley. Right up. Come now, on. Mitch, Mitch! Huh? Be as gentle as you can. He's badly hurt. With tender care, 
Mitch and Di lift their unconscious friend onto the waiting trolley. Then Di is hurrying ahead to prepare instruments while Mitch wheels the trolley after her. Meanwhile, on Astros, a transparent dome-shaped vehicle is racing along a luminous street. Paul, look back. Do they give chase? No sign yet. I think we caught him flat-footed, Van. Oh, it feels so wonderful to be free again. Are you going to try and reach the tourist, Van? Yes. Corner ahead, Van. Which way? Search me. He'll knock quickly. Can you remember the way they bought you? Oh, it's so hazy. To the right, I think. Oh, straight on, it'd be easier. It might take us away from the Taurus. Hold tight, I'm turning right. Oh, Ivan. All right. Oh, yeah, but don't wreck the thing. Listen. What is it? A sort of Astrosian police siren. They are giving us chase. Police? Same idea. Oh, they can't catch us now. Ivan, I can see them. Oh, can't you get any more out of this thing? I will try. There, that is the best I can do. Well, they don't seem to be gaining. We might do it, if we are going in the right direction. And when we do reach the ship, there will be so little time. Oh, I hope it isn't going to be too hard to find them in the dark. Oh, say, I never thought of that. Oh, oh don't slow up now, Ivan. I am not. It's a mach- it is a machine. Oh, don't say we're going to have a breakdown now. The police car's gaining. We've got to do something quick. I know nothing of the motors of these things. All I can do is pull out switches and levers. They're coming closer all the time. Oh, of all the worthless two-bit luck. Now, oh, here, let me try, Evan. Where is the police vehicle? Still, while I can take a look. Oh, it is impossible. Uh, unless we can stop them, we are caught again. Pull up and run for it. Useless. We, we, they would catch us easily. Give me the controls again, Paul. I have an idea. Well, better be good. Take this pistol. Go to the rear. I think there is a hatchway. Oh, let the police buggy have it? Right. Don't fire at the cabin. Best try and hit the round castles on which they move these things. Good luck, Paul. I'll need it. If only I knew what was wrong. It's horrible seeing them catch up like this. Only about 50 yards now. After all our running and hiding. <laughs> Ivan, what did you do? I don't know. I, I just jiggled the controls. We accelerated. The leading police car. Oh, hit one of the casters. It's crashed. That gives us a chance. The other car. Trying to get past. We'll draw ahead again. Good shooting, Paul. I bet it was luck. But it sure wrecked them. Crossroads ahead. Yeah. And look, about another half mile, there are no lights. Then this does lead to the open country. Oh, the crossroad. I hope nothing is coming along the other way. Listen. Another police car. Hey, man, look out. It's at the crossroads waiting for us. It's moving out to block the road. Ivan glares at the green striped vehicle that has moved into their path. Can they reach the Taurus with the Astrogen's marshal to stop them? And what of Rocky lying unconscious on the operating table in the street's hospital? There is exciting action to come, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Rocky lies in the street, seriously injured. On distant Astros, Paul and Ivan have released Ilma and are trying to reach the Taurus in one of the strange Astrosian vehicles. But as they hurtle through the luminous streets of the darkened city, police vehicles give chase. Suddenly their own car loses speed. Ivan sweats over the controls to get it moving again, but no sooner do they pick up speed than a crossroads appears ahead and they hear afresh the warning signal of an Astrosian police car. Another police car? Ivan, look out! At the crossroads, it's moving out to block the but road. We have to stop. If we stop it, it's the end of everything. You'll have to stop, Ivan. No. Oh, there's no room to get by. To the left. Just enough, I think. Oh, we'll never make it. We'll oh, hold on. Swing right. Right again, quick. Oh, we'll crash into the building. Oh, we did it. We scraped through. They're trying to ray us. Oh, any bad damage? I just blew a chunk out of the body. They're firing again. 
Oh, mighty I <laughs> missed us. Don't zigzag too hard or we'll crash. They've started up. They're giving chase. Never mind. Look ahead. Dark. Oh, open country. But how will we find the tourists in the dark? Oh, look back. See if we could recognize any landmarks in this city. I'll try. These things have a sort of a searchlight. If we can only find this switch. Well, there's nothing in here that looks like a switch. Try pressing some of those buttons. A- any luck, Paul? That's hard. We weren't brought this way. The police car? It's still hanging on. Hey, wait. There's a high tower over there with a light on it. I remember that. It was on our left, but but we traveled to the right from the Taurus. That means we must go to the left now. Ilma, what switch was that? Something happened? The light, it came on for a moment. I'll press it again. There. Oh, it's off again. We'll press harder. Is that better? Yes. Oh, now we can see. Cross country to the left. The headlight will give our position away to the police. Oh, they must have guessed where we were heading. What if they sent someone out to the tourist to head us off? That we must risk. How far are they behind, Paul? Well, the same distance. Two or three hundred yards. There will be little time to board the Taurus. If we ever find it. We must find it. Keep watch, you two. The moment you see any gleam of metal in the dark, tell me. Whatever you do, don't miss it. Over there, Ilma. Look. You see anything? Where? No. Oh, look. To, to the right. No, no, more to the right. No. I... Oh, yes, there is something. I can't be sure. Can you swing it that way, Ivan? Give us some light. Yes. Yes. Yes, look. Something shining in the searchlight beam. The hull of the Taurus. Oh, we've found it. How far back to the place? Oh, about the same, Ivan. We must move fast. I will try to stop this vehicle right alongside the airlock. Oh, it'll be closed. Stand ready to jump out. Set the airlock mechanism going as quick as we can. Right. What shall I do? You'll be ready to hop up as soon as I have. Here is the clearing now. Only a short distance. Oh, it sure looks mighty good to see the Taurus again. I will swing close in. The airlock is at the far side. What if there are Strosians there waiting for us? We will have to use our ray pistols. Hold tight. I'm swinging now. No sign of anyone. Get down to the hatch, Paul. Start down now. Okay, Van. Pull up, Van. You're shooting past. Here I go. Quick, Ilma, out with you. Don't wait for me. Run to the airlock, Paul. Mechanism started. I just gotta wait for it to open. Oh, here they come. Why doesn't it open? There it goes. Squeeze through quickly. They'll be here in a moment. Quick, Elmer. Havan, come on. Here is the police car. Start the closing mechanism quickly. Made it. That's closed. Oh, we're safe. Not until we have left this place. Listen, they're hammering at the hatch. Quick to the control deck. We must take off before they do anything to damage the ship. Paul and Ivan race for the control deck while outside the Amazonian police of Astros turn back to their vehicle for a portable ray cannon. Meanwhile, there is tension on another spaceship. Far out in space, Rocky Star lies on the operating table in the street's hospital cabin. Di bends over his unconscious form and works with swift urgency while Mitch looks anxiously on. What do you think, Di? I can't tell, Mitch. It took so long to cut away his spacesuit. I nearly have it free. A nasty wound. Oh... He's lost so much blood. You wanted I give him another transfusion? Could you? Sure, anything, so long as I'm doing something. Well, I know just how you feel. Oh, Mitch, I'm so unskilled at things like this. Oh, Mitch, just knowing that Rocky's life is in my hands, it's terrible. Oh, uh, that's space travel. After relying ourselves, there's no big hospital around the corner. What is it, chicken? Just so bad. Well, well, how bad? I I don't know yet. Mitch, I, I can't do it. Now, hey, 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 steady on there, chicken. Steady on. Relax. No, I can't. This is Rocky, remember? Our pal, you've got to. 
to do something. But the responsibility is too much. But the responsibility's not too great when, when it's to save Rocky. But don't you realize? I might kill him. It's the risk. Die. I'm really surprised at you. What about all the risks he's taken for us, eh? Can't you just take one for him? It's all right for you to talk. You don't have to do it. But that's only because I've had no training, and you have. But if you won't get busy doing a repair job on him, then just stand aside and let me try. I'll have a go, untrained or not. Oh, I'm sorry, Mitch. I've got to pull myself together. Now, let me see. I want forceps. Yeah. Silver wire. Mm-hmm. Thin plastic for splints. <gasps> You'd better watch his pulse and breathing rate. Yeah, I'll do that. You okay, honey? Yes. Thanks, Mitch. I feel now that if, if Rocky doesn't recover, it won't be my fault. Pulse, Mitch? It's pretty weak, but steady. Here, let me feel. Here's a, another transfusion. Right. Okay. You finished? Yes. You've done a terrific job, chicken. Well, I've tried. That's all you can say, Mitch. Rocky's life. He'll be okay now. Oh, Mitch, let's face it. Chicken, what are you saying? He's got to be okay. What would we do if there was no Rocky? Can you imagine signing up on a space buggy with anybody else? Oh, Mitch, we're, we're just getting morbid. Yeah, yeah, I guess we are. Well, we, we've done all that can be done. Now it's up to us to take care of him and stick to our posts. Yeah, it's, it's what he'd want, isn't it? The course. What course are we on? People and grasshoppers, I don't know. I'm too worried about Rocky to even think. Well, I'll keep an eye on this transfusion. You, you better go and check. Yeah, better get an astro fix before we get ourselves well and truly lost. Then if I can... Hey, what was that? What's happening? The streak's bucking like crazy. Rocky, you'll fall off the table. Well, grab him. Stop him rolling about. It'll hurt his wound. Okay. Ro oh, Mitch. quietening down now, honey. Oh, thank goodness. What caused it, Mitch? I don't know. It was almost like a storm. I say we can't run... We couldn't have run into atmosphere. Atmosphere? Well, if we have, we might be heading for a crash. I better get going to the control deck. Rocky. Rocky, you, you've just got to pull through. We need you, Mitch and I. Oh, at least his pulse is stronger. Hello, Di. Hello, Di. This is Mitch on intercom. Can you hear me? Come in. What was it, Mitch? Atmosphere? Are we crashing? Look, Di, there's, there's something funny. We're in open space. There's no sign of anything to cause that ruckus. And Di, something else. All the clocks have stopped. <laughs> What strange force has tossed the streak about so violently? And why have the clock stopped? And what of Rocky still lying unconscious and very ill on the operating table? There are exciting developments ahead, so be sure you don't miss the next thrilling chapter of the Rocky Star Adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In space, an adventure with Rocky Star. Die is battling for Rocky's life. The explosion of the alien spaceship has injured his chest badly, and unless Die can do what is needed, he'll die. But when all is done, the streak suddenly tosses violently as if caught in some powerful, turbulent force. 
Mitz races to the control deck, expecting to find them plummeting through the atmosphere of some unexpected planet. But all around is empty space. Mystified, Mitch hurries back to Die to discuss an unexpected discovery. Yeah, I don't like it, Die. Something screwy about it. All the clocks have stopped. Stopped? Yeah. Oh, it must have been the jar when the streak hit that force. Yeah, it could be, but my wristwatch has stopped, too. Well, you may have knocked it, Mitch. Will, 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 will you check yours, huh? Will, will you? Oh, yes. You, you can reset all the clocks from my... Hey. Well? It stopped, too. Well, it doesn't make sense. Well, the streak did toss violently. Oh, look, honey, it's too much of a coincidence that everything stopped. Now, I don't think that's the reason. How did Rocky come through? Well, I think the last transfusion helped him a great deal. Oh, it had me really worried. Streak going on like that and him lying there needing quiet. What's his pulse now? It's much stronger. His breathing's easier, mm-hmm. too. Hey, look, he's a better color, too. Yes. Oh, he come through okay, Di. Oh, if the operation I performed was good enough. Of course it was. You want to watch here by him? I'd better. Uh, you go back to the bridge if you want to, Mitch. Oh, there's none, eh? There's nothing ahead for a couple of million miles. Uh, I sure wish I knew what gave us that bump. You're certain there was nothing? Look, chicken, I looked back, and all I saw was empty space. Now I gotta reset the clocks. Put mine on a few minutes to make up for lost time, and it... Giggle and grasshoppers, it's still not going. It must be damaged inside. Yeah, I suppose it... No, no, that's not it. When I shake it, it ticks all right. It just won't go, that's all. Well, I better take that astro fix, get out bearings before anything else happens. Di, uh, uh, how, how's Rocky? Same. There's no sign of him coming around. No. Uh, any worse? No. Well, at least that's something. Did you get your fix all right? Yeah, uh, uh, well, th- that's what I came to talk to you about. Um, we're a mighty long way from home, Di. I can't see Saturn at all. But Earth can see it, and that, that, that's a distance of nearly 900 million miles. Yeah, it just goes to show how far we've come this side of it. Can't see it. Then how will we ever get back? Well, look, I've got the last fix we took. It's a, a triangle of stars and a square. I should be able to work out a course back from that. But, but I can't get Rocky's okay on it. What do you think? Oh, it's just too dangerous traveling on and on into eternity. Yeah, then there's that ship we had the battle with. We don't know where that came from. Maybe somewhere ahead. You'd better turn back, Mitch. Well, I hope I can do a good job on that astro navigation. Mitch, what's wrong? You you sound worried. Well, look, honey, I, I'm not sure of the bearings, see? We, we changed course so many times during the dogfight, and, and, and then with Rocky getting hurt, well, we were too busy to take cross sightings to check our position. Then we may not be able to return to Saturn. Oh, well, that's a chance. And don't talk us into it, chicken, because it would mean we're nicely lost and no Rocky to get us out of it. But, Mitch, you... Now look, I'm an engineer, honey, remember? We never did get well up in this navigation stuff. Oh, well, beating my gums won't get us out of it. Guess I better make a stab at sending us back the way we came. Wish me luck, Di, because, honey, I'm gonna need it. With a cheeky grin he does not feel, Mitch leaves the hospital cabin. Soon the deflector jets are thundering and the streak is sweeping around in an arc to face the way she came. Mitch studies the unfamiliar star patterns and shakes his head. Which way is Saturn? Meanwhile, on Astros, there is excitement aboard the Taurus. What course, Evan? Any course, as long as we take off from here. Right. Oh, hurry, boys. Those Amazon police are getting something from their car. What? I'm not sure. Look, come and see. Let me see. Where? Oh, you're Ray Cannon. Hurry, Paul. We're going to... They're going to try and put the ship out of action. Ready. In the seats for takeoff. They were pointing it at us. Ready? Firing auxiliary jets. Firing main jets. Searing fire pours from the ship's tubes. The Astrosians abandon their weapon and stumble hurriedly away. The great bulk of the Taurus rises slowly, seeming merely to hover above the ground. And then, with gathering momentum, it is streaking upwards toward the outer atmosphere. Made it. We made it. Oh, I can't believe we're really free. We're not free yet. Look. What are they? Meteors? They're coming straight towards us. Like glowing balls of light. Yes, they are. See? Oh, the round ships. Like the ones that flew over us the day we landed. I've forgotten about them. I think they are going to attack. 
Yeah, look, that one's using ray fire. Oh, it's a way off target. Oh, they can't stop us now, Ivan. We must get away. Must be the only chance. Stand by, firing rockets. They're shooting up after us. Oh, if only we had something to fight back with. Can you get more speed, Ivan? I will try. Stand by. Well, that is, we are at peak limit. Four globes of light. Well, there's something sinister, the way they speed after us like that. We're not getting away from them. They haven't used their rays. We must be out of range. But they're gaining. There is only one thing we can do. Stand by, I will fire deceleration rockets. Deceleration? Or we'll lose speed. I know. At suicide. We are traveling at such a speed now that if we suddenly reduce, those ships will almost crash into us in a matter of seconds. That's what I said. Suicide. No. We know what we intend to do. They do not. But it'll bring them in range for their ray weapons. It will be too sudden for them to fire in time. Look, I'll decelerate. You watch, Paul. And and when they are very close to us, tell me. Then I'll fire the main jets again. And they get the atomic blast. You see, Paul? Well, I think it's screwy. We'll give it a try. Another few minutes and they'll be blasting us to kingdom come anyway. Very well. Stand by for deceleration. Firing rockets. <laughs> Watch them pull. Oh, I can't. Deceleration. I nearly blacked out. Watch. They, they will crash us. Yeah. They're nearly out of Savannah. Quickly, main rockets. What's happening? Are they. Oh, rocket glares left my eyes dazed. Uh, I don't think they're there. No. They're not. There you go. Look, Elmer. Spiraling down towards land. <laughs> you are sure? Yes, it's right, Ivan. There's one, two, four. Oh, then it worked. I think two of them are going to crash. Look, Paul, they're going straight down. Oh, we might have been making that sort of landing if they'd got close enough to us. I can't understand why they should have been so antagonistic towards us. There, see? One, two. Crashed. Two little flares of light. Explosions. We're oh, three. Soon we'll be out in space again. Oh, it almost seems like a dream already. Day after day in that silver room with Empira saying I was sick. I'll never forget when they had us on the run. Oh, it's good to be free. Nearly out of the atmosphere. Oh, the readings outside are very low. Well, that means space again. Hey, but which direction? I'd forgotten about that. We're... We're lost, aren't we? This place was so similar to Earth. I... At least we could have lived there. <laughs> I guess we upset their scheme of things, not having female rule on Earth. Well, where shall we head, Ivan? Oh. There may not be another inhabitable planet for millions of miles. We came here from Saturn. Could could we go back? I'm not sure of the bearing. Paul, what were they? So much has happened since then. Did you make no note of it? Well... No. You should have kept a log of bears. I should? Why not you? You were supposed to be the navigator, remember? Look, I'm sick of being blamed for everything. The bearings were our only hope. Any fool would have noted it. Well, then why didn't you note it yourself? Have a good mind of... Boys, please. Look, we can't afford to quarrel. We've got to rely on each other. It's more use to rely on poor. Oh, stop it, Ivan. We're none of us experienced at space travel. We were fools to take this ship, thinking we could just return to Earth whenever we liked. Well, we did. And we've got to make the best of it. We're lucky we escaped from Astros. Don't let's spoil it. You are right, Ilma. Uh, I, I shouldn't have quarreled with you, Paul. I, I'm very sorry. Oh, that's all right. I guess it was as much my fault. Oh, I should have noted that course bearing. Oh, gee, I wish I could remember what it is. I'm trying to think. Uh, hey, uh, I've got an idea. It was something like, like one o five. Something like one o five. Well, we we must be sure. No, I I can't be sure, but look, I, I've got a definite feeling about it. It was one or something, so that'd bring us somewhere near Saturn. All right, we will try. The reverse of one o five is two eight five. We'll circle Astros and try to reach Saturn on that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ivan bends over the control panel to make his course setting, but Paul's memory of the bearing is wrong. It should have been 205. Soon they'll be hurtling into space 100 degrees off course, traveling ever further into the unknown. There is thrilling excitement ahead, so don't miss the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In space, space. An, adventure an adventure with Rocky Star! <laughs> Paul, Ilma, and Ivan have escaped from Astros, but when they try to remember the course back to Saturn, a mistake of a hundred degrees is made. Now the Taurus journeys ever further from the solar system into unknown space. On the search ship, the streak, Rocky lies between life and death in the hospital cabin, and Mitch finds himself with the responsibility of navigating a course back the way they've come. He is sitting at the chart table with a worried frown when Di appears on the control deck. The last two fixes, bearings, astronomical digression, Traveling at normal speed, uh, rate of change. Mitch! Huh? Hey, what? Oh, all right. Well, don't sneak up on a guy like that chicken. I let him jump clean out of my skin. I didn't sneak up, Mitch. You were concentrating hard, were you? Yeah, it's, it's a very great effort for me, concentrating. Well, how's it coming? Hard. How's Rocky? Asleep. Mitch, can I help? No, no, no. I nearly got it figured out, I think. Uh, hand me the slide rule, will you? Mm-hmm. A few nice, complicated calculations to make. Here you are. Thanks. Now I say one, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, multiply, three, take away. Well? Yeah. Well, according to this, Saturn should be on bearing 243.6. Well, at least that's hopeful. Is it? Well, how do I know it's right? Would you check your figures? Yeah, but that don't mean much. Everything's only approximate. I haven't got a clue what the space fight did to our course. Yeah, sure makes a guy realize how much we take Rocky's calculations for granted. Mm. You think of all the places we've been and never any doubt about arriving safely. Well, now... Oh, I'm sure you've done a good job in the course, Mitch. Well, I suppose a better correct course is bearing. 243.6. Okay, stand by. Firing deflector rockets. <laughs> ah, there she is. Right on. Now, let's see. Three stars make a nice line out there. Yeah, I better take a fix on them just to make sure, huh? I'd better get back to Rocky. Yeah. Giggle and grasshoppers. I don't know. Everything seems wrong without him around. You think he pulled through, Di? Oh, we've done all we can, Mitch. And there's nothing to do now but just wait. Yeah, like we do to see how good this course of mine is. So wait a minute. What's wrong with me? We can use the detector beam to try and pick up that miniature star like we did before. Of course. It'll still be sending out radiation. Yeah, if we can get to that, we'll be well on our way. Now you go keep your eye on Rocky, Di, and I'll get things working. Man, I feel better already. Di, how is he? I'm afraid he's still unconscious. Oh, I sure wish I could have a talk with him. What's wrong, Mitch? Couldn't you pick up something from from the beam? No, half the electronic tube's burned out. Burned out? Yeah, to channel all our transmitting power through that beam circuit, you know, around the radiation valves. Yes. And it, well, I just knew it'd blow the valve pretty soon, but not this soon. Oh. When I came up with that radioactive thingy, gummy, I, for, I forgot to switch the circuit off. What about the spare valves? I used all the spares to make up the circuit. Well, then we can't get a bearing on that star. Can't even raise a flicker. Well, Mitch, we'll... Just have to rely on your calculations. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, I sure wish Rocky Boy was on his feet. While the streak speeds on through space, her destination obscure, another spacecraft is seeking to return to Saturn. Completely unaware of the hundred-degree error they've made in their navigation, Paul, Ilma, and Ivan are waiting for some sign of Saturn to appear. Anything on the Magna screen, Paul? Plenty. But no planets with rings. Oh, it makes you feel so insignificant. 
To think we could travel on and on for millions of years past endless stars and planets It's, it's and best suns. not to think of it, Ilma. Oh, how can I help it? Look out there. Space stretching on and on in all directions, never ending. And here we are in the Taurus like a speck of dust. Smaller than a speck of dust. Hey, can it, will you, Wilma? You're giving me the willies. Oh, I'm sorry. Isn't there any sign of Saturn? Uh, Van, how long do you reckon we should have to travel before we sight it? I... I was just thinking. Oh, no, we must not get over anxious. But we should sight it, Ivan. After all, we could see Astros from Saturn. And Saturn's much bigger. Yeah, that's true. Have you the screen at full magnification, Paul? Yeah, and there's no Saturn. Ivan, that means we must be traveling in the wrong direction. Yes, I'm afraid that is true. The wrong direction? Oh, it's my fault. I guess I got that bearing wrong. You see, if, if, if only you had written oh, it, Oh, all Paul. right, all right. I didn't write it down. We know that. Oh, well, it is done now. Well, there's no need to sound so superior oh, about stop it. stop it, boys. Oh, Van's getting on my nerves. Superiority. And you are a fool, Paul. Who am I? I'll show you. Oh. <coughs> what? You... Oh! Oh, I'll boys. teach you. <laughs> oh, stop it! Stop! Ilma, Ilma. Oh. I didn't mean it. I, I'm so sorry you, you stepped oh. in the way. Oh. Ilma, are, are you all right? I, I think so. Oh, I, I'm greatly sorry, but, but you stepped between us. I had to do something. Here, sit down. Are you sure you are not hurt? Yes, Ivan. I'm so ashamed. Me too, Ivan. I guess it was as much my fault, Ilma. I'm sorry. Well, as long as you're friends again, it doesn't matter. To hit you, and so hard. Oh, lucky we discovered how to switch on the artificial gravity in this ship. You would have floated right across the cabin and crashed into the hull. We will not fight again, I promise. I guess things are getting us a little nervy. We must try and discuss things calmly. The thing we've got to face up to is that we're lost. Yeah. Well, about one chance in a million of getting back to Earth again. Oh, that sounds so terrifying. Oh, we're discussing it calmly, remember? Yes. Well, if we're lost, there is only one thing we can do. Try and find somewhere we can land and where we can live. Uh, then we... <coughs> Paul! You burned! What's happening? We must have hit something. Oh, I'm scared. The ship's being thrown about like a cork. Hold tight. It's all we can do. You'll fall apart. Oh, but boy! Steady, Ilma. Try and be calm. Uh, it's stopping... Oh, we're through it. No one hurt? No. No. This ship seems to be behaving normally now. It's screwy. There seems to be nothing but clear space all around. Are you sure? See for yourself. Nothing. Oh, well, we had better go on with our discussion. I feel all shaky. Oh, me too. It will pass. Now, what have we decided? We must find somewhere we can live. That means a planet. And with normal air. There is a possibility. Astros was normal. The air was. The people weren't. Hey, what, what is, is it, it, Paul? Look on the screen. There. See where I'm pointing? Doesn't that look like a planet to you? Yes, it, it could be. Well, then let's investigate. Perhaps it, we'll find ourselves in trouble like we did on Astros. Perhaps we will find somewhere to live in. It could have an atmosphere. It, it seems a bit bluish. Then we better investigate it. Well, I do hope there's no danger this time. <laughs> Rocky. Oh. Oh. Die. Oh, hello there. Rocky, you must keep still. What? I... Oh, my, my chest. You've been hurt. Hurt? But, 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 but how could... This, the square ship, the... The explosion. Yes, Rocky. You're in bad shape. You'll have to rest and give yourself a chance to recover. But the search, I, the, the Taurus, the plutonium, I, I can't lie here. Rocky, you must lie back. Oh. Now lie back. Oh. That's an order. Oh. oh it, it looks as if I, I have to obey. That I'm weaker than I thought. You've hurt your chest and three ribs. I, I'm telling you so that you'll cooperate. We don't want to lose you, Rocky. Oh, Di. Di, you're not crying. Well, it, it's been such a strain waiting for you to show some sign. Oh, 
Thought you'd lose me, huh? Sounds grim. Oh. Hey, wh wh where's Mitch? He he wasn't alive. No, 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 he's fine. He's checking the course so that... Oh, this sounds like I'm coming now. Uh-huh. How's Rocky die? Any sign of a... a, a... Rocky! You come out of it! Why, hello, Mitch. Oh, man, it's good to see you in working order again. Rocky, boy, it's great. It's real great. I, I hear you've turned navigator. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Rocky, there's something I uh, want... Not now, yeah? Mitch. Yeah, but Di, I gotta talk it over with Rocky. I won't I want... have Rocky worry while it's so weak. Oh, but Di, I'm, I'm not that bad. I... Mitch knows whether you are or not. I'd have thought you'd have more consideration, Mitch. But, but he, he's worried about something, Di. I, I should know about it. Well, he can tell me. And then I'll decide whether you should know. Acting like nurse, doctor, and matron all roll up in a one. Come on, outside in the passage, Mitch. Hey. Now then, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry to be so inconsiderate about Rocky, Di, but it's really getting me down. You know, when we turned around, I took a fix on some stars. Yes. Well, there's something screwy. We've been traveling towards them for hours, see? But they're further away than ever. And and die, my watch has started up again. But it's going backwards. <laughs> What strange things are taking place around the street? How can traveling toward a thing make it further away? There is excitement to come, so don't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. The Taurus is completely lost, and it seems impossible that her crew will ever see Earth again. Like the streak, she was badly buffeted by some strange force, but no damage was done, and now she is headed toward a distant planet in search of a landing place. On the street, there is new hope. At last, Rocky has regained consciousness, but he is still very weak. Mitch comes down from the control deck, looking worried and disturbed. His news, when he tells it to die, seems quite incredible. Die, those stars I took a fix on are something screwy. We've been traveling towards them for hours, yet they're further away than ever. But how could they be, Mitch? Well, don't ask me, chicken, but they are. Well, I know it doesn't make sense, but it's true. And another thing, my watch has started up again, but it's going backwards. Backwards? Yeah. It stopped at 1642. That was four hours ago. Now it's 1257, so figure it out for yourself. Is the winder pushed in properly? Hmm? Perhaps the hands have been moved. Nah, that's the first thing I checked. Anyway, we can soon prove it. Yours stopped, too. What does it say? 1258. Hey, see? But it's incredible. What could cause a thing like that? Giggling grasshoppers die. How would I know? There's something nutty about this corner of space, and I don't like it. Hey, what is it? What's all the mumbling? Uh, it's all right, Rocky. Hey, do we tell him or don't we? Oh, he shouldn't be worried. Do you come in here, or do I come out? Oh, you better go in or he'll try. Not a word, Mitch. Okay. Rocky, you must lie still and give your wound a chance. Oh, how can I die keeping things from me like... <coughs> there, you see, you've overexcited oh, yourself. I... If you don't want to be upset, please tell me what is going on. No, Rocky. Well, then I'm, I'm not going to lie here. Now, lie back, Rocky. Oh. Well, look, Di, either I know what's going on on my ship or I get up. Look, we better tell him, Di. He won't settle otherwise. Well, I don't like to. Look, Di, I'll lie quiet, I promise, as long as I know what is happening. Oh, very well. But I'll hold you to that promise. Tell him, Mitch. Well, look, Rocky, there's uh, something screwy. What? W well, the further we travel towards a thing, the, the, the further away it gets. Hey, Mitch, that, that, that's not funny. You're not kidding, Rocky boy. It certainly isn't. Look, I'll show you the calculations, if you like. Further away? But, but how? I don't know. Search me. Things haven't been the same ever since the streak was buffeted about. B buffeted? But by what? Oh, we don't know. Just looked like empty space. And all the clocks have stopped. Yeah, that's another thing, Rocky. Now they've started, they're going backwards. 
Oh, Pitch, this is fantastic. I know. If I hadn't checked things half a dozen times, I think I was going space crazy. Further away, buffeting, clocks in reverse. Yeah. Gee, wait a minute, I'll, I'll have to think about this. Clocks in reverse. Hey, Mitch. Hmm? Would you bring me all your calculations? Yeah. All astrofixes, bearings, everything there is to go on. Oh, and the slide rule, too. Yeah, right, Rocky. You going to check on everything? Uh-huh. Once I'm sure of your figures, I'll know where to start. If you've made no errors, there'll be some other explanation. Yeah. And whatever it is, we've just got to find it. That's my boy. Oh, Mitch. Huh? You'd better fire deceleration rockets. you better stop the ship. There's no sense traveling till we know where we're really going. Mitch hurries to the control deck, relieved that he no longer has to take full responsibility for navigation. Rocky sinks back exhausted and waits for the calculations. Meanwhile, the Taurus approaches a strange planet, and her crew study it apprehensively. There's something peculiar about it. It seems all fuzzy. From this distance, it looks almost like a ball of grey cotton wool. Well, that, that woolly effect, it must be cloud. Cloud? How could it be? We've seen cloud around a planet before. It has that look. But if that's right, the whole planet's wrapped in cloud. I think Ivan's right, Paul. Remember the bands of clouds as we left Earth. It's the same as they. If only it was Earth. You my. <laughs> Take it easy, kid. We must go back. We must find it. Find it. Don't give away, you my. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I can't stand it. Hysteria. <laughs> Send it to flask and pad quickly. Fall in the middle locker. Let me go. Quick, Paul. Here, hold this pad over her nose. Ilma. Let me go. She's quietly down. Keep the pad there longer. Here, Ma. Be quiet. That's right, Ilma. Just. I think she's asleep, Paul. Oh, my poor kid. I don't know just how she feels. Here, let me carry her to her butt. Her cabin? No, the assistant navigator's bunkie will do. Slide her head onto the pillow. So. Just as well we investigated that sedative equipment. Yes. She will sleep a while. Perhaps she will be better when she wakes. I certainly hope so. We are, we are still at distance from this planet. All that cloud. I wonder what we shall find there. Ivan, Elma's awakening. We must soothe her all we can. Ilma, hey, you're you're okay, Elma. What? Was I asleep? But now look, you're all right, Ilma. You must not upset yourself. I'm not upset now. What what happened? We gave you a sedative to calm your nerves down. Thanks. I don't know what came over me. I'm sorry, boys. That is all right. It is this strain we all feel it. I was thinking of Earth. Suddenly it seemed as if it was all just a dream. As if it didn't exist at all. Now take it easy, kid. No, I want to talk about it. it. It's realizing that there's nothing but endless space all around us. And, and Earth is somewhere, but we don't know where. And so tiny and unimportant. Like one grain of sand in the desert. <laughs> There. I've got it out of my system now. Now, there's no need to get up. Just lie there and rest a while. How long was I asleep? Mm, several hours. <laughs> that stuff sure put you up. I'd rather get up now. <laughs> what about the planet? Can you see it more clearly now? Oh, it's on the screen there. Oh, that cloud. It definitely looks like water vapor. And Ilma, that means a good chance of normal atmosphere. And perhaps friendly people this time. <laughs> yeah, perhaps friendly people this time. Well, Rocky... Well, 
there's nothing wrong with your calculations, Mitch. Not a thing. <laughs> I should think not after all the sweating I did over him. That doesn't help us any, huh? Definitely showing a position further away from that star group. Angles of sight, everything verifies it. And yet the course definitely heads that way. Yeah, I got a nasty sinking feeling every time I think about it. Well, I've made a lot of trips in the space, Rocky boy. Met up with a lot of weird and wonderful things, but, but this, I... Yeah. Well, which we must follow that course. It's the reverse of the setting we used to get this far. There's no other way of going back except by reversing the direction. Sure, I know, but it's not taking us back. Yeah, there's some factor that we just don't know about. Perhaps some refraction of light, some, some peculiar property in space that's giving us a wrong reading on those stars. But what about the clocks? My watch is still going backwards. Uh, I, I don't know, Mitch. <laughs> I really hey, don't know. Lucky boy, you all right? <sighs> yes, I'm still a little bit weak, that's all, Mitch. I'm sorry. She talking tires me a bit. Yeah, just, just to say, hey, die! Hey, you, you don't have to bring die. Oh, in. but I am. Yeah, uh, die! Hey, maybe Rocky could do it tomorrow. That that medium, huh? Well, he needs complete rest, but he won't take it. How's the wound, Rocky? Oh, it's fine, die. It's, it's Here, fine. Here, let me feel your pulse. Oh dear. Mm. He sounds like those guys with ulcers back on Earth. <laughs> Poor guys, I pity them. Now you're looking a lot better, but there's still a long way to go before you're well. Listen, Di, how long are you going to keep me lying here? I can't tell, Rocky. Quite some days, probably. Days? But listen, But nothing. I... You're lucky to be alive. Now give me your arm. Uh, here we are, lost and unable to navigate. I, I should be on the control deck. There. I'm sorry, Rocky, but if it, if it was left to you, you'd never get well. Uh, fine search ship we turned out to be. Well, I could carry on okay, Rocky boy, if our funny things were normal. Are we still traveling in reverse? Yes, that's what it amounts to. Oh, there must be some explanation. Listen, when did all this start? Well, uh, let me think. Uh, the streak started to toss about, see? Yeah. Uh, that's when the clock stopped. Yeah. But I didn't notice we weren't getting anywhere until after I turned the ship around took a couple of fixes. Right. Rocky, I think it all links up with that buffeting somehow. Time and the clocks. Clocks, clocks, and now they go backwards. But if time is a... F time? Hey, that must be a Time! Time! Now, this must be some sort of time curve or swirl in this part of space, and we've caught up in it. You, you can't have a curve in time. Well, how do you know, Mitch? Because we've never encountered it? Well, people said there couldn't be such a thing as artificial gravity before it was invented. Well, then you agree, Di? Well, it could be possible. If time no longer moved in a straight line from past to future, yes, that could explain it. Time carrying us with it. For giggling grasshoppers, Di, if that's it, how do we know where to travel? How, how do we get out of it? It's like a current that's too strong for us, isn't it? We can't go against it. Rocky, Mitch, we may never get out of it. Is Di right? How can they return to Earth when every mile traveled toward it takes them further away? There are exciting developments ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. <laughs> In, in space, an adventure with Rocky Star! Strange things are happening to the street. First the clock stopped, then they started to run backwards. But more serious was the discovery that all attempts to send the ship back towards Saturn only resulted in her travelling further away. Rocky, still weak and ill, is greatly concerned, especially when it occurs to him that they've become involved in some peculiar curve in time. To satisfy Di, who insists she must remain in bed, he has himself moved to a bunk on the control deck. There he supervises Mitch at the controls. Well, that's three hours at full speed, Mitch. We should have a definite result from that. Yeah, I'm just taking a fix now, Rocky. Okay. So now... Yeah. Oh, here's the bearings. Cross bearings from the other star group. Mm-hmm. The change in angle seems all wrong. Still, I'd better work it out. Hey, isn't it about time you had your dressing changed? I'll get Di while you're doing it, huh? Yeah, okay. Anything you like, Mitch. Uh-huh. Hey, Di! Where are you, chicken? Di! Oh, oh there you are. Rocky, now, is he... Relax, relax, he's fine. Just thought I'd remind you it's time to do his dressing. Oh, is it? 
What's so hard to judge time? Yeah, working everything out backwards is enough to prepare the guy for the loony bin. How's the navigation? That's no good. Just took two fixes. Rocky's working them out. We both know from the angles we're further away than ever. It's really serious, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just not game to think about it. Well, this won't get the dressing done. That's for sure. What happens if we can't get back to Earth? You thought of that? It's simple enough. We stay in this part of the universe. Yeah, nice and easy. Ah, uh, how'd you make out, Rocky? Yeah, we're further away than ever, Oh, Mitch. just as I thought. You know, it doesn't matter what speed we travel, we get no nearer. Well, forget about astronautics for a moment and let us have a look at this wound. Hmm? Oh, it, it's doing fine, Di. It really well, it's is. best to make sure. Yeah, if it is, Rocky boy, it's because of the terrific job Di did patching you up again. Yes, I know that. I... Ooh. I'm sorry. Hmm, it's much better. Mm -hmm. It's healing nicely. Oh, good. Then perhaps I can stop playing the invalid. No, hmm? not yet, Rocky. You may need all your strength. It's best to get it back quickly by rest. What are you thinking, Di? Well, if we can't get away from this corner of the universe, we'll just have to find a planetoid planet. Just whatever we can and make a home there. The nice prospect back to the Stone Age, carving civilization out of the wilderness. You seem to have made up your mind that we're beaten. No, I'm just facing up to possibilities. Mm -hmm. Oh, is the bandage too tight? Oh, yeah. Just a little time. I'm sorry. Yeah, marooned out here. It's like like sailors washed up on some desert island in the olden times. Yeah, there must be some way out of this, Rocky. Ah, uh, perhaps, but I just can't imagine what it is, Mitch. Well, you're not giving up, too, are you? No, 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 but... Ah, uh, perhaps Di's right about facing up to things. And let, let's face it honestly, Mitch. Yeah. Unless we can find some way around this, this time force, we'll have to stay here whether we like it or not. Rocky watches Mitch turn and look hopelessly out the window at the star-sprinkled blackness of this alien space. For the first time in his life, Rocky feels he's really admitted defeat. At this moment, some distance across space, the Taurus is rapidly approaching a cloud-wrapped planet. Can't get a look at it at all. Everything is completely blanketed in cloud. Ivan, you won't land the ship without some sort of inspection first, oh, will you? Of course not. We can do the same as when we arrived at Astros, going to an orbit around the planet. It doesn't look as if we'll see much even then, unless it's an orbit beneath the cloud. You know, I thought planets were supposed to be few and far between, but we're finding them easy enough out here. This one isn't so terribly far from Astros. No, I think they must both belong to the same solar system. <sighs> I wish I could get a look at what's under those clouds. It's not a single break anywhere. If that is all water vapor, it will be a place with a very wet climate. No clear sky at all. It must rain all the time. Well, if that's the way it is, why bother the land? We must find if it has a breathable atmosphere, Paul. And if there is normal air, we cannot afford to just pass by. There is no telling how many millions of miles we may have to fly before we reach another suitable planet. If you could call that suitable. Oh, we're getting close now. It seems to be coming towards us faster and faster. Time, I think, to alter course. A gradual spiral that will take us down into an orbit. Firing deflector rockets. Stand by. Smoothly, the Taurus's nose swings away from the planet ahead. Like a huge ball of grey mist, it slips to one side, grows bigger, ever bigger, and the ship eases closer into an encircling orbit. Ivan reaches for the controls. We have to start reducing speed so we can fall into an orbit. Stand by for deceleration. Firing deceleration rockets. Oh, still too fast. I'll give us another burst. Stand by again. Oh, that should do it. Now let's see. Oh, still too fast. Stand by again. Well, that looks like it. Surely there must be a break somewhere in the clouds. I can't see one, Ilma. Could we use the radar to see what's down there? It will not give us a picture, Ilma, only a pattern. Well, still, it might give us some idea. I'll switch it on. I'll train it directly below us and see what it shows. It's nothing very clear, Paul. Uh, just range, Paul. 
I don't know what the range is. Keep varying until it comes clear. Right. Well, that's looking better. There's a definite shape of something. It's like a, a map. Yes. There is hills and rivers. See, there, there are half a dozen rivers. I suppose they are hills. It's hard to be sure from this. That flat sort of space here. Look, what would that be? Look, see here. Yes, it, uh, it links with the rivers. Perhaps a sea or a swamp. Then we were right about the rain. All this tells me so little. There is nothing to indicate what sort of country, what grows there. Well, at least it gives us the range. What is it? Uh, mileage conversion. A uh, hundred and three miles. Well, there's plenty of height yet. What do we do? Wait for a break in the cloud or go down lower? If we could find a break, it might be safer. What do you think, Paul? There's been no sign of one ever since we've had the planet in view. It might be an idea to go down. The question is, how far do the clouds extend? Well, what say we have a look? If we go too far down and still can't get underneath them, we can always blast up out of it again. I think that is best. Ilma? Whatever you feel, Ivan. All right. I'll decelerate. Stand by, firing deceleration no, rockets. wait, wait. How will we know how far we are above the ground? The cloud may go all the way. Yes, that is a good thought. Say if I stand by the radar. Yes. Keep the pattern in sharp focus. We will get a range from there. Right. Well, down you go. All right. Firing deceleration rockets. As the rocket blasts thunder from her forward tubes, the Taurus slackens speed. Slowly, she starts to fall downwards toward the hidden surface of the planet. The writhing masses of cloud come closer, closer. Then the ship is engulfed in thick white obscurity. Paul's face is tense as he watches the radar screen, slowly adjusting and calling range. Ninety miles. Seventy-nine miles. Sixty-eight miles. Oh, just nothing. It must end soon. Fifty-one miles. Isn't it thinning yet, Yvonne? No. Forty-two miles. I I think... Yes, it's clearing ahead. Thirty-five miles. Look, it's clear. We're through. Stand by, firing deflector rockets. Oh, I don't know when I've ever been so nervous. Oh, I thought we were never getting through it. We need a little more speed. Stand by. That should give us an orbit. Look at it down there. The whole place looks a jungle of vegetation. Now, now Paul, quick, bring up, bring up the telescreen. Uh, this should give us a better look. There, bring it in close. It is a jungle. And you were right about the swamp. Look. It is a place of great rain. <gasps> look, look, something is moving down there. Where? Near the edge of the swamp. I can see it. Looks like some huge kind of animal. I I'll see if I can bring it closer. Look. Mighty oh, Ike! It's a tremendous animal. There's another. They're like, like ancient dinosaurs or something. The atmosphere gauges. We didn't check. This must be a young planet. It's like the Earth was millions of years ago. Normal atmosphere. A prehistoric world. Surely it's no use landing down there. No, I wouldn't think so. What do you reckon, Ivan? It seems little use to... You, you have it out of focus on the telescreen, Paul. I haven't touched focus. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Then we must be still falling. Check the range on the radar. Oh. 22 miles. It was 35 a minute ago. Stand by, firing rockets. What's wrong? They, they won't fire. There they go. They're not firing properly. Something is wrong. Hi, Paul. 16 miles. We're still falling. Oh, no. It is hopeless. Get ready for a crash landing. <laughs> Again and again, Ivan's finger stabs at the firing button, but the Taurus sinks rapidly toward the primeval lands below. What new dangers await her crew now? There is excitement ahead, so don't miss the next action-packed chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> Rocky's Star!
and Ivan have resigned themselves to the thought that they will never see Earth again. Their only chance is to find a planet with suitable conditions to support life. Suddenly, a strange cloud-enveloped planet looms ahead, but the clouds obscure everything. It is essential to dive below the clouds, and this they do, to find a primitive world where huge monsters roam. But then they notice that the Taurus is still falling. Ivan stabs at the firing button. <coughs> There's something wrong. The rockets won't fire. Oh, keep trying, Ivan. I am. Paul, what's the radar range? Fifteen miles. We're falling fast. Get ready for a crash landing. Oh, we'll be killed. Eleven miles. Get into those crash hammocks. Oh, what's the use? Oh, we'll be killed. Come on, Ilma, do as I say. What about Ivan? Never mind me. I'm trying to fight the rockets. Oh, it's hopeless, Paul, isn't it? Well, you never know. Listen to the wind. Thousands of miles an hour. Oh, Ivan. Never mind me. Get ready, Ilma. Any minute now. <laughs> what? They fired. They fired. <laughs> We'll never pull up. It's only a few thousand feet down there. Get back in that hammock. Ivan, don't stay there. One more blast. I think it slowed us enough. I lifted her nose. We'll still crash. We've got a chance. When? When's it coming? Any second. Hey. With a tremendous glancing blow, the Taurus strikes the soft and slimy earth at the edge of a swamp. The mud is shallow with firm ground beneath, and the impact sends her ricocheting forwards and upwards like a bullet. For a moment, she skims the surface, smashing down everything in her path, then drops again with a shattering, slithering crash. Stillness falls, broken only by the drip, drip of sodden leaves and the patter of rain on the spaceship's scratched and dented hull. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Ivan, Ilma, oh. I can't move. Hang on a minute, Ivan. Ilma's unconscious. She's bleeding. She's got a cut on the head. Yes, see to her first. Ilma, oh, she must have been thrown hard. Ilma, see if you can stop the bleeding. Oh, yeah, first aid kit. <laughs> What's that? Uh, it's probably one of those monsters we saw. Ivan, you're hurt. No, attend to it in my first. I'll coagulate us. No, we stopped the bleeding. I hope there's no bones broken. Ilmer. Oh. She, she's coming round, Ivan. Uh, oh, Paul. It's all right, honey. Just lie there a minute while I have a look at Ivan. Here. There's a cushion under your head. Thank you. Now, Ivan... Great, Ike, you're pinned under the navigator's seat. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'll soon get you out. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it is bent right over. Oh, it's too strong for me. If only there was something to lever it up with. Try to cut it, Paul. There's a hacksaw in the tool locker. A oh, hacksaw, yeah. Uh, I'll get it. Uh, uh, I got it. Yeah, this will soon do the job. Is, is Ilma all right? I think she's drifted off again. Perhaps you should look at her. No, I'll get you free first. You hurt badly, Ivan? I don't know. It's pretty painful. Uh -uh, I'll just cut halfway. And then maybe I can bend it. At least we're alive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that might do it. I'll try again now. <coughs> it's coming. Hey, can you get free? A little more. Uh, now. Yes. Oh, hang on. I'll grab your shoulders and pull you clear. Thanks. Oh. oh no, I'm all right now. All oh, right. Across your legs, it was. Can you move them? Yes. I don't think there's anything broken. Just the muscles crushed and bruised. But Ilma... Oh, yeah, Ioma. Smelling salts or something? It's in that bottle there. All right. Ioma. <coughs> oh, well, that's uh, better. Uh, How do you feel, kid? Uh, Any pain? Pain? Oh, oh, my head hurts. Yeah, you got a nasty gash. But... 
Oh, wait a minute. I... I remember. I must have fainted again. I'll get a dressing on it. Here, look. You better lie down a bit. Well, how's Ivan? How... Oh, he's okay. Just, just... <laughs> just like you, in my croc. Yeah, but we're all alive, and as Ivan says, that's something. <laughs> there it goes again. What is it? It's just an animal, Ilma. Just? It's one of those huge monsters. We're not down among them, are we? Yeah, we sure are. And the Taurus? Is it damaged? That is almost certain. Though it may be only a superficial damage to the heart. The rocket firing mechanism. Yes, something is definitely wrong with that. Well, then, our, our chances of leaving here... Or is there any chance? I don't know, Emma. I wouldn't like to rely on it. It is quite likely we're trapped here. Trapped on a prehistoric world. Yeah. We got away from Astros, but it sure looks as if we've jumped out of the fat into the fire. Meanwhile, the streak floats silently in space, while Rocky wrestles with the problem of getting back to Earth. Hey, Rocky boy. Uh huh. Just been down aft and checked up on the gravitational pull. It seems okay. Good, right. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, how about those screens? Oh, don't worry with them. I've checked the die. She says they're okay. Okay. What's your deal? All the books? Dozens of them. What? You, you suddenly gone studious or something? <laughs> no, Mitch. I'm doing a refresher course, or I'm trying to, in celestial mathematics. In what? Celestial mathematics. Know much about it? No. Nah, gee. Wish you did. I'm sure stumped. I don't know, Mitch, but the more I read, you know, there must be some way of solving this this force that turns forward progress into reverse. Yeah. There must be. And if there is a way, you sure ought to get something out of all those books. Well, I tell you, I can't find anything. Oh, well, 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 what did I give the what did I say about this time business? Oh, I just I don't know. It's just completely new. I I, I don't know. I did a thorough course. It's all new to me. Hmm. There's Except, nothing much on it then, huh? No, not a thing. Ah, well. Hey, you notice what goes on with your beard? Eh? My what? Your beard. You know, in the morning you get up normally back on earth, you have a look at your face in the mirror, you give a, an anguished scream, and you realize then you got to shave. Mitch, please, you can see I'm busy. I'm a No, friend. no, 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 I'm serious. Yeah? Yeah? My beard? Yeah, normally on earth you get up in the morning, you yeah. got to shave, right? Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, well, here, there's something going very, very odd. Mitch, I've been too worried to think about shaving in my yeah, beard. Well, I am worried, too, and I'm thinking of the shaving. You know, even my beard is in reverse. Uh, what? Yeah. Look, yeah. I wake up with a thick growth, right? Right. What's the normal thing? It gets longer, right? Yeah, right, right. But up here? No, it gets shorter all day. <laughs> oh, Mitch, what are you growling about? You should be glad it saves you worrying about shaving. Oh, no, it don't save me worrying about shaving. Look, it suddenly does a sort of jump, see? Uh, what? There I am with a full growth just before I go to bed. <laughs> you know what happens? A fellow's got to shave before he can go to sleep. <laughs> oh, Mitch. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I have vaguely noticed something like that, but I... Hey, wait a minute. What? The beard. Not shaving. Yeah, and then you've got to go to bed at night and it's all back again. Mitch, that must mean we're... Oh, it's crazy. What? We must be... We must be growing backwards. Oh. <laughs> well, I... It makes sense. Hey. Huh? Think about it. Hey. You mean we're getting younger? Well, I don't know about that. Hey, I've yeah. thought of a way we can make a fortune. Yeah? We can get down to Worth and pick up all these dames down there and bring them all up here. Mitch. They get... All right. We're in a very serious position. Yeah, this is I no know, time Rocky. for joking. But we but could be growing backwards. Y- you mean that if we stay here long enough, we're going to finish up crawling around in nappies and saying goo? Oh, I, t- I don't know about that, but... Well, this this beard business points to it, you know. Yeah, maybe that's why you've recovered so quickly. Yeah. Giggling grasshoppers. Hey, man, you better get back to those books and work out something quick. I'm uh, going to find Di and tell her. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Mitch. There must be a way somehow. There's just got to be. Hmm. Alice's theory of constant time. Well, that might help. I Rocky. Uh, Rocky. Oh, yes, Di. Oh, Mitch was looking for you. Did you see him? No, must have missed him. But, but Rocky, yeah? I, I found it. Yeah. Found what? Heavy plutonium. 
I've just picked up a strong spectrum pattern. Yeah? H- how far away, Di? Pretty distant. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it's a star or planet. But it's a strong concentration. Just what's needed for Earth. Yeah, well, that's small use when we can't even get back to Earth. Oh. Still no solution? Oh, I'm sorry to say this, but I haven't the slightest notion, Di. Well, do you think we should investigate where the spectrum's coming from? Well, I, I, I know the Solar Council said it was first priority that we should find it, and catastrophe if we didn't, but... Well, Di, I, I don't feel we should travel any further away from the universe we know. Not while we're so completely isolated by this time force. I think you're right, Rocky. Though Mitch says we're drifting all the time. I know, but there's no reason hey, Rocky, to... Uh, Rocky, boy. Yeah? Rocky, there's some kind of planetoid ahead. Yeah, how big? Uh, well, small. I just got it on the telescreen. Yeah. I, I think there's a building or something on it. A building? Yeah, come and have a look. Uh-huh. See? I only switched on the screen for something to do. I don't really think to be out around. There it is. See it? Hey, can you sharpen that focus a bit? Yeah, just a minute. I'll try and blow it up. Bring her up a bit. Uh, there we are. Mm-hmm. It? Wait a minute. There. That's How's good. That? That's yes. good. Yes. See, see the building? Well, yeah. uh, I'm not sure that it's oh, a building. Oh, of course it's a building. What do you no, mean? No, it's not. Sure it's not. It. Well, not. Huh? Look, it, it. Hey, it's another of those spaceships. The the str- strange, squarish what? ones. Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. You're right. We better get ready for another space battle. Oh, not another. No, no, no. Wait, wait. There's something about the angle of that ship. I. I don't think it landed on that asteroid. What do you think, Di? It looks as if it might have crashed there. Yes. Stand by. I'm going to change course. What are you going to do, Rocky? Land and examine that ship. Rocky, remember what happened last time. I know, but Di, the last ship was on the other side of that time barrier. And now there's one on this side. Well, they may be able to cross it at will. There just might be a chance that we could learn the secret from that ship. Rocky moves to the controls. Is he right? Can this derelict solve their problem? And what of the other three in the Taurus, surrounded by primeval monsters? There is further excitement to come, so be sure you hear the next thrilling chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Love in Space! Love in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star! Unaware that they have passed through a time force that makes return impossible, Paul, Ivan, and Ilma have crashed on a cloud-wrapped primeval planet. On the street, Rocky is recovering from his wound. Di has picked up a spectrum of heavy plutonium, but Rocky decides that all their efforts must be devoted to counteracting the force that is carrying them deeper and deeper into space. A planetoid is sighted ahead. When closer examination reveals a crashed alien spacecraft, Rocky decides to land and investigate. Clad in spacesuits, Rocky, Mitch, and Di now stand outside the ship. Uh, she's crashed all right. Look, the hull split. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm. How do we get in? I'll uh, just stand back, Mitch. A ray blast should widen that hole, I'd say. <laughs> hey, that looks like it. All right, come on, folks. I wonder if we'll find in here the answer to how we can return. Well, there must be something these people know, Di. Just in around here, I think. We try to journey back, and the further we travel, the further we are away. Yet one of these ships was on the other side of that time force. Hey, I just had a thought. Yeah? I only hope this tub don't blow up like the last one did. Yes, that's true, Mitch. Oh, she's probably been here some time, you know. Hmm, looks like it, too. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. What are we going to do? You think we ought to just uh, cut into it or something? I think it'd be our best chance, Mitch. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just get in through here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where these craft come from. Well, I should think very likely deeper in space. I wonder if they're all as aggressive as the other we met. Ah, yeah. oh, I think this is it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. what do we look for? Rocky. The, the crew. Say, they're just like empty shells. Yes. Same thing that happens to insects when they die. They they must be some kind of insect people, Rocky. Yes, they certainly must be, Di. Well, look, you study them if you want to, but I'm going to look for other things. 
charts or logs or something of that kind is really what we need. Uh, I can't see anything that looks like that. Rocky, over here. Uh Uh-huh. Look, some rolls of thin metal. Sheets of it, all rolled up. Yeah, this sounds hopeful. Let's see, Di. Looks like nothing at all to me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, this, this is a chart, all right, Mitch. Look, you can tell that by the spacing of the marks. See? Eh? Look at that. Eh, eh. Hey. All very strange. Isn't it? Uh, it doesn't resemble any part of the universe that I know. No. Nah. Well, look, here's another one. Why don't we try this? Good idea, Di. Let's unroll it. Hey. Let me see. Hey. It's difficult, isn't it? Wait a bit. Wait a moment. Look, this here marked with rings. Do you see it? Huh? Look there, those rings. Oh, yeah. You know, that could be Saturn. Oh, it looks like Saturn, all right. But which way are we? Hey, oh, wait, a, wait, wait a minute. Hold, hold your jet. See those three dots in a triangle and four over here in a square? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Where? See? Three there. Yes. And over here there's four of them. Oh, yes, yes, I'm yeah. with you, yes. Oh, but they look like the stars I took a fix on. Is that so? Yeah. Well, that means we're... Well, we must be somewhere here. Yeah, look, this thing with lines rating out from it. Yeah? The star. The small radioactive star. You remember where we fought that other ship? Yeah. Yeah, and look. Ah, I know now why they attacked us. Giggling grasshoppers, Rocky. How can you know that? Well, look. Now, you, you see this oblong? Yeah. Well, now, I'll bet that's supposed to be one of these ships. Yeah. And there are lines radiating from the star to the ship. Do you see them? Yes. They used that as a power supply. Right. And they somehow picked up radiation from it. So that was a guard ship we shot at. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, if that's all correct, this line. Mm -hmm. Now, that must be where you passed through that force, Mitch, remember? Yeah. Yep, that could be it. Uh, Yes, but wait a minute. Mm Mm-hmm. Is there anything to indicate how how they get through? No, there's not a thing. Look to yourself. Mm Hmm. No markings, formulas, or bearings, or anything. No, there's not... Hey, wait a moment, there's this. Huh? Look, a, a sort of a sort of a line, this side of the force line, see it? Yeah, it looks like someone was doing a bit of doodling. Yeah. Yes, it does, doesn't it? It's just yeah. a, a scalloped line, like a lot of U's lying on their side. Yeah, and with the bottom of them pointing at the force line, it just looks like a bit of fancy work to me. Yes. There must be some reason for it. I don't know. Can you think what it means, Rocky? Uh, no, I'm afraid it's beyond me, Doc. Hey, look, maybe it means another force line. You know, a, a different kind of force. Oh, but, Mitch, we we must have traveled well past that point, and we didn't encounter anything. Well, it was just an idea. Yeah, it looks like we don't learn much from this. What now? Well, we look for anything else that may help. Then we'd better get back to the street. <laughs> Ah, nice waste of time that was. Not a clue. Oh, I was able to have a good look at those empty shells. They're definitely a people evolved from insect life, Mitch. Oh, what good is that doors, huh? Hey, Rocky's lying down on the navigator's bunk. Rocky is? Rocky? Uh, oh, it, it's all right, Dyer. I'm just a little tired after all that. I'm not 100% fit yet. Oh, I'll change your dressing and I'll prepare another. Oh, thanks, Di. Hey, look, I had a good look at that power plant on the ship, like you said, Rocky, see? But it's uh-huh. got me completely boxed. I can't follow it at all. Well, never mind, Mitch. Hey, you brought that chart back? Well, the answer must be here somewhere. Yeah, but what do we do till we find it? If we find it. There's nothing we can do, Mitch. We just go on drifting deeper into space. <laughs> While the streak drifts onward, the ship she came to find lies on the edge of a swamp. The rain patters down, colossal beasts roar in the distance, and on the control deck of the Taurus, three people try to decide what must be done. Well, I say we've got to try and get away from this place. And then we'll go nuts if we stay here. Don't you think we should think of what we must do if we can't get away, Paul? Let's worry about that if we have to. Ilma, I know, would like to get clear as soon as possible. So it seems our first job is to work on the Taurus. 
Pug. Do you have to go into a lot of argument to decide that? It's obvious. I was flying the Taurus, Paul. Perhaps I had a little better uh, uh, of an idea about chances than you do. You seem to think you have a better idea of everything. Oh, boys. Oh, sorry. There we go, nearly fighting again. Yes, we must guard against that. Well, what do we do? Check the rocket firing mechanism? Well, can we do that? Do we know enough about it? It is possible we may discover something. Oh, I used to play around a bit with radio and electronics, you know, as a hobby. Well, perhaps I might light onto it. Then let us remove the cover plates from the controls. If we can discover the trouble, we will be able to leave here. brought you a cup of coffee each. Coffee? Oh, thanks. Oh, oh, gosh, thanks, Homer. Reckon it'll just about save my life. Have you discovered anything about the controls? Oh, not a thing. Oh, oh, it's got goodness. me completely. All the wiring seems okay. I can't see any reason at all why things won't work. Then you can't fix them. Not so far, Ilma. And then we just have to stay on this horrible place. Uh, take it easy, honey. We can't let our nerves run away with us, oh, remember? Is there anything we can do to get the Taurus working again? Well, Paul has an idea. Oh, yes, what is it? Nothing very spectacular. It's just a matter of testing all tubes. It was only the deceleration rockets that the controls packed up on. But to do that, we must make sure the tubes are clear. We only want to fire a very small blast so the ship will not move. If they are buried under mud, the blockage might cause damage to the motors. So we have to go outside and make an inspection. And, if necessary, dig things clear. I understand. But you need not come if you are nervous, Ilma. Oh, no, no, I'll come. You may need my help. Can we breathe out there? Well, slightly lower in oxygen. Might make us a little breathless, but it's safe enough. Well, then, finish your coffee quickly and let's go. The sooner we start, the sooner the job will be done. Lovely climate. It must rain all the time. Oh, I can hardly walk. The mud's so thick and deep. <gasps> Listen to that. Oh, it's rather frightening, isn't it? A steaming jungle and, and somewhere those monsters. The sound of that rain's the most depressing sound I think I've ever heard. The Taurus certainly plowed well into the mud. Look at it. The rocket tubes look half buried. Well, it looks as though we'll have to start digging. Yes, we will have to do that. If the Taurus is to lift out of this, it is the blast of the underneath tubes that will be needed. Well, no sense just looking at it. Let's see what we can do. All right. Oh, this is going to be some job. Yes, throw the mud well clear or it will just run back into the hole. Holes are filling with water already. Oh, it cannot be helped. Oh, oh, oh Ilma. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm all right. Oh, oh, I just slipped. Oh, look, H have a rest, but stand well clear in case we throw the mud over you. What's that? I don't know. It seemed to come from... Boys, look! Great, Ike! It's a huge flying lizard or something. Oh, look, look, th th there are two of them. Oh, I'm scared. I'm going back to the ship! Ilma, Ilma, come Ilma. back here! Ilma, Ilma, wait, Ilma! I'm swooping on her! Ilma! Oh, oh look what it has! It is carrying her off in its talons! Help! Help! Ilma! Horror-stricken, Paul and Devon watch as with a loud rustle of wings, the huge creature pounces on Ilma and makes off. What can they do to save her? And what fresh dangers await on this savage planet? There are thrills ahead, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> Lost in Space! An adventure with... Rocky's 
The crash of the Taurus has left Ivan, Paul, and Ilma in a dangerous position, marooned on a savage and primitive planet. Their only hope is to get the ship working again. In an attempt to do this, they try to clear the rocket tubes of the deep mud. Suddenly, there is a loud and raucous squawk from above them. The next instant, a huge flying lizard has pounced on Ilma, seized her in its claws, and made off with her. Ilma, Ilma! Why, that... that... I'll stop it. Paul, don't shoot. Please, God, I've got to stop it. You might hit Ilma. Oh, Ivan, we've got to do something. Carried off like that. She's just a speck already. Come on. Where? Follow, of course. On the estrogenetic gravity belts, I'd forgotten. Try and keep Ilma in sight. I'll get the bed. Hurry, Ivan. Oh, that poor kid. That poor helpless kid. Come on, Ivan. She'll be out of sight in a minute. <laughs> Ivan, come on, Ivan. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, I've lost her, I've lost her. She's out of sight behind the trees. Out of sight. Do you know that direction? Here, here fix, fix his belt on you. Yeah. They went towards that line of hills. Oh, I can't get this thing fastened. Here, let me try. There we are. Now, come on, run forward and set it to rise. At least we got them inside, Ivan. I wish we could travel faster. We're lucky they're not gaining. Poor Ilma. Somehow we've got to get to her before. They must have some kind of nest in those hills. Seems hopeless. We'll never get there in time. Oh, say, look at those things down there. I hope the belts do not fail. Yeah. Imagine landing in the middle of those great scaly horrors. Say, what are those flying up from the trees? Well, they look like some smaller flying lizards. Oh, big enough. Must be a good three feet long. And... Yes. Say, Ivan, they're flying this way. Well, have your pistol ready. I think they mean to attack us. Oh, they would. Two or seven of them. <laughs> We we'll have to keep them away, Paul. Once they get close, we'll have no chance, no chance at all. Here they come. Let them have it. Got one. Keep firing. They're still coming, Paul. I can't keep them off. Look out. Switch the rise again quickly. That worked. We got above them. Now, Paul, now. Ah, two more. Say, look, they're after the two that are falling. They're leaving us. Well, just as well for us. I do not think we could have put them up any longer. Oh, that was close, all right. Oh, now we've lost time. We'll never reach Ilmer Ivan. Paul, wait a moment. Did you notice anything during that attack? When we fired the ray guns, it pushed us backwards. Say, that's right. Like rocket propulsion. Yes. Then, you see, we can use them to increase our speed. Swing around so you travel backwards. Okay, I'll try. Oh, it's a bit hard. There, that's, oh, that's it. That's right, that's got it. Now we point the pistols the way we came and fire, huh? That's right, a good long blast. It works, Ivan, it works. We're going a lot faster. Give it another blast. Ah, oh, now we are really traveling. With luck, we may yet reach Ilma in time. What gives, Rocky boy? Hmm? You learn anything from that tin map? Ah, uh, not a thing, Mitch. Not a thing. You know, I I'm sure the answer has something to do with that, that line of curves between us and the time force. Eh? That, uh, that's the answer. But the only way I can imagine it is as an instruction to sort of turn around and go back. Turn around and go back? That's what it looks like to me. Like a curved arrow, huh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, swinging around and pointing the other way. That's yeah, right. it could be. Yes, but if that is the right meaning... It doesn't do us much good. Oh, it certainly doesn't make sense to figure a warning to the ships, does it? Uh -huh. When they reach that point, they go no further. That's right. You know, Mitch, I'm, I'm beginning to think the thing's simply a warning to their ships that when they reach that point, well, that's it. Yeah, but that doesn't square up with the ships we found on the other side of the barrier, does it? Yeah, I know it doesn't, Mitch, but... Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm going off my head. I feel a little lightheaded. I've just thought and thought and thought, but well, I, I can't think of any other meaning. Oh, well, looks like we do what Di said. Keep the old blinkers open for some nice, suitable little planet where we can settle down and 
carve a home out of the wilderness. Yeah, I don't think I'm the pioneer type, though, Mitch. Oh, of course you are. You're big and tough and rugged. Oh, it's nice of you to say so, but... Uh, I can't believe we'll never see Earth again. No, nah, I can't bear to think about it, you know. No uh, uh, beaches to lie on yeah. or uh, no classy restaurants where a guy can have a thick... Juicy steak smothered in mushrooms. That's right. Go on. Torture oh, me, Mitch. Oh, that's the life. Mm-hmm. Out doing a bit of skiing on a snow. Snow? You were yeah. lying on the beach a minute ago. Ah, oh, that's in the summer. In the winter there, yeah. you're up on the top of a peak. Yeah. A long, smooth run down. The wind whistling past your ears. Taking those turns oh. up over the next one. Oh, terrific. That's the life. I know it is. Well, Just to think of missing all that cash. Right. Isn't it terrible? Gone for good by the look of things at the moment. Oh, don't be so depressing. I'm oh, feeling... I'm sorry. Huh? Well, what just... are you going to do about it? Well, what can I do? I said I've thought and thought. I can't see a way out of this, Mitch. Have I another really... look at that map. All see right. Wait a minute. minute. See what's going on. Well, the curves, see? Yeah. A lot of... The whole line of curves there. Yeah. All well, right. It doesn't make any sense. I know it. Just it goes up there and swings around All again. All right. So we turn around. We're no better off. Nah. Seems very silly, doesn't it? it? Certainly does. Oh ah, well, I suppose we better turn the telescreen on or something. Have a look. I suppose so. On. We might as well keep an eye on just where we're drifting. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, Mitch. Your word. Yes, believe it or not. I suppose this is what sailors felt like in the ancient days. You know, when there was. No wind, and their ship was caught in a strong current. And yeah. Things look pretty hopeless. They just... And what is it, Rocky? Hey. Hey, look. What? Come here, look. See? Where? Head there. Yeah. I think that's a planet. Just a minute. I'll blow it up and we have a better look. All right. There we Steady, go. Steady, don't lose it. Ah, uh, I got it. Bring it up. A little under. All right. Bring in the that's oscilloscope, good. Will That's you? good there. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're right. I think it is a planet. Yeah. Hey, what what do we do? We going to have a look, see? Oh, I don't know, Mitch. I was just wondering if it's really worth it. Take a look again. Uh, see? The place seems to be almost completely wrapped in a cloud. Yeah, you're right, Rocky. Still, we got nothing to lose. We may as well have a look, huh? Mm. You never know what we might find. Oh, well, I, I hate to appear pessimistic again, Mitch, but it's pretty certain what we'd find on that planet. What do you mean? Well, look at it. Wrapped in cloud like that, there'd only be constant rain and a steamy mass of jungle-covered swamp. Well, maybe, but, well, we could have a look. Yeah, perhaps. And yet... Ah, oh, no, Mitch. No, I, I can't see what good it would do. It, it, it couldn't provide us with a suitable living place. Nah, but it could break the monotony a bit. Mm. Oh, come on, Rocky. You never know. The Taurus might be down there underneath those clouds somewhere. The Taurus? Yeah. Oh, Mitch, it's not very likely. Well, it could be. And they might be needing us. Yeah, if I thought... Oh, no, Mitch, no. It, it's too fantastic to think that they could, could suddenly appear right in our path like that. Yeah, I suppose so. Ah, yeah, rain and jungle. Why couldn't we run across a planet worth investigating? Little dreaming the heavy clouds really do hide the ship they have come to find... Rocky leans across the control panel. A short burst on the deflector rockets, and the streak is drifting slowly past. At this very moment, Paul and Devon are swooping toward a range of rocky, rain-drenched hills. Look, Paul. The creatures must have a nest somewhere. See, over there, they are circling. That'll give us more time to catch up with them. We are so much closer, I- I'm beginning to fear we might be seen. Well, we've got ray guns, haven't we? Yes, but, but these lizards, they are such powerful things. Oh, well, we'll see. I think they're heading for that valley. Yes, yes, you are right. We had better think of a plan of action. Well, the main thing is to wipe them out before they can hurt Ilma. There will be the danger of hitting Ilma with ray fire, of course. Hey, say, if they nest up, there may be others do too. Yes, very likely. Well, what do we do if they come at us? We must do the best we can. Oh, look, Paul, look, they are dropping down to that cleft in the rock. Uh, if we drop down to the top of it, maybe we'll be close enough to do something. Yes, you're right. Now is the time. Slowly, Paul, not too fast, Paul. Hey, look, here comes the other one out again, flying in circles. He's keeping guard. He's seen us. Here he comes. 
Keep firing. Drop the other quickly. Now. Uh, here. You got him underneath. Look out, you fall on us. Oh, missed by inches. Quickly. Down to the cliff. The one with Ilma. There it is. Looking this way. Must have heard the other. Quickly. The boy flies at us. He's hurt. We have been trapped. It's dead. Quickly, down to Ilma. 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 How is she? Is she? I don't know. Ilma. Ilma, oh, speak surely to me. It can't have. She doesn't seem injured. Ilma, speak to me. It's all right. It's all right. We've got you. Oh, yes, Ilma. Oh, Ivan. It is all right, Ilma. No. Ilma, we have killed. Oh, it's horrible. Horrible. Oh, no. You're, no. you're not hurt, Ilma. No, you're not hurt, Ilma. Oh, I know. Have a look there. Oh, my shoulders. Oh, so they tell us. Oh. They dug right in. Oh, but you'll be all right now, Ilma. Yeah, come on, let's get back to the Taurus and, and climb out of these wet things. Then we can... Oh. oh, listen, listen! Look up! More of those things. The place is swarming with them. And I think they know we are here. <laughs> Monstrous shadows float across the cleft where the three cower. There is the beat of powerful wings, and ugly great flying lizards are swooping toward them with harsh cries. How can they escape this increased peril? There is thrilling action ahead, so be sure you hear the next chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> An adventure with Rocky Star! When Ilma was carried off by a great flying lizard, Paul and Ivan used the Astrosian anti-gravity belts to follow. Finally, the monsters led them to a barren range of hills where they had a nest in a cleft. One attacked the boys and was killed by ray fire. The other was slaughtered in the crevice to which it had brought its victim. But no sooner had Ilma recovered from her faint of terror than there was the mighty beating of wings and great shadows crossed and recrossed the opening above their heads. Listen, the place is swarming with those monsters. They must know we're here. Oh, it's no good. We'll never escape. Oh. We didn't come all this way and slaughter two of those things just to finish up with dinner for their relatives. Oh, cool a stink down it's here. terrible. Come on, Ivan, let's get out. You mean you want to go up there now? Well, sure. Let's go up and shoot it out with those things. Oh, but there seems so many. But if we expose it. ourselves, there will be no hope. Oh, well, look, we can't draw a bead on them from down here. Just waiting for him to swoop past that gap up there. Look, here we are in a good defensive position. For my money, we're just cooped up. It is difficult for them to get at us in this narrow space. Then please, let's stay here. I couldn't face them again. Oh, look, Hilma. All I want to do is try and clear the way so we can get the heck out of here. Look, once you get above the edge of that rock up there, you'll be exposed. Half a dozen could swoop down on you all at once. Oh, yeah. Well, then what do we do? You suggest a better idea. Well, let me see now. Have a good look around us. Look, look, see up there. There is a ledge just three or four feet from the top. Now, perhaps if you could reach that. Oh, I get you. Pop up, take a shot at them, and then duck back again. Yes, that is right. Well, well, come on then. Let's try it. Now, be careful when you set the gravity belt. If we rise too quickly, we may be out of the cliff before we can stop. Oh, please be careful, Ivan. We promise, Ilma. Now, are you right, Paul? All right. Don't let them get hold of you. Good luck. Thanks. Okay. This should do it, Ivan. The ledge is quite wide. When we stand, our head and shoulders will be above the edge. Yeah. Hey, look out! Oh. Oh. Its talons missed me by inches. Shoot, Paul. Let them have it. <laughs> For a moment.
moment, the two boys crouch against the sheltering rock. Then they rise and stand. Huge scaly bodies soar and wheel above. Hooded eyes glare balefully. Mighty wings clash and rustle. With a swooping dive, two of the creatures hurtle downwards, talons outstretched viciously. The ray guns spit, and with a screaming squawk, one body is plummeting to earth. The second flutters weakly above the rocky crags, lands, topples sideways, and lies still. But there are others, many others. The fight rages for a long time. We must have killed a dozen of them, Van. Yes, unfortunately, there are still many more. Oh, well, look, how long do we get away with it? Look up, old... Thanks. They just don't give up. Ah, oh, missed. Careful, it will swoop around. Keep down and... Oh. Oh, that is strange. It's gone right on. Flying down that way. Yes. Look. Look, Paul, there are hardly any left. Oh, don't tell me we've scared them off at last. I am going to risk taking a look. You're not climbing right out of here. Just for a moment. Cover me with your pistol. <coughs> You're right. Oh, can you yeah. see anything, Evan? Yes. A sort of cannibal feast. Oh, they have turned to the ones we killed. Oh, like those other things did. It might be our chance to get away while they are still occupied. Okay, oh. well, let's get moving. Fast. Coming down, Ilma. gone. We slaughtered about a dozen. Hells think that's too good a feat to be missed. Mind up below. Just move aside. Oh, we're going to try to get away from here, Ilma. Oh, then let's go quickly. Oh, nice weather for a flight. It's actually stopped raining. We will take you by an arm each, as we did before. And use the gravity belt. Oh, it's going to be a long carry back to the ship, Ivan. Yes. Oh, Ilma, you had better put an arm around each of our shoulders. There. That would be better. Well, come on, let's shake it up before those things come looking for a dessert. Is this right? Yes, that is right. Now, hold tightly. Here we go. Oh, listen to them. Yeah, quite a party they're having. Let's hope none of them notice us. Keep rising. They're too busy quarreling to... Hey, say, there's one that's seen us. He's coming after us. I will deal with him. You keep a tight hold on Uma. Ivan, shoot him quickly. I want to make sure. Got it. Oh, too close. What is it? What happened? We're going down. Oh, it's wing caught me. Oh, no. Look at the, that pig on the rock. Look out. Oh, we just grazed it. Oh, more than grazed on the face. Ivan, are you hurt? No, my belt took the jar. Oh, we're rising again. At least those things aren't following. Yeah, you can relax now, honey. All we have to do is get a bearing back to the Taurus. Yes, let us see. Beyond that fork stream, I think, in line with the double hill. Right. Well, now we just hope nothing else attacks us on the way. Keeping a tight hold on each other... They float onwards. A strange sight. Three civilized beings adrift over a tangled wilderness of savagery and peril. Meanwhile, the streak is passing only a few hundred miles out in space. Hey, Ruggy boy, this sure is interesting. Hmm? Yeah, it's like looking back into the past. Uh, yeah. Think you ought to take a look. Oh, why don't you? Yeah, good idea. Well, come on, boy. Hmm? What? I said, come on. Come on. Come on, what? Have a look. Oh, Mitch, what are you talking about? What am I talking... Giggling grasshoppers I like. You just said it'd be a good idea. Hmm? I don't know. When you get your nose stuck in those books, you just go into some sort of trance or something. Oh, well, Mitch, you can't study celestial mathematics without concentration, you what? know. What? Celestial mathematics. Ah. Anyway, don't worry. If we're ever going to get back to Earth, I've got to find the formula that'll get us there. You know that. Here... Hey, what's that you've got on the radar screen? Oh, I've been taking a peek at that planet we're passing. It's right in the beam now. Hmm? Sure is prehistoric looking. 
Hey, let me see. See those great blobs moving about in the radar pattern? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, I'll get it clearer. Just a sec. I'll boost it up. All right. There we are. Now, if those aren't prehistoric monsters, you can shoot me. Hey, yes, I think you're right. Jungles, swamps, and monsters. <laughs> you know, I was about right in what I expected of that place, Mitch. Yeah, sure were, Rocky. Wouldn't like to try and make a happy home down there. Uh, Oh, man, if we can't get out of this neck of the universe, I hope we can find some place where a guy could settle down. Hey, you know, Di ought to get a look at this. Yeah, she's uh, writing a report on the plutonium spectrum she picked up. Mm. Hey, you know, it's pity there's all that cloud there. We can only get a radar pattern on the telescreen that'd really be worth seeing. Say, there's a mighty monster of some sort. Yeah? Wonder what that could be, huh? Well... Over there. See, wait a minute. I'll blow it up all a little right, bit further to see if I can get it. All that cloud, you really don't see much at no, all. No, you know? look, I'll bring in the reactivator and boost it up on the uh, ignition circuit there, you see? All right. right. Just get it Steady. up. Don't yeah. go too high now. Nah, how's that, huh? Oh, yeah. What do you think? It looks like a monster to me. Yeah, it does in a way. I, I can't imagine what it could be. It... No. Nah. Hey. Hmm? I, I don't bully. What? Hey, Mitch, look. It, it's almost like it. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it could be, too. Just what I was starting to think. A rocket ship. Well, it, it is a rocket ship, I'm sure, Mitch. You know, just a second. Come on, bring it up a little yeah, clearer, yeah. can you? There we are. Oh, funny, I could get down below these clouds, but I'm too down down now. Nah. Yeah, it looks like Earth design, too. Yeah. Hey, Rocky. You don't think maybe that could be the Taurus, do you? The Taurus? Yeah. Mitch, it must be. Ah, uh, nah. Nah, look, maybe we're just kidding ourselves, Rocky. You know, it's a pretty long range. It looks very, very fuzzy around the edges there. Yeah. Can't really get a clear image. It, it, for all we know, there's something else down there that's the same shape uh, as the, the, the spaceship. Yeah. But it seems too much of a coincidence, Mitch. Oh, well, I mean, what else could possibly be that shape, really? I don't know. Wait a minute. Stand by. Rocky on intercom, Di. Can you hear me, Di? It's Rocky on intercom. Stand by. We're changing course. You going down there, Rocky? You bet I am, Mitch. If that is the Taurus, we'll soon know. Boys, are you sure you can still carry me? Sure, Elma. Quit worrying. Oh, it must be such a strain. It, it is nothing, Elmer. Do not worry. But there is something else worrying me. Yeah, me too. Then you have noticed, Paul. We're losing height. I thought perhaps I imagined it. Ever since we left the hills, we've been coming down the sort of long glide. Going down? But they land us in the jungle. Yes, I know. Perhaps your anti-gravity belt's on set at the right control. Well, mine is. I, I, I will check mine again. Yes. Yes, it's the same as last time. I checked it several times. But if we come down... Oh, cheer up, Ilma. We'll make it. Ivan, do you think you can fly level with the two of us? If you low all the time, it makes it a bit hard on me. I'm afraid I cannot help it. And, Paul, I'm sorry to say it is getting worse. You remember when we crashed into the rock? This little box on the right-hand side of my belt took the full force. You mean it's damaged? I'm afraid so. And steadily getting worse. Why didn't you tell us? I thought there was no need to worry. You weren't unnecessary. I... Paul! You're dragging us both down. Do something, Ivan. There's nothing I can do. I've tried. Oh, we're slipping down. We're going fast oh, too quick. My belt has failed. We will have to land and travel the rest on foot. <laughs> In a steady sideways glide, the three figures slip down toward the sodden jungle below. Can they possibly reach safety on foot when the miles they must travel are roamed by savage monsters of every kind? There are thrills and excitement ahead, so don't miss the next chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! <laughs> Lost in Space! An adventure with... Rocky's 
Passing a cloud and shrouded planet, Rocky and Mitch have picked up on the radar screen something that looks like a spaceship. Rocky decides to investigate and discover whether it is the Taurus. Meanwhile, the crew of the Taurus are in grave danger. They have escaped from the savage flying lizards, but as they soar back toward the Taurus, Ivan's anti-gravity belt fails. Slowly but inevitably, they glide down toward the savage jungle below. We'll crash into the tops of those trees down there. There's a space right below. I'll alter my belt control so we fall straight down. Paul! Paul, it's too fast. We're falling too fast. Well, keep a good hold, you two. I'm switching it on again. We'll break the fall. Paul, my grip. I, I, I'm slipping. I, I can't hold anymore. Ivan! Don't let go, Ilma. Oh, Ivan fell. He fell like a stone. Well, hang on. We're nearly down. Get ready for the thud. Oh, easy. You all right? Oh, yes. Ooh. Oh, my arms. They're so stiff from holding on. Yeah, mine too. Ivan! He's over there somewhere, I think. Ivan! You better not make too much noise. Never know what we'll bring on ourselves. Oh, come on. I hope he's not hurt. I can't understand why he couldn't hold on a couple of minutes longer. You know what? I think he did it deliberately. To make it easier for us. Oh, there he is. Ivan! He's not moving, Paul. Surely he's not... Well, we'll soon see. Looks as if he crashed into this tree. Ivan. Uh, he's moving. Uh, what? What happened? Ivan. How did I... You let go, remember? Oh, oh my head. Ivan, can we do anything for you? Hilma. No. It is all right. I, I have a great lump and a headache. But I am well. Oh! My arms are stiff, though. We had better not waste too much time, eh? Will you be okay to walk? Yes. Yes, do not worry. <gasps> oh, listen. Oh, we'll have to watch out for those things. Which way to the Taurus? We can see no landmarks down there, here. Yeah? Well, I, I took a compass bearing. The direction should be... Well, let me see. That way. Good man, Paul. Oh, it's raining again. Oh, can we make a start and get away from here? Yeah. Well, look, you better get in the middle, Ilma. And keep careful watch all around. You all better have your ray guns ready, too. Well, I think it's going to take more than ray fire to kill one of those huge monsters if we meet one. Well, we'll have to take care we don't meet one. Come on, let's get moving. Rocky, do you think it really is the Taurus? Uh, I can't tell for sure, Di. But if it isn't... I just can't imagine what ship it could be. Oh, this cloud goes on and on. Yes, I know. Where, where's Mitch? Fitting the oxy cylinders with our spacesuits in case we need them. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling we won't. It... Ah. We're through? Yes. Now bring it up on the telescreens, please, Di. Yes. Mm -hmm. A bit more. Rocky. Yeah? It's like looking at a prehistoric world. It certainly is. It... Yeah. Nice, pleasant spot. Can you get it a little clearer, please, Di? Mm -hmm. A bit more. There. Yeah, it's good. Fine. Can you hold that? Yes. Oh, look. Look, there. It yes. is a spaceship. Hey, Mitch was right, too. It, it's the Taurus. The Taurus. It's ironic, isn't it? We traveled for months in search of it, and then nearly flew right past yeah. it. Yeah. It's the Taurus, all right. No doubt about it. Oh, I wonder if those kids are all right. Oh, dear, it looks as though they crashed. It certainly does look as if they crashed. Well, we'll soon know. Uh, Mitch, calling Mitch. This is Rocky on intercom, Mitch. Stand by for deceleration and landing procedure any minute from now. We've found the Taurus, and we're going to investigate. Giggling grasshopper. She made a crash landing all right, Rocky. Yeah, she certainly did. Oh, this rain. Ah, gets you down, on it? Certainly does. What a place to crash land. Yeah, just as well I brought my new plastic raincoat. Yeah, yeah. Certainly is. 
Hey, look. Look at that hull. Badly dented. Hey, look at the deflector beam right here. Yeah, I know it. They're really torn apart. She's in pretty bad shape, you know. Yeah. You know, I've just been thinking. Huh? She must have hit the swamp there and then sort of bounced. Yeah, yeah. you can see the skid marks over there. Yeah. That jaw would be tremendous. Yeah, it certainly would. Oh, dear, those three kids would... Rocky, you going inside? Yeah. Well, we'll have to find out, I suppose, don't we? Hey, Rocky. Yeah? This airlock's been opened. Been opened? Yeah, look at it. Hey, that's a mighty hopeful sign. Yeah, that's my thought. Well, let's get out of this rain. Come on, let, let's go inside. Oh, that's a lot better. You know, we seem to do nothing but make inspection tours and crash ships this trip. Yeah, that's true enough. Wait a minute, I'll see if I get any response. Yeah. Hello there! Hello! Hello, anybody here? No, I'm afraid there's no answer. No, yeah, it's not so hopeful, huh? Well, here's the control deck. <clears throat> now look around. Mm. Ah, there's nobody in here, Huggy. I say, look at this. Yeah, what? what? There's a first aid kit. Yes, so it is. Hey, wait a minute. Look. Look at this seat, will you? It's all bent. Hey, that's been cut through with a hacksaw. Yeah, you're right. Looks like they've been pretty busy in here after the crash. Yeah. Someone was hurt, too. Yes, it certainly looks like it, doesn't it, Di? And what's more, someone was imprisoned under that seat. Yeah, but there's no one here now. Where do you reckon they could have cleared to? Do you think perhaps they've just wandered into the jungle a little way? But for what, Di? Why? They'd have everything they wanted right here. Yeah, if they were anywhere near, they couldn't have missed hearing the street come down. That's yeah. for sure. True enough, Mitch, true enough. And if they did wander a little way, they'd surely be back by now. Yeah, the more I see of this, the less I like it. Something's happened. They've either gone off or they've been carried off into that jungle. And that means they could be anywhere. Hmm. Do you realize that finding them was going to be pretty hopeless? You have said it, chicken. I'd hate to try finding anyone in that stretch of greenery. Yes, I know. However, we've got to try and find them just the same. Try and find them? You kidding, Rocky? No, Mitch, I'm not kidding. Well, how could you see anybody out in there? Now, how do you know which way to look? Oh, I know all that, Mitch. I know all that. But we came to find them, and we just can't give up the job now. Besides, those kids may need us. They may need us badly. Oh, come on. No good talking. Let's get started. Yes, but how to get started, Rocky? What are you going to do? Well, we're going to use the street, die. Don't forget, we've got telescreens of high magnification. We'll find those kids if we have to cruise every inch of this planet to do it. Are you all right, Ilma? Oh, yes, Ivan. Well, I'm not. I'm drenched to the skin and I'm miserable and... Keep down. What? Do not move. Over there. Look there. My big The biggest snake in the universe. Saw it just in time. Don't look at it. It's going away. Oh, my knees feel like jelly. It was as big as a three-foot pipeline. Come on, let's get out of here in case it comes back. Does it seem to you that it's getting dark, Paul? Yes, it does. We've got to reach the Taurus before night comes. Surely it cannot be far now. Check the course again, Paul. Yeah. Well, the compass says we're right. Wait a minute. What is it, Paul? There's something wrong with this compass. The needle seems to be stuck. Then then we could have been going in any direction. You mean we're not near the Taurus? Well, I guess we could be anywhere. Oh, night coming. And those horrible things. Oh, what can we do? I reckon the only chance is for me to use the gravity belt to float up over this and take a look-see. If I get high enough, I'll probably catch sight of the Taurus. Then do it, Paul. Do it. There's a break in the trees here. I won't be long. There's nothing happening. I'll reset the belt control. Then... Then it seems your belt has failed, too. And we're lost. 
I don't like the sound of that thing. It seems to be coming closer. Oh, let's keep moving away from it, please. The more we move, the more we're likely to be lost. If only it is possible to climb a tree on Titi Tots. Would we find a tree high enough? Oh, this one comes from the other direction. They're all around us. Well, which way? It, let me see. It sounds as if no direction is safe. We've got to do something. Well, looks like we go up a tree anyhow. Those things could push a tree over without even trying. Well, why should they? We don't know that they don't all know we're there. Oh, come on, let's start climbing. There may be snakes or spiders. We will have to take a risk. I will give you a lift, Elma. There we are. Grab the branch above you. Oh. 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 They're coming, all right. I saw one. Oh, I saw one. Look, it, it's like ten elephants. And they're huge teeth. Oh, it's, it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, oh, a lot of good being up here will do. Look at the height of it. We must climb oh. higher. Now, quickly. Uh, Ivana, I'm scared. Yes, I know. We're all scared, Ilma. Climb quickly. Uh, oh, there are more uh, of them. They're trampling down uh, everything in their power. Keep climbing. Uh, oh. Can't go any further. It's as high as we can go. Oh, it doesn't look too good, Ivan. Uh, no. I think they sense we are here. <laughs> It's no animal. A ship. A spaceship. In a moment, it will pass over us. We've got to let them know we're here. We've got to. Well, but how? Only one way. I will fire a ray gun. They may see it. They'll you know, saw all those things there. It is our only chance. I will fire. Again. Fire again. They didn't see. They went past the van. They didn't see. They didn't. But the monsters did. Oh, they discovered us. Clinging desperately to their shaky refuge, Paul, Ivan, and Ilma look down in despair at the huge creatures lumbering toward them. Their roars seem to shake the earth. Their teeth are like rows of huge pointed tusks. What can the fugitives do to escape this peril? There is excitement to come, so don't miss the next gripping chapter of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space. Lost in Space, an adventure with Rocky Star. The missing Taurus is discovered at last. But when Rocky lands near the crashed ship and investigates, Paul, Ivan, and Ilma are nowhere to be seen. Rocky decides to circle the planet in the streak, using the telescreen to search for them. Some miles away, the three missing youngsters are lost in the primeval jungle. Night is at hand, and the savage roaring of tremendous monsters drives them to seek safety in a tree. Suddenly, they hear the rocket motors of the streak. Ivan fires his ray gun to attract attention, but the ship passes by. They didn't see us, but the monsters did. That ray flash has given us away. Oh, they're coming towards us. Like ten elephants in one. Look at those teeth. They'll reach us up here easily, won't they? Yes, easily. What about the ray guns? Oh, we fall against all that armor plate. The only chance we have is to fire at their eyes. It's, it's our only hope. Oh, they've stopped. Here they come again. Well, at least we can die fighting. Now! Made him hesitate. Oh, we've hit him. Look at it, thrashing around. You've blinded it. Yeah, but if it thrashes over this way... Oh, look out! Another one! Well, it is only a matter of time. This tree and all of us will be smashed to pulp. I tell you, Rocky boy, I saw a ray gun flash back there where the screen picked up those horror monsters. Oh, it's wishful thinking, Mitch. I saw nothing. I tell you, it was there. Rocky, didn't you see it? Well, I can't fly the streak and watch the telescreens too, Mitch. Well, not at this altitude. All the time we're getting further away. Why don't you go back and have a look? Yeah, but Di saw nothing. Oh, she must have blinked at the time. Ray blast doesn't last long. Oh, uh, well, maybe it won't hurt to investigate. You're going to turn back, Rocky? Yes, Di. 
Stand by, firing deflector rockets. Another 40 degrees, yeah. Right. Up. Well, that's it. Now, keep a good watch, both of you. Let's hope they fire again. That herd of dinosaurs, or whatever it was, will give us some idea of the place. Oh, I hope you were right, Mitch. Yeah. Heaven knows how they got themselves so far in the jungle away from their ship. I'm going to water the telebeam setting. Angle uh, it forward so we can pick up what's ahead. Good. Right, Mitch. That'll give me time to slow this ship up. Mitch, look. Huh? There, see? Ray fire. I was right. Reduce speed, Rocky. All right. Stand by. <laughs> Yeah, it's a spot, all right. I can see those elephants' ancestors or wherever they are. Uh-huh. There's another flash. Huh? Where? Mitch! Huh? Look, those things are attacking them. Giggling grasshoppers. They're trapped up in a tree. Hey, Rocky, we, we, we have got to do something quick. We certainly have. All right there. Mitch, man the ray gunner. Yeah, right. Hurry up, Mitch. All oh, right, I'm doing the best I can. Can't you see? Look, they're rearing up at them. All right, be careful there, Mitch. Be very careful. Don't you hit the youngsters. Okay. Deflection left. Yes, a bit more. Yeah, come on, left. Right. How's that? That's it. Steady as she goes. All right, steady as she goes. Oh, good shooting, Good work, Mitch. Mitch. Yeah, we'll bring her around again, Rocky. All right, round a bit more. Now, deflection right. Deflection right. 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 Come on, hand over. Over. Hold it. Right. Steady. Up a bit, up, up. Deflection up. Right, here it comes. Right. Oh, you must have missed it by inches. Good work, Mitch. Ah, it's nothing. What's the tally? Four killed. And the others are making off. Oh, that's wonderful, Mitch. All right, now stand by. We're going down. Standing by. Right. Be ready for landing procedure. The space lock's open. They're coming, Ivan. I wonder who they are. Well, whoever they are, they saved our lives. Hello there! That is an Earth voice! Hello! 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 Well, Alan, look as if we found you just in time. Wait. Hey, the girl. Is she hurt? Fainted. As soon as we climbed down the tree, she went out like a light. Oh, I don't wonder. Here. Let me have a look at her. Let huh. me see if I can bring her around. Uh, sure. Thank you, ma'am. She yeah. is. How do you think she is, Di? Oh, I don't know, Rocky. She looks much, pretty bad. She certainly does. Oh, you'll be Paul Steinberg. I should yeah. think, right? Yeah. This would be Ivan Kromat, is that right? Yes, that's right. No, well, cut this how do you know us? Well, it's not so surprising, really, seeing that I've chased you nearly out of the universe. We owe you our lives, Mr... Uh, Star, Rocky Star, just a minute. Rocky, Rocky Star? Oh, oh, just a minute, hold so it, kids. Oh. How is she, Di? Yes, here she is. Yeah. Good. She's um, coming around a bit. Yes, I can hear. Oh, wait a minute, I cut this way. All right. Just stand back a bit, kids, back a bit. More air. That's better. You uh, ma. Poor kid. Yeah. How's that? That's better. I think yes. she's right. Yes, she is. Is she coming round? Yes. All right, then. If she's okay, we'll get back to the ship. Just in case Mitch gets trigger happy on that ray cannon. Well, this craft certainly came a nasty wallop when she crashed. You're very lucky to be alive. Yes. Giggling grasshoppers, yeah. They get mixed up with flying lizards and all other things as well. How lucky can you get? We would not have been lucky at all if if you had not come by. Well, you can thank Mitch for that. Ah, oh, wasn't anything. Ah, it's true, Mitch. Well, you wanted adventure, and I should think you found it. I suppose you're satisfied now. You know, all I want is to see good old Mother Earth again. Same oh, that'd here. be the most wonderful thing. Well, you realize you're going to be faced with an inquiry as a result of all this. It's a serious thing, you know, that you've done. Spaceships are very expensive things, and to make off with one... What is it, Rocky? Oh, I was forgetting, Di, that's all. Forgetting what, Mr. Starr? Well, it's, it's not so easy getting back to Earth. There's some kind of time barrier in the way. A, a time barrier? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And the further you travel towards Earth, the further away you get. Yeah, it's enough to send any self-respecting spaceman to the Red House. Uh-uh. Yeah, what, Mitch? Look across there, Rocky. Some of those monsters nosing about. Yeah. Yeah. They don't sound too friendly towards us, do they? Well, they certainly don't. Time barrier or not, the first thing to do is to get away from this place. Uh, Mitch, hmm? you, you say there's nothing seriously wrong with the Taurus. Well, I was just about to check the deflector rockets on the beam circuit, so if you'll hold on just a sec, I'll make sure they're okay, and then we can uh, give it a final word. Okay, but uh, shake it up, will you, Mitch? Yeah, I'm I don't like the sound of those can. monsters. Come on, Mitch, shake it up, boy. I'm doing the best I can. I'm, this thing is stuck. Ah, that's it. Okay. Wait a minute. I just put the solenoid back. Yep. To deflect the button. Right. The fuse. Oh, how's that? She's set. Yeah. Good boy. Ah, it's checked all right now. And uh, I got some news for you. She may fly like a tin can, but she'll fly. Well, that's the main thing. Good for you, Mitch. Nice work. Let's get ready for takeoff. Once we're safely out in space again, we can decide what's to be done about getting home to Earth or staying out here. Now, just for safety, I'll take the Taurus up myself. While Mitch keeps guard with the ray cannon, powerful hydraulic jacks raise the Taurus to a reasonable takeoff position. Soon all is ready. Armor-plated monsters watch with tiny, cruel eyes until a sudden eruption of sound and flame sends them crashing away in terror. Slowly, the two ships rise, then race upwards toward the clouds and space. Sometime later, they lie near each other, motionless in the dark void. Those aboard the Taurus watch something through the windows. Well, there he goes, back to the streak. It seems so strange to see a man float through the space like that. Rocky Star, eh? Gee. Well, if he can't get us back to Earth, no one will. I am not going back, Paul. What? You heard what I said? I am not going. You're crazy, Ivan. I will not be tried like some criminal. I who have traveled unknown space. But it's only fair that we should face up to things, Ivan. Besides, we don't know that we'll get there yet. There's still that time barrier, remember? If we get through... It will be perhaps too late. Yvonne. You better snap out of this. And keep away from the controls. Keep away. So, I'm a little upset after all we have been through. Uh, forget what I said. I'll help you off with the helmet, Rocky boy. Yeah. 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 Right. Here we are. How'd the Taurus fly? Oh, uh, thanks, Mitch. Well, much better than I expected. Now, the big question again. As soon as I've got out of this spacesuit, I'm going to have another look at that chart we got from the crashed ship. Well, if you find out something from it, you've looked at it, you're almost blue in the face already. Yeah. Now, how are the kids? Oh, fine, considering all they've been through. They're good youngsters. Mm. Come on, up to the control deck. Okay. Hey, where's Di? She's getting a meal ready for you. Oh, good for her. I could use one. I told the others on the tourists to follow whatever course we take. Yeah, if we can get one to take. Yeah, the answer must be on these wavy lines on this chart. Mm. Why is the line of those U's on their sides like this? And why does the open end point away from the time barrier? Insect people, another language. It could mean anything. Yeah. Hello, detector dials registering radioactivity. Radioactivity? Yeah. But where could it be coming from? Dying down already, just a short burst. A short burst? I'm right, it was rocket motors, the Taurus. Hey, what's happening? She's leaving us. Look, there she goes, off in the course of her own. Rocky, one of those kids must have got space happening. So Ivan has carried out his threat. Unnerved by the dangers and responsibilities of the trip, he has sent the Taurus streaking away into space. But how has he done this? What of Paul and Ilmer? And how will Rocky deal with this problem and with the barrier that keeps them from Earth? There is excitement and action ahead, so don't miss the next thrilling episode of this Rocky Star adventure, Lost in Space! Lost in Space! An adventure with Rocky Star!
Rocky has found the Taurus and her joyriding crew at last, and just in time to save them from the monsters that were attacking them. The two spaceships left the Cloud and Rat planet and were hovering in space while Rocky wrestled again with the problem of getting through the time barrier that keeps them from returning to Earth. But suddenly Mitch noticed the dials were registering radioactivity. A glance through the windows revealed the Taurus streaking away into space. Someone on that ship's gone space crazy, Rocky. We've got to get after her. Rocky on intercom, die. Rocky on intercom. Stand by for rapid acceleration. Firing rockets. Firing rockets again. Now we catch up, all right, but how do we stop them? Uh, it's easy enough with an enemy ship. We can't use those methods on the Taurus. Well, we can't hurt those kids after finding them at last. Uh, we'll catch them before long. They have the streak speed. No. Hey, Mitch, I think I have it. Right. I'll pull alongside so our airlock is opposite theirs. Yeah? You better climb into your spacesuit. You're going aboard. The space lock mechanism will be locked in fight. Well, then burst the lock open with ray fire. Okay, Rocky. Then I take over, huh? Huh? Gotta take some tricky navigating. The cr- crumb at the controls of that thing does anything crazy. Ah, uh, I think we can rely on you, Mitch. All right, now get ready. We'll be up with them before long. <laughs> Her rockets firing again, the streak steadily overtakes the runaway. Meanwhile, on the Taurus's control deck, the atmosphere is tense. You're crazy, Ivan. Crazy. You'll kill us. I know what I am doing. Oh, please, Ivan. They've found us. We can go back to Earth. Remember? Earth. You want to see Earth again? I have flown further into space than anyone, and I will not be tried like a criminal for it. Oh, you won't, Ivan. Stay where you are. You wouldn't shoot. I'm Paul, remember? If you do not stand back, I will shoot. Yeah, right back. That is better. Look, we did take this ship, Ivan. Now we must be prepared Shut to... up. Shut up, I am tired of your talk. I'm in command here, so shut up and... What is that? It's a streak. She's drawing alongside. There, I told you we couldn't get away from her. Let her fly alongside. They can do nothing. Paul, a space lock's opening. Man, the space suit. He's going to board us. Now maybe you'll give up, Ivan. I will not. I will crash us both first. No, Ivan, look. The streak has a ray cannon trained on us. I'll bet the moment you try a false move, they'll let us have it. No. Well, I'm going down to open the airlock and let that man in. Stay where you are, Paul. Look, the cannon. What? (laughs) Thanks, Homer. Sorry, Ivan. Now I've got the gun. Come on, stand away from the controls. I'm going to fire the deceleration rockets. So, you didn't have to force the airlock after all, Mitch. Nah, just as well, Rocky. Didn't mm-hmm. like the idea of raying it. Dad tells me she's going across the Taurus now. Yeah, that's why I had you bring Ivan back with you. I think it's best we keep him where we can keep an eye on him until his nerve settles. Yeah. But I can fly the Taurus. Where to? You figured a way through that time barrier thing yet? Uh, no, afraid not. Hey, where's Ivan now? Asleep. We gave him a sedative. Yeah, the crummy time barrier. Yeah, it makes you realize how they must have felt back in the old days when they couldn't get through the sound barrier. Yeah. Now, my grandpappy used to talk about that. How one guy, uh... Rocky. Hmm? Rocky, boy, that might be it. Oh, Mitch, this is time, not sound. No, no, look, never mind that, Rocky. Now, listen, when they were trying to crash the sound barrier, planes used to go into an uncontrollable dive, remember? Right, yeah. Now, those old crates, they had control column. Mm-hmm. To get out of a dive, you had to pull it back. Yeah, but what's all this to do Look with... The, t- relax, boy. Don't get on the high horse. Just oh. take it easy. I'm coming to it. All Nobody right. got through that sound barrier till one guy got the idea of pushing the stick forward instead of pulling it back. Now, somehow, instead of sending the crate into a dive, it counteracted things. Yeah. You get it? Hey, where's that chart? Here we are. I think you just might have hit on something, Mitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all this... Use. They could be curved arrows, meaning turn around and go back. Yeah. We thought of that, but we didn't realize what it could mean. Like like your sound yeah. barrier. Mm. Now, perhaps when we reach this point here, yeah. we have to do the reverse of what we feel is right. Yeah. We turn around and travel away from the place that we're trying to reach. Yeah, that must be it. it... Ah, no, no, it sounds too screwy. How could you reach anywhere by going away from it? Well, in the old days, who would have thought that you could pull a plane out of a dive by pushing it into it? Yeah, could be. Hey, Mitch, check your fuses. Right. And the fixers, too. We're going the way we came. And when we reach this point here, we're going to turn around and see what happens. (laughs) 
How long since we turned around, Rocky? Half an hour. Half an hour? Is that all? It seems like weeks. Yeah. Is the tourist still with us? Yeah. Hey, Rocky, you think we should make a few calculations to see if maybe we're getting any closer to home? That's too early yet, Mitch. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it feels all wrong. Oh, Rocky, we can't be doing anything but going right to where we've just come from. Time will show, Mitch. We'll just have to wait and see. Four hours, Rocky. Uh, it's too soon yet. Oh, quit being hard to get on with. Surely we should be able to tell by now. Mitch, we must travel long enough to get a definite change of angle when we're taking sightings for the first fix. Yeah, but just one little calculation. No, Mitch, not yet. Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Hmm? Mitch, wake up. <clears throat> Come on, wake uh, up. Oh, it's not my turn to cook breakfast, is it? Now, Mitch, huh? come what? on. Hey, how long have I been asleep? Seven hours. Seven? Mm-hmm. Hey, we better take fixes and work things out. Don't worry, I've already done it. Oh, you have. No dice, sir. Uh, here are the calculations. Our estimated position. Uh, I told you it was screwy turning away and... Uh, what? Hey, this shows us past that plutonium star thing. Well, it should. We've been traveling for nearly 24 hours... Here, come over here. Huh? There. Now, look at that magna screen. A planet. Yes, but look closer. It's got rings. Saturn. Yeah, <laughs> Saturn. Still a long way off. And beyond that, Earth, Mitch. Ah, oh, there he was right. We're on our way home at last. The mystery is solved. Out in the unchanging solar night... The hours pile up into days, into weeks, into months. And then, at long last... <sighs> Man, did you ever see anything as beautiful as that? <laughs> I could look at it for hours, Rocky. Earth. Mm. You know, there's no planet like it, Mitch. Nah. The green, the blue, the clouds. Ah, oh, it's really beautiful. And those beautiful little rivers where you can go fishing. Yeah. You know, as soon as I get my holidays this time, I want to get me a little boat fishing. and go out fishing. <laughs> just think of it early morning there, the sun just starting to creep up over the Mitch, hills. pardon me, did you ever really catch a fish? Did I ever catch... Did I ever catch a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you certainly uh, love all that, don't you, Mitch? Yeah. You know, I you've been sitting there most... Popeye ever since we fell into the orbit. Did you know that? Well, can you blame a guy? Anyway, I'm not the only one. <laughs> you glad to be back, Ivan? Yes. There is no place like it, is there? No place like it. Uh-huh. The Taurus must have landed. Falling out of orbit. All right, stand by for deceleration rockets. <laughs> Slowly, gracefully, the street drops toward her home. Earth rushes closer, takes shape and form. Buildings, trees, the great concrete slabs of the space terminal hurtling toward them. Thunder of jets, a great pressing upwards. Then silence. It is journey's end. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, please, if you don't mind, we would like to have a rest. Excuse me, please. Oh, Rocky. Sit down, put your feet up. Oh. Hey, so let you go at last. Quite a reception, huh? Yeah, quite a reception. Oh, they meant well, Mitch. But I sometimes wish they'd save all that fuss for later. Oh, they just don't realize how much strain they can be. Oh. Making a rocket landing to satisfy Earth regulations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that on top of all the other strains you go through. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rocky, the kids okay? Yeah, their parents were so glad to see them. Mm. I don't think there'll even be a word said, you know. Oh, but <laughs> what about the way they made off with the Taurus, Rocky? You know, the inquiry. Mm. Well... As a matter of fact, I, I managed to have a word with the president of the Interstellar Travel about that. I, uh, I, I don't think there'll be much of a fuss. After mm. all, they did locate the Pegasus after all these years and bring her log back with them. Yeah, that was quite something. Still, of course, there'll have to be an inquiry. I'll have to face up to an official censure. After all, they did wrong, you know. I'll bet they've had enough adventure to last them the rest of their <laughs> lives. Yeah, I can't see them doing it again. Yeah, I feel a bit the same way myself. But the time barrier thing, wasn't it the nerve-wrackingest thing you ever met? I 
thought Rocky was crazy when we turned around and faced the way we'd come. Yeah, well, now we can relax, and, man, that's really something. Uh-uh. uh-huh. I'll take it, Mitch. Hello? Hello? Oh, yes. Yes, of course I'll wait. He's the president of the Solar Council. Uh, what does he want? Oh, I don't know. I'll tell you in a moment. Yeah, but don't get us in any trouble again. Oh, really like... Hello? Uh, hello? Oh, yes, sir, at last. <laughs> uh, that's very nice of you. Thank you, sir. Oh, yes, yes, safe and sound. The, the ship? <laughs> don't worry. Better than ever. Hey, tell him I'm all right. Stop quiet me. I'm sorry, sir. Pardon? Plutonium? Well, yes, sir. We we picked up a spectrum pattern pretty far out, though. I see. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, of course. Straight after an overhaul. Yes, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, goodbye, sir. Rocky, I don't like the sound of that. Oh, tell us the worst. Yeah, it was the president of the Solar Council. Yeah, we know. So what? Did he just ring up to ask about your health? No, Mitch. To ask about heavy plutonium. He wants to see me first thing in the morning. We have another job to do as soon as the streaks had an overhaul. There's not much rest for the world's ace spacemen. One job over and another lies ahead. But what task is to be assigned to Rocky and his crew this time? You'll learn more when new thrills start to unfold in the first chapter of the next Rocky Star adventure. Deadline for disaster. Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston presents Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are on Venus on a farm where food is chemically grown in large tanks. As they walk toward a building where Tonga is held captive, huge sun mirrors atop several tall towers turn ominously toward them. Look at rockets, Commander. It's really getting hot all of a sudden. Yes, waves of heat. Even for Venus, this is unusual. Gee, my eyes. What a glare. Don't look at those reflectors. They'll blind you. <laughs> Let's run for the building and get out of the sun. Happy, look out. They're focusing those sun mirrors on us. A whole battery of them are pointed right toward us. Maybe we can dodge them. Run back this way. <laughs> Commander, they've got us surrounded by the heat beams, and they're closing in. If they hit us with all of them at once. We're finished. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story... The Space Shark! It's the serial of the future, the real space serial. The serial that's different from any other serial in the universe. The serial you see on Commander Corey's own breakfast table. Delicious Rice Checks, the cereal with a flavor like no other flavor in all the universe. Delicious Rice Checks. Swell tasting shredded rice spun in that modern bite sized design for easy eating. A real space cereal. You see, there's space inside those biscuits so they can fill up with milk or cream. Try it today, gang. The only bite sized rice cereal in the universe. Rice Checks, the one and only official checkerboard rice cereal. Rice Checks, one of the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. Rice Checks, at your grocers in the red and white checkerboard package. Get it today. Crisp and delicious, new and different, golden bite size rice checks. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have just blasted off from the planet Saturn, where they've been investigating mysterious contamination of chemically grown food shipped from Venus. In the meantime, Tonga, the assistant security chief, is also doing some undercover investigation work on Venus, working as a chemist on one of the farms. Now, through the nose port of Terra 5, Buzz and Happy watch Saturn's shining rings looming up large before them. Raise our vector about five degrees, Happy. Want to clear the rings with plenty of space to spare. Yes, sir. You know, it's too bad anything so beautiful is such a menace to space flight. But by the time you're close enough for them to be a menace, the rings are no longer beautiful. No, because you can see the individual hunks of rock making up the rings. 
And yet from a distance, they look as though you could ride a surface car around them, like on a smooth racetrack. Mm -hmm. Only in this case, it's the racetrack that does the moving. Well, it's 1,100 hours universal star time, Happy. We ought to be hearing from Tonga pretty soon. I hope she found out more about how that food is getting contaminated than we did. Yeah, those samples we examined on Saturn turned bad after they arrived from Venus. So maybe the chemical farm they came from is still pure, huh? Mm, not necessarily. Perhaps a chemical with a delayed action was put into the hydroponic tanks. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead, Tonga. Commander... How soon can you come to Venus? We just blasted off from Saturn. It'll take at least three and a half hours. Something wrong? Oh, no, to the contrary. I found out how those harmful chemicals are getting into the hydroponic tanks. Good. A group of racketeers are trying to force the farm operators to pay for protection. They've bribed workers to put the contaminating chemicals into the tanks. Then, for the owners who pay the price, the tanks stay pure. Who's behind this gang? I don't know yet, Commander, but I think I will by the time you reach Venus. Where are you now? In the woman's dormitory at the farm. I'm just about ready to report for work at the lab. If you leave your miniature space phone in your room, be sure you hide it carefully. I keep it with me, Commander. It's safer. You want us to come directly to the farm when we reach Venus? I'll let you know later, Commander. By the way, I'm working here as Miss Bird. All right, Tonga. Be careful. Corey out. Gee, Commander, Tonga seems to have found out more in a week than all the other agents have in a month. She's a good security department operator, Happy. No, we'll clear the rings. Change vector for Venus. Yes, sir. Ready for the spectroscope check on specimen 28, Mr. Baxter? All right, Miss Williams. Hmm, negative. Well, this whole group of samples tests pure. I hope we have as good luck on the next group. Oh, never mind that now, Miss Burns. I'll handle it. Oh, but I thought you wanted all these samples analyzed before the morning shift ends. There isn't much more to do. I, uh, I'd like to have you take this report over to the superintendent's office. Why, yes, Mr. Baxter. Where is she? I sent her on an errand. All right, that space patrol spy. I wonder how much she knows. Not very much. I've kept close watch on her ever since we found that she's a space patrol agent. But that was three days ago. She's been here a week. I'd like to know where she kept that space phone. I had a room search at the woman's dormitory. She's got it hidden, all right. Perhaps it's under the floor. Baxter, you should have put that concealed microphone in her room in the first day she was here. Look, I can't handle everything. We got to get rid of her. Without exciting suspicion. How can we do that? The space patrol would investigate. Mm -hmm. Supposing there was an accident. Supposing she mixed the wrong chemicals and there was an explosion. Oh, she's too careful. Too smart. I, I've got it. This will do fine. Uh, what is that? A harmless chemical used by Miss Burns almost constantly. But this bottle... Someone might easily confuse the names of the two chemicals. They're very much alike. Mm. What does this chemical do? A few drops mixed with any acid solution will produce a deadly gas. A gas that soon dissipates. After a few seconds, when it's mixed with air, it's harmless. Mm. But if someone were leaning over a container of it when it first formed... Mm -hmm. Baxter, I can't pronounce the name of the substance, but it's the solution to our problem. Fix it up. i better get out of here before she gets back. The superintendent said he'd check the report later, Mr. Baxter. <laughs> Typical. He hollers his head off for something, then lets it sit on his desk for three days. Miss Burns, would you take over here? Of course. I've got to rush over to tank number five. I'll be back as soon as possible. Right, Mr. Baxter. Mm. Now, let's see. An etheric acid, 20 cc's. Oh, now where's the... Oh, here it is. <coughs> oh, oh. <coughs> Work, Eagle. Is the gas dissipated? Do you think I'd be walking around like this if it hadn't? As I told you, it only takes a few seconds for the... Baxter, she's alive. Huh? Look at her. She's moving, tugging at her throat. She must have jerked her head back before it got into her lungs. 
Now what do we do? This makes it awkward. Let me think a minute. Well, at this acceleration, we'll reach Venus in half an hour, sir. You want me to take over? <laughs> no, thanks, sir. I'd just as soon bring her in, if I may. Well, fine with me. Oh. Happy. Listen, I heard something in a miniature space phone. Well, so did I. I got her back, sir. We'll load our Miss Burns into a surface car and take her to my hyperdriving farm. Huh? Oh, somebody sees us. Tell them there was a slight accident. We can say I'm a doctor. Take her to a hospital. But, Commander, they've done something to Tonga. Quiet, Happy. I'll stay here and watch Miss Burns. We got to get a surface car. Go on, get moving. Tonga managed to click on her space phone, so she's probably not too badly hurt. I wish they'd keep talking so we could find out who they are and where they're going to take her. Baxter and Eagle. Eagle has a chemical food farm. Happy you keep listening to your miniature set. I'll contact Venus Space Control and have them check on the location of a hydroponic farm owned by a man named Eagle. Our passenger seems to be very quiet back there. Well, apparently that gas just missed being totally effective. Here, pull up in front of this building. What's this place? Mm, a couple of storage rooms and a solar mirror control. Quite a layout you have. Yeah, very successful farm, Baxter. And you know, I haven't had a bit of trouble with contaminated food. I wonder why. I wonder why. Well, come to think of it, maybe I'd better have some trouble in case the space patrol starts wondering why. Well, come on. Let's get her out of the car. She's still unconscious. We'll have to carry her. Yeah, all right. Let's go. <coughs> Spaceship. It's landing. Quick, get her inside. It's a space patrol ship. Why do you suppose it's coming here? It's the commander ship. I've seen it a dozen of times on Terra. He must know the whole deal. How could he? Ah, the girl tipped him off. Probably has been waiting for days for some open move on our part. Uh, what do we do with her? Where's one of those storage rooms? Oh, wait. There isn't time for that now. Bring her in here. We got to stop Corey. Stop it? How? Uh, set her down here. Look, why don't we lock her up out of sight? Maybe we can bluff Corey out of it. He can't know anything. Well, he's obviously been to the other farm. And knows the girl was taken away in a surface car. Well, nobody asked us any questions. No, but several people saw us. Why don't we get in the car again and get away from here? And be followed by Corey's spaceship? I'm not anxious to tangle with Corey. We won't have to. Come here. I'll show you something that will take care of Corey. Commander, I'm not sure, but I thought I saw two men carrying Tonga into that building down there uh, when we were landing the ship. That means she's still unconscious. Yes, we've got to be careful, Happy. It's lucky she managed to turn on her miniature space phone. And even when Eagle and Baxter weren't talking, you picked up the sound of the surface car motor and led us right here. This farm is more than just a front. Looks like a well-run operation. Well, then why does Milton Eagle get mixed up in a gang of racketeers? Well, very likely he's one of the higher-ups, if not the kingpin. This protection racket is his way of controlling competition. Well, what are those big shiny pieces of metal on top of the towers? Those are solar mirrors, Happy. They can be focused on the food tanks to raise the temperature. Some of them seem to be moving now. Uh, they have to keep pace with the sun. Also, if the mirrors were kept focused on one tank too long, it would scorch the plants, probably boil the water. Oh, I see. I'm not so sure our rival hasn't aroused interest, Happy, so be on your guard. Get the idea now, Baxter? I'm surrounding Corey and the cadet with circles of concentrated sunlight. What do you expect to do? Blind them with the glare? Yeah. Wait till I converge all those beams in one spot. Right on Corey and his friend. Hegel. Well, do you realize the heat those mirrors put out? <laughs> yeah, quite well, Baxter. And I think this will serve to stop the space patrol permanently. Now watch. I'm going to bring the focal points together. Gee, Commander, sure is getting hot all of a sudden. Yes, waves of heat. Even for Venus, this is unusual. Smoke and rockets, my eyes. What a glare. Don't look at those reflectors. They'll blind you. Hey, let's run for the building and get out of the sun. Happy, they're focusing those sun mirrors on us. There's a whole battery of them. Maybe we can dodge them. Run back this way. Hey, Commander, we're surrounded by heat beams, and they're closing in. If they hit us with all those at once. We're finished. 
We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Right now, here's the story of a cosmic surface car in trouble. Listen. The trouble? Nothing to go on but ordinary fuel. You hear that? The driver's filling up the tank with super fuel. Now, something's going to happen now. Boy, that cosmic surface car is really roaring now. That's because it's supercharged with super fuel. And the same is true with you, gang. What happens when you don't have a good breakfast? You're just a putt-putt. But when you fill up your tank with super fuel, man, you're supercharged. Now, here's how Buzz Corey does it. He eats a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal, rice checks or wheat checks. Wait till you taste them, gang. Boy, are they good. Flavor galore in every crisp, bite-sized biscuit. So get going, gang. Eat a good super cereal breakfast and get supercharged. Get the super cereals today. Rice checks, wheat checks. <laughs> Buzz and Happy are on the grounds of a chemically grown food plant on Venus in an attempt to rescue Tonga, abducted by two men who've been putting poisonous chemicals in the food tanks of competing operators. The two conspirators, Milton Agel and Richard Baxter, have seen Buzz and Happy approach the building where they're holding Tonga. Agel has focused several sun mirrors toward the two space patrolmen, surrounding them with heat beams. Inch by inch, the circles close in around Buzz and Happy as Eagle tightens the wall of searing heat. Look at them, Baxter. Ha, they can't move in any direction. Grass all around them is burning. Yeah, and a few seconds ago it was fresh and green. It must be stifling inside those beams. Look at them, even from here you can tell they're gasping for air. Well, we might as well finish them off. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, grab her, Baxter. Let go of me. Get your hands off of that panel. Pull her away, Baxter. I'm trying to. Let go of me. Why don't you come away? Let go of me. I've got her, Eagle. Now I'll finish off Corey and... Uh, she cut off the beam. Get them on, quickly. There isn't time. Corey and the cadet are headed toward us. Drag the girl out to the surface car. Quick. Quit struggling, dear. Take your hands off me. Uh, we haven't got time to pamper you, Miss Burns. <gasps> there. Uh, now you can carry her. And hurry up into the car. They're getting into the surface car. They've got Tonga. Hurry up. Stop. Hey, come back here. No use, Hap. Doggone it. A few more steps and we'd have made it. Back to the ship. We'll blast off and trace them. They won't be able to get far. It was close. Huh? Plenty close. We aren't away yet. They look for us with their ship. Maybe put up a roadblock. Found a girl. Why don't we get rid of her for good? Throw her out of the car. No, you fool. As long as she's what I asked for, you won't get robbed. Where, where are you taking me? That's a good question. Where are we taking it? Uh, we're going to blast off for Neptune. Blasting off for Neptune? In the surface car? You must really have knocked your silly angle. <laughs> I got a spaceship in a private spaceport a couple of miles from here. With a little luck, we can blast off before Corey spots us. I think I've got them, sir, on the miniature set. Can't you get well, that's them all right. Just leave the driving to me. Watch the girl. Where on Neptune are you taking me? To a place where the space patrol will never find you. I suppose you've got a hideout in the mountains somewhere. No, not quite. There's a small settlement along the Crawlog River, just about 60 views east of Neptune City, where we won't be found. A big city be better. People wouldn't ask so many questions. I know what I'm doing. Well, we know where they're going to take her. Hope we can rescue Tonga before they get her aboard the spaceship. Hey, Commander, there's a surface car down there on the highway. Do you suppose that's the one? Very likely. Let's cut down our speed. The spaceport isn't much further, Baxter. What kind of spaceship do you have? My, such an inquisitive woman. But I'll tell you, I'm rather proud of it. It's a Class B space cruiser. One of the largest private ships made. A Class B space cruiser? How nice. It must be Venus Registry, then. Yes, Venus Registry. Anything else you want to know? Hegel, we're being followed. Uh, by a surface car? Uh, none showing on a highway radar. No, a spaceship. It's pretty high up, but it's hovering. There's some binoculars in the compartment. See if you can make out what ship it is. All right. I don't like the looks of it. Why would a spaceship be traveling so slowly over this part of Venus? Uh, it's changing direction now. I can get these glasses, folks. 
It's a space patrol ship, Terra 5. Corey again. Uh, maybe he didn't see us after all. Uh, there were other surface cars on a highway near my farm. Wonder how we happened to follow this one. That's strange. Miss Burns, why do you keep playing with that locket? Why, I... I didn't know I was. Give me that. <gasps> how dare you? Oh, rather large for a locket, isn't it? Snap it open. Uh, now, isn't this interesting? Now, what is it, Baxter? A miniature space phone. So that's how Corey's been able to find us. We really ought to fix this girl now. Shut up, you fool. Turn that space phone on. Just a minute, Eagle. I know where you are and what you're up to. If either you or Baxter harm Tonga, both of you will regret it the rest of your lives. Our serial name is Tonga, the assistant security chief. That's right. Corey, I, I got a proposition to make to you. What is it? If we turn Tonga loose, will you let us alone? You know I couldn't make a bargain like that. Well, I'm willing to take a gamble, Corey. I know you'll keep after us, but I'll trade Tonga for a few minutes' time. There's a small check a few hundred yards down the highway. I'll leave Tonga there. How about it, Corey? It's your best chance to get her back safely. All right, Eagle. I'll get you anyway, but I warn you, don't try to double-cross me. Uh, cut the space phone up, Baxter. It's off. Uh, here's the shack. We got to work faster. Corey's landing right where I figured he would. Stay behind the trees until he's out of the ship. Why don't we get in the car and get to your ship? Why waste time? While Corey is in the shack rescuing Tonga, we'll put his weapons out of commission. Why not wreck the control so he can't blast off? Yeah, and have him alert other space patrol units? Our best bet is to have Corey after us himself. Don't tell me your ship is faster than Terra 5. No. But his ship isn't faster than the Shark. The Shark? Yeah, it's a cosmic missile with a special view scope device. I have one aboard my ship. And once it's launched at Corey's ship, he can dodge it or outrun it. Yes, and with his own cosmic weapons out of commission, he can't fire at the Shark. That's right. He can run all over the solar system. But sooner or later, the Shark will get him. Come on, get ready. Corey and the cadet are getting out of the ship. Here's the shack, sir. I sure hope they kept their word and left Tonga here. Eagle and Baxter are putting a lot of faith in a few minutes' head start. But it won't do them much good. Try the door, huh? Thanks. Commander, happy. Are you all right, Tonga? Yes, Commander. Oh, they've got her tied, hand and foot. I could give them more time. They probably would have locked the door if they could. Here, I'll cut those ropes, Tonga. Thank you, Commander. I tried to find out exactly where Eagle's spaceship was. All I know is that it's not too far from here. Happy and I looked for it from the air, but it must have been hidden. The ship blasting off. Probably Eagles. Let's see. By the time we walk through the woods back to our ship, well, they'll have about five minutes start on us. Five minutes? Well, that isn't going to do them much good. They picked us up, Eagle. Good. Now let's give Corey a run for his money. When are you going to launch the guided missiles at them? Well, we'll wait till they get closer. First, we leave Corey out of the regular lane. I don't want him to call for help when we launch the shark. We aren't gaining very fast, sir. They must realize they can't escape. Turn on the space phone, Happy. I'll order them to surrender. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 to Milton Eagle aboard Private Cruiser 398. Come in. Eagle to Commander Corey. Is something wrong, Commander? Eagle, the smartest thing you can do is surrender. Head for Saturn. It's the closest planet. Sorry. We have other plans. I order you to surrender. We're armed, you know. Oh, of course. Happy, stand by to fire a warning rocket. Yes, sir. Eagle, I don't want to use force unless it's necessary, but I'm prepared to do it. Commander, something's wrong with the firing mechanism. What? The electronic controls are out of order. What about number two? Well, they're all out of order, sir. That's right, Commander. Baxter and I took care of that while you were rescuing Tonga. We can still overtake you, Eagle. Meanwhile, we can call units from Saturn. You're going to be pretty busy, Commander. Baxter and I are sending you a present. Catch. Eagle, if you fire on a space patrol ship, you'll be blasted out of space. Commander, look at the view scope. Something's leaving their ship not a regular missile, sir. It's too slow. It may seem slow now, Cadet, but wait. Eagle, what did you just release? A weapon with your picture on it, Commander. It's gaining velocity, sir. It's a guided type missile with a cosmic warhead. Have fun. Eagle out. Happy. Change vector for Saturn. For Saturn, sir? Yes, and put on all the acceleration we can stand.
getting closer, Commander. Head for Saturn's rings, Happy. For the rings? Yes, get on a tangent with the outer ring. All right, sir, but... Well, Commander... Yes, sir. The rings are made up of big chunks of rock. If we get too close... That's the idea, Tonga. We'll get as close as possible. We're going to let those rocks run interference for us. What an idea. Just like football at technology school. Uh, blocking back, trailing you. Tonga, bring the forward view scope up to full sensitivity. We'll pick out a nice big rock. Yes, Commander. That missile's awfully close, sir. At this rate, it'll hit us in a few seconds. There's a giant hunk of rock dead ahead. Good. I'll hit the controls now, Happy. I'm going to see how close I can come to that rock. Tonga, watch the rear view scope. The missile's awfully close. Fine. We're going to jaywalk right in front of that rock. <gasps> wow. Oh, boy, was that close. Smoking rockets, have you ever seen such fine? Watch the rear view scope. The rock, it blew up right behind us. The guided missile hit it. Well, that was luck. Luck, nothing. That was the trickiest spaceship piloting in the universe, Commander. You hit a guided missile with an unguided missile. Now, let's it. take care of some unfinished business. Eagle and Baxter. How are we going to find them now? I don't think it'll be difficult. They figure we're out of the way, so they might go back to their original plan. The Crawlock River place? We'll try it. Take over, Happy. We're clear of the ring. Well, I lined up another ship for us, Baxter. Good. When do we leave Crowlock? In a few hours. One of my men is bringing a ship in from Neptune City. Oh, it can't be too soon to suit me. I don't like this place. Ah, what are you so jittery about? We don't have to worry about Corey anymore. I ah, know. I just don't like Neptune. I'm used to Venus. You get plenty of sunshine. Get your hands up, Eagle. You too, Baxter. Corey. Get the weapons, Happy. Yes, sir. Uh, Corey, uh, how did you... The, the guided missile, you, you couldn't have escaped a shark. A shark, if that's what you call it, stubbed its nose on a rock just off Saturn. As a pet, it wasn't too trustworthy. You were so sure you'd finish, Corey. I told you not to come here. Now, now, Baxter. No recrimination. We gambled and we lost. Take it easy, Baxter. Like me. No, you don't, Ego. Uh, <coughs> <all right. coughs> now, Ego. Are you ready to come along? Yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, okay, Corey. I... I'll come along. Yeah, you know, uh, you're not very agile, Ego. Uh, you'd better stick to taking it easy, like Baxter. Yeah. <laughs> An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol story in just a moment. Hey, watch out. Hold everything. Here he comes down the rink so fast his ice skates are melting the ice. Wow, that's a checkerboard kid. He's supercharged. And a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal did it. A breakfast with swell tasting instant Ralston. Uh-oh, here he comes again. Stand back. Jumpin' Jupiter, that boy's a winner. He's got the speed of Buzz Corey himself. And how about you, gang? How about getting supercharged so you can whiz along just like that? Just do this. Have a good breakfast with Instant Ralston, the hot super cereal. The delicious hot cereal that helps to turn on your starter. Makes you bright as a light and helps to keep you right on the beam. That's what it does for the commander. That's what it'll do for you. Uh Uh-oh, here comes the checkerboard kid again on those flying ice skates. Don't wait, gang. Be a winner yourself. Get supercharged. Eat a good breakfast with a delicious hot super cereal, Instant Ralston. And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy and their spacesuits on a tiny asteroid are approaching a criminal who has stolen evidence that's needed to convict a crime syndicate. He's got the metal box, sir, with the evidence. All right, Chora. Come out of that crater and get into our ship. I'm getting into my own ship, Corey. And you're not going to stop me. All right, we'll come down and get you. Take one more step and I'll use this gun on you. All right, have it your way. I warned you. Drop, Happy. Wow, that was close. The gun chipped a hunk of rock loose as big as your head. Stand still, Happy. I think Chora means business. He does. And it isn't funny business either. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Search for Asteroid X, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! And now, an important message from Commander Buzz Corey. Did you ever read in the paper about a boy or girl saving somebody's life? Ever wish you could do something like that? Well, you can. Just join my Space Patrol blood boosters. Uh, Here's what we do. We try to get more people to donate blood to the Red Cross. When you get somebody to donate blood, you save a life. So, boys and girls, 
Join my Space Patrol blood boosters today. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Nina Barra. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy, in their spacesuits on a tiny asteroid, are approaching a criminal who has stolen evidence that's needed to convict a crime syndicate. He's got the metal box, sir, with the evidence. All right, Chura, come out of that crater and get into our ship. I'm getting into my own ship, Corey, and you're not going to stop me. All right, we'll come down and get you. Take one more step and I'll use this gun on you. All right, have it your own way. I, I warned you. Drop, Happy. Wow, that was close. Uh, that ray gun knocked a hunk of rock loose as big as your head. Don't move, Hap. I think Chura means business. He sure does. And it isn't funny business either. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Search for Asteroid X. <laughs> Say, did you hear that, gang? That was the Terra Express train trying to get up speed on ordinary fuel. Not very speedy, was it? But now listen to that same train with super fuel in its tank. Man, that train is really traveling now because it's supercharged with super fuel. Now, gang, without a good breakfast, you can't go very fast either. But with super fuel in your tank, you're supercharged. Here's how Buzz Corey gets up ahead of steam in the morning. He has a good breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. For taste, they're terrific. For size, they're perfect because they both have that modern bite size design. So, gang, get off to a quick start in the morning the way Buzz Corey does. Get supercharged. Just eat a good breakfast with the checkerboard super cereals and get them today in the red and white checkerboard packages. Rice checks, wheat checks. <laughs> After months of careful investigation, Space Patrol agents have gathered evidence against the leaders of the notorious Saturn Syndicate. This gang, for months, has been victimizing honest businessmen on the outer planets of the solar system. Commander Corey has been awaiting the arrival of an agent with the evidence that will convict the leaders of the Syndicate. Now, Buzz grimly enters his central office on Terra, where Cadet Happy is decoding spacegrams. Lock those messages in the file, Happy. You can work on them later. Well, is something wrong, Commander? Well, it certainly is. I've just received a report that Fraser's in the hospital. All the evidence is gone. What? Somebody jumped Fraser while he was on his way here in a surface car. He was knocked unconscious. Every scrap of evidence was stolen. Documents, microfilm, everything. Do you have any idea who did it, sir? No, I understand the doctors won't let our security people see Fraser yet. Is he badly hurt? Fortunately, no. The loss of that evidence puts us right back where we started three months ago in the Saturn Syndicate investigation. Come on over to the hospital with me. As soon as the doctor's okay, I want to ask Fraser some questions. Cut your speed and go lower, Hundley. I think I see something down there. Where? Right near that small pond. Uh, isn't that a building of some kind? Hey, you're right, Chura. Well, I hope it's occupied. Say, uh, there is a man down there by the pond. That's surprising to find anybody in this part of Mars. Set the ship down. We'll load up with food and water. Suppose this guy won't give us any? Well, then he'll get what our friend, the space patrol agent, got. Do you think you finished that guy, Chora? Who cares? 
We got the evidence. Yeah. But I won't rest easy until we get it hit on Asteroid X. Oh, kick on the repeller ray. Repeller ray on. Well, we're down. If we get enough supplies here, we can go into free fall near the asteroid belt till we decide what our next move is. I wonder who this guy is. <laughs> he sure must like solitude. Now, we don't want any trouble if we can help it, Hundley. Let me do the talking. Don't you always? <laughs> all right, all right, let's go. Now the outer hatch. Hi there! Uh. He looks good-natured and not very bright. Just what we ordered. Uh, hello, friend. Having trouble with your ship? No, but we're out of supplies, food and water. When we left Lowell City, we thought we had enough to get to Neptune, but looks as though I miscalculated. Well, I got plenty here, gentlemen. Come on in, take what you want. We'll pay you for it. Oh, no, no, I got plenty. Come on in the house and help yourselves. All right, that's mighty generous of you, Mr. Uh... Noonan. Marty Noonan. By the way, I don't believe I got your names. Well, I'm Steve Chura, and this is my friend Wally Hundley. Now about those supplies. Oh, sure. Sorry, you folks are in a hurry. But uh, since you are, just come with me, gentlemen. I brought this extra box of rations, gentlemen, just in case of emergency. Here, I'll pass it up to Chura. All right, Hundley. Come aboard. Hey, uh, sure wish you fellas could stay a while. Don't get many visitors. So do we, Mr. Noonan. But we got to get going. Well, I understand. Well, very much obliged, Noonan. Oh, no trouble at all. So long. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. Better stand back and watch our rockets. We're going to blast off. Yeah. Sure, a couple of swell fellas. Gee, what's this? Little box. Oh, they must have dropped it. Uh, uh, hey, wait! Oh, this looks pretty important. Microfilm Real 14B Property of Space Patrol. Investigation Squad Number 3, Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra. Guys, they're space patrol agents. I'd better call headquarters right away. Commander, will you take the space phone call? It's something about a can of microfilm a fellow found on Mars. All right, Happy. Corey here. Go ahead, please. Commander, my name is Noonan. Yes, Mr. Noonan? A couple of your agents dropped a can of microfilm on my land. I uh, want to know how to go about returning it. Well, what does it say on the label? Real 14B Investigation Squad Number 3. Oh, just a minute. You say Space Patrol agents dropped it? Yes, sir. I think it fell out of one of the men's pockets. Happy. Squad 3 was on the Saturn Syndicate case. Mr. Noonan, what were these agents doing on your land? They ran out of supplies on the way to Neptune. Did you see their credentials? Uh, no, I didn't. Just figured they were agents when I found the film. Said their names were Steve Churra and Wally Hundley. Did you ever see these men before? Why, no, Commander. Where are you now? At my place. Uh, sector 17H on the Martian plain. Uh, about... Four and six-tenths DUs directly northwest of Lowell City. Got that, Happy? Yes, sir. What kind of a ship did these men have? Was it a space patrol ship? No, didn't have any insignia at all. But I don't know what kind it was. Mr. Noonan, hold on to that microfilm. I'm coming after it. Right, Commander. And don't give it to anyone else. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thanks for your cooperation. I'm on my way. Corey, out. I've just checked, sir. We don't have any agents named Chura and Hundley. Not on Squad 3, anyway. Well, chances are those are the men who knocked out Fraser. At least they have the evidence, or I should say, had it. But Fraser didn't get a look at the men who attacked him. Well, I'll blast off from Mars and get the film happy. Maybe we can get some more information from this man, Noonan. I finished decoding the patrol unit messages, sir. Good. Will you read them, Happy? Yes, sir. Quote, to Commander-in-Chief aboard Terra 5, Jupiter Patrol searched Mars to Neptune orbit. No suspicious craft sighted. Unquote. From Saturn Patrol, same, negative... Neptune Patrol also replies a negative. Any more? Well, Patrol Ship 34A, Asteroid Belt, picked up an unidentified object in their view scope. They're investigating it. Happy? We're going right into Lowell City. And how about the microfilm at Noonan's place? Now, you can go after it in an atmosphere ship after we land. I'll call Noonan, describe the credentials you'll present to him to relieve him of my original order. All right, sir. See how much you can find out about those men he saw. Get a full description. Very likely their right names aren't sure and Hundley. It's almost certain they lied when they told Noonan they were going to Neptune. Shall I bring Noonan back to Lowell City? If you think he can give us any useful information. Yes, sir. Well, uh, we'll reach Mars in 20 minutes, sir. I'd better check Lowell City's space control. Better 
to get the evidence ready. We're nearly to Asteroid X. All right, sure. <laughs> what a terrific place to hide it. Even if somebody knew it was on an asteroid, how would they know which one? Uh, and I remember, Hunley, when we get to the asteroid, be sure to mark the exact universal star time to the tenth of a second. Why? Well, otherwise, the orbit computer can pinpoint its location when we want to find the asteroid again. Yeah, yeah I get it. Have you got the evidence ready to unload? Yeah, all except... Uh-oh. What's the matter? Real a microfilm. I had it in my pocket. It's gone. Huh? Uh, what was it doing in your pocket? That spilled out when we took the stuff from the agent's surface class. I just stuck it in my pocket. Oh, well, probably doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? That reel might be just the one to convict the boss. And us. How did you happen to lose it? I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Back at noon. Huh? Yeah, I may have fallen out while I was bending over to pick up the box of food or water containers. Uh, how could you be that careless? Well... At least noon is alone. We got to go back and look for it. There's nothing else to do. Hi there. Are you Marty Noonan? Yep, that's right. Uh, I'm Cadet Happy. Here are my Space Patrol credentials. Mighty glad to know you, Cadet. Commander Corey called me about you. Oh, uh, here's your microfilm. Oh, thanks. Uh, there are several questions Commander Corey wanted me to ask you about these men. Chura and Hundley? Well, I'll tell you what I can... Suppose we go in the house and have a bite to eat while we talk. All right, fine. It's a mighty fine-looking little atmosphere ship. How fast will she go? Oh, probably 1,200. On this trip, though, I averaged about 8.32. From old city to here, nine minutes and 54 seconds. Hey. Yeah, about that. Let's see. Uh, I took off at... Hey, how did you figure that out so quick? Oh, I don't know. Answers just sort of come to me. Don't have to think about it. It's lucky, too. Because if I had to tell you how I do it, I'd get all confused and come up with the wrong answer. <laughs> I have to figure everything out on paper or use the electronic computer in the ship. Well, first, Mr. Noonan, uh, can you give me a, a description of these two men? Well, Chur is about 45, 6 feet tall, weighs about 210 Earth standard. Well, Mr. Noonan, you've given me a very complete description of these crooks, and their ship was very likely a Class C private cruiser from the way you describe it. Uh, could you come to Lowell City with me, Mr. Noonan? I think Commander Corey would like to question you further. Why, of course. I'd like to get back as soon as possible. Uh, do you mind if I use your space phone? Okay, I... Noonan. Uh, you too, Cadet. Get your hands out. Sure, and Hundley. That's right. Don't make a move for your gun, Cadet, or I'll use this one. Okay. Which one of you has the microfilm? What microfilm? You know what microfilm. Noonan must have found it or you wouldn't be here. Hundley, take the Cadet's ray gun and search him for the tape. Sure. The film's in my jacket pocket, and it's going to stay there. Oh, you want to play rough, eh, Cadet? You let him alone. You keep out of this, Noonan. Sure, oh, uh, help me. All right, I'm coming. All right, Cadet. Uh, uh, he nearly got the gun away from me. Well, after this, don't be so careless. I got it. Here's the microfilm. All right, let's get back to the ship. Oh, oh. Uh-uh. The cadet's oh. coming, too. And I got an idea. We're going to take him with us. What for? Let's finish him here. Oh, not till we find out how much he knows. Come on, cadet. Come on, on your feet. You got a nice long walk. Walk? Where to? To our ship. What about Noonan? Oh, that stupid oaf. Leave him here. Smash his space phone. And the one in the cadet's atmosphere ship as well. Okay. Where are you going to take me? Never mind. But I'll tell you this much. You better enjoy it because this is the last trip you ever gonna take. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Gang, this is Space Patroller Dick Tufel, and boy, am I excited. We have a new machine here at Space Patrol headquarters, and it's terrific. It's the flavor meter for testing the flavor of food. Now, I have a plain, ordinary cereal right here, so let's test it. The better it tastes, the louder it'll ring the bell. Now, all I do is place the cereal in this slot and push the button. Hmm, not much flavor there, is it? Uh, let's put in some other ordinary cereal and see what happens. Why not even a tinkle? Now, gang, here's a couple of uh, super cereals I'd like to test. I'll put them both in. Wow, that did it. Those cereals really ring the bell for flavor. You bet. They were rice checks and wheat checks. 
Checks, the cereals with that modern bite-sized design. Checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Test them yourself, gang, in your own cereal bowl. And believe me, they'll really ring the bell for flavor. Rice checks, wheat checks. <laughs> Commander Corey has sent Happy to Marty Noonan's isolated dwelling on the Martian plain to recover some stolen evidence, a roll of microfilm. Noonan and Happy were surprised by Chura and Hundley when the thieves returned for the film. After smashing Noonan's spaceophone, the criminals have taken Happy to their ship, leaving the unconscious Noonan locked in his house. Meanwhile, Buzz, in Lowell City, has tried in vain to contact Happy or Noonan by spaceophone. Commander Corey to Space Patrol, Lowell City. Space Patrol, Lieutenant Barton here, Commander. Lieutenant, I've been unable to contact my cadet on any of the Space Patrol frequencies. And Noonan doesn't answer either, so I'm blasting off to see what the trouble is. Would you like an atmosphere ship, sir? No, a spaceship in case I need it. I'll go on Terra 5. Keep monitoring those frequencies. If you hear from either Cadet Happy or Marty Noonan, notify me in my private frequency immediately. Hello there. Are you Marty Noonan? Yes. I'm Commander Corey. Where's Cadet Happy? Sure, and Hundley. They took him away, and they got the microfilm. I tried to stop him, Commander, but they knocked me out. They smashed my space phone, and the one in the cadet ship there, too. Do you know where they took him? No, by the time I came to and broke out of my house, they'd blasted off. They'd locked me in. Did you hear anything that would give us a clue as to where they were going? No. All I remember was that one of them said we ought to be able to get there by 1,500 hours. But I don't know where they meant. How long ago did they blast off? About an hour and a half ago. Say, uh, Commander, I'd like to help you find them. All right, come aboard. Thanks, Commander. Maybe with the astrogation charts and the computer, I can figure out an approximate radius of where Chura's ship might be by 1,500 hours. Well, if they're going to any planet, it'd have to be Jupiter. Well, why do you say that? Well, considering the speed of spaceships and the present positions of the planets, and the approximate arrival time of 1,500 hours, it uh, just has to be Jupiter. Oh, it does? Yes, they wouldn't need that much time to get to any of the inner planets like Earth and Venus. And they'd need much more time to get to Saturn. You may be right, but as a double check, I'll work it out on the computer. The computer will give us the answer in a few seconds. Here we are. Now, let's see. Well, what do you know? What would you say, Commander? Mr. Noonan, this is amazing. Either you made a very lucky guess, or you must know the exact distances and positions of all the planets relative to Mars. Oh, I do. I make a hobby of remembering data like that. Jupiter comes nearer to satisfying the equation than any other object in space. How do you do it? I don't know, Commander. If I know a formula and the data, I can get the result. But if I stop to think how I do it, I get all confused. There's only one thing wrong. They couldn't quite reach Jupiter by 1500. Of course, they may be heading for one of the moons. I'll check the astrogation chart again. Could be Ganymede, Commander. Assuming we're right on the time factor. Yeah, we'll see. Mr. Noonan, you've hit it again. The astrogation chart puts moon number three, Ganymede, very close to the vector. Ganymede's a good-sized moon. There are a lot of places to hide on it. The most we can hope for right now is that we're headed in the right direction. I just talked to the boss. What'd you tell him? Just that we got the evidence against the gang away from the space patrol. And that we're on Ganymede. And the boss is going to stay on Saturn now that he's safe from prosecution. How long do we stick on Ganymede? Uh, until the excitement over, the stolen evidence dies down a little. Say, where's the cadet? All right, sitting over there, Mick. He's gone. I told you to watch him. Uh, the space phone. Look in the next room, quickly. And I'm being held on Ganymede, Sector 9J. Hey, Could get away from that space phone. Grab Ganymede, him on this. Sector 9J. Hey. I'll teach you, cadet. Now, watch him after this. That was happy. He was cut off. Sounded to me like somebody hit him. Sector 9J. That pinpoints location, Mr. Noonan. We'll make a slow glide approach and land with the repeller ray. Maybe Chura and Hundley won't hear the ship. <clears throat> All right, cadet. We could keep this out for hours, but I'm tired of playing games with you. Does Commander Corey know who knocked out the space patrol agent? 
Now, come on, answer me. Oh, you're wasting your time, Chura. I'm all for getting rid of the cadet right now. After that space phone call he tried to make a while ago, he's too much of a risk to have around. I'm afraid you're right, Hundley. We'll take him away from the building and use the ray gun on him. Now, let's get at it. Get your hands up, you two. Corey! Commander, you got here just in time. Mr. Noonan put me on the right track, then we heard your space phone call. Chura, where's the Saturn Syndicate evidence? It's where you'll never find it. They put it on an asteroid, sir, somewhere in the asteroid belt, but I couldn't tell you which one. There are thousands of them. Hold on, tie your hands, cadet. Oh, thanks. Oh, look out, Noonan. Too late, Corey! Shoot, Commander! I can't. He's holding Noonan as a shield. So long, Corey! Are you all right, Noonan? I'm sorry, Commander. That's okay. After him, quick. He's locked the door. Hundley, have you got a key to this door? Sorry, Commander. Jura has the only one. Search him. I'll see if I can smash the door. I've got my hands loose now, Commander. I'll help you. All right, happy. Can't find a key on him, Commander. Just this slip. Uh-oh. It's Chura's ship. He's getting away. <laughs> well, we still have you, Hundley. Hey, Mr. Noonan, don't throw that paper away. That's the coordinates of the asteroid. Oh, all right, Cadet. I'll hang on to it. Once more, happy. The door's giving. Ah, there she is. Escort our friend Hundley to the ship. Come on, let's get after Chura. No sign of Chura's ship in the viewscope, sir. Hundley, you must know where he'd be most likely to go. Really, Commander, I haven't the slightest night there. He's probably heading for that asteroid to pick up the evidence. Mr. Noonan, let's see that piece of paper. Here it is, Commander. Yes. These coordinates are for a point somewhere in the asteroid belt. Yes, sir, but the asteroid has moved thousands of DUs by now. Yes, but the time is down here to the second. Oh, you mean the time the coordinates were taken? Yes. So by using the computer, we can tell just where the asteroid will be at any future moment. Commander, look at Hundley. Hey, get away from that computer! Get him, Happy! Uh, uh, All right, Hundley. Quiet down or I'll knock you cold. Look what he did to the computer. Put it completely out of commission. Yeah, now let's see you find Asteroid X. Well, what are we going to do, sir? We can't possibly locate that asteroid until we get another computer. I know. There are thousands of asteroids in that belt. Um, Commander, can I see that piece of paper? All right, Mr. Newman. Mm, 16 degrees, 23 minutes, 7 seconds. Sun Arcturus orientation, 123 million DUs from Sun Center. Commander, I think I can give you the approximate location of that asteroid. You can work out that orbit equation in your head? Already have, sir. If you show me an astrogation chart, I'll mark down the coordinates. Smoking rocket. That's impossible. Nobody could solve an equation like that so quickly. Not in his head. I've seen Mr. Noonan work, Hundley, and I think you're in for a surprise. Here's a chart, Mr. Noonan. Center that asteroid in the viewscope, Happy. Yes, sir. It's the approximate location you gave us, Mr. Noonan. The question is... Is that Asteroid X? Ah, there are hundreds of asteroids in this region. Yeah, but look, there's a spaceship circling it. Hey, it's going to land. Mr. Noonan, it looks as though you pinpointed the right one. Sheer luck. Increase our velocity, Happy. You may be able to catch Chura before he leaves the asteroid. Yes, sir. Mr. Noonan, will you go to the locker and get a couple of spacesuits for Happy and myself? Sure will, Commander. When we land on the asteroid, I'll leave you in the ship to watch Hundley. There's Chura, sir, in that small crater. He'll set down between him and his ship. Cut rockets. Rockets out, sir. Hit repeller ray. Repeller ray on, sir. Landing secured, Commander. All right, Happy. Let's get out there and grab Chura. Mr. Noonan, here's a ray gun. Hold it on our friend Hundley. Very happy to, Commander. He's got the metal box, sir, with the evidence. All right, Chura. Come out of that crater and get into our ship. I'm getting into my own ship, Corey. And you're not going to stop me. All right, we'll see about that. Now, take one more step and I'll use this gun on you. I warned you. Drop that. Oh, that was close. That blast knocked loose a hunk of rock as big as your head. Next time, I'll widen the angle. And I won't miss. Shall we rush him, sir? Don't try it. Move one inch closer, Corey, and you're finished. There's nothing we can do. Back to the ship, Happy. Yes, sir. Well, Commander, isn't there any way we can get him? Just get into the ship. Uh... Close the hatch. Yes, sir. Well, he can't hold out there very long without food and water, sir. Do we just wait? You have to give up eventually. But he destroyed the evidence before he surrendered. I guess there's nothing to do but blast well, off. Turn your transmitter signal to low output so Chura can't hear us. Yes, sir. All set. Hey, Commander, he'll have to pass right by this hatch to get to his own ship. Yes, there's one weapon that might work. 
Right here in this container. Liquid air. But but how is... Unfasten the bracket. Well, yes, sir. Now, as he passes the hatch, open it as quickly as possible. And I'll open the valve and the nozzle. We'll squirt a jet of liquid air at Chura. But what good will that do? Is the pressure strong enough to knock him down? No, but the temperature out there in that asteroid is minus 240 degrees. Liquid air freezes at minus 218. Yeah, but I still don't see... There he is. Open the hatch, Happy. Quickly. Good shot, sir. It's hitting him. I'm trying to spray it over his hand. Hey, Corey, what are you trying to do? Fight with a water pistol? There, I got his hand. Turn it off, Corey, or I'll put a blast charge into your ship. Well, I, I can't raise my arm. That's right, Chura. Your gun hand is encased in a mass of frozen air. Yeah, that'll hold him, Happy. Hey, he's just standing there like a statue. Let's go out and bring him into the ship. He's harmless now. <laughs> well, what's funny, huh? He, he thought he was hot stuff, but now he'll have to be defrosted. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story in just a moment. Say, gang, did you ever hear the robot mastermind work? It's the amazing Space Patrol machine with a mechanical brain. It knows the answer to everything. Uh, listen while I ask it some questions. What's the only hot cereal Buzz Corey ever eats? The hot wheat cereal that helps to supercharge him. Instant Ralston. Right, Instant Ralston. The hot super cereal that helps to supercharge you. And when you want a hot cereal that's really delicious, what do you ask for? Instant Ralston. Right, instant Ralston. And when the morning's cold and you want to warm up your motor... Instant Ralston. Yep, the robot mastermind is right on the beam. So remember, to get supercharged, eat a good breakfast with... Instant Ralston. Hey, the robot mastermind answered for me. Instant Ralston. I, I can't stop it. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. The robot mastermind has the right idea, so get it today. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. Instant Ralston. And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have been locked in a building by two criminals who have blocked their only means of escape by pouring sodium-potassium alloy on the stairs. The liquid metal has burst into flame on contact with the air. Commander, the heat is terrible. We're going to face something worse than heat when the automatic fire extinguishing system starts to work. But, sir, the, the water will put the fire out and we can escape. Not with this alloy, Happy. It burns in air, but when water hits it, it explodes. What? The second that spray starts working, this whole building will be blown to bits. Smoking rockets, unless we find a way out, that means we'll be blown to bits, too. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Lady from Venus, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! <laughs> now, gang, a word from Commander Buzz Corey. Can you answer this question? What group of boys and girls are doing all they can to get grown-ups to donate more blood? These boys and girls are helping their country and having fun, too. They're my Space Patrol blood boosters. And I'd like you to join them today, right now. And here's something else I'd like you to do, too. Tell your mom and pop to buy the Christmas seals that the National Tuberculosis Association mails out. Christmas seals help fight TB. Now just think, TB kills one person every 17 and a half minutes. So join the fight. Buy the beautiful Christmas seals of the National Tuberculosis Association. <laughs> Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. 
travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are approaching a building where the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, is held captive. Suddenly, they become aware of a painful, tingling sensation and a ringing in their ears. It's hard to walk. It feels like a big weight on me. Yeah, I can hardly move. Happy. Nora's using some kind of a ray on us. A paralyzer ray? Oh, it's worse than that. We're in an ultrasonic beam. Run back to the ship. Get out of its range quickly. I, I can't. I... Happy, get up. Nira, I'll help you. I can't even crawl. I... My head is a thousand needles in it. If we don't get out of that beam, it'll shake us to pieces. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Sleepwalker. And now, gang, here's some terrific news. Here's how to get a pair of the Space Patrol space binoculars, the most unusual binoculars ever designed. You wear them like official outer space headgear. That's right, a strong elastic band holds them snugly to your eyes, leaving your hands absolutely free. Now, these are not flimsy celluloid goggles, not a mask. They're the real McCoy. Big, full-size, solid plastic binoculars you can see way off in the distance with. Overall, they're a complete five inches in width, a complete five inches in length. And when you wear them, they stand out a full three and a half inches from your eyes. Powerful? Ah, you bet. These are four power binoculars with four fixed focus, pure lucite lenses. You can spot airplanes in the sky, watch for your dad coming home from work, read signs way off in the distance. Truly, the greatest space patrol value in all our experience. The most sensational offer we have ever made. Now, here's how to get a pair. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. If you don't agree that your space binoculars are absolutely tops, return them and the Ralston Company will cheerfully refund your money. The address again is Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Two hours ago in the Neptune City office of Interplanetary Transport Service, a small white light on a control panel flickered and changed to red. A few seconds later, the traffic supervisor of the big private passenger service clicked on his spaceophone. Space Patrol Search Command. This is the Interplanetary Transport Service, Neptune Office. Our ITS passenger ship N-157 is overdue on two quarter-hour message to base reports. This ship last reported at 1745 Universal Star Time on regular Terra Neptune space lane. 900,000 DUs out of Neptune and has not reported to Space Control Terra. This office requests... Within minutes, Space Patrol search. search command ships fanned out from Neptune, sensitive view scopes scanning space for the missing passenger ship. Ninety minutes later, in Commander Corey's central office on Terra, Cadet Happy sits before a spaceophone, tensely waiting a report from Neptune. Happy. Nothing new so far, sir. Uh, cut down the amplifier, huh? Thanks. I've just got a report from the communications center from a space patrol search unit. They found the N-157 out beyond the Neptune orbit. What was wrong, Commander? Passengers and crew had been mysteriously put to sleep. To sleep? Why? To cover a robbery, it seems. Well, was the thief still aboard? No, we don't know yet. Chances are he was working with a confederate who met the passenger ship out in space and took the thief aboard. But we know what's missing. One of the passengers who was the first to revive is making quite a disturbance about it. Can't say that I blame him. He lost half a million credits. Half a million? Wow. Well, that's partly his own fault. He had them packed in an ordinary suitcase and didn't even ask for a guard. Well, why in the universe was he carrying that much money around? He's a space construction contractor named Reese Bixby. He took over the government artificial satellite job after the other contracting firm defaulted. Oh, yeah. He's the man who boasted he could finish the satellites within six months. He can probably do it, too. Mm. Fortunately, he's a much better space engineer than he was a guard of his money. Well, the money isn't hit aboard the ship then, huh? Apparently not. ship has been searched. The only clue so far is that two passengers are missing. We don't know who they are until all the passengers revive, so interplanetary transport can check the passenger list. And then we'll know who's missing and who took the money. Unless the thieves were traveling under assumed names, which they probably were. 
to me, this looks like the work of the sleepwalker. Oh, the crook who's been stealing plant payrolls by putting people to sleep. Right. But up till now, at least he hasn't committed any other form of robbery. Yeah, it seems that this sleepwalker walks in other people's sleep. Yeah, that he does. In a planetary transport service, Neptune office calling Commander Corey, Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra. Corey here, go ahead. Well, this is interplanetary traffic supervisor Jenkins, Commander. The two missing passengers are a man and a woman. The man is listed on the roster as William Knight. And the woman? Uh, my assistant is checking the names now, Commander. You hurry with that, please? William Knight. Make a note of that, Happy. Yes, sir. I have the other name, Commander. Oh, I can't believe this. What is it, Jenkins? The missing woman is the, the Secretary General's daughter, Carol Carlisle. What? It was on the amended passenger list, a last-minute change transmitted from Terra, which is why we were so long in finding out. Jenkins, stand by for further instructions. Yes, Commander. Happy, get the ship ready. We're blasting off for Neptune immediately. I wish we'd get a report from the Neptune Search Command, sir. Well, by this time, the other ship could be thousands of DUs away, huh? Yeah, and we haven't the slightest idea of what kind of ship to look Carol for. Carol shouldn't have made a trip without notifying the Space Patrol. Carol calling Cal- Commander Corey. Carol calling Commander Corey. In the miniature space phone channel. Carol, thank goodness you're safe. Oh, Buzz, I was taken off of a passenger ship inside the Neptune orbit. Yes, we know that. Happy and I are headed for Neptune now. Where are you? In the aft compartment of a private cruiser, Class C. Do you know the registry number? Yes, it's PCV-85. I got a look at it when it joined airlocks with the passenger ship. Then you weren't affected by the sleep gas. No, I was in my compartment. When I came out, a man grabbed me and forced me near the other ship. Well, what man? What's his name? Well, he was one of the passengers. His partner calls him Woody. Woody Knorr. Who's his partner? He was piloting a private cruiser. His name is Bob Morgan. You know where they're taking you? No, all I know is... Buzz, someone's coming. Hide your miniature space phone, Carol, but leave it on. Corey, out. I've changed vector toward their position, sir. Good, happy. Increase our acceleration to four Gs. Came in to have a little chat with you, miss. What's your name? You mean you don't know? Why should we? It was the money we were after. Yeah, it's too bad you weren't in the lounge with the rest of the passengers. Or maybe it's a good thing. How would you like to join up with us? Yeah, we can make it very profitable for you. Nice-looking kid like you would go far in our organization. Why, of all the insulting... <clears throat> Oh, you want to play rough, huh? Well, I'll be glad to oblige you. Let go of me. Let her alone, Morgan. Just get her identification. No dame's going to slap me and get away with it. Hand me her purse. Oh, all right, Woody. Hey, hey, look at that bracelet on her arm. Jupiter Emeralds. I'll bet they'd bring in a few credits. She must be some big shot's daughter. <laughs> I've changed my mind, Woody. This dame is an extra bonus. Shut up, Morgan. Do you know who we got here? It's the Secretary General's daughter, Carol. Of all the passengers in that ship, we had to grip the one who could give us the most trouble. Let's go back and take her out front so we can watch her every second. They left the compartment. You hear the sound of their rockets in the spacer phone. The ship will be easier to follow on our viewscope finder. I've got a rough three-point fix on their trajectory. If they keep on that vector, it'll bring them close to Venus. Got to cut down the distance between their ship and ours. If we don't get them in the viewscope before they land and cut their rockets, we'll lose them. Morgan, send her down. It's Venus. By the looks of the landscape, we're near the southwest sea, close to the Tycho Mountains. That's right, Miss Carlyle. Nobody will ever find this hideout. Cut your rockets, Morgan, and don't overshoot the rocket port. You take the money. I'll handle the girl. Come on, we got to decide what to do with you. All right. Just sit down and relax, miss. Yeah, you can watch us count the money. (laughs) We got to reach a decision and right away. What do you suggest? Well, we can't keep her here and we can't turn her loose. She knows too much. That leaves only one thing. Do away with it. Yeah. But so far, we never had to resort to anything so drastic. That's our own fault. My fault? And just how do you figure that? You just keep out of this. Just leave it to a woman to spoil a man's perfect record of crime without violence. 
me. Woody Nord, the sleepwalker. I pulled off dozens of robberies and never even had to slug anybody. I've got it. You can take some of this money and hire somebody else to take care of it. Morgan, have you no code of ethics? The principle is the same. Ethics. Hey, listen. The spaceship. It's a space patrol ship. It's Terra 5, Commander Corey ship. Blast him. How did he train us here? What are we going to do? Take it easy. I'll turn on the ultrasonic beam. Well, what will that do? Just one. I got a scanning device on the roof. It revolves slowly. And when a beam is interrupted by a moving object, ultrasonic waves are focused on it. Ultrasonic waves? What do they do? Well, first they affect the nervous system. They paralyze any living thing within range. The more the victim moves, the more intense the vibration becomes. There is no escape. Oh, no. Finally, the vibration acts on the flesh like a million tiny scalpels. I won't use it, except that I'm forced to in self-defense. Stop showing how much you know. Let's get this over with. All right. Come to the window if you'd like to watch. I thought I saw somebody at the window up there in the hideout, Commander. They've seen us. Keep your ray gun and that's horse for happy. Suppose they start firing at us. You may be taking them by surprise. If not... Well, what he knows has never used physical violence before in his other crimes. Let's hope he doesn't start now. If you come up here ready to shoot, he may get panicky and harm Carol. Probably figures his own best chance is to... Hey, Commander, I I feel sort of funny. So do I. I. A tingling sensation. There's a ringing in my ears. Do you notice it? Yes. It's not exactly a sound, yet... Hey, is, is this a pill or something? It's hard to walk. It feels like a big weight was put on me. I can hardly move. Happy. Nor is using some sort of ray on us. A paralyzer ray. What's oh, worse than that? Look up there on the roof. See that big metal cone? It's following us. We're in an ultrasonic beam. Get back to the ship, Happy. Get out of its range quickly. Happy, get up. In here, I'll help you. Oh. Commander, I can't even crawl. My head, it feels like it's got a thousand needles in it. If we don't get out of this beam, it's going to shake us to pieces. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, listen to this. Poor old motor. It's got nothing to go on but ordinary fuel. I say, but listen to this. Wow, there's a motor that's supercharged. Got super fuel in it, that's why... Now, gang, you know the same is true of you. When you have ordinary fuel for breakfast, what are you? Just a putt-putt. But when you have super fuel for breakfast, well, that's when you can be a super somebody because you're supercharged. So, gang, eat the super fuel Buzz Corey has in the morning. A power breakfast with wheat checks or rice checks, the bite-sized super cereals. Good? Ah, wait till you try them. The swellest tasting cereals in the universe. And the only cereals in the universe with that modern bite-sized design. So don't be a putt-putt. Be a super somebody. Eat a breakfast that supercharges you. A power breakfast with the super cereals Rice Chex and Wheat Chex. Woody Knorr and Bob Morgan have stolen a half million United Planets credits from a passenger ship and abducted the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, because she was the only person aboard the spaceship who could identify them. However, Buzz and Happy were able to follow the thieves' spaceship by tracing through Carol's miniature spaceophone. As the commander and his cadet walked toward Knorr's hideout on Venus, Knorr turned on an ultrasonic beam. The beam could first paralyze and then destroy them. Right now, barely able to move, Buzz and Happy lie on the ground as the high-frequency sound vibrations rack them with pain. Maybe, maybe we can roll away from the beam, sir. It's getting more intense. In a few seconds, we'll be completely paralyzed. Our, our ray guns, maybe we could hit the cone. Our ray guns wouldn't affect it. Wait a minute. That cone tracked us, followed us. Yes, sir. It must be controlled by an electric eye. If we can blind that eye. Blind it? You mean throw something at it? No, our atomolites. Shine your atomolite on the round unit on top of the cone. I'll use mine, too. If, if I can move my arm. We've got to, Abby. Quickly, while we're able to move at all. I, I'm getting it good. 
My hand is shaking so much, I, I can't hold the beam steady. It's working, though. My beam's in focus. Yeah, I've got it, sir. The cone's turning all around, back and forth and up and down. Yeah, we've confused it. Keep your atomo light on it, though. It'll find us again. Can you get up, Happy? I'm pretty shaky, but I'll try it. Keep your light steady. That's it. Wow. I'm as wobbly as a burned-out rocket. Come on. we got to get in there before Noah thinks up something else. This time we won't hesitate to use our ray guns. They're getting up. You might as well give up. Buzz and Happy are more than a match for you two. Shut up. We're not two yet. Morgan, you hold him off. I'll take the girl into money. We'll slip out the back way. Oh, sure. Leave me to face the music alone. Nothing doing. Well, we both can't get away. And if I have the girl, I can force Corey to let you go. How do I know you'll do it? Don't argue, you fool. Corey and the cadet are pretty shaky from the sonic beams. You can handle them. I'll take Corey's ship, and when you get out, you take mine. There they are. Hold them off. All right, miss. Let's go. Come on. Stop it. Let go of me. Oh, it's coming. Hey, Woody, you got a ray gun. Now, use that iron bar and lock this door behind us. Once more, Happy. <laughs> that did it. Wow, I'm so weak, I can hardly stand. Take it easy, Happy. They're probably hiding down this hallway. Hey, I think I hear somebody in this room, sir. I'll open the door. You cover me from the side. Yes, sir. Empty. Mm. Try the next one. Oh, happy. I'll continue searching the house. You go out and see if there's a back door. They may try to speak. Smoke and rockets were too late. They made it to their ship. Their ship, nothing. Look out the window. Terra 5, they took our ship. Then we'll take theirs. I don't think you will. Commander, look out. <coughs> Why, you... Give me that bar. Stand back. Oh, shoulder. Next time it'll be your head, just like the commander got, only not so easy. All right, now I'll take those guns. No. Hey, the commander's hurt bad. He'll be all right. Well, Cadet, let's carry out the commander's order. Huh? He wanted to get in our ship, so pick him up. Come on, you're going to have to carry him. Morgan to Nor. Morgan calling Nor. Nor here? What happened? Everything worked out fine. I have two passengers. They're uh, resting secured back aft. Ah, good work, Morgan. You blasted off without any difficulty, then. A little. Everything's fine now. What's next? Say, if we're going to talk business, switch over to the scramble circuit. Okay. Go ahead. Well, we'll rendezvous near the uncompleted artificial satellite. What about our passengers? Well, unload yours on the satellite in spacesuits and without the jetpacks. Then I'll transfer to our ship. What about the girl? I'll leave her in Terra 5. All comfortable and secure, except for one little thing. All right, Corey, cadet. Get into the airlock. You aren't going to drop us off in empty space. If I was going to do that, I wouldn't have shut off the rocket. When you open the outer hatch, you'll step right off onto the unfinished artificial satellite, the one swinging around Venus. What about Carol? Is Nora going to leave her with us? She won't be far away. Now get out. Close your helmets and step out. I want to know what you're going to do with Carol. You're going to get a blast of this ray gun if you don't move. I'll tell you about Carol when you're outside the ship. There's Terra 5, sir. But why is Nor stopping it so far from the satellite? Happy, stand clear of Morgan's ship. I think he's getting ready to blast away from the space platform. That's right, Corey. It's going to pick up Nor and we'll be on our way. What about Carol? We're leaving her in Terra 5, several hundred yards away. But we're leaving a time bomb in the ship with her. What good is that going to do you? If the ship's destroyed, there'll be no chance of it being sighted by another ship. No one will look for you, too, on this unfinished space platform. Not for weeks. Why can't you give Carol a chance? Put her here with us. Wouldn't you prefer to have her go quickly instead of suffering from hunger and thirst? Besides, Nora and I like to think of you two watching, waiting for that explosion. <laughs> It'll give you something to think about while you wait for your own finish. Nora's ship is nearly out of sight, sir. Yes, the contemptible cowards. And there's Terra 5, so close, and yet it might as well be several DUs away for all we can do about it. Commander, this is Woody Nora. With just a final fond word of farewell. Nora, listen. Did you really leave a bomb in our ship? Well, you just wait and see. Uh, incidentally, I can barely hear your signal from the spacesuit transmitter. I doubt that a spaceship could hear you or reach you in time to save the girl. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't forget to keep your magnetic boots turned on full or you'll float off into nowhere. 
Uh, goodbye, Commander. No, right. Oh, the dirty rats. We're about as far from the regular space lanes as we could be. Yeah, that's why the satellite is being built here. Well, if we only had our jetpacks. But here we are with no way of moving off this platform in a set direction. Sitting here in a scrap pile of tied-down metal, waiting for that bomb... Abby, to... wait a minute. That's not a scrap pile, not to us. It's rocket fuel. Rocket fuel? Why, it's just chunks of metal. Uh-huh. Here's a big, broad plate of endurium. That'll serve as a space raft. Space raft? Get busy and pile some of these scraps on the plate. Well, sure, sir, but I don't get it. They're going to make a man-powered rocket. A man-powered rocket? Remember that summer on Lake Azure when you stood up in the canoe and threw a rock at a leaping fish? Do I? I went over backwards out of the canoe into the lake. Exactly. You demonstrated Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Sure. That's the principle that rockets and all spaceships operate on. Right. Spaceship moves forward because molecules of fuel are forced out of the rocket engines. This big flat endurium plate is our ship. You and I are the engines, and these chunks of metal are the fuel. Hey, I get it. We toss the chunks off our raft in the opposite direction from where we want to go. Right. Let's get busy. Don't know how much time we've got left. There. That's enough scrap metal, Happy. Get on the raft and brace yourself firmly. Yes, sir. Now, let's throw together and smoothly or we'll zigzag. Now, give us a start by pushing away from the satellite with my hand. Make sure your magnetic boots are firm on the raft or you'll be in trouble. We're moving. Hey, just like pushing away from a pier in a boat. It's not very fast, but we'll gain speed. Now, start throwing. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> It's not going much faster. No, but with each throw, he gain acceleration. One, two, three. One, two, three. Gee, sir, look how close we are to the ship. Yes, but we're not heading for the airlock. Throw off the right corner this time. That'll turn it. One, two, three. Yeah, that heads are right, sir. Yeah, we can stop now. The raft will coast at this velocity. We don't want to hit the ship too hard. It's going to be quite a bump as it is. If that bomb goes off now, it's just too bad for all three of us. Brace yourself, Happy. Oh. Wow. All right, open the outer hatch. Let's hurry. Now, quickly into the airlock. Now, close it so we don't let the air out of the ship. Into the ship. Carol. Carol, where's the bomb? Open your faceplate, Happy. She can't hear you. Oh, oh but... Happy. Oh, where's the bomb? It's in the next compartment. I've been trying to get loose from these ropes. I'll get it. Here it is. You want to heave it out the airlock, sir? That won't be necessary, Happy. I've cut off the tie mechanism. Oh, what a relief. I've been lying here expecting every second to be the last. Well, now we've got to get Nor and Morgan. Do you have any idea where they're headed? Oh, I remember Woody Nor saying something about taking part of the money to a place in Lowell City on Mars. Do you remember where in Lowell City? Well, uh, let me see. I, I, I think I can, but oh, I, I'm so upset right now. All but... right, Carol, you relax. Happy now, blast off for Lowell City. All right, pull the surface car up here, Morgan. Okay. Now, Lowell City sure looks good to me. Hey, you sure this guy can get rid of these credits for us without getting caught? Oh, yeah. He's got a perfect setup. He spreads the stolen credits among the bank's funds. Gives us other money for the hot stuff. Less than percent for his services. Okay, let's get out of the car. I'll bring the loot. Help you with your luggage, gentlemen? Glory. Uh, uh, run for it, Margaret. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, let go of me. This one's for that sonic beam. If that's a gun you're reaching for, drop it. Uh, uh, uh. I've got Morgan, sir. Hang on to him, Happy. Get up, Noir, on your feet. All right, all right. Don't need me anymore. You got off that space platform, but how? Didn't the ship explode? No. We got to the bomb about two minutes before it was set to go off. Somebody rescued you. It's impossible. There wasn't a ship near enough to get you in time. No living person could help you off that satellite. Yeah, you're right, Noir. No living person did. But somebody did help us. One of the greatest scientists who ever lived. A man whose name was... Sir Isaac Newton. An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. But first, this is your commander... Cadet Happy. ...and Captain Dick Tufel, gang. We're going to tell you how to get a pair of those sensational new Space Patrol space binoculars that you can see way off in the distance with. 
Now remember, you don't have to hold these binoculars up to your eyes. You wear them on your head like outer space headgear. They're form-fitted to your eyes, and a strong elastic band holds them snugly on. Now, these are not flimsy little celluloid goggles or a mask. They're real, full-size, four-power binoculars with four pure lucite lenses. Real binoculars, five inches long, five inches wide, made out of solid black plastic with a bright red leather-like trimming. And when you wear them, these big, handsome space binoculars stand out from your eyes a full three and a half inches. Remember, these are four-power binoculars. This means they make objects way off in the distance look four times closer. You can spot airplanes in the sky, boats on the water, far-off objects on land. Your space binoculars will smallify, too. Yes, sir, when you reverse them, they make things look real little and far away. Lots of fun, right, Hap? You bet. And boy, oh boy, these binoculars have that real outer space look. Gosh, when people see you wearing your space binoculars, why, they'll think you just stepped out of a rocket ship from Mars. Gang, send for these valuable Space Patrol space binoculars today. Without a doubt, the greatest value we have ever offered on Space Patrol. To get a pair, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in USA and may be withdrawn at any time. If you don't think your space binoculars are really tops, return them and the Ralston Company will refund your money without question. That's Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. A strange fever, the wandering fever, has struck the planet Neptune, and people are leaving by the thousands. Happy, who's been on Neptune with the commander, has caught this strange fever and taken off alone in a spaceship. As he flies under the influence of the fever, he mutters to himself and is unable to heed the voice of Commander Corey coming over the ship's spaceophone receiver. It's beautiful out here in space. All the planets of the solar system and the stars beyond. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy. Listen, Happy. There's that voice again. Over and over. So far away. So far away. Happy, this is urgent. Listen. The ship you're flying has no landing control unit. Oh, why don't I go to Pluto? Yes. Yes, I'll head for Pluto. Happy, listen to me. You're in serious danger. If you try to land that ship, you'll crash. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Deserted Planet, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer, Virginia Hewitt, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again presents the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC TV station. Consult your paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have conceived an extremely daring and dangerous plan to surprise two criminals who are holding Carol captive in the Martian hills. Right now, they're nearing the hideout in a small atmosphere ship. We're getting closer. Fasten your safety belt, Happy. Here's where we intentionally develop power failure. I'm all set, sir. Hang on. About to make the worst landing of my career. That ground's coming up awfully fast, Commander. Got to make this look like a disastrous crash. Okay, but it's beginning to look too realistic. Now brace yourself. 
It's beginning to look like the real thing to me, too. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, Crash Landing. Yes, it's Space Patrol, but first, a direct broadcast from the yard of public school number 10 on the planet Terra. It's recess here, gang, and I've got my eye on a fast-moving boy named Jeff Fisher. Man, is he supercharged. Hey, Jeff, come on over here and tell the gang how you get supercharged every morning. I just do it the way Buzz Corey does it. I ate a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal, like Rice Chex. Rice Chex? Say, that Rice Chex is real swell eating, right? I'll say, and it's bite-sized, too. Only bite-sized rice cereal in the universe. Only rice cereal for me, boy. It's plenty keen. You betcha. So, boys and girls, don't you think it's about time you tried Rice Chex? Remember, to think fast, to act fast, you have to eat a breakfast that supercharges you. A power breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal. So today, make it Rice Chex, the delicious bite-sized super cereal that helps to supercharge you. For several weeks, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have been on the planet Venus, conducting an undercover investigation into a plot to defraud the United Planets government and Venus businessmen. Now, in civilian clothes, Buzz and Happy are in a surface car in Venus City, headed for the Venus City spaceport. Between them is a sealed pouch containing the results of their intensive work. There's a private space cruiser waiting for us just inside the east gate. Well, sir, do you think Vio knows that you've been investigating him personally? Uh, I can't be sure, but by using private ships instead of Terra 5 or other official ships, we stand a good chance of not being detected. Well, it sure was a bad break running into Carol last night in the lobby of the Venus Hotel. Well, luckily, I don't think anyone overheard when she called out our names. I looked around very carefully. You told her why we were in civilian clothes. Mm-hmm. She may be able to help us now that she knows the facts. Yeah, it looks like we picked a good time to blast off from Venus, Commander. The whole east end of the spaceport is deserted. We're in luck, Mr. Veal. Corey's car is the only one on the side road. Well, we'll need a lot more luck to get that evidence away from him. That's a break for us that he picked this deserted end of the port. Speed on, Bob. We can pass him before he gets to the gate. And then inside the gate, I make a quick turn, slam on the brakes, and you tumble out of the truck. Yeah. Chances are Corey won't suspect anything when he sees that this is a regular space patrol maintenance truck. They're usually in a hurry anyhow. Pour on the power, Bob. behind us, sir. They're blinking their lights to pass. By the way they're closing in, they must be in a hurry. Slow down a little and pull over. Yes, sir. Be on your guard in case they try anything. Wow, that guy drives like a maniac. Did you see him whiz past us? It's a maintenance truck. Yeah, I'll bet the driver's another one of those washed-out space pilots. They always drive like they're sore at the universe. Hey, look at him barrel through that gate. Commander, the fool's gonna turn. Abby, stop. Somebody fell out of the truck. Smoking rockets. What a spill. He turned so fast it tossed the other guy out. At least the driver stopped. Come on, Hap, let's see if the man's hurt. Yes, sir. There's no excuse for that kind of driving. It's lucky we weren't going much faster. We might have run over him, Commander. I dropped the Commander, Hap. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot. Hey, the fall must have knocked him cold. I'll turn him over gently. Okay. <clears throat> he didn't know I was going to turn. I slammed on the brakes just as he pitched out of the truck. Yes, I saw it. His head doesn't seem to be injured. I hope there are no bones broken. Well, let's have a look at him. It's none of my business, friend, but you shouldn't make a turn at that speed. Yes, I, I know. I, I was in a hurry to get to the other end of the uh, spaceport. Uh, my leg. Hey, just take it easy now. You'll be all right. Now, don't move. Let's have a look at that leg. Uh, yeah. Have a good look. Hey, put down that wrench. Oh. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Grab you're... the cadet deal. I got him. Slug him, Henry. Let go of me. Uh, hurry. Get to the surface car and grab the evidence. Okay. And there is a dispatch case in the seat of the car. That must be it. Take a look in the back, just in case. We went to get all of it. Uh, there's nothing back there, Bill. All right, come on. Let's get to the truck. I look down the road. Here comes another surface car. Uh, it's headed right for the gate. We'd better get the truck rolling before they get here and start asking questions. Oh, we won't stand a chance in that truck. Let's take a spaceship. Huh? Hurry. We can blast off before the car gets here. Happy. Happy. Oh, 
Oh, my head. Half our, our car and their truck are still here, but our spaceship is gone. I thought I heard a blast off, but I figured it was inside my head. I heard oh. another car approach, but didn't come through the gate. It must have turned down the road paralleling the fence. Hey, the evidence, sir. Did they get it? Yes, it's not here. I guess our undercover work wasn't so undercover after all. That must have been Vio, and he and his partner have taken our private cruiser. Well, maybe we can get another ship and blast off after them. First, let's go to local headquarters and spread an alarm. You drive that truck, and I'll take a surface car. Commander, an all-planet space patrol bulletin on Vio is being spaceophone now. Good. I hope our units can intercept him before he has a chance to change ships. We aren't going to stay here at Venus City headquarters, are we, sir? All right now, there's nothing we can do that the search units can't handle. Besides, I want to investigate this gadget we found in the truck Vio was using. Oh, that funny-looking electrical device. What is it? It's a stimutron. A stimu what? Stimutron. It's a high-frequency electrotherapy machine used to treat advanced cases of venous fever. Oh, you mean the blood condition that some people get from being in the venous swamps too long? Yes. This machine is the only successful cure. There are only about six stimutrons in the, in the solar system, all in hospitals or clinics. No private individual has one. Well, then what was this one doing in the truck? Stolen, probably. Stolen by someone who needs the treatments and who doesn't dare go to a regular hospital. You mean Vio has venous fever? Or one of his gang. I'm notifying all doctors to report anyone applying for Stimutron treatment. Hmm. Well, uh, didn't Vio spend a lot of time around those Zyrola plantations in the swamps uh, arranging crooked deals? Yes. If he's got venous fever, he made a bad bargain when he traded that evidence for the Stimutron. Oh, by the way, sir, did you get that message from Carol? Yes, she called two hours ago. I guess she thought we'd be on our way to Mercury by now. But she checked out of the hotel. I just contacted the manager. Checked out? I thought she was going to stay here a week. I guess she suddenly changed her mind. She left orders for the hotel to forward her luggage to Mercury. They don't have any idea where she is. Well, I wonder why she decided to go to Mercury all of a sudden. Well, I hope it isn't her plan to follow us. Well, if it is, she's going to get a surprise when she lands on Mercury and finds out that we aren't there. We'll be on Mars in a couple of hours, Mr. Veal. That was a great idea of yours, taking Corey's space cruiser. Well, I've been checking over this evidence, Corey Catterd. You know, if this ever got to court, I'd be finished. Well, there's nothing to worry about now. All we've got to do is lay low... Henry! Oh, no. What's the matter, Mr. Veal? Oh, the Stimutron. I left it in the truck. Oh, oh. oh, well, there's probably one in Lowell City Clinic on Mars. I can't just walk into the clinic with every space patrolman in the universe looking for me. I got to have those treatments. You know what that Venus fever does to me. Makes me helpless as a baby. Well, what are we going to do? We can't go back to Venus. Of course not. Henry, this is awful. I, uh, listen. What? I thought I heard the compartment door close back out. Oh, you're just nervous. Relax, Mr. Veal. You'll think of a way to get those treatments. Yeah, sure, sure. I got to. I just got to. Buzz, Happy, I hope you won't be angry. What are you doing aboard? Well, I... I thought Mr. this Veal, was... Mr. Veal, it's the girl we saw at the hotel talking... Hey, shut up, Henry. All right, miss. What are you doing aboard our ship? Your ship? This is Commander Corey's ship, Mr. Veal. Oh, you know who I am. You have the advantage of me, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Carlyle. Carol Carlyle. The Secretary General's daughter. That's right, and I demand you return this ship to Venus immediately. Uh, that's impossible. We can't keep her with us, Mr. Beale. She's dynamite. The smartest thing for us to do is drop her off somewhere and be sure she's safe. Yes, I know. You're right, Henry. But if we do, we're running a good chance of being captured. Why did you have to spoil everything by being aboard? I had some information to give Commander Corey about you, Mr. Vio, and your friend Bob Henry. I was going to tell them where they could find you. Well, your attempt at playing detective has put you in a delicate position, and me in a dangerous one. Can't let anything happen to her, Mr. Vio. I'd say it's worth the risk to see she's returned safely. Wait a minute. Maybe this is a break for us after all. Yeah, some break. We can get this girl off our ends and still have a chance to avoid being captured. Henry... We'll go on to my hideout on Mars. I know how we can contact Corey without the risk of being captured. Commander, communications picked up Carol's voice on spacephone channel 87. What? Yeah, it's being taped, sir. Channel 87. Perfectly the, safe. The, I can't tell you where I am, but Don Veal and Bob Henry intend to release me. That's her, sir. This is Don Veal, Commander. Veal's got her. Don't try to contact me. Just listen. I've got Carol Carlisle... But it's her fault, not mine. That's true. I was aboard your private cruiser at Venus City Spaceport. After the ship blasted off, I came out to give you some information about Vio and found him and Bob Henry at the controls. Just keep listening, Corey. Carol's voice and mine are on a micro tape. 
automatically repeated from a robot-controlled rocket. It won't do you any good to locate a rocket. He's a tricky crook, all right. Get this, Corey. I want to get Carol off my hands. All I ask is a break. I've got Venus fever. If I don't get that stimatron back, I'm finished. Here's my proposition. Put a man in a spacesuit and drop him off in space at a point which I will give you in a moment. Withdraw your ship 10,000 DUs and wait two hours. I will pick up the stimutron from your agent and leave Carol near him. Also in a spacesuit, of course. Now get this. Carol's suit will be equipped with a cartridge that can be exploded by an electronic signal from my ship. Why, that space try it, Happy. If any attempt is made by your men to space a phone, you, before the two-hour limit is up, I'll detonate the cartridge. Now, here's the point to drop off your men. Write this down, Happy. Yes, sir. Sector 4, Jupiter orbit, at intersection of Celestial Meridian 22, Sun ecliptic angle 2 degrees, 23 minutes, 15.84 seconds. Got it, sir. If you agree to these terms, space a phone your answer on 139 megacycles. I'll be listening. Stand by for a repeat of this tape. VO out. I'll cut it, Happy. The tape is on automatic rewind. What are you going to do, Commander? Give him the stimutron? Of course. I want VO, but I want him alive. When we get Carol back safely, we can go after VO with everything we've got. Switch to 139 megacycles, Happy. As I computed, Happy, this is the location VO specified. I'll reverse rockets and stop the ship. Right, sir. I'll get into my spacesuit. Now, there's the stimutron. What about that gadget I'm supposed to attach to VO's ship? Oh, right here. Well, it's a miniature spacophone transmitter. Uh Uh-huh. With a magnetic attachment to hold it to the hull of the ship. It's set to start sending a signal two hours after it's fastened to the ship. All right, into the airlock, Happy. Don't waste your spacesuit transmitter until I contact you. Remember that explosive cartridge in Carol's suit. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Cadet Happy. Come in, Happy. Happy to Commander Corey. Are the two hours up? Yes. Did B.O. show up? Yes, sir. Everything worked fine. He dropped Carol out quite a distance from me, and I've been using my jetpack to get over to her. Is she all right? I don't know, sir. She hasn't moved. She's just floating. I haven't been able to contact her by space or phone. I'll come and pick both of you up. I've reached her now, sir. I, uh, why, that sneaking crook. What's the matter, Happy? Carol isn't here, Commander. The space suit is empty. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Hey, you want to have some fun, gang? Listen to this jet cycle. Why, it's just a putt-putt, that's all it is, because all it has to go on is ordinary fuel. But pour in some super fuel and then see what happens. That jet cycle is supercharged now. Yes, sir, when it comes to supercharging, there's only one answer, super fuel. And the same thing holds true for you, especially in the morning when you haven't eaten for hours. To really get going, you have to get supercharged. Now, here's Buzz Corey's way of doing that. He eats a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals. And boy, oh boy, you ought to see how the commander dives into that checks. Yes, sir, gang, checks are really good. They're so good, you grab the biggest bowl you can find, you shake in the checks, pour on the milk, sprinkle on the sugar, and that's it. You're eating the best tasting cereal in the universe. And to make a good thing even better, rice checks and wheat checks have that modern bite size design for easy eating. Zip, zip, zip. That's how easy it is to eat checks. Now remember, gang, a rip roaring breakfast with checks is Buzz Corey's way of getting supercharged. So get going in the morning the way he does. Get out a big bowl and fill it with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have followed to the letter the agreement with Don Vio, who promised to return the Secretary General's daughter Carol at a prearranged point in the Jupiter orbit. But instead of Carol, Vio pushed an empty spacesuit out of his ship. The commander has arrived at the scene of the rendezvous, and Happy, now aboard the commander's ship, is removing his spacesuit. 
That double-crossing, underhanded space rat. Well, Veal is all of that, but now we've got to help Carol. He must have done something to her, and now he's got the stimutron. He's also got a miniature spacerphone attached to his ship. Hey, that's right. Do you think we can pick up the signal yet? Now turn on our receiver. Hey, it's working, sir. Now we can track him down. Yes, we've got to be careful. As long as Carol's in his hands, we can't take a chance in closing in on him. <laughs> oh, doggone it. Cosmic ray interference. See if you can filter it out, Happy. Yes, sir. All the times for that to happen. Well, it seems to be getting worse. We'll keep on this, Vector. Maybe we'll pick up the signal again. I got it, Henry. The steamer for... Oh, good. Any trouble? No, not a bit. Corey and the cadet were as good as their word. Have you found Carol yet? No. Frankly, I haven't looked. She was stupid enough to crawl out the back room window, let her take the consequences. Uh, don't you understand? If she's not found, we'll have to take the consequences. Oh, well, all right, Mr. Veal. Come on. We'll look for her. No. You look for her. I got to hook up the Stimutron and take a treatment. I'm getting an attack of venous fever. The interference is gone, sir. And I've got a fix on the signal. Good. It's coming from the direction of Mars, and the source is stationary. Then Vio has landed. We'll head for Mars and locate the ship. I've got it, sir. The ship's down in the Tharsis Hills. Let's scan the terrain with the viewscope, Happy. Yes, sir. There's the ship. Shall we come in lower, sir? No, not in this ship. We can't let Vio know we've located him. How about notifying other units and swoop in quick and surround him? Remember, for all we know, Carol's still safe. If Vio's cornered, there's no telling what he might do to her. Uh, well, then we're stymied. No, not quite. There's one way we can land a ship fairly close to his hideout without making him suspicious. What's that, sir? Commercial atmosphere ships fly over this part of Mars. So we'll head for Lowell City and borrow one. Well, wouldn't Vio get suspicious if a commercial ship landed in that deserted section? Sure. If it was an ordinary landing... That's why I'm going to space a phone ahead and order a couple of crash suits. Crash suits? Uh-huh. We're going to stage an accident right in Vio's front yard. Carol! Miss Carol, I see you. Don't try to get away. Come here. You little fool. Where do you think you're going? I, I thought I could get to a relay station. There isn't one for miles. Besides, you're heading the wrong direction. Now, come back to the shack. And if I refuse? Then I'll carry you back. Why don't you be sensible? When the sun goes down, you'll freeze out here. What was the idea of running away in the first place? Vio was going to return you to Corey. I don't trust him. Well, one thing's certain. You won't survive the night out here in this hill. So you might as well trust us. It's to our advantage now to get you back safely. Well, all right. Well, now you're showing some good sense for a change. Getting close, sir. Yes, we can cut the signal now. Well, fasten your safety belt, Happy. Here's where we develop power failure. I'm all set, sir. I, I guess. You know, Happ, here's where I make the worst landing of my career. Nervous? When I put this shock suit on, I thought I could jump off a skyscraper in it, but now I'm not so sure. Near that knoll, Happy. Hundred yards from Beale's ship. Brace yourself. Here we go. Here we are. Everybody out. A very realistic crash, sir. Are you all right? I guess so. Except I can't move my right foot. It's caught in the wreckage. Does it hurt? No, sir. The padding of the suit protected it. It's just wedged in. Vio or his partner will be running out here very soon. Maybe I can pry that bent door alloy apart and get you out before they get here. But why don't we go ahead with our original plan? Leave me here in the ship while you circle around to the shack. Our original plan didn't call for you to be helpless. Well, that'll make it look all the more like a real crack-up. Uh, besides, Carol may be in danger. Well, you may be right, Hap, but you'll be safer if you pretend to be unconscious. Yes, sir. I'll climb out the port. Hey, we did a good job. What a mess. If you're in trouble, use your miniature spacer phone. I'll keep mine on. Here, where are you going? To the shack. Oh, no, you don't. I'll get back to the shack. But somebody might be hurt. We've got to help them. Nobody could be alive in that mess. Well, I'm going to see anyway. Carol, come back here. We've got to get Vio and blast off before the rescue ships arrive. Get Vio if you want. I'm going to help. Carol, come away from that wreck. It might explode. Oh, that poor pilot. I have to get him out. It's all right, Phil. Happy. 
How are you hurt? No, no, I'm okay. The commander and I planned it. Miss Carroll, get away from that wreck. That's Bob Henry, Theo's partner. Pretend you don't know me. Miss Carroll, you don't get away from here. It's unconscious. Uh, uh, why don't you go get Mr. Veal? Yeah, now, isn't it lucky he was wearing a crash suit? Stand back, Carl. Let me have a look at him. Oh, Corey's friend, the cadet. All right, snap out of it, cadet. Leave him alone. Quit playing possum. I heard you talking to Carol. All right, all right. Quit shaking. I'll get out of the ship. I can't. My foot's caught. Oh, it is. Well, I guess you won't be much trouble. But just to make sure... What are you going to do? Give the cadet an anesthetic. Don't hit him. Oh, oh my hand. That... Blow never even phased him. It's the shock suit, stupid. And if you come near me, I'll clout you into the next sector of Mars. Now, there's no use bothering with you. Commander's probably around here somewhere. I've got a way to handle both of you. What are you going to do? Plant this cartridge in the wreckage where the cadet can't reach it. No. Give me that. Get away. Hey, don't shove her around like that. She'll get worse than shoving around in a minute. There. Now, if I have to detonate that cartridge, cadet... Well, with all these metal fragments and the remaining fuel trickling through the wreckage, there ought to be quite an explosion. Henry, you can't do that. Then it's up to you to see that I don't have to. Come on, Carol. I'll get VO and the detonating control. And Cadet, if Corey's smart, he'll let you stay alive to see us blast off. Go on in, Carol. Hurry up. Yeah, good work. You found her. Did you hear that crash, Vio? Yeah, I saw the ship hit the other side of the knoll. I was going out when I saw you and Carol run over. No survivors, I suppose. Too many. Vio, we've got to get out of here. Corey and the cadets staged that crash. What? The cadets pinned in the wreckage. Corey's probably around somewhere. Come on, then. we got to get to our ship and blast off. Now, wait a minute. Where's that detonator unit? The one that explodes these cartridges. It's on the shelf. What do you need that for? Let's get out of here. I've planted a cartridge in the wreck to take care of Corey and the cadet. Okay, now let's go. We'll have to take care of it as for protection. Corey will send a flock of patrol ships after us. Come on, Carol, let's go. Take your hands off of me. Let go of her, Vio. Get your hands up. You too, Henry. Oh, Buzz. Corey, we're blasting off. Put that gun away and step aside. If you don't, I'll fix that cadet of yours for good. Buzz, he means it. Henry, put one of those electronic cartridges in the wreckage. And all I've got to do is press this button and transmit a signal that'll blow that wrecked ship to bits. Play it smart, Corey. Give me that gadget, Henry. I warn you, don't come any closer. One more step and your cadet's a goner. We'll see. All right, press the button, Henry. All right. Oh, boss. Corey, I didn't think you'd make me do it. Oh, well, it was a wreck anyway. Uh, Happy, I, I thought that you... Carol, stand back. Rush them, Henry. <laughs> Carol, get out of the way. Uh, Henry, get the gun. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Oh. Have any more ideas, Vio? No. My job. Oh, Buzz, I nearly died when that wreck exploded. I thought that Happy would be blown to bits. I caught a glimpse of Happy through the window. He'd already gotten out of the ship. I couldn't tip you off in front of these two. I pried myself out of the wreck with a hunk of loose metal. Happy, let's get these characters into their ship and take them to Terra. Yes, sir. Come on, Henry, on your feet. Vio, where's that pouch full of evidence you stole from us? They destroyed it, Buzz. They burned it. Yeah, at least we got ahead of you there, Corey. Now you can't convict us of larceny and fraud. That isn't going to help you, Vio. No, compared with what we've got on you now, larceny and fraud are going to sound like flattery. <laughs> <laughs> An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. But first... Hi, boys and girls. This is your commander reminding you to send in today for a pair of space binoculars. Send in today because this offer is soon going to end. You see, I don't want you to get left without one of these swell new binoculars. They're an item I want every single one of you to have. I just couldn't get along without my space binoculars. And for you to be a real space patroller, for you to be one of my own gang... You should have a pair of official Space Patrol space binoculars, too. So don't get left out. Send for your space binoculars today. They make everything in the distance look bigger and clearer. You don't even have to hold them. You slip them over your head and a strong elastic band holds them snugly to your eyes. You can study birds in the trees, spot planes in the sky, read faraway signs, see who's coming up the block, and do all kinds of other things with them all year long. Yes, sir, they're the real McCoy. Four power space binoculars exactly like mine. Big plastic binoculars, five inches long and five inches wide. When you wear them, they stand out from your eyes three and a half inches. So you see, they're not flimsy celluloid goggles or a mask. Now, don't get left out. This is the biggest value we've ever offered, and the offer soon ends. Captain Dick Tufeld, tell the gang how to get their space binoculars. 
buy a box of instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Gang, if you don't agree your binoculars are tops, return them and we'll return your money. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have descended into a canyon on Venus to rescue a wounded space pilot. As they reach the injured man, a flash flood roars down the river, piling water up behind the dam above them. We gotta get him out of here quickly, Happy. The water's rising fast. Once we get him to the lake, we shouldn't have any trouble carrying him to the top. It's a landslide. Press close to the dam and keep your head down. Smoking rockets. That was close. Hurry. We gotta get him up the path. There may be another landslide. Commander, look up there. Most of the ledge is swept away. We're trapped. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Mysterious Meteor, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! This is Commander Corey congratulating a great organization on its 43rd birthday, the Boy Scouts of America. You're an inspiration to youth, a part of America itself. Space Patrol salutes you, Boy Scouts of America. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer, Virginia Hewitt, Bela Kovach, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufeld speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC TV station. Consult your paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.